The Iliad of Homer. English translation to blank verse. By William Cooper. Book 1. Argument of the First Book. The book opens with an account of a pestilence that prevailed in the Grecian camp, and the cause of it is assigned. A council is called, in which fierce altercation takes place between Agamemnon and Achilles. The latter solemnly renounces the field. Agamemnon, by his heralds, demands Briseis, and Achilles resigns her. He makes his complaint to Thetis, who undertakes to plead his cause with Jupiter. She pleads it, and prevails. The book concludes with an account of what passed in heaven on that occasion. The reader will please observe, that by Achaeans, Argives, Danae, are signified Grecians. Homer himself having found these various appellatives both graceful and convenient, it seemed unreasonable that a translator of him should be denied the same advantage. Tr. Book I. Achilles sing, O goddess. Peleus son. His wrath pernicious, who ten thousand woes. Caused to Achaia's host, sent many a soul. Illustrious into aids premature. And heroes gave, so stood the will of Jove, five. To dogs and to all ravening fowls a prey. When fierce dispute had separated once. The noble chief Achilles from the son. Of Atreus, Agamemnon, king of men. Who them to strife impelled. What power divine, ten. Latona's son and Jove's. For he, incensed. Against the king, a foul contagion raised. In all the host, and multitudes destroyed. For that the son of Atreus had his priest. Dishonored, Chryses. To the fleet he came fifteen. Bearing rich ransom glorious to redeem. His daughter, and his hands charged with the wreath. And golden scepter of the god shaft armed. His supplication was at large to all. The host of Greece, but most of all to two, twenty. The sons of Atreus, highest in command. Ye gallant chiefs, and ye their gallant host. So may the gods who in Olympus dwell. Give Priam's treasures to you for a spoil. And ye return in safety, take my gifts twenty-five. And loose my child, in honor of the sun. Of Jove, Apollo. Archer of the skies. At once the voice of all was to respect. The priest, and to accept the bounteous price. But so it pleased not Atreus' mighty son, thirty who with rude threatening stern him thence dismissed. Beware, old man! That at these hollow barks. I find thee not now lingering, or henceforth. Returning, lest the garland of thy god. And his bright scepter should avail thee not. Point thirty-five. I will not loose thy daughter, till old age. Steal on her. From her native country far. In Argos, in my palace, she shall ply the loom, and shall be partner of my bed. Move me no more. Begone, hence while thou mayst point forty. He spake, the old priest trembled and obeyed. Forlorn he roamed the ocean's sounding shore. And, solitary, with much prayer his king. Bright-haired Latona's son, Phoebus, implored. God of the silver bow, who with thy power forty-five. Encirclest Chrysa, and who reignst supreme. In Tenedos and Scylla the Divine. Sminthi and Apollo. If I e'er adorned. Thy beauteous fane, or on the altar burned. The fat acceptable of bulls or goats, fifty. Grant my petition. With thy shafts avenge. On the Achaean host thy servants' tears. Such prayer he made, and it was heard. The God. Down from Olympus with his radiant bow and his full quiver o'er his shoulder slung, fifty-five. Marched in his anger, shaken as he moved. His rattling arrows told of his approach. Gloomy he came as night. Sat from the ships. Apart, and sent an arrow. Clanged the cord. Dread sounding, bounding on the silver bow point sixty. Mules first and dogs he struck, but at themselves. Dispatching soon his bitter arrows keen smote them. Death piles on all sides always blazed. Nine days throughout the camp his arrows flew. 
The tenth, Achilles from all parts convenes sixty-five. The host in council. Juno the white-armed. Moved at the sight of Grecians all around. Dying, imparted to his mind the thought. The full assembly, therefore, now convened. Uprose Achilles ardent, and began point seventy. Atrides. Now, it seems, no course remains. For us, but that the sea's roaming again. We hence return, at least if we survive. But haste, consult we quick some prophet here. Or priest, or even interpreter of dreams, seventy-five. For dreams are also of Jove, that we may learn. By what crime we have thus incensed Apollo? What broken vow, what hecatomb unpaid? He charges on us. And if soothed with steam. Of lambs or goats unblemished, he may yet eighty. Be one to spare us, and avert the plague. He spake and sat, when the astir sun arose. Calchas, an augur foremost in his art. Who all things, present, past, and future knew. And whom his skill in prophecy, a gift eighty-five. Conferred by Phoebus on him. Had advanced. To be conductor of the fleet to Troy. He, prudent, them admonishing, replied. Jove loved Achilles. Wouldst thou learn from me? What cause hath moved Apollo to this wrath, ninety? The shaft-armed king? I shall divulge the cause. But thou, swear first and covenant on thy part. That speaking, acting, thou wilt stand prepared. To give me succor, for I judge amiss. Or he who rules the Argives, the supreme ninety-five. O'er all Achaia's host, will be incensed. What to the man who shall provoke the king? For if, today, he smother close his wrath. He harbors still the vengeance, and in time. Performs it. Answer, therefore, wilt thou save me, one hundred. To whom Achilles, swiftest of the swift. What thou hast learned in secret from the god. That speak, and boldly. By the son of Jove. Apollo, whom thou, Calchas, seek'st in prayer. Made for the deny, and who thy soul one o five. Fills with futurity, in all the host. The Grecian lives not, who while I shall breathe. And see the light of day. Shall in this camp. Oppress thee. No, not even if thou name. Him, Agamemnon, sovereign o'er us all point one ten. Then was the seer emboldened, and he spake. Nor vow and nor hecatomb unpaid on us. He charges, but the wrong done to his priest. Whom Agamemnon slighted when he sought. His daughter's freedom, and his gifts refused. Point one fifteen. He is the cause. Apollo for his sake. Afflicts and will afflict us, neither end. Nor intermission of his heavy scourge. Granting, till unredeemed, no price required. The black-eyed maid be to her father sent, one twenty. And a whole hecatomb in Chrysa bleed. Then, not before, the god may be appeased. He spake and sat, when Atreus' son arose. The hero Agamemnon, throne supreme. Tempests of black resentment overcharged one twenty-five. His heart, and indignation fired his eyes. On Calchas lowering, him he first addressed. Prophet of mischief. From whose tongue no note. Of grateful sound to me, was ever heard. Ill tidings are thy joy, and tidings glad one thirty. Thou tell'st not, or thy words come not to pass. And now among the deny thy dreams. Divulging, thou pretends the archer god. For his priest's sake, our enemy, because. I scorned his offered ransom of the maid one thirty five. Chryseus, more desirous far to bear. Her to my home. For that she charms me more. Then Clytemnistra, my own first espoused. With whom, in disposition, feature, form. Accomplishments, she may be well compared. 140. Yet, being such, I will return her hence. If that she go be best. Perish myself. But let the people of my charge be saved. Prepare ye, therefore, 
a reward for me. And seek it instant. It were much unmeet 145. That I alone of all the Argive host. Should want due recompense, whose former prize. Is elsewhere destined, as ye all perceive. To whom Achilles, matchless in the race. Atrides, glorious above all in rank 150. And as intent on gain as thou art great. Whence shall the Grecians give a prize to thee? The general stock is poor. The spoil of towns. Which we have taken, hath already passed. In distribution, and it were unjust 155. To gather it from all the Greeks again. But send thou back this virgin to her God. And when Jove's favor shall have given us Troy. A threefold, fourfold share shall then be thine. To whom the sovereign of the host replied. 160. Godlike Achilles, valiant as thou art. Wouldst thou be subtle too? But me no fraud. Shall overreach, or art persuade, of thine. Wouldst thou, that thou be recompensed, and I. Sit meekly down, defrauded of my due? 165. And didst thou bid me yield her? Let the bold. Achaeans give me competent amends. Such as may please me, and it shall be well. Else, if they give me none, I will command. Thy prize, the prize of Ajax, or the prize 170. It may be of Ulysses to my tent. And let the loser chafe. But this concern. Shall be adjusted at convenient time. Come, launch we now into the sacred deep. A bark with lusty rowers well supplied, 175. Then put on board Chryseis, and with her. The sacrifice required. Go also one. High in authority, some counselor. Idomeneus, or Ajax, or thyself. Thou most untractable of all mankind, 180. And seek by rites of sacrifice and prayer. To appease Apollo on our host's behalf. Achilles eyed him with a frown, and spake. Ah! Clothed with impudence as with a cloak. And full of subtlety, who, thinkest thou, 185. What Grecian here will serve thee, or for thee? Wage covert war, or open? Me thou knowst. Troy never wronged. I came not to avenge. Harm done to me, no Trojan ever drove. My pastures, steeds or oxen took of mine, 190. Or plundered of their fruits the golden fields. Of Thia the deep soiled. She lies remote. And obstacles are numerous interposed. Veil darkening mountains, and the dashing sea. No, shameless wolf. For thy good pleasure's sake 195. We came, and, face of flint. To avenge the wrongs. By Menelaus and thyself sustained. On the offending Trojan, service kind. But lost on thee, regardless of it all. And now, what now? Thy threatening is to seize two hundred. Thyself, the just requital of my toils. My prize hard-earned, by common suffrage mine. I never gain, what Trojan town sower. We ransack, half thy booty. The swift march. And furious onset, these I largely reap, 205. But, distribution made, thy lot exceeds. Mine far, while I, with any pittance pleased. Bear to my ships the little that I win. After long battle, and account it much. But I am gone, I and my sable barks 210. My wiser course, to Thia, and I judge. Scorned as I am, that thou shalt hardly glean. Without me, more than thou shalt soon consume. He ceased, and Agamemnon thus replied. Fly, and fly now. If in thy soul thou feel 215. Such ardor of desire to go, be gone. I would thee not to stay, stay not an hour. On my behalf, for I have others here. Who will respect me more, and above all. All judging Jove. There is not in the host 220. King or commander whom I hate as thee. For all thy pleasure is in strife and blood. And at all times, yet valor is no ground. 
whereon to boast, it is the gift of heaven. Go, get ye back to Thia, thou and thine. 225. There rule thy myrmidons. I need not thee. Nor heed thy wrath a jot. But this I say. Sure as Apollo takes my lovely prize. Chryseus, and I shall return her home. In mine own bark, and with my proper crew, 230. So sure the fair Briseis shall be mine. I shall demand her even at thy tent. So shalt thou well be taught, how high in power. I soar above thy pitch, and none shall dare. Attempt, thenceforth, comparison with me.235. He ended, and the big, disdainful heart throbbed of Achilles. Racking doubt ensued. And sore perplexed him, whether forcing wide a passage through them, with his blade unsheathed. To lay a tride's breathless at his foot, 240. Or to command his stormy spirit down. So doubted he, and undecided yet. Stood drawing forth his falchion huge, when lo! Down sent by Juno, to whom both alike. Were dear, and who alike watched over both, 245. Pallas descended. At his back she stood. To none apparent, save himself alone. And seized his golden locks. Startled, he turned. An instant new Minerva. Flashed her eyes. Terrific, whom with accents on the wing 250. Of haste, incontinent he questioned thus. Daughter of Jove, why comest thou? That thyself. Mayst witness these affronts which I endure. From Agamemnon? Surely as I speak. This moment, for his arrogance, he dies.255. To whom the blue-eyed deity. From heaven. Mine errand is, to sooth, if thou wilt hear. Thine anger. Juno the white-armed alike. To him and the propitious, bade me down. Restrain thy wrath. Draw not thy falchion forth.260. Retort, and sharply, and let that suffice. For I foretell thee true. Thou shalt receive. Some future day, thrice told, thy present loss. For this day's wrong. Cease, therefore, and be still. To whom Achilles. Goddess, although much too sixty-five. Exasperate, I dare not disregard. Thy word, which to obey is always best. Who hears the gods, the gods hear also him. He said. And on his silver hilt the force. Of his broad hand impressing, sent the blade 270. Home to its rest, nor would the council scorn. Of Pallas. She to heaven well pleased returned. And in the mansion of Jove Aegis armed. Arriving, mingled with her kindred gods. But though from violence, yet not from words 275. Abstained Achilles, but with bitter taunt. Opprobrious, his antagonist reproached. O oh, charged with wine, in steadfastness of face. Dog unabashed, and yet at heart a deer. Thou never, when the troops have taken arms, 280. Hast dared to take thine also, never thou. Associate with Achaia's chiefs, to form. The secret ambush. No. The sound of war is as the voice of destiny to thee. Doubtless the course is safer far, to range 285. Our numerous host, and if a man have dared. Dispute thy will, to rob him of his prize. King. Over whom? Women and spiritless. Whom therefore thou devourest. Else themselves. Would stop that mouth that it should scoff no more.290. But hearken. I shall swear a solemn oath. By this same scepter, which shall never bud. Nor boughs bring forth as once, which having left. Its stock on the high mountains, at what time? The woodman's axe lopped off its foliage green, 295. And stripped its bark, shall never grow again. Which now the judges of Achaia bear. Who under Jove, stand guardians of the laws. By this I swear, mark thou the sacred oath. Time shall be, when Achilles shall be missed. 300. 
when all shall want him, and thyself the power. To help the Achaeans, whatsoe'er thy will. When Hector at your heels shall mow you down. The hero slaughtering Hector. Then thy soul. Vexation stung, shall tear thee with remorse. 305. That thou hast scorned, as he were nothing worth. A chief, the soul and bulwark of your cause. So saying, he cast his scepter on the ground. Studded with gold, and sat. On the other side. The son of Atreus all impassioned stood, 310. When the harmonious order arose. Nestor, the Pylian oracle, whose lips. Dropped eloquence, the honey not so sweet. Two generations passed of mortals born. In Pylus, coetaneous with himself, 315. He governed now the third, amid them all. He stood, and thus, benevolent, began. Ah! What calamity hath fallen on Greece! Now Priam and his sons may well exult. Now all in Ilium shall have joy of heart 320. Abundant, hearing of this broil, the prime. Of Greece between, in council and in arms. But be persuaded. Ye are younger both. Then I, and I was conversant of old. With princes your superiors, yet from them 325. No disrespect at any time received. Their equals saw I never, never shall. Exadius, Cenius, and the godlike son. Of Aegeus, mighty Theseus. Men renowned. For force superior to the race of man, 330. Brave chiefs they were, and with brave foes they fought. With the rude dwellers on the mountain heights. The centaurs, whom with havoc such as fame. Shall never cease to celebrate, they slew. With these men I consorted erst, what time 335. From Pylus, though a land from theirs remote. They called me forth, and such as was my strength. With all that strength I served them. Who is he? What prince or chief of the degenerate race? Now seen on earth who might with these compare, 340. Yet even these would listen and conform. To my advice in consultation given. Which hear ye also. For compliance proves. Oft times the safer and the manlier course. Thou, Agamemnon. Valiant as thou art, 345. Seize not the maid, his portion from the Greeks. But leave her his, nor thou, Achilles, strive. With our imperial chief. For never king. Had equal honor at the hands of Jove. With Agamemnon, or was thrown so high point 350. Say thou art stronger, and art goddess born. How then? His territory passes thine. And he is lord of thousands more than thou. Cease, therefore, Agamemnon, calm thy wrath. And it shall be mine office to entreat 355. Achilles also to a calm, whose might. The chief munition is of all our host. To whom the sovereign of the Greeks replied. The son of Atreus. Thou hast spoken well. Old chief, and wisely. But this wrangler here, 360. Not will suffice him but the highest place. He must control us all, reign over all. Dictate to all. But he shall find at least. One here, disposed to question his commands. If the eternal gods have made him brave, 365. Derives he thence a privilege to rail? Whom thus Achilles interrupted fierce. Could I be found so abject as to take? The measure of my doings at thy lips. Well might they call me coward through the camp, 370. A vassal, and a fellow of no worth. Give law to others. Think not to control. Me, subject to thy proud commands no more. Hear yet again. And weigh what thou shalt hear. I will not strive with thee in such a cause, 375. Nor yet with any man, I scorn to fight. For her, whom having given, ye take away. But I have other precious things on board. Of those take none away without my leave. Or if it please thee, put me to the proof 380. Before this whole assembly, and my spear. 
shall stream that moment, purpled with thy blood. Thus they long time in opposition fierce. Maintained the war of words, and now, at length. The grand consult dissolved, Achilles walked 385. Patroclus and the Myrmidons his steps. Attending, to his camp and to his fleet. But Agamemnon ordered forth a bark. A swift one, manned with twice ten lusty rowers. He sent on board the hecatome, he placed 390. Chryseus with the blooming cheeks, himself. And to Ulysses gave the freight in charge. So all embarked, and plowed their watery way. Atrides, next, bade purify the host. The host was purified, as he enjoined, 395. And the ablution cast into the sea. Then to Apollo, on the shore they slew. Of the untillable and barren deep. Whole hecatombs of bulls and goats, whose steam. Slowly in smoky volumes climbed the skies. Point four hundred. Thus was the camp employed. Nor ceased the while. The son of Atreus from his threats denounced. At first against Achilles, but command. Gave to Talthybius and Eurybides. His heralds, ever faithful to his will. Point four o five. Haste, seek ye both the tent of Peleus' son. Achilles. Thence lead hither by the hand. Blooming Briseis, whom if he withhold. Not her alone, but other spoil myself. Will take in person, he shall rue the hour. 410. With such harsh message charged he them dismissed. They, sad and slow, beside the barren waste. Of ocean, to the galleys and the tents. Moved of the Myrmidons. Him there they found. Beneath the shadow of his bark reclined, 415. Nor glad at their approach. Trembling they stood. In presence of the royal chief, awestruck. Nor questioned him or spake. He not the less. Knew well their embassy, and thus began. Ye heralds, messengers of gods and men, 420. Hail, and draw near. I bid you welcome both. I blame not you, the fault is his alone. Who sends you to conduct the damsel hence? Briseis. Go, Patroclus, generous friend. Lead forth, and to their guidance give the maid point 425. But be themselves my witnesses before. The blessed gods, before mankind, before. The ruthless king, should want of me be felt. To save the host from havoc, oh, his thoughts. Our madness all. Intelligence or skill, 430. Forecast or retrospect, how best the camp. May be secured from inroad, none hath he. He ended, nor Patroclus disobeyed. But leading beautiful Briseis forth. Into their guidance gave her. Loath she went 435. From whom she loved, and looking oft behind. Then wept Achilles, and apart from all. With eyes directed to the gloomy deep. And arms outstretched, his mother suppliant sought. Since, mother, though ordained so soon to die, for forty. I am thy son, I might with cause expect. Some honor at the thunderer's hands, but none. To me he shows, whom Agamemnon, chief. Of the Achaeans, hath himself disgraced. Seizing by violence my just reward. 445. So prayed he weeping, whom his mother heard. Within the gulfs of ocean where she sat. Beside her ancient sire. From the grey flood. Ascending sudden, like a mist she came. Sat down before him, stroked his face, and said. Point 450. Why weeps my son? And what is thy distress? Hide not a sorrow that I wish to share. To whom Achilles, sighing deep, replied. Why tell thee woes to the already known? At Thebes, Aetian city we arrived, 455. Smote, sacked it, and brought all the spoil away. Just distribution made among the Greeks. The son of Atreus for his lot received. Blooming Chryseus. Her, Apollo's priest. Old Chryses followed to Achaia's camp, 460. That he might lose his daughter. Ransom rich. 
he brought, and in his hands the hallowed wreath. And golden scepter of the archer god. Apollo, bore, to the whole Grecian host. But chiefly to the foremost in command 465. He sued, the sons of Atreus. Then, the rest. All recommended reverence of the seer. And prompt acceptance of his costly gifts. But Agamemnon might not so be pleased. Who gave him rude dismission? He in wrath 470. Returning, prayed, whose prayer Apollo heard. For much he loved him. A pestiferous shaft. He instant shot into the Grecian host. And heaped the people died. His arrows swept. The whole wide camp of Greece, till at the last 475. A seer, by Phoebus taught, explained the cause. I first advised propitiation. Rage. Fired Agamemnon. Rising, he denounced. Vengeance, and hath fulfilled it. She, in truth, is gone to Chrysa, and with her we send 480. Propitiation also to the king. Shaft armed Apollo. But my beauteous prize. Briseis, mine by the award of all. His heralds, at this moment, lead away. But thou, wherein thou canst, aid thy own son, 485. Haste hence to heaven, and if thy word or deed hath ever gratified the heart of Jove, with earnest suit press him on my behalf. For I, not seldom, in my father's hall, have heard thee boasting, how when once the gods, for ninety, with Juno, Neptune, Pallas at their head, conspired to bind the thunderer, thou didst loose his bands, O goddess, calling to his aid the hundred-handed warrior, by the gods. Briarius, but by men, Aegean named point four ninety five, For he in prowess and in might surpassed. His father Neptune, who, in throne sublime, sits second only to Saturnian Jove, elate with glory and joy. Him all the gods. Fearing from that bold enterprise abstained point five hundred. Now, therefore, of these things reminding Jove, Embrace his knees. Entreat him that he give. The host of Troy his succor, and shut fast. The routed Grecians, prisoners in the fleet. That all may find much solace in their king, 505. And that the mighty sovereign o'er them all. Their Agamemnon. May himself be taught. His rashness, who hath thus dishonored foul. The life itself, and bulwark of his cause. To him, with streaming eyes, Thetis replied. Point five ten. Born as thou wast to sorrow, ah, my son! Why have I reared thee? Would that without tears? Or cause for tears, transient as is thy life? A little span, thy days might pass at Troy. But short and sorrowful the fates ordain. 515. Thy life, peculiar trouble must be thine. Whom, Therefore, oh that I had never born. But seeking the Olympian hill snow-crowned. I will myself plead for thee in the ear. Of Jove, the thunderer. Meantime at thy fleet 520. Abiding, let thy wrath against the Greeks. Still burn, and altogether cease from war. For to the banks of the Oceanus. Where Ethiopia holds a feast to Jove. He journeyed yesterday with whom the gods 525. Went also, and the twelfth day brings them home. Then will I to his brazen floored abode. That I may clasp his knees, and much misdeem. Of my endeavor, or my prayer shall speed. So saying, she went, but him she left enraged 530. For fair Briseis' sake, forced from his arms. By stress of power. Meantime Ulysses came to Chrysa with the hecatomb in charge. Arrived within the haven deep, their sails. Furling, they stowed them in the bark below. 535. Then by its tackle lowering swift the mast. Into its crutch, they briskly pushed to land. Heaved anchors out, and moored the vessel fast. Forth came the mariners, and trod the beach. Forth came the victims of Apollo next, 540. 
and, last, Chryseis. Her Ulysses led. Toward the altar, gave her to the arms. Of her own father, and him thus addressed. O Chryses! Agamemnon, king of men! Hath sent thy daughter home, with whom we bring five forty-five. A hecatomb on all our host's behalf. To Phoebus, hoping to appease the god. By whose dread shafts the Argives now expire. So saying, he gave her to him, who with joy. Received his daughter. Then, before the shrine five fifty. Magnificent in order do they ranged. The noble hecatomb. Each laved his hands. And took the salted meal, and Chryses made. His fervent prayer with hands appraised on high. God of the silver bow, who with thy power 555. Encirclest Chrysa, and who reignst supreme. In Tenedos, and Scylla the divine. Thou prov dst propitious to my first request. Hast honored me, and punished sore the Greeks. Hear yet thy servant's prayer, take from their host 560. At once the loathsome pestilence away. So Chryses prayed, whom Phoebus heard well pleased. Then prayed the Grecians also, and with meal. Sprinkling the victims, their retracted necks. First pierced, then flayed them, the disjointed thighs 565. They, next, invested with the double call. Which with crude slices thin they overspread. The priest burned incense, and libation poured. Large on the hissing brands, while, him beside. Busy with spit and prong, stood many a youth 570. Trained to the task. The thighs with fire consumed. They gave to each his portion of the maw. Then slashed the remnant, pierced it with the spits. And managing with culinary skill. The roast, withdrew it from the spits again. 575. Their whole task thus accomplished, and the board. Set forth, they feasted, and were all sufficed. When neither hunger more nor thirst remained. Unsatisfied, boys crowned the beakers high. With wine delicious, and from right to left 580. Distributing the cups, served every guest. Thenceforth the youths of the Achaean race. To song propitiatory gave the day. Paeans to Phoebus, archer of the skies. Chaunting melodious. Pleased, Apollo heard. 585. But, when, the sun descending, darkness fell. They on the beach beside their hawsers slept. And, when the dayspring's daughter rosy palmed. Aurora looked abroad, then back they steered. To the vast camp. Fair wind, and blowing fresh, 590. Apollo sent them, quick they reared the mast. Then spread the unsullied canvas to the gale. And the wind filled it. Roared the sable flood. Around the bark, that ever as she went. Dashed wide the brine, and scud swift away. 595. Thus reaching soon the spacious camp of Greece. Their galley they updrew sheer o'er the sands. From the rude surge remote, then propped her sides. With scantlings long, and sought their several tents. But Peleus' noble son, the speed, renowned D-600. Achilles, he, his well-built bark beside. Consumed his hours, nor would in counsel more. Where wise men win distinction, or in fight. Appear, to sorrow and heart withering wa. Abandoned. Though for battle, ardent, still 605. He panted, and the shout resounding field. But when the twelfth fair morrow streaked the east. Then all the everlasting gods to heaven. Resorted, with the thunderer at their head. And Thetis, not unmindful of her son, 610. From the salt flood emerged. Seeking betimes. Olympus and the boundless fields of heaven. High, on the topmost eminence sublime. Of the deep forked Olympian she perceived. The thunderer seated, from the gods apart. 615. She sat before him, clasped with her left hand. His knees, her right beneath his chin she placed. And thus the king, Saturnian Jove, implored. Father of all, 
by all that I have done. Or said that ever please thee, grant my suit. 620. Exalt my son, by destiny short-lived. Beyond the lot of others. Him with shame. The king of men hath overwhelmed, by force. Usurping his just meed. Thou, therefore, Jove. Supreme in wisdom, honor him, and give 625. Success to Troy, till all Achaia's sons. Shall yield him honor more than he hath lost. She spake, to whom the thunderer not replied. But silence sat long time. She, as her hand. Had grown there, still importunate, his knees 630. Clasped as at first, and thus her suit renewed. Or grant my prayer, and ratify the grant. Or send me hence, for thou hast none to fear. Plainly refused. That I may know and feel. By how much I am least of all in heaven. Point 635. To whom the cloud assembler at the last. Spake, deep distressed. Hard task and full of strife. Thou hast enjoined me. Juno will not spare. For jibe and taunt injurious, whose complaint. Sounds daily in the ears of all the gods. 640. That I assist the Trojans, but depart. Lest she observe thee, my concern shall be. How best I may perform thy full desire. And to assure thee more, I give the sign. Indubitable, which all fear expels 645. At once from heavenly minds. Not, so confirmed. May, after, be reversed or rendered vain. He ceased, and under his dark brows the nod. Vouchsafed of confirmation. All around. The sovereign's everlasting head his curls 650. Ambrosial shook, and the huge mountain reeled. Their conference closed, they parted. She, at once. From bright Olympus plunged into the flood. Profound, and Jove to his own courts withdrew. Together all the gods, at his approach, 655. Uprose, none sat expectant till he came. But all advanced to meet the eternal sire. So on his throne he sat. Nor Juno him. Not understood. She, watchful, had observed. In consultation close with Jove engaged 660. Thetis, bright-footed daughter of the deep. And keen the son of Saturn thus reproved. Shrewd as thou art, who now hath had thine ear. Thy joy is ever such, from me apart. To plan and plot clandestine, and thy thoughts, 665. Think what thou mayst, are always barred to me. To whom the Father, thus, of heaven and earth. Expect not, Juno, that thou shalt partake. My counsels at all times, which often height. And depth, thy comprehension far exceed, 670. Jove's consort as thou art. When aught occurs. Meet for thine ear, to none will I impart. Of gods or men more free than to thyself. But for my secret thoughts, which I withhold. From all in heaven beside, them search not thou 675. With irksome curiosity and vain. Him answered then the goddess ampelied. What word hath passed thy lips, Saturnian Jove? Thou most severe. I never search thy thoughts. Nor the serenity of thy profound 680. Intentions trouble, they are safe from me. But now there seems a cause. Deeply I dread. Lest Thetis, silver-footed daughter fair. Of ocean's hoary sovereign, here arrived. At early dawn to practice on thee, Jove. 685. I noticed her a sutras at thy knees. And much misdeem or promise bound thou stand'st. To Thetis past recall, to exalt her son. And Greeks to slaughter thousands at the ships. To whom the cloud assembler god, incensed point 690. Ah subtle. Ever teeming with surmise. And fathomer of my concealed designs. Thy toil is vain, or, which is worse for thee. Shall but estrange thee from mine heart the more. And be it as thou sayest, I am well pleased 695. That's so it should be. Be advised, desist. 
hold thou thy peace. Else, if my glorious hands once reach thee, the Olympian powers combined to rescue thee, shall interfere in vain. He said, whom Juno, awful goddess, heard seven hundred. Appalled, and mute submitted to his will. But through the courts of Jove the heavenly powers. All felt displeasure, when to them arose. Vulcan, illustrious artist, who with speech. Conciliatory interposed to sooth 705. His white-armed mother Juno, goddess dread. Hard doom is ours, and not to be endured. If feast and merriment must pause in heaven. While ye such clamor raise tumultuous here. For man's unworthy sake, yet thus we speed 710. Ever, when evil overpoise is good. But I exhort my mother, though herself. Already warned, that meekly she submit. To Jove our father, lest our father chide. More roughly, and confusion mar the feast. 715. For the Olympian thunderer could with ease. Us from our thrones precipitate, so far. He reigns to all superior. Seek to assuage. His anger therefore, so shall he with smiles. Cheer thee, nor thee alone, but all in heaven. 720. So Vulcan, and, upstarting, placed a cup. Full charged between his mother's hands, and said. My mother, be advised, and, though aggrieved. Yet patient. Lest I see thee whom I love. So dear, with stripes chastised before my face 725. Willing, but impotent to give thee aid. Who can resist the thunderer? Me, when once. I flew to save thee, by the foot he seized. And hurled me through the portal of the skies. From morn to eve I fell, a summer's day, 730. And dropped, at last, in Lemnos. There half dead. The Scythians found me, and with succor prompt. And hospitable, entertained me fallen. So he, then Juno smiled, goddess white-armed. And smiling still, from his unwanted hand 735. Received the goblet. He from right to left. Rich nectar from the beaker drawn, alert. Distributed to all the powers divine. Heaven rang with laughter inextinguishable. Peal after peal, such pleasure all conceived 740. At sight of Vulcan in his new employ. So spent they in festivity the day. And all were cheered, nor was Apollo's harp. Silent, nor did the muses spare to add. Responsive melody of vocal sweets. 745. But when the sun's bright orb had now declined. Each to his mansion, wheresoever built. By the lame matchless architect, withdrew. Jove also, kindler of the fires of heaven. His couch ascending as at other times 750. When gentle sleep approached him, slept serene. With golden scepter Juno at his side. The first book contains the preliminaries to the commencement of serious action. First, the visit of the priest of Apollo to ransom his captive daughter the refusal of Agamemnon to yield her up, and the pestilence sent by the god upon the Grecian army in consequence. Secondly, the restoration, the propitiation of Apollo, the quarrel of Agamemnon and Achilles, and the withdrawing of the latter from the Grecian army. Thirdly, the intercession of Thetis with Jupiter. His promise, unwillingly given, to avenge Achilles, and the assembly of the gods, in which the promise is angrily alluded to by Juno, and the discussion peremptorily checked by Jupiter. The poet, throughout this book, maintains a simple, unadorned style, but highly descriptive, and happily adapted to the nature of the subject of Felton. Book 2. Argument of the Second Book. Jupiter, in pursuance of his purpose to distress the Grecians in answer to the prayer of Thetis, deceives Agamemnon by a dream. He, in consequence of it, calls a council, the result of which is that the army shall go forth to battle. Thersites is mutinous, and is chastised by Ulysses. Ulysses, Nestor, and Agamemnon, harangue the people, and preparation is made for battle. An exact account follows of the forces on both sides. Book 2. All night both gods and chiefs equestrian slept. But not the sire of all. 
He, waking soon, mused how to exalt Achilles, and destroy. No few in battle at the Grecian fleet. This council, at the last, as best he chose five. And likeliest. To dispatch an evil dream. To Agamemnon's tent, and to his side. The phantom summoning, him thus addressed. Haste, evil dream. Fly to the Grecian fleet. And, entering royal Agamemnon's tent, ten. His ear possess thou thus, omitting not. Of all that I enjoin thee. Bid him arm. His universal host, for that the time. When the Achaeans shall at length possess. Wide Ilium, hath arrived. The gods above fifteen. No longer dwell at variance. The request of Juno hath prevailed, now, what to Troy? So charged, the dream departed. At the ships, well-built arriving of Achaia's host. He Agamemnon, son of Atreus, sought point twenty. Him sleeping in his tent he found, immersed. In soft repose ambrosial. At his head. The shadow stood, similitude exact. Of Nestor, son of Neleus, sage, with whom? In Agamemnon's thought might none compare point twenty-five. His form assumed, the sacred dream began. O son of Atreus the renowned in arms! And in the race! Sleep'st thou? It ill behoves! To sleep all night the man of high employ! And charged, as thou art, with a people's care! 30. Now, therefore, mark me well, who, sent from Jove, inform thee, that although so far remote, he yet compassionates and thinks on thee. With kind solicitude, he bids thee arm thy universal host, for that the time thirty-five, when the Achaeans shall at length possess, wide Ilium, hath arrived. The gods above no longer dwell at variance. The requests of Juno have prevailed. Now, what to Troy? From Jove himself. Her fate is on the wing point forty. Awaking from thy dewy slumbers, hold. In firm remembrance all that thou hast heard. So spake the dream, and vanishing, him left. In false hopes occupied and musings vain. Full sure he thought, ignorant of the plan forty-five. By Jove designed, that day the last of Troy. Fond thought. For toils and agonies to Greeks. And Trojans both, in many a bloody field. To be endured, the thunderer yet ordained. Starting he woke, and seeming still to hear fifty. The warning voice divine, with hasty leap. Sprang from his bed, and sat. His fleecy vest. New woven he put on, and mantle wide his sandals fair to his unsullied feet. He braced, and slung his argent-studded sword point fifty-five. Then, incorruptible forevermore, the scepter of his sires he took, with which he issued forth into the camp of Greece. Aurora now on the Olympian heights, proclaiming stood new day to all in heaven, sixty. When he his clear-voiced heralds bade convene the Greeks in council, went the summons forth. Into all quarters, and the throng began. First, at the ship of Nestor, Pilion king. The senior chiefs for high exploits renowned, D. 65. He gathered, whom he prudent thus addressed. My fellow warriors, here. A dream from heaven. Amid the stillness of the vacant night. Approached me, semblance close in stature, bulk and heir, of noble Nestor. At mine head seventy. The shadow took his stand, and thus he spake. O son of Atreus the renowned in arms! And in the race, sleep'st thou? It ill behoves. To sleep all night the man of high employ. And charged as thou art with a people's care. Seventy-five. Now, therefore, mark me well, who, sent from Jove. Inform thee, that although so far remote, he yet compassionates and thinks on thee. With kind solicitude, he bids thee arm thy universal host. For that the time eighty, 
when the Achaeans shall at length possess. Wide Ilium hath arrived. The gods above. No longer dwell at variance. The requests of Juno have prevailed. Now, what to Troy? From Jove himself. Her fate is on the wing. 85. Charge this on thy remembrance. Thus he spake. Then vanished suddenly, and I awoke. Haste therefore, let us arm, if arm we may. The warlike sons of Greece. But first, myself. We'll prove them, recommending instant flight 90. With all our ships, and ye throughout the host. Dispersed, shall, next, encourage all to stay. He ceased, and sat. When in the midst arose. Of highest fame for wisdom, Nestor, king. Of Sandy Pilus, who them thus bespake. Point ninety five. Friends, counselors, and leaders of the Greeks. Had any meaner Argive told his dream? We had pronounced it false, and should the more. Have shrunk from battle, but the dream is his. Who boasts himself our highest in command. Point one hundred. Haste, arm we, if we may, the sons of Greece. So saying, he left the council, him, at once. The sceptered chiefs, obedient to his voice. Arising, followed, and the throng began. As from the hollow rock bees stream abroad, 105. And in succession endless seek the fields. Now clustering, and now scattered far and near. In springtime, among all the new-blown flowers. So they to council swarmed, troop after troop. Grecians of every tribe, from camp and fleet 110. Assembling orderly o'er all the plain. Beside the shore of ocean. In the midst. A kindling rumor, messenger of Jove. Impelled them, and they went. Loud was the din. Of the assembling thousands, groaned the earth 115. When down they sat, and murmurs ran around. Nine heralds cried aloud, Will ye restrain? Your clamors, that your heaven taught kings may speak. Scarce were they settled, and the clang had ceased. When Agamemnon, sovereign o'er them all, 120. Scepter in hand, arose. That scepter erst. Vulcan with labor forged, and to the hand. Consigned it of the king, Saturnian Jove. Jove to the vanquisher of Eno's guard. And he to Pelops, Pelops in his turn, 125. To royal Atreus. Atreus at his death. Bequeathed it to Thyestus rich in flocks. And rich Thyestus left it to be born. By Agamemnon, symbol of his right. To empire over Argos and her isles, 130. On that he leaned, and rapid, thus began. Friends, Grecian heroes, ministers of Mars. Ye see me here entangled in the snares. Of unpropitious Jove. He promised once. And with a nod confirmed it, that with spoils 135. Of Ilium laden, we should hence return. But now, devising ill, he sends me shamed. And with diminished numbers, home to Greece. So stands his sovereign pleasure, who hath laid. The bulwarks of full many a city low, 140. And more shall level, matchless in his might. That such a numerous host of Greeks as we, warring with fewer than ourselves, should find. No fruit of all our toil, and none appears. Will make us vile with ages yet to come. 145. For should we now strike truce, till Greece and Troy might number each her own, and were the Greeks distributed in bands, ten Greeks in each. Our banded decads should exceed so far. Their units. That all Troy could not supply one fifty. For every ten, a man, to fill us wine. So far the Achaeans, in my thought, surpass. The native Trojans. But in Troy are those. Who baffle much my purpose, aids derived. From other states, spear-armed auxiliars, firm one fifty-five. In the defense of Ilium's lofty towers. Nine years have passed us over, nine long years. Our ships are rotted, 
and our tackle marred. And all our wives and little ones at home. Sit watching our return, while this attempt 160. Hang still in doubt, for which that home we left. Accept ye then my counsel. Fly we swift. With all our fleet back to our native land. Hopeless of Troy, not yet to be subdued. So spake the king, whom all the concourse heard 165. With minds in tumult tossed. All, save the few. Partners of his intent. Commotion shook. The whole assembly, such as heaves the flood. Of the Icarian deep, when south and east. Burst forth together from the clouds of Jove. 170. And as when vehement the west wind falls. On standing corn mature, the loaded ears. Innumerable bow before the gale. So was the council shaken. With a shout. All flew toward the ships, appraised, the dust 175. Stood o'er them. Universal was the cry. Now clear the passages, strike down the props. Set every vessel free, launch, and away. Heaven rang with exclamation of the host. All homeward bent, and launching glad the fleet. 180. Then baffled fate had the Achaeans seen. Returning premature, but Juno thus. With admonition quick to Pallas spake. Unconquered daughter of Jove Aegis armed. Ah foul dishonor. Is it thus at last 185? That the Achaeans on the billows born. Shall seek again their country, leaving here. To be the vaunt of Ilium and her king. Helen of Argos, in whose cause the Greeks. Have numerous perished from their home remote? 190. Haste. Seek the male-armed multitude, by force. Detain them of thy soothing speech, ere yet. All launched their oary barks into the flood. She spake, nor did Minerva not comply. But darting swift from the Olympian heights, 195. Reached soon Achaia's fleet. There, she perceived. Prudent as Jove himself, Ulysses, firm. He stood. He touched not even with his hand. His sable bark, for sorrow whelmed his soul. The Athenian goddess Azure, eyed two hundred. Beside him stood, and thus the chief bespake. Laertes' noble son, for wiles renowned. Why seek ye, thus precipitate, your ships? Intend ye flight? And is it thus at last? That the Achaeans on the billows born, 205. Shall seek again their country, leaving here. To be the vaunt of Ilium and her king. Helen of Argos, in whose cause the Greeks. Have numerous perished from their home remote? Delay not. Rush into the throng, by force 210. Detain them of thy soothing speech, ere yet. All launched their oary barks into the flood. She ceased, whom by her voice Ulysses knew. Casting his mantle from him, which his friend. Eurybides the Ithacentian caught, 215. He ran. And in his course meeting the sun. Of Atreus, Agamemnon, from his hand. The everlasting scepter quick received. Which bearing, through Achaia's fleet he passed. What king soever, or distinguished Greek 220. He found, approaching to his side, in terms. Of gentle sort he stayed him. Sir, he cried. It is unseemly that a man renowned. As thou, should tremble. Go, resume the seat. Which thou hast left, and bid the people sit. 225. Thou know'st not clearly yet the monarch's mind. He proves us now, but soon he will chastise. All were not present, few of us have heard. His speech this day in council. Oh, beware. Lest in resentment of this hasty course 230. Irregular, he let his anger loose. Dread is the anger of a king. He reigns. By Jove's own ordinance, and is dear to Jove. But what plebeian base sower he heard. Stretching his throat to swell the general cry 235. He laid the scepter smartly on his back. With reprimand severe. Fellow, he said. Sit still. 
Hear others, thy superiors hear. For who art thou? A dastard and a drone. Of none account in council, or in arms.240. By no means may we all alike bear sway. At Ilium, such plurality of kings. Were evil. One suffices. One, to whom? The son of politic Saturn hath assigned. The scepter, and enforcement of the laws, 245. That he may rule us as a monarch ought. With such authority the troubled host. He swayed. They, quitting camp and fleet again. Rushed back to council, deafening was the sound. As when a billow of the boisterous deep 250. Some broad beach dashes, and the ocean roars. The host all seated, and the benches filled. Thersites only of loquacious tongue. Ungoverned, clamored mutinous, a wretch. Of utterance prompt, but in coarse phrase obscene 255. Deep learned alone, with which to slander kings. Might he but set the rabble in a roar. He cared not with what jest, of all from Greece. To Ilium sent, his country's chief reproach. Cross-eyed he was, and halting moved on legs 260. Ill-paired. His gibbous shoulders o'er his breast. Contracted, pinched it, to a peak his head. Was molded sharp, and sprinkled thin with hair. Of starveling length, flimsy and soft as down. Achilles and Ulysses had incur, D265. Most is aversion. Them he never spared. But now, imperial Agamemnon's self. In piercing accents stridulous he charged. With foul reproach. The Grecians with contempt. Listened, and indignation, while with voice 270. At highest pitch, he thus the monarch mocked. What wouldst thou now? Whereof is thy complaint? Now, Agamemnon? Thou hast filled thy tents. With treasure, and the Grecians, when they take. A city, choose the loveliest girls for thee.275. Is gold thy wish? More gold? A ransom brought. By some chief Trojan for his son's release. Whom I, or other valiant Greek may bind? Or wouldst thou yet a virgin, one, by right? Another's claim, but made by force thine own? 280. It was not well, great sir, that thou shouldst bring. A plague on the Achaeans, as of late. But come, my Grecian sisters, soldiers named. Unfitly, of a sex too soft for war. Come, let us homeward, let him here digest 285. What he shall gorge, alone, that he may learn. If our assistance profit him or not. For when he shamed Achilles, he disgraced. A chief far worthier than himself, whose prize. He now withholds. But Tush, Achilles lacks 290. Himself the spirit of a man. No gall. Hath he within him, or his hand long since. Had stopped that mouth, that it should scoff no more. Thus, mocking royal Agamemnon, spake. Thersites. Instant starting to his side. Noble Ulysses with indignant brows. Surveyed him, and him thus reproved severe. Thersites. Railer, peace. Think not thyself. Although thus eloquent, alone exempt. From obligation not to slander kings. 300. I deem thee most contemptible the worst. Of Agamemnon's followers to the war. Presume not then to take the names revered. Of sovereigns on thy sordid lips, to asperse. Their sacred character, and to appoint 305. The Greeks a time when they shall voyage home. How soon, how late, with what success at last. We shall return, we know not, but because. Achaia's heroes numerous spoils a lot. To Agamemnon, leader of the host, 310. Thou therefore from thy seat revilest the king. But mark me. If I find thee, as even now. Raving and foaming at the lips again. May never man behold Ulysses' head. On these my shoulders more, and may my son 315. Prove the begotten of another sire. 
if I not strip thee to that height of thine. As bare as thou wast born, and whip thee hence. Home to thy galley, snivelling like a boy. He ceased, and with his scepter on the back three twenty. And shoulders smote him. Writhing to and fro. He wept profuse, while many a bloody whelk. Protuberant beneath the scepter sprang. Awe quelled he sat, and from his visage mean. Deep sighing, wiped the rooms. It was no time three twenty five. For mirth, yet mirth illumined every face. And laughing, thus they spake. A thousand acts. Illustrious, both by well concerted plans. And prudent disposition of the host. Ulysses hath achieved, but this by far three thirty. Transcends his former praise, that he hath quelled. Such contumelious rhetoric profuse. The valiant talker shall not soon, we judge. Take liberties with royal names again. So spake the multitude. Then, stretching forth 335. The scepter, city spoiler chief, arose. Ulysses. Him beside, herald in form. Appeared Minerva. Silence she enjoined. To all, that all Achaia's sons might hear. Foremost and rearmost, and might weigh his words. Point 340. He then his counsel, prudent, thus proposed. Atrides. Monarch. The Achaeans seek. To make the ignominious above all. In sight of all mankind. None recollects. His promise more in steed famed Argos pledged, 345. Here to abide till Ilium walled to heaven. Should vanquished sink, and all her wealth be ours. No, now, like widowed women, or weak boys. They whimper to each other, wishing home. And home, I grant, to the afflicted soul 350. Seems pleasant. The poor seaman from his wife. One month detained, cheerless his ship and sad. Possesses, by the force of wintry blasts. And by the billows of the troubled deep. Fast locked in port. But us the ninth long year 355. Revolving, finds camped under Ilium still. I therefore blame not, if they mourn beside. Their sable barks, the Grecians. Yet the shame. That must attend us after absence long. Returning unsuccessful, who can bear? 360. Be patient, friends. Wait only till we learn. If Calchas truly prophesied, or not. For well we know, and I to all appeal. Whom fate hath not already snatched away. It seems but yesterday, or at the most 365. A day or two before, that when the ships. Were fraught for Priam, and the race of Troy. At Aulis met. And we beside the fount. With perfect hecatombs the gods adored. Beneath the plane tree, from whose root a stream 370. Ran crystal clear, there we beheld a sign. Wonderful in all eyes. A serpent huge. Tremendous spectacle. With crimson spots. His back all dappled, by Olympian Jove. Himself protruded, from the altar's foot 375. Slipped into light, and glided to the tree. There on the topmost bough, close covered sat. With foliage broad, eight sparrows, younglings all. Then newly feathered, with their dam, the ninth. The little ones lamenting shrill he gorged, 380. While, wheeling o'er his head, with screams the dam. Bewailed her darling brood. Her also next. Hovering and clamoring, he by the wing. Within his spiry folds drew, and devoured. All eaten thus, the nestlings in the dam, 385. The god who sent him, signalized him too. For him Saturnian Jove transformed to stone. We wondering stood, to see that strange portent. Intrude itself into our holy rites. When Calchas, instant, thus the sign explained, point 390. Why stand ye, Greeks, astonished? Ye behold. A prodigy by Jove himself produced. An omen, whose accomplishment indeed. Is distant, but whose fame shall never die. 
e'en as this serpent in your sight devour, d395. Eight youngling sparrows, with their dam, the ninth. So we nine years must war on yonder plain. And in the tenth, wide bulwarked Troy is ours. So spake the seer, and as he spake, is done. Wait, therefore, brave Achaeans. Go not hence four hundred. Till Priam's spacious city be your prize. He ceased, and such a shout ensued, that all. The hollow ships the deafening roar returned. Of acclamation, every voice the speech. Extolling of Ulysses, glorious chief.405. Then Nestor the Gerenian, warrior old. Arising, spake. And, by the gods, he said. Ye more resemble children inexpert. In war, than disciplined and prudent men. Where now are all your promises and vows, for ten? Councils, libations, right-hand covenants? Burn them, since all our occupation here. Is to debate and wrangle, whereof end. Or fruit though long we wait, shall none be found. But, sovereign, be not thou appalled. Be firm. 415. Relax not aught of thine accustomed sway. But set the battle forth as thou art wont. And if there be a Grecian, here and there. One, adverse to the general voice, let such. Wither alone. He shall not see his wish 420. Gratified, neither will we hence return. To Argos, ere events shall yet have proved. Jove's promise false or true. For when we climbed. Our gallant barks full charged with Ilium's fate. Saturnian Jove omnipotent, that day, 425. Omen propitious, thundered on the right. Let no man therefore pant for home, till each. Possess a Trojan spouse, and from her lips. Take sweet revenge for Helen's pangs of heart. Who then? What soldier languishes and sighs 430? To leave us? Let him dare to lay his hand. On his own vessel, and he dies the first. But here, O king, I shall suggest a course. Not trivial. Agamemnon. Sort the Greeks. By districts and by tribes, that tribe may tribe 435. Support, and each his fellow. This performed. And with consent of all, thou shalt discern. With ease what chief, what private man deserts. And who performs his part. The base, the brave. Such disposition made, shall both appear. 440. And thou shalt also know, if heaven or we. The gods, or our supineness, succor Troy. To whom Atrides, king of men, replied. Old chief. Thou passeest all Achaia's sons. In consultation, would to Jove our sire, 445. To Athenian Pallas, and Apollo. That I had ten such coadjutors, wise. As thou art, and the royal city soon. Of Priam, with her wealth, should all be ours. But me the son of Saturn, Jove supreme 450. Himself afflicts, who in contentious broils. Involves me, and in altercation vain. Thence all that wordy tempest for a girl. Achilles and myself between, and I. The fierce aggressor. Be that breach, but healed, 455. And Troy's reprieve thenceforth is at an end. Go, take refreshment now that we may march. Forth to our enemies. Let each wet well. His spear, brace well his shield, well feed his brisk. High-mettled horses, well survey and search 460. His chariot on all sides, that no defect. Disgrace his bright habiliments of war. So will we give the day from morn to eve. To dreadful battle. Pause there shall be none. Till night divide us. Every buckler's thong 465. Shall sweat on the toiled bosom, every hand. That shakes the spear shall ache, and every steed. Shall smoke that whirls the chariot o'er the plain. Wa well, then to whom I shall discover here. Loitering among the tents. Let him escape 470. My vengeance if he can. 
The vulture's maw. Shall have his carcass, and the dogs his bones. He spake. Whom all applauded with a shout. Loud as against some headland cliff the waves. Rolled by the stormy south o'er rocks that shoot 475. Afar into the deep, which in all winds. The flood still overspreads, blow whence they may. Arising, forth they rushed, among the ships. All scattered, smoke from every tent arose. The host their food preparing. Next, his god 480. Each man invoked, of the immortals him. Whom he preferred, with sacrifice and prayer. For safe escape from danger and from death. But Agamemnon to Saturnian Jove. Omnipotent, an ox of the fifth year 485. Full flesh devoted, and the princes called. Noblest of all the Grecians to his feast. First, Nestor with Idomeneus the king. Then either Ajax, and the son he called. Of Tydeus, with Ulysses sixth and last for ninety. Jove's peer in wisdom. Menelaus went. Heroic chief. Unbidden, for he knew. His brother's mind with weight of care oppressed. The oxen circling, and their hands with meal. Of consecration filled, the assembly stood for ninety-five. When Agamemnon thus his prayer preferred. Almighty Father. Glorious above all. Cloud girt, who dwellst in heaven thy throne sublime. Let not the sun go down, till Priam's roof. Fall flat into the flames, till I shall burn five hundred. His gates with fire. Till I shall hew away. His hacked and riven corslet from the breast. Of Hector, and till numerous chiefs, his friends. Around him, prone in dust, shall bite the ground. So prayed he, but with none effect, the god 505. Received his offering, but to double toil. Doomed them, and sorrow more than all the past. They then, the triturated barley grain. First duly sprinkling, the sharp steel infixed. Deep in the victim's neck reversed, then stripped D510. The carcass, and divided at their joint. The thighs. Which in the double call involved. They spread with slices crude, and burned with fire. Ascending fierce from billets sear and dry. The spitted entrails next they o'er the coals 515. Suspended held. The thighs with fire consumed. They gave to each his portion of the maw. Then slashed the remnant, pierced it with the spits. And managing with culinary skill. The roast, withdrew it from the spits again. 520. Thus, all their task accomplished, and the board. Set forth, they feasted, and were all sufficed. When neither hunger more nor thirst remained. Unsatisfied, Gerenian Nestor spake. Atrides. Agamemnon. King of men. 525. No longer waste we time in useless words. Nor to a distant hour postpone the work. To which heaven calls thee. Send thine heralds forth. Who shall convene the Achaeans at the fleet? That we, the chiefs assembled here, may range, 530. Together, the embattled multitude. And edge their spirits for immediate fight. He spake, nor Agamemnon not complied. At once he bade his clear-voiced heralds call. The Greeks to battle. They the summons loud 535. Gave forth, and at the sound the people thronged. Then Agamemnon and the kings of Greece. Dispatchful drew them into order just. With whom Minerva Azuride advanced. The inestimable Aegis on her arm, 540. Immortal, unobnoxious to decay. A hundred braids, close twisted, all of gold. Each valued at a hundred beeves, around. Dependent fringed it. She from side to side. Her eyes cerulean rolled, infusing thirst 545. Of battle endless into every breast. War won them now, war sweeter now to each. Then gales to waft them over ocean home. As when devouring flame some forest seas. On the high mountains, splendid from afar 550. 
The blaze appears, so, moving on the plain. The steel-clad host innumerous flashed to heaven. And as a multitude of fowls in flocks. Assembled various, geese, or cranes, or swans. Lidenacked, long hovering o'er Caster's banks 555. On wanton plumes, successive on the mead. A light at last. And with a clang so loud. That all the hollow veil of Asia's rings. In number such from ships and tents effused. They covered the Scamandrian plain, the earth 560. Rebellowed to the feet of steeds and men. They overspread Scamander's grassy vale. Myriads, as leaves, or as the flowers of spring. As in the hovel where the peasant milks. His kind in springtime, when his pails are filled, 565. Thick clouds of humming insects on the wing. Swarm all around him, so the Grecians swarmed. An unsummed multitude o'er all the plain. Bright armed. High crested, and a thirst for war. As goat herds separate their numerous flocks 570. With ease, though fed promiscuous, with like ease. Their leaders them on every side reduced. To martial order glorious. Among whom. Stood Agamemnon, with an eye like Jove's. To threaten or command, like Mars in girth, 575. And with the port of Neptune. As the bull. Conspicuous among all the herd appears. For he surpasses all, such Jove ordained. That day the son of Atreus, in the midst. Of heroes, eminent above them all. 580. Tell me, for ye are our heavenly, and beheld. A scene, whereof the faint report alone. Hath reached our ears, remote and ill-informed. Tell me, ye muses, under whom. Beneath. What chiefs of royal or of humbler note 585. Stood forth the embattled Greeks. The host at large. They were a multitude in number more. Then with ten tongues, and with ten mouths, each mouth. Made vocal with a trumpet's throat of brass. I might declare, unless the Olympian 9, 590. Jove's daughters, would the chronicle themselves. Indict. Of all assembled, under Troy. I will rehearse the captains and their fleets. Boeotia's sturdy sons Peneleus led. And Leotus, whose partners in command 595. Arcesilaus and Prothoner came. And Clonius. Them the dwellers on the rocks. Of Aulus followed, with the hardy clans. Of Hyri, Scoenos, Scolos, and the hills. Of Edeon, Thespia, Gria, and the plains six hundred. Of Michaelesus them, and Harma served. Elian, Erythri, Petion. Hyle them. Hesius and Ocalia, and the strength. Of Medion, Copi also in their train. Marched, with Eutresis and the mighty men six o five. Of Thisbe famed for doves. Nor pass unnamed. Whom Coronea, and the grassy land. Of Haliardus added to the war. Nor whom Plataea, nor whom Glissa bred. And Hypothebe, and thy sacred grove 610. To Neptune, dark on Chestus. Arn claims. A record next for her illustrious sons. Vine bearing Arn. Thou wast also there. Midiae, and thou Nyssa, nor be thine. Though last, Anthedon, a forgotten name. 615. These in Boeotia's fair and gallant fleet. Of fifty ships, each bearing o'er the waves. Thrice forty warriors, had arrived at Troy. In thirty ships deep laden with the brave. Aspaldon and Orchomenos had sent six twenty. Their chosen youth. Them ruled a noble pair. Sons of Astyache, she, lovely nymph. Received by stealth, on actor's stately roof. The embraces of a god, and bore to Mars. Twins like himself, Ascalaphus the bold, 625. And bold Iamanus, expert in arms. Beneath Epistrophus and Scedius, took. Their destined station on Boeotia's left. The brave Facentians, they in forty ships. 
from Cyparissus came, and from the rock 630. Of Python, and from Chrysa the Divine. From Anamoria, Dallas, Panopeus. And from Hyampolis, and from the banks. Of the Cephisus, sacred stream, and from. Lilia, seated at its fountainhead. 635. Next from beyond Eubius' happy isle. In forty ships conveyed, stood forth well armed. The Locrians, dwellers in Augea some. The pleasant, some of Opoius possessed. Some of Calieris, these Scarfa sent, 640. And Sinus those. From Bessa came the rest. From Tarfa, Thronius, and from the brink. Of loud Boagrius, Ajax them, the swift. Son of Oileus led, not such as he. From Telamon, big boned and lofty built, 645. But small of limb, and of an humbler crest. Yet he, competitor had none throughout. The Grecians of what land sower, for skill. In ushering to its mark the rapid lance. Elphinor brought, Chalcodon's mighty son, 650. The Eubians to the field. In forty ships. From Histria for her vintage famed. From Chalcis, from Eritrea, from the gates. Of maritime Cerinthus, from the heights. Of Dios rock built citadel sublime, 655. And from Charistus and from Styra came. His warlike multitudes. All named alike. Abantes, on whose shoulders fell behind. Their locks profuse, and they were eager all. To split the hauberk with the pointed spear. 660. Nor Athens had withheld her generous sons. The people of Erechtheus. Him of old. The teeming glebe produced, a wondrous birth. And Pallas reared him, her own unctuous fane. She made his habitation, where with bulls 665. The youth of Athens, and with slaughtered lambs. Her annual worship celebrate. Then led. Menestheus, whom, sage Nestor's self except. Thrice schooled in all events of human life. None rivaled ever in the just array 670. Of horse and man to battle. Fifty ships. Black proud, had borne them to the distant war. Ajax from Salamis twelve vessels brought. And where the Athenian band in phalanx stood. Marshaled compact, there stationed he his powers. 675. The men of Argos and Tirintha next. And of Hermione, that stands retired. With Asini, within her spacious bay. Of Epidorus, crowned with purple vines. And of Troazina, with the Achaean youth 680. Of Sibigurd Egina, and with thine. Mesita, and the dwellers on thy coast. Wave worn Ione. These all obeyed. The dauntless hero Diomede, whom served. Sthenelus, son of Capanius, a chief 685. Of deathless fame, his second in command. And godlike man, Euryalus, the son. Of King Mesistius, Talos' son, his third. But Diomede controlled them all, and him. Twice forty sable ships their leader owned. 690. Came Agamemnon with a hundred ships. Exulting in his powers, more numerous they. And more illustrious far than other chief. Could boast, whoever. Clad in burnished brass. And conscious of preeminence, he stood. 695. He drew his host from cities far renowned. Mycenae, and Corinthus, seat of wealth. Ornea, and Cleone bulwark strong. And lovely Eritheria. Sicyon, where? His seat of royal power held at the first seven hundred. Adrastus, Hyperesia, and the heights. Of Gonoessa. Aegeum, with the towns. That sprinkle all that far extended coast. Polini also and wide Hellas. With all their shores, were numbered in his train. 705. From hollow Lacedaemon's glen profound. From fair, Sparta, and from Messa, still. Resounding with the ringdove's amorous moan. From Brigia, from Augea, from the rocks. Of Los, from Amycla, 
Autolus, 710. And from the towers of Hellos. At whose foot? The surf of ocean falls, came sixty barks. With Menelaus. From the monarch's host. The royal brother ranged his own apart. And panted for revenge of Helen's wrongs, 715. And of her sighs and tears. From rank to rank. Conscious of dauntless might he passed, and sent. Into all hearts the fervor of his own. Gerenian Nestor in thrice thirty ships. Had brought his warriors, they from Pylos came, 720. From Blythe Arene, and from Thryos, built. Fast by the fords of Alpheus, and from Steep. And stately Epi. Their confederate powers. Sent Amphigenia, Cyparissa veiled. With broad redundance of funereal shades, 725. Telios and Helos, and of deathless fame. Dorian. In Dorian erst the muses met. Thrishan Thamiris, on his return. From Eurydice, Echolion chief, and hushed. His song forever, for he dared to vaunt 730. That he would pass in song even themselves. The muses, daughters of Jove Aegis armed. They therefore, by his boast incensed, the bard. Struck blind, and from his memory dashed severe. All traces of his once celestial strains. Point seven thirty five. Arcadia's sons, the dwellers at the foot of Mount Silene, where Epitus sleeps, entombed, a generation bold in fight, and warriors hand to hand, the valiant men of Phineas, of Orchomenos by flock seven forty, greys numberless, of ripe, Stratia, bleak, and Nisp, Mantinia city fair. Stymphalus and Parasia, and the youth of Tegia, royal agape nor these. And Seus' offspring, had in sixty ships 745. To Troy conducted. Numerous was the crew. And skilled in arms, which every vessel brought. And Agamemnon had with barks himself. Supplied them, for, of inland realms possessed. They little heeded maritime employs. 750. The dwellers in Buprasium, on the shores. Of pleasant Ellis, and in all the land. Mercenus and the Herminian plain between. The rock Alenian, and the Elysian fount. These all obeyed four chiefs, and galleys ten seven fifty five. Each chief commanded, with Epeans filled. Amphimachus and Thalpius governed these. This, son of Teatus, the other, sprung. From Eurydice, and both of Actor's house. Dior's, son of Amarincius, those seven sixty. Led on, and, for his godlike form renowned. Polyxenus was chieftain o'er the rest. Son of Agasthenes, Augea's son. Delicium, and her sister sacred isles. The Iconides, whose opposite aspect 765. Looks toward Elis o'er the curling waves. Sent forth their powers with medges at their head. Brave son of Phileus, warrior dear to Jove. Phileus in wrath, his father's house renounced. And to Delicium wandering, their abode. 770. Twice twenty ships had followed Medges forth. Ulysses led the Cephalenians bold. From Ithaca, and from the lofty woods. Of Neridus they came, and from the rocks. Of rude Egilipa. Cressilia these, 775. And these the Synthus owned, nor yet a few. From Samos, from Epirus joined their aid. And from the opposite Ionian shore. Them, wise as Jove himself, Ulysses led. In twelve fair ships, with crimson prows adorned. 780. From forty ships, Thoas, Andremon's son. Had landed his Aetolians. For extinct. Was Meliager, and extinct the house. Of Enus all, nor Enus self survived. To Thoas therefore had Aetolia fallen, 785. Him Olinos, Pylene, Chalcis served. With Pluro, and the rock bound Caledon. Idomeneus, spear practiced warrior, led. The numerous Cretans. In twice forty ships. He brought his powers to Troy. 
the warlike band 790. Of Gnosis, of Gortina walled around. Of Lictus, of Lycastus chalky white. Of Festus, of Miletus, with the youth. Of Ridius him obeyed. Nor these were all. But others from her hundred cities Crete 795. Sent forth, all whom Idomeneus the brave. Commanded, with Marians in arms. Dread as the god of battles blood and brood. Nine ships Lipolemus, Herculean born. For courage famed and for superior size eight hundred. Filled with his haughty Rhodians. They, in tribes. Divided, dwelt distinct. Julissus these. Those Lindus, and the rest the shining soil. Of white Camerus occupied. Him bore. To Hercules, what time he led the nymph 805. From Ephyre, and from Celia's banks. After full many a city laid in dust. Astiochia. In his father's house. Magnificent, Lipolemus spear famed. Had scarce upgrown to manhood's lusty prime 810. When he his father's hoary uncle slew. Lysimnius, branch of Mars. Then built he ships. And, pushing forth to sea, fled from the threats. Of the whole house of Hercules. Huge toil. And many woes he suffered, till at length 815. At Rhodes arriving, in three separate bands. He spread himself abroad, much was he loved. Of all commanding Jove, who blessed him there. And showered abundant riches on them all. Nereus of Sima, with three vessels came, 820. Nereus, Aglia's offspring, whom she bore. To Charopus the king, Nereus in form. The faultless son of Peleus' soul except. Loveliest of all the Grecians called to Troy. But he was heartless and his men were few.825. Nisiris, Casus, Crapathus, and Cos. Where reigned Eurypolis, with all the isles. Calidne named, under two valiant chiefs. Their troops disposed. Phidippus won, and won. His brother Antiphus, begotten both 830. By Thessalus, whom Hercules begot. In thirty ships they sought the shores of Troy. The warriors of Pelasgian Argos next. Of Uhlus, and Elope, and who held. Trechina, Thaya, and for women fair 835. Distinguished, Hellas, known by various names. Hellenes, Myrmidons, Achaeans, them. In fifty ships embarked, Achilles ruled. But these were deaf to the horse-throated war. For there was none to draw their battle forth 840. And give them just array. Close in his ships. Achilles, after loss of the bright-haired. Briseis, lay, resentful. Her obtained. Not without labor hard, and after sack. Of Thebes and of Lernessus, where he slew 845. Two mighty chiefs, sons of Ivinus both. Epistrophus and Mines, her he mourned. And for her sake self-prisoned in his fleet. And idle lay. Though soon to rise again. From Phylace, and from the flowery fields 850. Of Pyrrhus, a land to Ceres given. By consecration, and from Iton Green. Mother of flocks. From Antron by the sea. And from the grassy meads of Tellius, came. A people, whom while yet he lived, the brave 855. Protasileus led, but him the earth. Now covered dark and drear. A wife he left. To rend and phylace her bleeding cheeks. And an unfinished mansion. First he died. Of all the Greeks, for as he leaped to land 860. Foremost by far, a Dardan struck him dead. Nor had his troops, though filled with deep regret. No leader, than Podarses led, a chief. Like Mars in battle, brother of the slain. But younger born, and from Iphiclus sprung 865. Who sprang from Philicus the rich in flocks. But him Protasileus, as in years. So also in desert of arms excelled. Heroic, whom his host, although they saw. Podarses at their head, still justly mourned, 870. 
for he was fierce in battle, and at Troy. With forty sable-sided ships arrived. Eleven galleys, ferry on the lake. And Beeb, and Ialchus, and the Vale. Of Glaphery supplied with crews robust 875. Under Eumelus, him Alcestis, praised. For beauty above all her sisters fair. In Thessaly to King Admetus bore. Methwan, and Olizon's craggy coast. With Melibia and Thaumasia sent 880. Seven ships, their rowers were good archers all. And every vessel dipped into the wave. Her fifty oars. Them Philoctetes, skilled. To draw with sinewy arm the stubborn bow. Commanded, but he suffering anguish keen 885. Inflicted by a serpent's venomed tooth. Lay sick in Lemnos. Him the Grecians there. Had left sore wounded, but were destined soon. To call to dear remembrance whom they left. Meantime, though sorrowing for his sake, his troops ate ninety. Yet wanted not a chief. Them Medan ruled. Whom Rena to the far-famed conqueror bore. Oileus, fruit of their unsanctioned loves. From Tricca, from Ithome rough and rude. With rocks and glens, and from Echalia, town 895. Of Eurydice Echolion born, came forth. Their warlike youth by Podalirius led. And by Machaean, healers both expert. Of all disease. And thirty ships were theirs. The men of Orminus, and from beside nine hundred. The fountain Hyperia, from the tops. Of Chalky Titan, and Asteria's band. Them ruled Eurypolis, Evaemon's son. Illustrious, whom twice twenty ships obeyed. Orth, Jertone, Olusson White, 905. Argisa and Helwan, they their youth. Gave to control of Polypides, son. Undaunted of Pyrithoas, son of Jove. Him, to Pyrithoas, on the selfsame day. When he the centaurs punished and pursued 910. Sheer to Ethicae driven from Pelion's heights. The shaggy race, Hippodamia bore. Nor he alone them led. With him was joined. Leontius dauntless warrior, from the bold. Corona sprung, who Senus called his sire.915. Twice twenty ships awaited their command. Gunius from Cyphus twenty and two ships. Led forth. The Aeneans him obeyed. And the robust Peribi, warriors bold. And dwellers on Dodona's wintry brow.920. To these were joined who till the pleasant fields. Where Titeregius winds. The gentle flood. Pours into Peneus all his limpid stores. But with the silver eddied Peneus flows. Unmixed as oil, for Stygian is his stream, 925. And Styx is the inviolable oath. Last with his forty ships, Tenthredon's son. The active Prothes came. From the green banks. Of Peneus his magnesians far and near. He gathered, and from Pelion forest crowned, point nine thirty. These were the princes and the chiefs of Greece. Say, Muse, who most in personal desert. Excelled, and whose were the most warlike steeds. And of the noblest strain. Their hue, their age. Their height the same, swift as the winds of heaven 935. And passing far all others, were the Mares. Which drew Eumelus, on Pyrian hills. The heavenly archer of the silver bow. Apollo, bred them. But of men, the chief. Was Telamonian Ajax, while wrath, bound 940. Achilles lay, for he was worthier far. And more illustrious were the steeds which bore. The noble son of Peleus. But revenge. On Agamemnon leader of the host. Was all his thought, while in his gallant ships 945. Sharp keel to cut the foaming flood, he lay. Meantime, along the margin of the deep. His soldiers hurled the disc, or bent the bow. Or to its mark dispatched the quivering lance. Beside the chariots stood the unharnessed steeds 950. Cropping the lotus, or at leisure browsed. On celery wild, from watery freshes gleaned. 
beneath the shadow of the sheltering tent. The chariot stood, while they, the charioteers, roamed here and there the camp, their warlike lord 955, regretting sad and idle for his sake, as if a fire had burned along the ground. Such seemed their march, earth groaned their steps beneath. As when in Arimi, where fame reports. Typhoea stretched, the fires of angry Jove 960. Down darted, lashed the ground, so groaned the earth. Beneath them, for they traversed swift the plain. And now from Jove, with heavy tidings charged. Wind-footed Iris to the Trojans came. It was the time of council, when the throng 965. At Priam's gate assembled, young and old. Them, standing nigh, the messenger of heaven. Accosted with the voice of Priam's son. Polites. He, confiding in his speed. For sure deliverance, posted was abroad 970. On Isida's tomb, intent to watch. When the Achaean host should leave the fleet. The goddess in his form thus them addressed. O, oh, ancient monarch. Ever, evermore. Speaking, debating, as if all were peace, 975. I have seen many a bright embattled field. But never one so thronged as this today. For like the leaves, or like the sands they come. Swept by the winds, to gird the city round. But Hector. Chiefly the I shall exhort.980. In Priam's spacious city are allies. Collected numerous, and of nations wide. Disseminated various are the tongues. Let every chief his proper troop command. And marshal his own citizens to war. 985. She ceased, her Hector heard intelligent. And quick dissolved the council. All took arms. Wide flew the gates, forth rushed the multitude. Horsemen and foot, and boisterous stir arose. In front of Ilium, distant on the plain, 990. Clear all around from all obstruction, stands. An eminence high raised, by mortal men. Called Badiae, but the gods the tomb. Have named it of Marina swift in fight. Troy and her aides there set the battle forth.995. Huge Priamian Hector, fierce in arms. Led on the Trojans, with whom marched the most. And the most valiant, dexterous at the spear. Aeneas, on the hills of Idahim. The lovely Venus to Anchises bore one thousand. A goddess by a mortal man embraced. Led the Dardanians, but not he alone. Archilochus with him and Acamas. Stood forth, the offspring of Antenor, each. And well instructed in all forms of war.1005. Fast by the foot of Ida, where they drank. The limpid waters of Esipus, dwelt. The Trojans of Zelia. Rich were they. And led by Pandarus, Lycaon's son. Whom Phoebus self graced with the bow he bore.1010. Apesis, Adrestia, Terry Steep. And Petuia, them, Amphius clad. In mail thick woven, and Adrastus, ruled. They were the sons of the Percosian seer. Merops, expert in the soothsayer's art 1015. Above all other, he his sons forbade. The bloody fight, but disobedient they. Still sought it, for their destiny prevailed. The warriors of Percote, and who dwelt. In Praxis, in Arisba, city fair, 1020. In Cestus, in Abydus, marched behind. Princely herdicides, his tawny steeds. Strong built and tall, from Selcendi's bank. And from Arisba, had him born to Troy. Hippothus and Pilmus, branch of Mars, 1025. Both sons of Lethus the Pelasgian, they. Forth from Larissa for her fertile soil. Far famed, the spear expert Pelasgians brought. The Thracians, all whom Hellespont includes. Within the banks of his swift racing tide, 1030. Heroic Akamas and Pyrrhus led. Euphemus, offspring of Troezenus, son. Of Jove protected CEAs, was the chief. Whom the spear armed Siconian band obeyed. Peonia's archers followed to the field 1035. 
Perechnes, they from Amidon remote. Were drawn, where Axius winds, broad Axius, stream. Diffused delightful over all the vale. Pylomenes, a chief of giant might. From the entity for forest mules renowned 1040. Marched with his Paphlagonians, dwellers they. In Sesimus and in Cyterus were. And by the stream Parthenius. Cromna these. Sent forth, and those Egealis on the lip. And margin of the land, and some, the heights 1045. Of Erethene, rugged and abrupt. Epistrophus and odious from the land. Of Alibi, a region far remote. Where veins of silver wind, led to the field. The Halizonians. With the missions came 1050. Chromus their chief, and Enemus. Him skilled. In augury, but skilled in vain, his art. Saved not, but by Iacides the swift. With others in the Xanthus slain, he died. Ascanius, lovely youth, and Phorcus, led 1055. The Phrygians from Ascania far remote. Ardent for battle. The Meonian race. All those who at the foot of Molus dwelt. Mesthals and Antiphus, fraternal pair. Sons of Pylomenes commanded, both 1060. Of the Gygean lake in Lydia born. Amphimachus and Nasts led to fight. The Carians, people of a barbarous speech. With the Milesians, and the mountain race. Of wood-crowned Thyra, and who dwelt beside 1065. Meander, or on Michele sublime. Them led Amphimachus and Nasts, sons. Renowned of Namion. Like a simple girl. Came forth Amphimachus with gold bedight. But him his trappings from a waffle death 1070. Save not, when whirled beneath the bloody tide. To Peleus' stormy son his spoils he left. Sarpedon with the noble Glaucus led. Their warriors forth from farthest Lycia, where. Xanthus deep dimpled rolls his oozy tide. Point 1075. Book 3. Argument of the Third Book. The armies meet. Paris throws out a challenge to the Grecian princes. Menelaus accepts it. The terms of the combat are adjusted solemnly by Agamemnon on the part of Greece, and by Priam on the part of Troy. The combat ensues, in which Paris is vanquished, whom yet Venus rescues. Agamemnon demands from the Trojans a performance of the covenant. Book 3. Now marshaled all beneath their several chiefs. With deafening shouts, and with the clang of arms. The host of Troy advanced. Such clang is heard. Along the skies, when from incessant showers. Escaping, and from winter's cold, the cranes five. Take wing, and over ocean speed away. What to the land of dwarfs? Prepared they fly. For slaughter of the small Pygmean race. Not so the Greeks, they breathing valor came. But silent all, and all with faithful hearts ten. On succor mutual to the last, resolved. As when the south wind wraps the mountain top. In mist the shepherds dread, but to the thief. Then night itself more welcome, and the eye. Is bounded in its ken to a stone's cast. 15. Such from beneath their footsteps dun and dense. Up rose the dust, for swift they crossed the plain. When, host to host opposed, full nigh they stood. Then Alexander in the Trojan van. Advanced was seen, all beauteous as a god, twenty. His leopard skin, his falchion and his bow. Hung from his shoulder. Bright with heads of brass. He shook two spears, and challenged to the fight. The bravest argives there, defying all. Him, striding haughtily his host before twenty-five. When Menelaus saw, such joy he felt. As hunger pinched the lion feels, by chance. Conducted to some carcass huge, wild goat. Or antlered stag. Huntsmen and baying hounds. Disturb not him, he gorges in their sight. Point thirty. So Menelaus at the view rejoiced. Of lovely Alexander, for he hoped. His punishment at hand. At once, all armed. Down from his chariot to the ground he leaped. 
When godlike Paris him in front beheld thirty-five. Conspicuous, his heart smote him, and his fate. Avoiding, far within the lines he shrank. As one, who in some woodland height descrying. A serpent huge, with sudden start recoils. His limbs shake under him, with cautious step forty. He slow retires, fear blanches cold his cheeks. So beauteous Alexander at the sight. Of Atreus' son disheartened sore, the ranks. Of haughty Trojans entered deep again. Him Hector eyed, and thus rebuked severe point forty-five. Cursed Paris. Fair deceiver. Woman mad. I would to all in heaven that thou hadst died. Unborn, at least unmated. Happier far. Than here to have incurred this public shame. Well may the Grecians taunt, and laughing loud, fifty. Applaud the champion, slow indeed to fight. And pusillanimous, but wondrous fair. Wast thou as timid, tell me, when with those. Thy loved companions in that famed exploit. Thou didst consort with strangers, and convey fifty-five. From distant lands a warrior's beauteous bride. To be thy father's and his people's curse. Joy to our foes. But to thy self-reproach? Behold her husband. Darest thou not to face? The warlike prince? Now learn how brave a chief sixty. Thou hast defrauded of his blooming spouse. Thy lyre, thy locks, thy person, specious gifts. Of partial Venus, will avail thee not. Once mixed by Menelaus with the dust. But we are base ourselves, or long ago, sixty-five. For all thy numerous mischiefs, thou hadst slept. Secure beneath a coverlet of stone. Then godlike Alexander thus replied. O Hector, true in temper as the axe. Which in the shipwright's hand the naval plank seventy. Divides resistless, doubling all his force. Such is thy dauntless spirit whose reproach. Perforce I own, nor causeless nor unjust. Yet let the gracious gifts uncensured pass. Of golden Venus, man may not reject seventy-five. The glorious bounty by the gods bestowed. Nor follows their beneficence our choice. But if thy pleasure be that I engage. With Menelaus in decision fierce. Of desperate combat bid the host of Troy eighty. And bid the Grecians sit, then face to face. Commit us, in the vacant field between. To fight for Helen and for all her wealth. Whose strongest proves, and conquers, he, of her. And hers possessed shall bear them safe away, eighty-five. While ye, peace sworn and firm accord, shall dwell. At Troy, and these to Argos shall return. And to Achaia praised for women fair. He ceased, whom Hector heard with joy, he moved. Into the middle space, and with his spear ninety. Advanced athwart pushed back the Trojan van. And all stood fast. Meantime at him the Greeks. Discharged full volley, showering thick around. From bow and sling, when with a mighty voice. Thus Agamemnon, leader of the host.95. Argives. Be still, shoot not, ye sons of Greece. Hector bespeaks attention. Hear the chief. He said, at once the Grecians ceased to shoot. And all sat silent. Hector then began. Hear me, ye Trojans, and ye Greeks male armed, one hundred. While I shall publish in your ears the words. Of Alexander, author of our strife. Trojans, he bids, and Grecians on the field. Their arms dispose, while he, the hosts between. With warlike Menelaus shall in fight one o five. Contend for Helen, and for all her wealth. Whose strongest proves, and conquers, he, of her and hers possessed, shall bear them safe away. And oaths of amity shall bind the rest. He ceased, and all deep silence held, amazed, one ten. When valiant Menelaus thus began. Hear now me also, on whose aching heart. These woes have heaviest fallen. At last I hope. Decision near, Trojans and Greeks between. For ye have suffered in my quarrel much, one fifteen. 
and much by Paris, author of the war. Die he who must, and peace be to the rest. But ye shall hither bring two lambs, one white. The other black, this to the earth devote. That to the sun. We shall ourselves supply one twenty. A third for Jove. Then bring ye Priam forth. Himself to swear the covenant, for his sons. Are faithless, lest the oath of Jove be scorned. Young men are ever of unstable mind. But when an elder interferes, he views one twenty five. Future and past together, and ensures. The compact, to both parties, uninfringed. So Menelaus spake, and in all hearts. Awaken joyful hope that there should end. War's long calamities. Alighted each, one thirty. And drew his steeds into the lines. The field. Glittered with arms put off, and side by side. Ranged orderly, while the interrupted war. Stood front to front, small interval between. Then Hector to the city sent in haste one thirty-five. Two heralds for the lambs, and to invite. Priam, while Agamemnon, royal chief. Talthibius to the Grecian fleet dismissed. For a third lamb to Jove, nor he the voice. Of noble Agamemnon disobeyed. 140. Iris, ambassadress of heaven, the while. To Helen came. Laodice she seemed. Loveliest of all the daughters of the house. Of Priam, wedded to Antenor's son. King Helicon. Her she found within, 145. An ample web magnificent she wove. Inwrought with numerous conflicts for her sake. Beneath the hands of Mars endured by Greeks. Malarmed, and Trojans of equestrian fame. Swift Iris, at her side, her thus addressed. 150. Haste, dearest nymph. A wondrous sight behold. Greeks brazen mailed, and Trojans steed renowned. So lately on the cruel work of Mars. Intent and hot for mutual havoc, sit. Silent. The war hath paused, and on his shield 155. Each leans, his long spear planted at his side. Paris and Menelaus, warrior bold. With quivering lances shall contend for thee. And thou art his who conquers, his forever. So saying, the goddess into Helen's soul 160. Sweetest desire infused to see again. Her former lord, her parents, and her home. At once o'ermantled with her snowy veil. She started forth, and as she went let fall. A tender tear. Not unaccompanied 165. She went, but by two maidens of her train. Attended, Ethra, Pythius' daughter fair. And soft-eyed climbing. Their hasty steps. Conveyed them quickly to the Skian gate. Their Priam, Panthaus, Clitius, Lampus sat, 170. Thymides, Hystaean, branch of Mars. Antenor and Eucalagon the wise. All, elders of the people. Warriors erst. But idle now through age, yet of a voice. Still indefatigable as the fly, S-175. Which perched among the boughs sends forth at noon. Through all the grove his slender ditty sweet. Such sat those Trojan leaders on the tower. Who, soon as Helen on the steps they saw. In accents quick, but whispered, thus remarked point 180. Trojans and Grecians wage, with fair excuse. Long war for so much beauty. Oh, how like. In feature to the goddesses above. Pernicious loveliness. Ah, hence away. Resistless as thou art and all divine, 185. Nor leave a curse to us, and to our sons. So they among themselves, but Priam called. Fair Helen to his side. My daughter dear. Come, sit beside me. Thou shalt hence discern. Thy former lord, thy kindred, and thy friends. 190. I charge no blame on thee. The gods have caused. Not thou, this lamentable war to Troy. Name to me yon Achaean chief for bulk. Conspicuous, and for port. Taller indeed. 
I may perceive than he, but with these eyes 195. Saw never yet such dignity, and grace. Declare his name. Some royal chief he seems. To whom thus Helen, loveliest of her sex. My other sire. By me forever held. In reverence, and with filial fear beloved. 200. Oh that some cruel death had been my choice. Rather than to abandon, as I did. All joys domestic, matrimonial bliss. Brethren, dear daughter, and companions dear. A wanderer with thy son. Yet I alas. 205. Died not, and therefore now, live but to weep. But I resolve thee. Thou beholdst the son. Of Atreus, Agamemnon, mighty king. In arms heroic, gracious in the throne. And, though it shame me now to call him such, 210. By nuptial ties a brother once to me. Then him the ancient king admiring, said. O blessed Atrides, happy was thy birth. And thy lot glorious, whom this gallant host. So numerous, of the sons of Greece obey, 215. To vine famed Phrygia, in my days of youth. I journeyed, many Phrygians there I saw. Brave horsemen, and expert. They were the powers. Of Otreus and of Migdon, godlike chief. And on the banks of Sanger's stream encamped. 220. I marched among them, chosen in that war. Ally of Phrygia, and it was her day. Of conflict with the mandifying race. The Amazons. Yet multitudes like these. Thy bright eyed Greeks, I saw not even their. 225. The venerable king observing next. Ulysses, thus inquired. My child, declare. Him also. Shorter by the head he seems. Than Agamemnon, Atreus' mighty son. But shouldered broader, and of ampler chest, 230. He hath disposed his armor on the plain. But like a ram, himself the warrior ranks. Range is majestic. Like a ram full fleeced. By numerous sheep encompassed snowy white. To whom Jove's daughter Helen thus replied. 235. In him the son of old Laertes know. Ulysses, born in Ithaca the rude. But of a piercing wit and deeply wise. Then answer thus, Antenor sage returned. Princess thou hast described him, hither once 240. The noble Ithacon, on thy behalf. Ambassador with Menelaus, came. Beneath my roof, with hospitable fare. Friendly I entertained them. Seeing then. Occasion opportune, I closely mark D245. The genius and the talents of the chiefs. And this I noted well. That when they stood. Amid the assembled counselors of Troy. Then Menelaus his advantage showed. Who by the shoulders overtopped his friend. 250. But when both sat, Ulysses in his air. Had more of state and dignity than he. In the delivery of a speech addressed. To the full senate, Menelaus used. Few words, but to the matter, fitly ranged, 255. And with much sweetness uttered. For in loose. An idle play of ostentatious terms. He dealt not, thuff he were the younger man. But when the wise Ulysses from his seat. Had once arisen, he would his downcast eyes 260. So rivet on the earth, and with a hand. That seemed untutored in its use, so hold. His scepter, swaying it to neither side. That hadst thou seen him. Thou hadst thought him, sure. Some chafed and angry idiot, passion fixed. 265. Yet, when at length, the clear and mellow bass. Of his deep voice break forth, and he let fall. His chosen words like flakes of feathered snow. None then might match Ulysses, leisure, then. Found none to wonder at his noble form. 270. The third of whom the venerable king. Inquired, was Ajax the, Yonachaean tall. Whose head and shoulders tower above the rest. And of such bulk prodigious, who is he? Him answered Helen, 
loveliest of her sex. 275. A bulwark of the Greeks. In him thou sayest. Gigantic Ajax. Opposite appear. The Cretans, and among the chiefs of Crete. Stands, like a god, Idomeneus. Him oft. From Crete arrived, was Menelaus wont 280. To entertain. And others now I see. Achaeans, whom I could recall to mind. And give to each his name, but two brave youths. I yet discern not, for equestrian skill. One famed, and one a boxer never foiled, 285. My brothers, born of Leda, sons of Jove. Castor and Pollux. Either they abide. In lovely Sparta still, or if they came. Decline the fight, by my disgrace abashed. And the reproaches which have fallen on me. 290. She said, but they already slept and humed. In lace demon, in their native soil. And now the heralds, through the streets of Troy. Charged with the lambs, and with a goatskin filled. With heart exhilarating wine prepared. 295. For that divine solemnity, returned. Ideas in his hand a beaker bore. Resplendent, with its fellow cups of gold. And thus he summoned ancient Priam forth. Son of Laomedon, arise. The chiefs three hundred. Call thee, the chiefs of Ilium and of Greece. Descend into the plain. We strike a truce. And need thine oath to bind it. Paris fights. With warlike Menelaus for his spouse. Their spears decide the strife. The conqueror wins 305. Helen and all her treasures. We, thenceforth. Peace sworn and amity, shall dwell secure. In Troy, while they to Argos shall return. And to Achaia praised for women fair. He spake, and Priam, shuddering, bade his train 310. Prepare his steeds, they sedulous obeyed. First, Priam mounting, backward stretched the reins. Antenor, next, beside him sat, and through. The Scian gate they drove into the plain. Arriving at the hosts of Greece and Troy 315. They left the chariot, and proceeded both. Into the interval between the hosts. Then uprose Agamemnon, and uprose. Allwise Ulysses. Next, the heralds came. Conspicuous forward, expediting each 320. The ceremonial, they the beaker filled. With wine, and to the hands of all the kings. Ministered water. Agamemnon then. Drawing his dagger which he ever bore. A pendant to his heavy falchion's sheath, 325. Cut off the forelocks of the lambs, of which. The heralds gave to every Grecian chief. A portion, and to all the chiefs of Troy. Then Agamemnon raised his hands, and prayed. Jove, Father, who from Ida stretchest forth 330. Thine arm omnipotent, O Erling all. And thou, all-seeing and all-hearing sun. Ye rivers, and thou conscious earth, and ye. Who under earth on humankind avenge. Severe, the guilt of violated oaths. 335. Hear ye, and ratify what now we swear. Should Paris slay the hero amber-haired. My brother Menelaus, Helen's wealth. And Helen's self are his, and all our host. Shall home return to Greece. But should it chance 340. That Paris fall by Menelaus' hand. Then Troy shall render back what she detains. With such immersement as is meet, a sum. To be remembered in all future times. Which penalty should Priam and his sons 345. Not pay though Paris fall, then here in arms. I will contend for payment of the mulct. My due, till, satisfied, I close the war. He said, and with his ruthless steal the lambs. Stretched panting all, but soon they ceased to pant 350. For mortal was the stroke. Then drawing forth. Wine from the beaker, they with brimming cups. Hailed the immortal gods, and prayed again. And many a Grecian thus and Trojan spake. All glorious Jove, and ye the powers of heaven, 355. 
whoso shall violate this contract first. So be the brains of them and of their sons. Poured out, as we this wine pour on the earth. And may their wives bring forth to other men. So they, but them Jove heard not. Then arose 360. Priam, the son of Dardanus, and said. Hear me, ye Trojans and ye Greeks well armed. Hence back to windswept Ilium I return. Unable to sustain the sight, my son. With warlike Menelaus matched in arms.365. Jove knows, and the immortal gods, to whom. Of both, this day is preordained the last. So spake the godlike monarch, and disposed. Within the royal chariot all the lambs. Then, mounting, checked the reins, Antenor next 370. Ascended, and to Ilium both returned. First, Hector and Ulysses, noble chief. Measured the ground. Then taking lots for proof. Who of the combatants should foremost hurl? His spear, they shook them in a brazen cask, 375. Meantime the people raised their hands on high. And many a Grecian thus and Trojan prayed. Jove, father, who on Ida seated, sayest. And rulest all below, glorious in power. Of these two champions, to the drear abodes 380. Of aids him a point who furnished first. The cause of strife between them, and let peace. Oathbound, and amity unite the rest. So spake the hosts. Then Hector shook the lots. Majestic chief, turning his face aside. Point 385. Forth sprang the lot of Paris. They in ranks. Sat all, where stood the fiery steeds of each. And where his radiant arms lay on the field. Illustrious Alexander his bright arms. Put on, fair Helen's paramour. He clasped D390. His polished greaves with silver studs secured. His brother's corslet to his breast he bound. Lycaeans, apt to his own shape and size. And slung athwart his shoulders, bright embossed. His brazen sword. His massy buckler broad 395. He took, and to his graceful head his cask. Adjusted elegant, which, as he moved. Its bushy crest waved dreadful, last he seized. Well fitted to his gripe, his ponderous spear. Meantime the hero Menelaus made four hundred. Like preparation, and his arms put on. When thus, from all the multitude apart. Both combatants had armed, with eyes that flashed. Defiance, to the middle space they strode. Trojans and Greeks between. Astonishment 405. Seized all beholders. On the measured ground. Full near they stood, each brandishing on high. His massy spear, and each was fiery wroth. First, Alexander his long-shadowed spear. Sent forth, and on his smooth shield surface struck 410. The son of Atreus, but the brazen guard. Pierce not, for at the disc, with blunted point. Reflex, his ineffectual weapon stayed. Then Menelaus to the fight advanced. Impetuous, after prayer offered to Jove.415. King over all. Now grant me to avenge. My wrongs on Alexander, now subdue. The aggressor under me. That men unborn. May shudder at the thought of faith abused. And hospitality with rape repaid.420. He said, and brandishing his massy spear. Dismissed it. Through the burnished buckler broad. Of Priam's son the stormy weapon flew. Transpierced his costly hauberk and the vest. Ripped on his flank, but with a sideward bend 425. He baffled it, and balked the dreadful death. Then Menelaus drawing his bright blade. Swung it aloft, and on the hairy crest. Smote him, but shivered into fragments small. The falchion at the stroke fell from his hand. Point 430. Vexation filled him. To the spacious heavens. He looked, and with a voice of woe exclaimed. Jupiter. Of all powers by man adored. To me most adverse. Confident I hoped. Revenge for Paris treason, 
but my sword 435. Is shivered, and I sped my spear in vain. So saying, he sprang on him, and his long crest. Seized fast, then, turning, drew him by that hold. Toward the Grecian host. The broidered band. That underbraced his helmet at the chin, for forty. Strained to his smooth neck with a ceaseless force. Chalked him. And now had Menelaus won. Deathless renown, dragging him off the field. But Venus, foam sprung goddess, feeling quick. His peril imminent, snapped short the brace 445. Though stubborn, by a slaughtered ox supplied. And the void helmet followed as he pulled. That prized the hero, whirling it aloft. Threw to his Greeks, who caught it and secured. Then with vindictive strides he rushed again 450. On Paris, spear in hand. But him involved. In mist opaque Venus with ease divine. Snatched thence, and in his chamber placed him, filled. With sense odorous, spirit soothing sweets. Nor stayed the goddess, but at once in quest 455. Of Helen went. Her on a lofty tower. She found, where many a damsel stood of Troy. And twitched her fragrant robe. In form she seemed. An ancient matron, who, while Helen dwelt. In Lacedaemon, her unsullied will 460. Dressed for her, faithfulest of all her train. Like her disguise the goddess thus began. Haste, Paris calls thee, on his sculptured couch. Sparkling alike his looks and his attire. He waits thy wished return. Thou wouldst not dream 465. That he had fought. He rather seems prepared. For dance, or after dance, for soft repose. So saying, she tumult raised in Helen's mind. Yet soon as by her symmetry of neck. By her love-kindling breasts and luminous eyes 470. She knew the goddess, her she thus bespake. Ah whence, deceitful deity! Thy wish! Now to ensnare me? Wouldst thou lure me, say? To some fair city of Meonian name? Or Phrygian, more remote from Sparta still? 475. Hast thou some human favorite also there? Is it because Atrides hath prevailed? To vanquish Paris, and would bear me home. Unworthy as I am, that thou attempt'st. Again to cheat me? Go thyself, sit thou 480. Beside him, for his sake renounce the skies. Watch him, weep for him. Till at length his wife. He deign to make thee, or perchance his slave. I go not, now to go with shame indeed. To dress his couch, nor will I be the jest 485. Of all my sex in Ilium. Oh! My griefs. Are infinite, and more than I can bear. To whom, the foam-sprung goddess, thus incensed. Ah, wretch! Provoke not me. Lest in my wrath. Abandoning thee, I not hate thee less 490. Then now I fondly love thee, and beget. Such detestation of thee in all hearts. Grecian and Trojan, that thou die abhorred. The goddess ceased. Jove's daughter, Helen, feared. And, in her lucid veil close wrapped around, for ninety-five. Silent retired, of all those Trojan dames. Unseen, and Venus led, herself, the way. Soon then as Alexander's fair abode. They reached, her maidens quick their tasks resumed. And she to her own chamber lofty roof D-500. Ascended, loveliest of her sex. A seat. For Helen, daughter of Jove Aegis armed. To Paris opposite, the queen of smiles. Herself disposed, but with averted eyes. She sat before him, and him keen reproached. Point five o five. Thou hast escaped. Ah, would that thou hadst died. By that heroic arm, mine husband's erst. Thou once didst vaunt thee in address and strength. Superior. Go then, challenge yet again. The warlike Manilius forth in fight. Point five ten. But hold. The hero of the amber locks. 
provoke no more so rashly, less the point. Of his victorious spear soon stretch thee dead. She ended, to whom Paris thus replied. Ah Helen, wound me not with taunts severe. 515. Me, Manilius, by Minerva's aid. Half vanquished now, who may hereafter, him. We also have our gods. But let us love. For never since the day when the eye bore. From pleasant Lacedaemon o'er the waves 520. To Crany's fair isle, and first enjoyed. Thy beauty, loved I as I love thee now. Or felt such sweetness of intense desire. He spake, and sought his bed, whom followed soon. Jove's daughter, reconciled to his embrace. 525. But Menelaus like a lion ranged. The multitude, inquiring far and near. For Paris lost. Yet neither Trojan him. Nor friend of Troy could show, whom, else, through love. None had concealed, for him as death itself 530. All hated, but his going none had seen. Amidst them all then spake the king of men. Trojans, and Dardans, and allies of Troy. The warlike Menelaus hath prevailed. As is most plain. Now therefore bring ye forth 535. Helen with all her treasures, also bring. Such large immersement as is meet, a sum. To be remembered in all future times. So spake Atrides, and Achaia's host. With loud applause confirmed the monarch's claim. 540. Book 4. Argument of the Fourth Book. In a council of the gods, a dispute arises between Jupiter and Juno, which is at last compromised, Jove consenting to dispatch Minerva with a charge to incite some Trojan to a violation of the truce. Minerva descends for that purpose, and in the form of Laodicus, a son of Priam, exhorts Pandarus to shoot at Menelaus, and succeeds. Menelaus is wounded, and Agamemnon having consigned him to the care of Machaon, goes forth to perform the duties of commander-in-chief, in the encouragement of his host to battle. The battle begins. Book 4. Now, on the golden floor of Jove's abode. The gods all sat consulting, he be them. Graceful, with nectar served. They pledging each. His next, alternate quaffed from cups of gold. And at their ease reclined, looked down on Troy, five. When, sudden, Jove essayed by piercing speech. Invidious, to enkindle Juno's ire. Two goddesses on Menelaus' part. Confederates stand, Juno in Argos known. Pallas in Alalcamine, yet they ten. Sequestered sit, look on, and are amused. Not so smile loving Venus. She, beside. Her champion stationed, saves him from his fate. And at this moment, by her aid, he lives. But now, since victory hath proved the lot fifteen. Of warlike Menelaus, weigh ye well. The matter. Shall we yet the ruinous strife? Prolong between the nations, or consent? To give them peace? Should peace your preference win? And prove alike acceptable to all, twenty. Stand Ilium, and let Menelaus bear. Helen of Argos back to Greece again. He ended. Juno and Minerva heard. Low murmuring deep disgust, for side by side. They forging sat calamity to Troy.25. Minerva threw displeasure against Jove. Not uttered, for with rage her bosom boiled. But Juno checked not hers, who thus replied. What word hath passed thy lips, Jove most severe? How? Wouldst thou render fruitless all my pains, thirty? The sweat that I have poured? My steeds themselves. Have fainted while I gathered Greece in arms. For punishment of Priam and his sons. Do it. But small thy praise shall be in heaven. Then her the thunderer answered sore displeased. Point thirty five. Ah, shameless. How have Priam and his sons so much transgressed against thee that thou burnst with ceaseless rage to ruin populous Troy? Go, make thine entrance at her lofty gates. Priam and all his house, and all his host forty. Alive devour, 
then, haply, thou wilt rest. Do even as thou wilt, that this dispute live and not between us a consuming fire. Forever. But attend. Mark well the word. When I shall also doom in future time forty-five. Some city to destruction, dear to thee. Oppose me not, but give my fury way. As I give way to thine, not pleased myself. Yet not unsatisfied, so thou be pleased. Four of all cities of the sons of men, fifty. And which the sun and stars from heaven behold. Me sacred Troy most pleases, Priam me. Most, and the people of the warrior king. Nor without cause. They feed mine altar well. Libation there, and steam of savory sent fifty-five. Fail not, the tribute which by lot is ours. Him answered, then, the goddess ample-eyed. Majestic Juno, three fair cities me. Of all the earth, most interest and engage. Mycenae for magnificence renowned, sixty. Argos, and Sparta. Them, when next thy wrath. Shall be inflamed against them, lay thou waste. I will not interpose on their behalf. Thou shalt not hear me murmur, what avail. Complaint or force against thy matchless arm? 65. Yet were it most unmeet that even I should toil in vain, I also boast a birth. Celestial, Saturn deeply wise, thy sire is also mine, our origin is one. The I acknowledge sovereign, yet account seventy. Myself entitled by a twofold claim to veneration both from gods and men. The daughter of Jove's sire, and spouse of Jove. Concession mutual therefore both thyself. Befits in me, whom when the gods perceive seventy-five. Disposed to peace, they also shall accord. Come then. To yon dread field dispatch in haste. Minerva, with command that she incite. The Trojans first to violate their oath. By some fresh insult on the exulting Greeks.80. So Juno, nor the sire of all refused. But in winged accents thus to Pallas spake. Begone, swift fly to yonder field, in sight. The Trojans first to violate their oath. By some fresh insult on the exulting Greeks. 85. The goddess heard, and what she wished, enjoined. Down darted swift from the Olympian heights. Inform a meteor, such as from his hand. Not seldom Jove dismisses, beaming bright. And breaking into stars, an omen sent ninety. To mariners. Or to some numerous host. Such Pallas seemed, and swift descending, dropped. Full in the midst between them. They with awe. That sign portentous and with wonder viewed. Achaeans both and Trojans, and his next ninety-five. The soldier thus bespake. Now either war. And dire hostility again shall flame. Or Jove now gives us peace. Both are from Jove. So spake the soldiery, but she the form. Taking of brave Laodicus, the son one hundred. Of old Antenor, throughout all the ranks. Sought godlike Pandarus. Ere long she found. The valiant son illustrious of Lycaon. Standing encompassed by his dauntless troops. Broad shielded warriors, from Esipus stream 105. His followers, to his side the goddess came. And in winged accents ardent him bespake. Brave offspring of Lycaon, is there hope? That thou wilt hear my counsel? Darest thou slip? A shaft at Menelaus? Much renown 110. Thou shalt and thanks from all the Trojans win. But most of all, from Paris, Prince of Troy. From him illustrious gifts thou shalt receive. Doubtless, when Menelaus he shall see. The martial son of Atreus by a shaft 115. Subdued of thine, placed on his funeral pile. Come. Shoot at Menelaus, glorious chief. But vow to Lycian Phoebus renowned. A hecatome, all firstlings of the flock. To fair Zelia's walls once safe restored. Point one twenty. So Pallas spake, to whom infatuate he. Listening, 
unkissed at once his polished bow. That bow, the laden brows of a wild goat. Salacious had supplied, him on a day. Forth issuing from his cave, in ambush placed one twenty-five. He wounded with an arrow to his breast. Dispatched, and on the rock supine he fell. Each horn had from his head tall growth attained. Full sixteen palms, them shaven smooth the smith. Had aptly joined, and tipped their points with gold. One hundred and thirty. That bow he strung, then, stooping, planted firm. The nether horn, his comrades bold the while. Screening him close with shields, lest ere the prince. Were stricken, Menelaus brave in arms. The Greeks with fierce assault should interpose. 135. He raised his quiver's lid, he chose a dart. Unflown, full-fledged, and barbed with pangs of death. He lodged in haste the arrow on the string. And vowed to Lycian Phoebus Baranound. A hecatome, all firstlings of the flock, 140. To fair Zelia's walls once safe restored. Compressing next nerve and notched arrowhead. He drew back both together, to his pap. Drew home the nerve, the barb home to his bow. And when the horn was curved to a wide arch, 145. He twanged it. Whizzed the bowstring, and the reed. Leaped off, impatient for the distant throng. The, Menelaus, then the blessed gods. Forget not, palace huntress of the spoil. Thy guardian then, baffled the cruel dart. 150. Far as a mother wafts the fly aside. That haunts her slumbering babe, so far she drove. Its course aslant, directing it herself against the golden clasps that joined his belt. For there the doubled hauberk interposed. 155. The bitter arrow plunged into his belt. It pierced his broidered belt, stood fixed within. His twisted hauberk, nor the interior quilt. Though penetrable least to arrow points. And his best guard, withheld it, but it passed D-160. That also, and the hero's skin inscribed. Quick flowed a sable current from the wound. As when a carrion or meonian maid. In purple's ivory ordained to grace. The cheek of martial steed. Safe stored it lies, 165. By many a chief desired, but proves at last. The stately trapping of some prince, the pride. Of his high pampered steed, nor less his own. Such, Menelaus, seemed thy shapely thighs. Thy legs, thy feet, stained with thy trickling blood. Point one seventy. Shuddered King Agamemnon when he saw the blood fast trickling from the wound, nor less. Shuddered himself the bleeding warrior bold. But neck and barb observing from the flesh. Extant, he gathered heart, and lived again. Point one seventy five. The royal Agamemnon, sighing, grasped the hand of Menelaus, and while all their followers sight around them, thus began. I swore thy death, my brother, when I swore. This truce, and set thee forth in sight of Greeks 180. And Trojans, our sole champion, for the foe. Hath trodden underfoot his sacred oath. And stained it with thy blood. But not in vain. The truce was ratified, the blood of lambs. Poured forth, libation made, and right hands join D-185. In holy confidence. The wrath of Jove. May sleep, but will not always, they shall pay. Dear penalty. Their own obnoxious heads. Shall be the mulked, their children and their wives. For this I know, know surely, that a day 190. Shall come, when Ilium, when the warlike king. Of Ilium and his host shall perish all. Saturnian Jove high-throned, dwelling in heaven. Resentful of this outrage, then shall shake. His storm-clad aegis over them. He will, 195. I speak no fable. Time shall prove me true. But, O oh my Menelaus, dire distress. Awaits me, if thy close of life be come. And thou must die. Then ignominy foul shall hunt me back to Argos long desired. 
200. For then all here will recollect their home. And, hope abandoning, will Helen yield. To be the boast of Priam, and of Troy. So shall our toils be vain, and while thy bones. Shall waste these clods beneath, Troy's haughty sons 205. The tomb of Menelaus glory crowned. Insulting barbarous, shall scoff at me. So may Atrides, shall they say, perform. His anger still as he performed it here. Whither he led an unsuccessful host, 210. Whence he hath sailed again without the spoils. And where he left his brother's bones to rot. So shall the Trojan speak. Then open earth. Her mouth, and hide me in her deepest gulfs. But him, the hero of the Golden Locks 215. Thus cheered. My brother, fear not, nor infect. With fear the Grecians, the sharp pointed reed. Hath touched no vital part. The broidered zone. The hauberk, and the tough interior quilt. Work of the armor, its force repressed. 220. Him answered Agamemnon, king of men. So be it, brother. But the hand of one. Skillful to heal shall visit and shall dress. The wound with drugs of pain assuaging power. He ended, and his noble herald, next 225. Bespake, tall Phibius. Haste, call hither quick. The son of Aesculapius, leech renowned. The prince Machaean. Bid him fly to attend. The warlike chieftain Menelaus. Him. Some archer, either Lycian or of Troy, 230. A dexterous one, hath stricken with a shaft. To his own glory, and to our distress. He spake, nor him the herald disobeyed. But through the Greeks bright armed his course began. The hero seeking earnest on all sides 235. Machaean. Him, ere long, he stationed saw. Amid the shielded ranks of his brave band. From steed famed Trica drawn, and at his side. With accents ardor winged, him thus addressed. Haste, Asclepiades. The king of men 240. Calls thee. Delay not. Thou must visit quick. Brave Menelaus, Atreus' son, for him. Some archer, either Lycian or of Troy. A dexterous one, hath stricken with a shaft. To his own glory, and to our distress. 245. So saying, he roused Machaean, who his course. Through the wide host began. Arriving soon. Where wounded Menelaus stood, while all. The bravest of Achaia's host around. The godlike hero pressed, he strove at once two fifty. To draw the arrow from his cincture forth. But, drawing, bent the barbs. He therefore loosed. His broidered belt, his hauberk and his quilt. Work of the armor, and laying bare. His body where the bitter shaft had plow, d-255. His flesh, he sucked the wound, then spread it o'er with drugs of balmy power. Given on a time. For friendship's sake by Chiron to his sire. While Menelaus thus the cares engrossed. Of all those chiefs, the shielded powers of Troy 260. Gone move toward them, and the Greeks again. Put on their armor, mindful of the fight. Then hadst thou not great Agamemnon seen. Slumbering, or trembling, or averse from war. But Arden to begin his glorious task. 265. His steeds, and his bright chariot brass inlaid. He left. The snorting steeds Eurymedon. Offspring of Ptolemy Pyrides. Detained apart, for him he strict enjoined. Attendance near, lest weariness of limbs. 270. Should seize him marshalling his numerous host. So forth he went, and through the files on foot. Proceeding, where the warrior Greeks he saw. Alert, he roused them by his words the more. Argives. Abate no spark of all your fire. 275. Jove will not prosper traitors. Them who first. Transgress the truce the vultures shall devour. But we, their city taken, shall their wives. Lead captive, and their children home to Greece. 
so cheered he them. But whom he saw supine, 280. Or in the rugged work of war remiss. In terms of anger them he stern rebuked. O Greeks! The shame of Argos! Arrow doomed! Blush ye not? Wherefore stand ye thus aghast? Like fawns which wearied after scouring wide 285. The champion, gaze and pant, and can no more? Senseless like them ye stand, nor seek the fight. Is it your purpose patient here to wait? Till Troy invade your vessels on the shore. Of the grey deep, that ye may trial make 290. Of Jove, if he will prove, himself, your shield. Thus, in discharge of his high office, passed. A trides through the ranks, and now arrived. Where, hardy chief? Idomeneus in front. Of his bold Cretan stood, stout as a boar 295. The van he occupied, while in the rear. Marians harangued the most remote. Them so prepared the king of men beheld. With joyful heart, and thus in courteous terms. Instant the brave Idomeneus addressed point 300. The fighting, feasting, howsoe'er employed. I most respect, Idomeneus, of all. The well horse deny. For when the chiefs of Argos, banqueting, their beakers charge. With rosy wine the honorable mead 305. Of valor, thou alone of all the Greeks. Drinks not by measure. No, thy goblet stands. Replenished still, and like myself thou knowst. No rule or bound, save what thy choice prescribes. March. Seek the foe. Fight now as heretofore, 310. To whom Idomeneus of Crete replied. Atrides. All the friendship and the love. Which I have promised will I well perform. Go, animate the rest, chief after chief. Of the Achaeans, that the fight begin point 315. For Troy has scattered to the winds all faith. All conscience. And for such her treachery foul shall have large recompense of death and wa. He said, whom Agamemnon at his heart. Exulting, passed, and in his progress came 320. Where stood each Ajax? Them he found prepared. With all their cloud of infantry behind. As when the goat herd on some rocky point. Advanced, a cloud seas wafted o'er the deep. By western gales, and rolling slow along, 325. To him, who stands remote, pitch black it seems. And comes with tempest charged. He at the sight. Shuddering, his flock compels into a cave. So move the gloomy phalanx, rough with spears. And dense with shields of youthful warriors bold 330. Close following either Ajax to the fight. Them also, pleased, the king of men beheld. And in winged accents hailed them as he passed. Brave leaders of the mail-clad host of Greece. I move not you to duty, ye yourselves 335. Move others, and no less in need from me. Jove, Pallas, and Apollo. Were but all. Courageous as yourselves, soon Priam's towers. Should totter, and his Ilium stormed and sacked. By our victorious bands, stoop to the dust. 340. He ceased, and still proceeding, next arrived. Where stood the Pylian orator, his band. Marshalling under all their leaders bold. Alaster, Chromius, Pelagon the Vast. Haman the Prince, and Bias, Marshal Chief. 345. Chariot and horse he stationed in the front. His numerous infantry, a strong reserve. Right valiant, in the rear, the worst, and those in whom he trusted least, he drove between. That such through mere necessity might act. 350. First to his charioteers he gave in charge. Their duty, bade them rein their horses hard. Shunning confusion. Let no warrior, vain. And overweening of his strength or skill. Start from his rank to dare the fight alone, 355. Or fall behind it, weakening whom he leaves. And if, 
dismounted from his own, he climb. Another's chariot, let him not affect. Perverse the reins, but let him stand, his spear. Advancing firm, far better so employed.360. Such was the discipline, in ancient times. Of our forefathers. By these rules they fought. Successful, and laid many a city low. So counseled them the venerable chief. Long-time expert in arms, him also saw 365. King Agamemnon with delight, and said. Old chief. Ah, how I wish, that thy firm heart. Were but supported by as firm a knee. But time unhinges all. Oh, that some youth. Had thine old age, and thou wast young again, 370. To whom the valiant Nestor thus replied. Atrides, I could also ardent wish. That I were now robust as when I struck. Brave Europhalian breathless to the ground. But never all their gifts the gods confer 375. On man at once. If then I had the force. Of youth, I suffer now the effects of age. Yet ancient as I am, I will be seen. Still mingling with the charioteers, still prompt. To give them counsel, for to counsel you 380. Is the old warrior's province. Let the green. In years, my juniors, unimpaired by time. Push with the lance, for they have strength to boast. So he, whom Agamemnon joyful heard. And passing thence, the son of Petios found 385. Menestheus, foremost in equestrian fame. Among the brave Athenians, near to him. Ulysses held his station, and at hand. The Cephallenians stood, hardy and bold. For rumor none of the approaching fight 390. Them yet had reached, so recent had the stir. Arisen in either host. They, therefore, watched. Till the example of some other band. Marching, should prompt them to begin the fight. But Agamemnon, thus, the king of men 395. Them seeing, sudden and severe reproved. Menestheus, son of Petios prince renowned. And thou, deviser of all evil wiles. Adept in artifice. Why stand ye here? Appalled? Why wait ye on this distant spot four hundred? Till others move? I might expect from you. More readiness to meet the burning war. Whom foremost I invite of all to share. The banquet, when the princes feast with me. There ye are prompt. Ye find it pleasant there four o five. To eat your savory food, and quaff your wine. Delicious till satiety ensue. But here you could be well content to stand. Spectators only, while ten Grecian troops. Should wage before you the wide-wasting war. 410. To whom Ulysses, with resentful tone. Dark frowning, thus replied. What words are these? Which have escaped thy lips, and for what cause? Atrides, hast thou called me slow to fight? When we of Greece shall in sharp contest clash 415. With you steed tamer Trojans, mark me then. Then thou shalt see, if the concerns of war. So nearly touch thee, and thou so incline. The father of Telemachus, engaged. Among the foremost Trojans. But thy speech 420. Was light as is the wind, and rashly made. When him thus moved he saw, the monarch smiled. Complacent, and in gentler terms replied. Laertes noble son, four wiles renowned. Short reprimand and exhortation short 425. Suffice for thee, nor did I purpose more. For I have known thee long, that thou art one. Of kindest nature, and so much my friend. That we have both one heart. Go therefore thou. Lead on, and if a word have fallen amiss, for thirty. We will hereafter mend it, and may heaven. Obliterate in thine heart its whole effect. He ceased, and ranging still along the line. The son of Tydeus, Diomede, perceived. Heroic chief, by chariots all around 435. Environed, and by steeds, at sight of whom. Stood Sthenelus, the son of Capenus. 
Him also, Agamemnon, king of men. In accents of asperity reproved. Ah, son of Tydeus, chief of dauntless heart 440. And of equestrian fame. Why standest thou? Appalled, and peering through the walks of war? So did not Tydeus. In the foremost fight. His favorite station was, as they affirm. Who witnessed his exploits, I never saw 445. Or met him, but by popular report. He was the bravest warrior of his day. Yet came he once, but not in hostile sort. To fair Mycenae, by the godlike prince. Attended, Polynices, at what time 450. The host was called together, and the siege. Was purposed of the sacred city Thebes. Earnest they sued for an auxiliar band. Which we had gladly granted, but that Jove. By unpropitious tokens interfered. 455. So forth they went, and on the reedy banks. Arriving of Asopus, there thy sire. By designation of the Greeks was sent. Ambassador, and entered Thebes. He found. In Idiocles' palace numerous guests for sixty. The sons of Cadmus feasting, among whom. Although a solitary stranger, stood. Thy father without fear, and challenged forth. Their best to cope with him in manly games. Them Tydeus vanquished easily, such aid 465. Pallas vouchsafed him. Then the spur-armed race. Of Cadmus was incensed, and fifty youths. In ambush close expected his return. Them, Lycophon's obstinate in fight. Son of Autophonus, and Mian, son 470. Of Haman, chief of godlike stature, led. Those also Tydeus slew. Mian except. Whom, warned from heaven, he spared, and sent him home. With tidings of the rest, he slew them all. Such was Aetolian Tydeus, who begot 475. A son in speech is better, not in arms. He ended, and his sovereign's awful voice. Tydides reverencing, not replied. But thus the son of glorious Capenius. Atrides, conscious of the truth, speak truth.480. We with our sires compared, superior praise. Claim justly. We, confiding in the aid. Of Jove, and in propitious signs from heaven. Led to the city consecrate to Mars. Our little host, inferior far to theirs, 485. And took seven gated Thebes, under whose walls. Our fathers by their own imprudence fell. Their glory, then, match never more with ours. He spake, whom with a frowning brow the brave. Tydides answered. Stenelus, my friend, 490. I give thee counsel. Mark it. Hold thy peace. If Agamemnon, who hath charge of all, excite his well-appointed host to war, he hath no blame from me. For should the Greeks her people vanquished, win imperial Troy for ninety-five. The glory shall be his. Or, if his host. O'er power D in battle perish, his the shame. Come, therefore, be it ours to rouse at once. To action all the fury of our might. He said, and from his chariot to the plain five hundred. Leaped ardent. Rang the armor on the breast. Of the advancing chief the boldest heart. Had felt a motion, startled at the sound. As when the waves by Zephyrus upheaved. Crowd fast toward some sounding shore, at first 505. On the broad bosom of the deep their heads. They curl on high, then breaking on the land. Thunder, and o'er the rocks that breast the flood. Born turgid. Scatter far the showery spray. So moved the Greek successive, rank by rank, five ten. And phalanx after phalanx, every chief. His loud command proclaiming, while the rest. As voice in all those thousands none had been. Heard mute. And, in resplendent armor clad. With martial order terrible advanced point five fifteen. Not so the Trojans came. As sheep, the flock. Of some rich man, 
by thousands in his court. Penned close at milking time, incessant bleat. Loud answering all their bleeding lambs without. Such din from Ilium's widespread host arose. 520. Nor was their shout, nor was their accent one. But mingled languages were heard of men. From various climes. These Mars to battle roused. Those palace azuried. Nor terror thence. Nor flight was absent, nor insatiate strife. 525. Sister and maid of homicidal Mars. Who small at first, but swift to grow, from earth. Her towering crest lifts gradual to the skies. She, foe alike to both, the brands dispersed. Of burning hate between them, and the woes 530. Enhanced of battle where so or she passed. And now the battle joined. Shield clashed with shield. And spear with spear, conflicting corslets rang. Bossed bucklers met, and tumult wild arose. Then, many a yell was heard, and many a shout 535. Loud intermixed, the slayer o'er the maimed. Exulting, and the field was drenched with blood. As when two winter torrents rolling down. The mountains, shoot their floods through gullies huge. Into one gulf below, stationed remote 540. The shepherd in the uplands hears the roar. Such was the thunder of the mingling hosts. And first, Antilochus a Trojan chief. Slew Echepolis, from Thalysia sprung. Contending valiant in the van of Troy.545. Him smiting on his crested cask, he drove. The brazen lance into his front, and pierced. The bones within. Night overspread his eyes. And in fierce battle, like a tower, he fell. Him fallen by both feet Chalcodon's son 550. Seized, royal Elephener, leader brave. Of the Abantes, and in haste to strip. His armor, drew him from the fight aside. But short was that attempt. Him so employed. Dauntless Eginor marked, and as he stooped, 555. In his unshielded flank a pointed spear. Implanted deep, he languid sunk and died. So Elephener fell, for whom arose. Sharp conflict. Greeks and Trojans mutual flew. Like wolves to battle, and man grappled man.560. Then Telamonian Ajax, in his prime. Of youthful vigor Simoisius slew. Son of Anthemion. Him on Simois' banks. His mother bore, when with her parents once. She came from Ida down to view the flocks, 565. And thence they named him, but his parents. He lived and not to requite, in early youth. Slain by the spear of Ajax famed in arms. For him advancing Ajax at the pap. Wounded, right through his shoulder driven the point 570. Stood forth behind, he fell, and pressed the dust. So in some spacious marsh the poplar falls. Smooth-skinned, with boughs unladen save aloft. Some chariot builder with his axe the trunk. Severs, that he may warp it to a will 575. Of shapely form, meantime exposed it lies. To Parchang heirs beside the running stream. Such Simoisius seemed, Anthemian's son. Whom noble Ajax slew. But soon at him. Antiphus, son of Priam, bright in arms, 580. Hurled through the multitude his pointed spear. He erred from Ajax, but he pierced the groin. Of Lucas, valiant warrior of the band. Led by Ulysses. He the body dragged. Apart, but fell beside it, and let fall, 585. Breathless himself, the burthen from his hand. Then burned Ulysses' wrath for Lucas slain. And through the foremost combatants, arrayed. In dazzling arms, he rushed. Full near he stood. And, looking keen around him, hurled a lance.590. Back fell the Trojans from before the face. Dispersed of great Ulysses. Not in vain. His weapon flew, but on the field outstretched. A spurious son of Priam, from the shores. Called of Abydus famed for fleetest Mares, 595. 
Demokun. Him, for Lucas' sake enraged. Ulysses threw both temples with his spear. Transpierced. The night of death hung on his eyes. And sounding on his battered arms he fell. Then Hector and the van of Troy retired, six hundred. Loud shout the Grecians. These draw off the dead. Those onward march amain, and from the heights. Of Pergamus Apollo looking down. In anger, to the Trojans called aloud. Turn, turn, ye Trojans. Face your Grecian foes. 605. They, like yourselves, are vulnerable flesh. Not adamant or steel. Your direst dread. Achilles, son of Thetis radiant-haired. Fights not, but sullen in his fleet abides. Such from the citadel was heard the voice 610. Of dread Apollo. But Minerva ranged. Meantime, Tritani and progeny of Jove. The Grecians, rousing whom she saw remiss. Then Amarincius' son, Diors, felt. The force of fate, bruised by a rugged rock 615. At his right heel, which Pyrrhus, Thracian chief. The son of Embraces of Enos, threw. Bones and both tendons in its fall the mass. Enormous crushed. He, stretched in dust supine. With palms outspread toward his warrior friend 620. Lay gasping life away. But he who gave. The fatal blow, Pyrrhus, advancing, urged. Into his navel a keen lance, and shed. His bowels forth. Then, darkness veiled his eyes. Nor Pyrrhus long survived, him through the breast 625. Above the pap, Aetolian Thoas pierced. And in his lungs set fast the quivering spear. Then Thoas swift approached, plucked from the wound. His stormy spear, and with his falchion bright. Gashing his middle belly, stretched him dead. 630. Yet stripped he not the slain, whom with long spears. His Thracians hairy scalped so roundabout. Encompassed, that though bold and large of limb. Were Thoas, from before them him they thrust. Staggering and reeling in his forced retreat. 635. They therefore in the dust, the Epian chief. Diors, and the Thracian, Pyrrhus lay. Stretched side by side, with numerous slain around. Then had Minerva led through all that field. Some warrior yet unhurt, him sheltering safe 640. From all annoyance dread of dart or spear. No cause of blame in either had he found. That day, so many Greeks and Trojans pressed. Extended side by side. The Dusty Plain. Book V. Argument of the Fifth Book. Diomede is extraordinarily distinguished. He kills Pandarus, who had violated the truce, and wounds first Venus and then Mars. Book V. Then Athenian Pallas on the sun. Of Tydeus, Diomede, new force conferred. And daring courage, that the Argives all. He might surpass, and deathless fame achieve. Fires on his helmet and his shield around five. She kindled, bright and steady as the star. Autumnal, which in ocean newly bathed. Assumes fresh beauty. With such glorious beams. His head encircling and his shoulders broad. She urged him forth into the thickest fight. Point ten. There lived a man in Troy, dares his name. The priest of Vulcan. Rich he was and good. The father of two sons, Ideas this. That, Phegeus called, accomplished warriors both. These, issuing from their phalanx, pushed direct fifteen. Their steeds at Diomede, who fought on foot. When now small interval was left between. First Phegeus his long-shadowed spear dismissed. But over Diomede's left shoulder passed. The point, innocuous. Then his splendid lance twenty. Tydides hurled. Nor ineffectual flew. The weapon from his hand, but Phegeus pierced. His paps between, and forced him to the ground. At once, his sumptuous chariot left, down leaped. Idesis, wanting courage to defend twenty-five. 
his brother slain. Nor had he escaped himself. His lowering fate, but Vulcan, to preserve. His ancient priest from unmixed sorrow, snatched. The fugitive in darkness wrapped, away. Then brave Tidides, driving off the steeds, thirty. Consigned them to his fellow warriors' care. That they might lead them down into the fleet. The valiant Trojans, when they saw the sons. Of dares, one beside his chariot slain. And one by flight preserved, through all their host thirty-five. Felt consternation. Then Minerva seized. The hand of fiery Mars, and thus she spake. Gore-tainted homicide, town-battering Mars. Leave we the Trojans and the Greeks to wage. Fierce fight alone, Jove prospering whom he will, forty. So shall we not provoke our father's ire. She said, and from the fight conducted forth. The impetuous deity, whom on the side. She seated of Scamander deep embanked. And now the host of Troy to flight inclined forty-five. Before the Grecians, and the chiefs of Greece. Each slew a warrior. Agamemnon first. Gigantic Odius from his chariot hurled. Chief of the Halizonians. He to flight. Turned foremost, when the monarch in his spine fifty. Between the shoulder bones his spear infixed. And urged it through his breast. Sounding he fell. And loud his battered armor rang around. By brave Idomeneus a Lydian died. Festus, from fruitful Tarn sent to Troy, fifty-five. Son of Meonian Boris. Him his steeds. Mounting, Idomeneus the spear renowned. Through his right shoulder pierced, unwelcome knight. Involved him, from his chariot down he fell. And the attendant Cretan stripped his arms. Sixty. But Menelaus, son of Atreus slew. With his bright spear Scamandrius, Stropius' son. A skillful hunter, for Diana him. Herself, the slaughter of all savage kinds. Had taught, on mountain or in forest bred. Sixty-five. But she, shaft-aiming goddess, in that hour. Availed him not, nor his own matchless skill. For Menelaus, Atreus' son spear-famed. Him flying wounded in the spine between his shoulders, and the spear urged through his breast. Seventy. Prone on his loud resounding arms he fell. Next, by Marians, Phericles died. Son of Harmonides. All arts that ask. A well-instructed hand his sire had learned. For Pallas dearly loved him. He the fleet, seventy-five. Prime source of harm to Troy and to himself. For Paris built, unskilled to spell aright. The oracles predictive of the wa. Phericles fled, Marion's his flight. Outstripping, deep in his posterior flesh eighty. A spear infixed. Sliding beneath the bone. It grazed his bladder as it passed, and stood. Protruded far before. Low on his knees. Phericles sank, and with a shriek expired. Pideus, whom, although his spurious son eighty-five, Antenor's wife, to gratify her lord, had cherished as her own, him Meges slew. Warlike Phylides following close his flight. His keen lance drove into his pole, cut sheer. His tongue within, and through his mouth enforced ninety. The glittering point. He, prostrate in the dust. The cold steel pressed between his teeth and died. Eurypolis, Evemon's son, the brave. Hypsenor slew, Dilopian was his sire. Priest of Scamander, reverenced as a god.95. In vain before Eurypolis he fled. He, running, with his falchion lopped his arm. Fast by the shoulder. On the field his hand. Fell blood disdained, and destiny severe. With shades of death forever veiled his eyes.100. Thus strenuous they the toilsome battle waged. But where Tydides fought, whether in aid of Ilium's host, or on the part of Greece, might none discern. For as a winter flood, impetuous, mounds and bridges sweeps away. 105. 
The buttressed bridge checks not its sudden force. The firm enclosure of vine-planted fields. Luxuriant, falls before it, finished works. Of youthful hinds, once pleasant to the eye. Now leveled, after ceaseless rain from Jove. 110. So drove tidides into sudden flight. The Trojans, phalanx after phalanx fled. Before the terror of his single arm. When him Lycaean's son illustrious saw. Scouring the field, and from before his face one fifteen. The ranks dispersing wide, at once he bent. Against tidides his elastic bow. The arrow met him in his swift career. Sure aimed. It struck direct the hollow mail. Of his right shoulder, with resistless force 120. Transfixed it, and his hauberk stained with blood. Loud shouted then Lycaean's son renowned. Rush on, ye Trojans, spur your coursers hard. Our fiercest foe is wounded, and I deem. His death not distant far, if me the king 125. Jove's son, indeed, from Lycia sent to Troy. So boasted Pandarus. Yet him the dart. Quelled not. Retreating, at his courser's heads. He stood, and to the son of Capanus. His charioteer and faithful friend he said. Point 130. Arise, sweet son of Capanus, dismount. And from my shoulder draw this bitter shaft. He spake. At once the son of Capanus. Descending, by its barb the bitter shaft. Drew forth, blood spouted through his twisted mail 135. Incontinent, and thus the hero prayed. Unconquered daughter of Jove Aegis armed. If ever me, propitious, or my sire. Thou hast in furious fight helped heretofore. Now aid me also. Bring within the reach 140. Of my swift spear, O oh grant me to strike through. The warrior who hath checked my course, and boasts. The sun's bright beams forever quenched to me. He prayed, and Pallas heard. She braced his limbs. She winged him with alacrity divine 145. And, standing at his side, him thus bespake. Now Diomed, be bold. Fight now with Troy. To thee, thy father's spirit I impart. Fearless, shield-shaking Tydeus felt the same. I also from thine eye the darkness purge 150. Which dimmed thy sight before, that thou mayst know. Both gods and men, should, therefore, other god. Approach to try thee, fight not with the powers. Immortal. But if foam-born Venus come. Her spare not. Wound her with thy glittering spear. Point 155. So spake the blue-eyed deity, and went. Then with the champions in the van again. Tydides mingled. Hot before, he fights. With threefold fury now, nor less enraged. Then some gaunt lion whom o'erleaping light 160. The fold, a shepherd hath, but galled, not killed. Him irritating more, thenceforth the swain. Lurks unresisting. Flies the abandoned flock. Heaps slain on heaps he leaves, and with a bound. Surmounting all impediment, escapes, 165. Such seemed the valiant Diomede incensed. To fury, mingling with the host of Troy. Astinus and Hypnor first he slew. One with his brazen lance above the pap. He pierced, and one with his huge falchion smote 170. Fast by the key bone, from the neck and spine. His parted shoulder driving at a blow. Them leaving, Polyides next he sought. And Abbas, sons of a dream-dealing seer. Eurydamas, their hoary father's dreams 175. Or not interpreted, or kept concealed. Them saved not, for by Diomede they died. Xanthus and Thun he encountered next. Both sons of Phenops, sons of his old age. Who other heir had none of all his wealth, 180. Nor hoped another, worn with many years. Tydides slew them both. Nor aught remained. To the old man but sorrow for his sons. Forever lost, and strangers were his heirs. Two sons of Priam in one chariot born 185. 
Achaemen next, and Chromius felt his hand. Resistless. As a lion on the herd. Leaping, while they the shrubs and bushes browse. Breaks short the neck of heifer or of steer. So them, though clinging fast and loath to fall, 190. Tidides hurled together to the ground. Then stripped their splendid armor. And the steeds. Consigned and chariot to his soldiers' care. Aeneas him discerned scattering the ranks. And through the battle and the clash of spears 195. Went seeking godlike Pandarus, ere long. Finding Lycaon's martial son renowned. He stood before him, and him thus addressed. Thy bow, thy feathered shafts, and glorious name. Where are they, Pandarus? Whom none of Troy two hundred. Could equal, whom of Lycia, none excel. Come. Lift thine hands to Jove, and at yon chief. Dispatch an arrow, who afflicts the host. Of Ilium thus, conquering where'er he flies. And who hath slaughtered numerous brave in arms? Two hundred and five. But him some deity I rather deem. Avenging on us his neglected rights. And who can stand before an angry god? Him answered then Lycaon's son renowned. Brave leader of the Trojans brazen-mailed, 210. Aeneas. By his buckler which I know. And by his helmet's height, considering, too. His steeds, I deem him Diomede the bold. Yet such pronounce him not, who seems a god. But if bold Diomede indeed he be 215. Of whom I speak, not without aid from heaven. His fury thus prevails, but at his side. Some god, in clouds enveloped, turns away. From him the arrow to a devious course. Already, at his shoulders hollow mail 220. My shaft hath pierced him through, and him I deemed. Dismissed full sure to Pluto ere his time. But he survives, whom therefore I at last. Perforce conclude some angry deity. Steeds have I none or chariot to ascend, 225. Who have eleven chariots in the stands. Left of Lycaon, with fair hangings all. Ermantled, strong, new finished, with their steeds. In pairs beside them, eating winnowed grain. Me much Lycaon my old valiant sire 230. At my departure from his palace gates. Persuaded, that my chariot and my steeds. Ascending, I should so conduct my bands. To battle, counsel wise, and ill refused. But anxious, lest, the host in Troy so long 235. Imud, my steeds, fed plenteously at home. Should here want food, I left them, and on foot. To Ilium came, confiding in my bow. Ordained at last to yield me little good. Twice have I shot, and twice I struck the mark, 240. First Menelaus, and Tydides next. From each I drew the blood, true, genuine blood. Yet have but more incensed them. In an hour. Unfortunate, I therefore took my bow. Down from the wall, that day, when for the sake 245. Of noble Hector, to these pleasant plains. I came, a leader on the part of Troy. But should I once return, and with these eyes. Again behold my native land, my sire. My wife, my stately mansion, may the hand, 250. That moment, of some adversary there. Shorten me by the head. If I not snap. This bow with which I charged myself in vain. And burn the unprofitable tool to dust. To whom Aeneas, Trojan chief, replied point 255. Nay, speak not so. For ere that hour arrive. We will, with chariot and with horse, in arms. Encounter him, and put his strength to proof. Delay not, mount my chariot. Thou shalt see. With what rapidity the steeds of Troy 260. Pursuing or retreating, scour the field. If after all, Jove purpose still to exalt. The son of Tydeus, these shall bear us safe. Back to the city. Come then. Let us on. The lash take thou, and the resplendent reigns, 265. While I alight for battle, 
or thyself. Receive them, and the steeds shall be my care. Him answered then Lycaon's son renowned. Aeneas. Manage thou the reins, and guide. Thy proper steeds. If fly at last we must two seventy. The son of Tydeus, they will readier draw. Directed by their wanted charioteer. Else, terrified, and missing thy control. They may refuse to bear us from the fight. And Tydeus' son assailing us, with ease two seventy-five. Shall slay us both, and drive thy steeds away. Rule therefore thou the chariot, and myself. With my sharp spear will his assault receive. So saying, they mounted both, and furious drove. Against Tydides. Then the noble son 280. Of Capenius observed, and turning quick. His speech to Diomede, him thus addressed. Tydides, Diomede, my heart's delight. Two warriors of immeasurable force. In battle, ardent to contend with the 285. Come rattling on. Lycaon's offspring one. Bow practiced Pandarus, with whom appears. Aeneas, he who calls the mighty chief. Anchises' father, and whom Venus bore. Mount, drive we swift away, lest born so far 290. Beyond the foremost battle, thou be slain. To whom, dark frowning, Diomede replied. Speak not of flight to me, who am disposed. To know such course. I am ashamed to fly. Or tremble, and my strength is still entire, 295. I cannot mount. No. Rather thus, on foot. I will advance against them. Fear and dread. Are not for me, Pallas forbids the thought. One falls, be sure, swift as they are, the steeds. That whirl them on, shall never rescue both point three hundred. But hear my bidding, and hold fast the word. Should all wise Pallas grant me my desire. To slay them both, drive not my coursers hence. But hook the reins, and seizing quick the pair. That draw Aeneas, urge them from the powers 305. Of Troy away into the host of Greece. For they are sprung from those which Jove to Tross. In compensation gave for Ganymede. The sun himself sees not their like below. Anchises, king of men, clandestine them 310. Obtained, his Mara submitting to the steeds. Of King Laomedon. Six brought him foals. For to himself reserving, in his stalls. He fed them sleek, and two he gave his son. These, might we win them, were a noble prize. Point three fifteen. Thus mutual they conferred. Those chiefs, the while, with swiftest pace approached, and first his speech. To Diomede Lycaon's son addressed. Heroic offspring of a noble sire. Brave son of Tydeus. False to my intent 320. My shaft hath harmed thee little. I will now. Make trial with my spear if that may speed. He said, and shaking his long-shadowed spear. Dismissed it. Forceful on the shield it struck. Of Diomede, transpierced it, and approached D325. With threatening point the hauberk on his breast. Loud shouted Pandarus, a nobly thrown. Home to thy bowels. Die, for die thou must. And all the glory of thy death is mine. Then answer thus brave Diomede return D-330. Undaunted. I am whole. Thy cast was short. But ye desist not, as I plain perceive. Till one at least extended on the plain. Shall sate the god of battles with his blood. He said and threw. Pallas the spear herself 335. Directed. At his eye fast by the nose. Deep entering through his ivory teeth it passed. At its extremity divided sheer. His tongue, and started through his chin below. He headlong fell, and with his dazzling arms 340. Smote full the plain. Back flew the fiery steeds. With swift recoil, and where he fell he died. Then sprang Aeneas forth with spear and shield. That none might drag the body. 
lion-like. He stalked around it, oval shield and spear 345. Advancing firm, and with incessant cries. Terrific, death denouncing on his foes. But Diomede with hollow grasp a stone. Enormous seized, a weight to overtask. Two strongest men of such as now are strong, 350. Yet he, alone, wielded the rock with ease. Full on the hip he smote him, where the thigh rolls in its cavity, the socket named. He crushed the socket, lacerated wide. Both tendons, and with that rough-angled mass 355. Flayed all his flesh, the hero on his knees. Sank, on his ample palm his weight upbore. Laboring, and darkness overspread his eyes. There had Aeneas perished, king of men. Had not Jove's daughter Venus quick perceived 360. His peril imminent, whom she had borne. Herself to Anchises pasturing his herds. Her snowy heiress her darling son around. She threw maternal, and behind a fold. Of her bright mantle screening close his breast 365. From mortal harm by some brave Grecian spear. Stole him with eager swiftness from the fight. Nor then forgat brave Sthenelus his charge. Received from Diomede, but his own steeds. Detaining distant from the boisterous war, 370. Stretched tight the reins, and hooked them fast behind. The coursers of Aeneas next he seized. Ardent, and them into the host of Greece. Driving remote, consigned them to his care. Whom far above all others his compeers 375. He loved, Deipolis, his bosom friend. Congenial. Him he charged to drive them thence. Into the fleet, then, mounting swift his own. Lashed after Diomede. He, fierce in arms. Pursued the Cyprian goddess, conscious whom, 380. Not Pallas, not Inio, waster dread. Of cities close beleaguered, none of all. Who o'er the battle's bloody course preside. But one of softer kind and prone to fear. When, therefore, her at length, after long chase 385. Through all the warring multitude he reached. With his protruded spear her gentle hand. He wounded, piercing through her thin attire. Ambrosial, by themselves the graces wrought. Her inside wrist, fast by the rosy palm. 390. Blood followed, but immortal, ichor pure. Such as the blessed inhabitants of heaven. May bleed, nectarius, for the gods eat not. Man's food, nor slake as he with sable wine. Their thirst, thence bloodless and from death exempt. 395. She, shrieking, from her arms cast down her son. And Phoebus, in impenetrable clouds. Him hiding, lest the spear of some brave Greek. Should pierce his bosom, caught him swift away. Then shouted brave Tydides after her, 400. Depart, Jove's daughter. Fly the bloody field. Is not enough that thou beguilest the hearts. Of feeble women? If thou dare intrude. Again into the war, war's very name. Shall make thee shudder, wheresoever heard point four o five. He said, and Venus with excessive pain. Bewildered went. But Iris tempest winged. Forth led her through the multitude, oppressed. With anguish, her white wrist to livid changed. They came where Mars far on the left retired 410. Of battle sat, his horses and his spear. In darkness veiled. Before her brother's knees. She fell, and with entreaties urgent sought. The succor of his coursers golden reigned. Save me, my brother. Pity me. Thy steeds 415. Give me, that they may bear me to the heights. Olympian, seat of the immortal gods. Oh! I am wounded deep, a mortal man. Hath done it, Diomede, nor would he fear. This day in fight the sire himself of all point 420. Then Mars his coursers gold caparisoned. Resigned to Venus. She, with countenance sad. The chariot climbed, and Iris at her side. 
The bright reins seizing lashed the ready steeds. Soon as the Olympian heights, seat of the gods, for twenty-five. They reached, wing-footed Iris loosing quick. The coursers, gave them large whereon to browse. Ambrosial food. But Venus on the knees. Sank of Dion, who with folded arms. Maternal, to her bosom straining close four thirty. Her daughter, stroked her cheek, and thus inquired. My darling child. Who? Which of all the gods? Hath rashly done such violence to thee? As if convicted of some open wrong? Her then the goddess of love kindling smiles 435. Venus thus answered, Diomede the proud. Audacious Diomede. He gave the wound. For that I stole Aeneas from the fight. My son of all mankind my most beloved. Nor is it now the war of Greece with Troy, 440. But of the Grecians with the gods themselves. Then thus Dion, goddess all divine. My child. How hard so are thy sufferings seem. Endure them patiently. Full many a wrong. From human hands profane the gods endure, 445. And many a painful stroke, mankind from ours. Mars once endured much wrong, when on a time. Him Otis bound and Ephialtes fast. Sons of Eloeus, and full thirteen moons. In brazen thraldom held him. There, at length, 450. The fierce blood nourished Mars had pined away. But that Arabia, loveliest nymph. His stepmother, in happy hour disclosed. To Mercury the story of his wrongs. He stole the prisoner forth, but with his woes 455. Already worn, languid and fetter galled. Nor Juno less endured, when erst the bold. Son of Amphitryon with tridental shaft. Her bosom pierced. She then the misery felt. Of irremediable pain severe point four sixty. Nor suffered Pluto less, of all the gods. Gigantic most, by the same son of Jove. Alcides, at the portals of the dead. Transfixed and filled with anguish. He the house. Of Jove and the Olympian summit sought 465. Dejected, torture stung, forsaw the shaft. Oppressed him, into his huge shoulder driven. But peon him not liable to death. With unction smooth of salutiferous bombs. Healed soon. Presumptuous, sacrilegious man, 470. Careless what dire enormities he wrought. Who bent his bow against the powers of heaven. But blue-eyed Pallas instigated him. By whom thou bleedst. Infatuate. He forgets. That whoso turns against the gods his arm 475. Lives never long, he never, safe escaped. From furious fight, the lisped caresses hears. Of his own infants prattling at his knees. Let therefore Diomede beware, lest strong. And valiant as he is, he chanced to meet 490. Some mightier foe than thou, and lest his wife. Daughter of King Adrastus, the discreet. Egealia, from portentous dreams. Upstarting. Call her family to wail. Her first espoused, Achaia's proudest boast, 485. Diomede, whom she must behold no more. She said, and from her wrist with both hands wiped. The trickling ichor, the effectual touch. Divine chased all her pains, and she was healed. Them Juno marked in Pallas, and with speech 490. Sarcastic pointed at Saturnian Jove. To vex him, blue-eyed Pallas thus began. Eternal Father. May I speak my thought. And not incense thee, Jove. I can but judge. That Venus, while she coaxed some Grecian fair 495. To accompany the Trojans whom she loves. With such extravagance, hath heedless stroked. Her golden clasps, and scratched her lily hand. So she. Then smiled the sire of gods and men. And calling golden Venus, her bespake point five hundred. War and the tented field, my beauteous child. Are not for thee. Thou rather shouldst be found. 
in scenes of matrimonial bliss. The toils of war to Pallas and to Mars belong. Thus they in heaven. But Diomede the while 505 sprang on Aeneas, conscious of the god, whose hand o'ershadowed him, yet even him, regarding lightly. For he burned to slay Aeneas, and to seize his glorious arms. Thrice then he sprang impetuous to the deed, 510. And thrice Apollo with his radiant shield repulsed him. But when ardent as a god, the fourth time he advanced, with thundering voice. Him thus the archer of the skies rebuked. Think, and retire, tidides. Nor effect 515. Equality with gods, for not the same. Our nature is, and theirs who tread the ground. He spake, and Diomede a step retired. Not more, the anger of the archer god. Declining slow, and with a sullen awe.520. Then Phoebus, far from all the warrior throng, to his own shrine the sacred dome beneath, of Pergamus, Aeneas bore. There him, Latona and shaft-armed Diana healed, and glorified within their spacious fane.525. Meantime the archer of the silver bow, a visionary form prepared, it seemed, himself Aeneas, and was armed as he, at once, in contest for that airy form. Grecians and Trojans on each other's breasts 530. The bullhide buckler battered and light targe. Then thus Apollo to the warrior god. Gore-tainted homicide, town batterer Mars. Wilt thou not meet and from the fight withdraw? This man tidides, now so fiery grown 535. That he would even cope with Jove himself? First Venus hand he wounded, and assailed. Impetuous as a god, next, even me. He ceased, and on the topmost turret sat. Of Pergamus. Then all destroyer Mars 540. Ranging the Trojan host, rank after rank. Exhorted loud, and in the form assumed. Of Akamas the Thracian leader bold. The godlike sons of Priam thus harangued. Ye sons of Priam, monarch Joe beloved, 545. How long permit ye your Achaean foes? To slay the people, till the battle rage. Pushed home to Ilium, at her solid gates? Behold, a chief disabled lies, then whom? We reverence not even Hector more, 550. Aeneas, fly, save from the roaring storm. The noble Anchisides your friend. He said, then every heart for battle glowed. And thus Sarpedon with rebuke severe. Upbraiding generous Hector, stern began point 555. Where is thy courage, Hector? For thou once hadst courage. Is it fled? In other days. Thy boast hath been that without native troops or foreign aids, thy kindred and thyself alone, were guard sufficient for the town.560. But none of all thy kindred now appears. I can discover none. They stand aloof. Quaking, as dogs that hear the lion's roar. We bear the stress, who are but Troy's allies. Myself am such, and from afar I came, 565. For Lycia lies far distant on the banks. Of the deep-eddied Xanthus. There a wife. I left an infant son, both dear to me. With plenteous wealth, the wish of all who want. Yet urge I still my Lycians, and am prompt 570. Myself to fight, although possessing here. Not that the Greeks can carry or drive hence. But there stands thou, neither employed thyself. Nor moving others to an active part. For all their dearest pledges. Oh beware. 575. Lest, as with meshes of an ample net. At one huge draught the Grecians sweep you all. And desolate at once your populous Troy. By day, by night, thoughts such as these should still. Thy conduct influence, and from chief to chief 580. Of the allies should send thee, praying each. To make firm stand, all bickerings put away. So spake Sarpedon, and his reprimand. Stung Hector. 
instant to the ground he leaped. All armed, and shaking his bright spears his host 585. Ranged in all quarters animating loud. His legions, and rekindling horrid war. Then, rolling back, the powers of Troy opposed. Once more the Grecians, whom the Grecians dense. Expected, unretreating, void of fear. 590. As flies the chaff wide scattered by the wind. O'er all the consecrated floor, what time? Ripe Ceres with brisk airs her golden grain. Ventilates, widening with its husk the ground. So grew the Achaeans white, a dusty cloud 595. Descending on their arms, which steeds with steeds. Again to battle mingling, with their hoofs. Up stamped into the brazen vault of heaven. For now the charioteers turned all to fight. Host toward host with full collected force six hundred. They moved direct. Then Mars through all the field. Took wide his range, and overhung the war. With night, in aid of Troy, at the command. Of Phoebus of the golden sword. For he. Perceiving Pallas from the field withdrawn, 605. Patroness of the Greeks, had Mars enjoined. To rouse the spirit of the Trojan host. Meantime Apollo from his unctuous shrine. Sent forth restored and with new force inspired. Aeneas. He amidst his warriors stood, 610. Who him with joy beheld still living, healed. And all his strength possessing unimpaired. Yet no man asked him aught. No leisure now. For question was, far other thoughts had they. Such toils the archer of the silver bow, 615. Wide slaughtering Mars, and discord as at first. Raging implacable, for them prepared. Ulysses, either Ajax, Diomed. These roused the Greeks to battle, who themselves. The force feared nothing, or the shouts of Troy, 620. But steadfast stood, like clouds by Jove amassed. On lofty mountains, while the fury sleeps. Of Boreas. And of all the stormy winds. Shrill-voiced, that chase the vapors when they blow. So stood the Greeks, expecting firm the approach 625. Of Ilium's powers, and neither fled nor feared. Then Agamemnon the embattled host. On all sides ranging, cheered them. Now, he cried. Be steadfast, fellow warriors, now be men. Hold fast a sense of honor. More escape 630. Of men who fear disgrace, then fall in fight. While dastards forfeit life and glory both. He said, and hurled his spear. He pierced a friend. Of brave Aeneas, warring in the van. Decun son of Pergasus, in Troy 635. Not less esteemed than Priam's sons themselves. Such was his fame in foremost fight acquired. Him Agamemnon on his buckler smote. Nor stayed the weapon there, but through his belt. His bowels entered, and with hideous clang 640. An outcry of his battered arms he fell. Aeneas next two mightiest warriors slew. Sons of Diocles, of a wealthy sire. Whose house magnificent in fairy stood. Orsilicus and Crethon. Their descent 645. From broad-streamed Alpheus, Pilian flood, they drew. Alpheus begot Orsilicus, a prince. Of numerous powers. Orsilicus begot. Warlike diodes. From diode sprang. Twins, Crethon and Orsilicus, alike 650. Valiant and skillful in all forms of war. Their boyish prime scarce passed, they, with the Greeks. Embarking, in their sable ships had sailed. To steed famed Ilium, just revenge they sought. For Atreus' sons, but perished first themselves. 655. As two young lions, in the deep recess. Of some dark forest on the mountain's brow. Late nourished by their dam, forth issuing, seas. The fatted flocks and kine, both folds and stalls. Wasting rapacious, till, at length. Themselves 660. Deep wounded perish by the hand of man. So they, 
both vanquished by Aeneas, fell. And like two lofty pines uprooted, lay. Them fallen in battle Menelaus saw. With pity moved, radiant in arms he shook 665. His brazen spear, and strode into the van. Mars urged him furious on, conceiving hope. Of his death also by Aeneas' hand. But him the son of generous Nestor marked. Antilochus, and to the foremost fight 670. Flew also, fearing lest some dire mischance. The prince befalling, at one fatal stroke. Should frustrate all the labors of the Greeks. They, hand to hand, and spear to spear opposed. Stood threatening dreadful onset, when beside 675. The Spartan chief Antilochus appeared. Aeneas, at the sight of two combined. Stood not, although intrepid. They the dead. Thence drawing far into the Grecian host. To their associates gave the hapless pair, 680. Then, both returning, fought in front again. Next, fierce as Mars, Pylomenes they slew. Prince of the shielded band Magnanimous. Of Paphlagonia. Him Atrides killed. Spear practiced Menelaus, with a lance 685. His throat transpiercing while erect he rode. Then, while his charioteer, might on the brave. Son of Atimnius, turned his steeds to flight. Full on his elbow point Antilochus. The son of Nestor, dashed him with a stone. 690. The slack reins, white as ivory, forsook. His torpid hand and trailed the dust. At once. Forth sprang Antilochus, and with his sword. Hewed deep his temples. On his head he pitched. Panting, and on his shoulders in the sand 695. For in deep sand he fell, stood long erect. Till his own coursers spread him in the dust. The son of Nestor seized, and with his scourge. Drove them afar into the host of Greece. Them Hector through the ranks espying, flew seven hundred. With clamor loud to meet them. After whom. Advanced in phalanx firm the powers of Troy. Mars led them, with Inio terror clad. She by the maddening tumult of the fight. Attended, he with his enormous spear 705. In both hands brandished, stalking now in front. Of Hector, and now following his steps. Him Diomed the bold discerning, felt. Himself no small dismay. And as a man. Wandering he knows and not whither, far from home, 710. If chance a rapid torrent to the sea. Born headlong thwart his course, the foaming flood. Obstreperous views a while, then quick retires. So he and his attendants thus bespake. How oft, my countrymen. Have we admired 715. The noble Hector, skillful at the spear. And unappalled in fight? But still hath he. Some god his guard, and even now I view. In human form Mars moving at his side. Ye, then, with faces to the Trojans turned, 720. Ceaseless retire, and war not with the gods. He ended, and the Trojans now approached. Then two bold warriors in one chariot borne. By valiant Hector died, Menesthes won. And one, Anchilus. Them fallen in fight 725. Ajax the vast, touched with compassion saw. Within small space he stood, his glittering spear. Dismissed, and pierced Amphius. Son was he. Of Selagus, and Pisces was his home. Where opulent he dwelt, but by his fate 730. Was led to fight for Priam and his sons. Him Telamonian Ajax threw his belt. Wounded, and in his nether bowels deep. Fixed his long-shadowed spear. Sounding he fell. Illustrious Ajax running to the slain 735. Prepared to strip his arms, but him a shower. Of glittering weapons keen from Trojan hands. Assailed, and numerous his broad shield received. He, on the body planting firm his heel. Forth drew the polished spear, but his bright arms 740. Took not, by darts thick flying sore annoyed. Nor feared he little lest his haughty foes. 
spear-armed and bold, should compass him around. Him, therefore, valiant though he were and huge. They pushed before them. Staggering he retired point seven forty five. Thus toiled both hosts in that laborious field. And now his ruthless destiny impelled. Lipolemus, Alcides' son, a chief. Dauntless and huge, against a godlike foe. Sarpedon. They approaching face to face 750. Stood, son and grandson of high thundering Jove. And, haughty, thus Lipolemus began. Sarpedon, leader of the Lycian host. Thou trembler. Thee what cause could hither urge? A man unskilled in arms? They falsely speak 755. Who call thee son of Aegis bearing Jove? So far below there might thou false to sprang. From Jove in days of old. What says report? Of Hercules, for him I boast my sire. All daring hero with a lion's heart? 760. With six ships only, and with followers few. He for the horses of Laomedon. Laid Troy in dust, and widowed all her streets. But thou art base, and thy diminished powers. Perish around thee. Think not that thou earnest 765. For Ilium's good, but rather, whatsoever. Thy force in fight, to find, subdued by me. A sure dismission to the gates of hell. To whom the leader of the Lycian band. Lipolemus. He ransacked sacred Troy, 770. As thou hast said, but for her monarch's fault. Laomedon, who him with language harsh. Requited ill for benefits received. Nor would the steeds surrender, seeking which. He voyaged from afar. But thou shalt take 775. Thy bloody doom from this victorious arm. And, vanquished by my spear, shalt yield thy fame. To me, thy soul to Pluto steed renowned. So spake Sarpedon, and his ashen beam. Lipolemus appraised. Both hurled at once 780. Their quivering spears. Sarpedon's through the neck. Passed of Lipolemus, and showed beyond. Its ruthless point, thick darkness veiled his eyes. Lipolemus with his long lance the thigh. Pierced of Sarpedon. Sheer into his bone 785. He pierced him, but Sarpedon's father, Jove. Him rescued even on the verge of fate. His noble friends conducted from the field. The godlike Lycian, trailing as he went. The pendant spear, none thinking to extract 790. For his relief the weapon from his thigh. Through eagerness of haste to bear him thence. On the other side, the Grecians brazen mailed. Bore off Lipolemus. Ulysses filled. With earnest thoughts tumultuous them observed, 795. Danger-defying chief. Doubtful he stood. Or to pursue at once the thunderer's son. Sarpedon, or to take more Lycian lives. But not for brave Ulysses had his fate. That praise reserved, that he should slay the son 800. Renowned of Jove. Therefore his wavering mind. Minerva bent against the Lycian band. Then Coerinus, Alaster, Chromius fell. Alcander, Halius, Pritanes, and Brave. Noman. Nor had these sufficed the chief 805. Of Ithaca, but Lycians more had fallen. Had not crest tossing Hector huge perceived. The havoc, radiant to the van he flew. Filling with dread the Grecians. His approach. Sarpedon, son of Jove, joyful beheld 810. And piteous thus addressed him as he came. Ah, leave not me, Priamides. A prey. To Grecian hands, but in your city, at least. Grant me to die, since hither, doomed, I came. Never to gratify with my return 815. To Lycia, my loved spouse, or infant child. He spake. But Hector unreplying passed. Impetuous, ardent to repulse the Greeks. That moment, and to drench his sword in blood. Then, under shelter of a spreading beech 820. Sacred to Jove, 
his noble followers placed. The godlike chief Sarpedon, where his friend. Illustrious Pelagon, the ashen spear. Extracted. Sightless, of all thought bereft. He sank, but soon revived, by breathing airs 825. Refreshed, that fanned him gently from the north. Meantime the Argives, although pressed alike. By Mars himself and Hector brazen armed. Neither to flight inclined, nor yet advanced. To battle, but informed that Mars the fight 830. Waged on the side of Ilium, slow retired. Whom first, whom last slew then the mighty son. Of Priam, Hector, and the brazen Mars. First godlike Tuthras, an equestrian chief. Orestes, Trechus of Aetolian race 835. Enomaus, Helenus from Enop sprung. And brisk in fight Oresbius. Rich was he. And covetous of more, in Hyla dwelt. Fast by the lake Cephissus, where abode. Boeotian princes numerous, rich themselves 840. And rulers of a people wealth-renowned. But Juno, such dread slaughter of the Greeks. Noting, thus, ardent, to Minerva spake. Daughter of Jove invincible. Our word. That Troy shall perish, hath been given in vain 845. To Menelaus, if we suffer Mars. To ravage longer uncontrolled. The time. Urges, and need appears that we ourselves. Now call to mind the fury of our might. She spake nor blue-eyed Pallas not complied.850. Then Juno, goddess dread, from Saturn sprung. Her coursers gold caparisoned prepared. Impatient. He be to the chariot rolled. The brazen wheels, and joined them to the smooth. Steel axle, twice four spokes divided each 855. Shot from the center to the verge. The verge. Was gold by fellies of eternal brass. Guarded, a dazzling show. The shining knaves. Were silver, silver cords and cords of gold. The seat upbore, two crescents blazed in front. Point 860. The pole was argent all, to which she bound. The golden yoke, and in their place disposed. The breastbands incorruptible of gold. But Juno to the yoke, herself, the steeds. Led forth, on fire to reach the dreadful field. 865. Meantime, Minerva, progeny of Jove. On the adamantine floor of his abode. Let fall profuse her variegated robe. Labor of her own hands. She first put on. The corslet of the cloud assembler god. 870. Then armed her for the field of what complete. She charged her shoulder with the dreadful shield. The shaggy aegis, bordered thick around. With terror. There was discord, prowess there. Their hot pursuit, and there the feature grim 875. Of Gorgon, dire deformity, a sign. Oft born portentous on the arm of Jove. Her golden helm, whose concave had sufficed. The legions of an hundred cities, rough. With warlike ornament superb, she fix D880 on her immortal head. Thus armed, she rose. Into the flaming chariot, and her spear. Seized ponderous, huge, with which the goddess sprung. From an almighty father, levels ranks. Of heroes, against whom her anger burns. 885. Juno with lifted lash urged quick the steeds. At her approach, spontaneous roared the wide. Unfolding gates of heaven the heavenly gates. Kept by the watchful hours, to whom the charge. Of the Olympian summit appertains, 890. And of the boundless ether, back to roll. And to replace the cloudy barrier dense. Spurred through the portal flew the rapid steeds. Apart from all, and seated on the point. Superior of the cloven mount, they found 895. The thunderer. Juno the white-armed her steeds. There stayed, and thus the goddess, ere she passed. Questioned the son of Saturn, Jove supreme. Jove, father, sayest thou, and art not incensed. These ravages of Mars? 
Oh, what a field, nine hundred. Drenched with what Grecian blood. All rashly spilt. And in despite of me. Venus, the while. Sits, and the archer of the silver bow. Delighted, and have urged, themselves, to this. The frantic Mars within no bounds can find 905. Of law or order. But, eternal sire. Shall I offend thee chasing far away? Mars deeply smitten from the field of war? To whom the cloud assembler god replied. Go. But exhort thou rather to the task 910. Spoil huntress Athenian Pallas, him. Accustomed to chastise with pain severe. He spake, nor white-armed Juno not obeyed. She lashed her steeds, they readily their flight. Began, the earth and starry vault between. 915. Far as from his high tower the watchman kens. O'er gloomy ocean, so far at one bound. Advance the shrill-voiced coursers of the gods. But when at Troy and at the confluent streams. Of Samoys and Scamander they arrived 920. There Juno, white-armed goddess, from the yoke. Her steeds releasing, them in gathered shades. Concealed opaque. While Samoys caused to spring. Ambrosia from his bank, whereon they browsed. Swift as her pinions waft the dove away 925. They sought the Grecians, ardent to begin. Arriving where the mightiest and the most. Compassed equestrian diomede around. In aspect lion-like, or like wild boars. Of matchless force. Their white-armed Juno stood 930. And in the form of stentor for his voice. Of brass renowned, audible as the roar. Of fifty throats, the Grecians thus harangued. O oh, shame, shame, shame! Argives in form alone. Beautiful but dishonorable race, 935. While yet divine Achilles ranged the field. No Trojan stepped from yon Dardanian gates. Abroad, all trembled at his stormy spear. But now they venture forth, now at your ships. Defy you, from their city far remote point 940. She ceased, and all caught courage from the sound. But Athenian Pallas eager sought. The son of Tydeus. At his chariot side. She found the chief cooling his fiery wound. Received from Pandarus, for him the sweat 945. Beneath the broad band of his oval shield. Exhausted, and his arm failed him fatigued. He therefore raised the band and wiped the blood. Coagulate, when o'er his chariot yoke. Her arm the goddess threw, and thus began point 950. Tydeus, in truth, begot a son himself. Not much resembling. Tydeus was of size. Diminutive, but had a warrior's heart. When him I once commanded to abstain. From furious fight, what time he entered Thebes 955. Ambassador, and the cad means found. Feasting, himself the sole Achaean there. And bade him quietly partake the feast. He, fired with wanted ardor, challenged forth. To proof of manhood the cad mean youth, 960. Whom easily, through my effectual aid. In contests of each kind he overcame. But thou, whom I encircle with my power. Guard vigilant, and even bid thee forth. To combat with the Trojans, thou, thy limbs 965. Feelst wearied with the toils of war, or worse. Indulgest womanish and heartless fear. Henceforth thou art not worthy to be deemed. Son of Enides, Tydeus famed in arms. To whom thus valiant Diomede replied.970. I know thee well, O goddess sprung from Jove. And therefore willing shall, and plain, reply. Me neither weariness nor heartless fear. Restrains, but thine injunctions which impress. My memory, still, that I should fear to oppose 975. The blessed gods in fight, Venus except. Whom in the battle found thou badest me pierce. With unrelenting spear. Therefore myself. Retiring hither, I have hither called. The other Argives also, for I know 980. 
that Mars, himself in arms, controls the war. Him answered then the goddess Azuride. Tidides. Diomede, my heart's delight. Fear not this Mars, nor fear thou other power. Immortal, but be confident in me.985. Arise. Drive forth. Seek Mars, him only seek. Him hand to hand engage. This fiery Mars. Respect not aught, base implement of wrong. And mischief, shifting still from side to side. He promised Juno lately and myself 990. That he would fight for Greece, yet now forgets. His promise, and gives all his aid to Troy. So saying, she backward by his hand withdrew. The son of Capenius, who to the ground. Leaped instant, she, impatient to his place 995. Ascending, sat beside brave Diomede. Loud groaned the beechen axle, under weight. Unwanted, for it bore into the fight. An awful goddess, and the chief of men. Quick seizing lash and reins Minerva drove one thousand. Direct at Mars. That moment he had slain. Periphus, bravest of Aetolia's sons. And huge of bulk, Ochesius was his sire. Him Mars the slaughterer had of life bereft. Newly, and Pallas to elude his sight one thousand and five. The helmet fixed of aids on her head. Soon as gore-tainted Mars the approach perceived. Of Diomede, he left the giant length. Of Periphus extended where he died. And flew to cope with Tydeus' valiant son. 1010. Full nigh they came, when Mars on fire to slay. The hero, foremost with his brazen lance. Assailed him, hurling o'er his horse's heads. But Athenian Pallas in her hand. The flying weapon caught and turned it wide, 1015. Baffling his aim. Then Diomede on him. Rushed furious in his turn, and Pallas plunged. The bright spear deep into his cinctured waist. Dire was the wound, and plucking back the spear. She tore him. Bellowed brazen throated Mars, 1020. Loud as 9,000 warriors, or as 10. Joined in close combat. Grecians, Trojans shook. Appalled alike at the tremendous voice. Of Mars insatiable with deeds of blood. Such as the dimness is when summer winds 1025. Breathe hot, and sultry mist obscures the sky. Such brazen Mars to Diomede appeared. By clouds accompanied in his ascent. Into the boundless ether. Reaching soon. The Olympian heights, seat of the gods, he sat 1030. Beside Saturnian Jove, what filled his heart. He showed fast streaming from the wound his blood. Immortal, and impatient thus complained. Jove, father. Sayest thou these outrageous acts? Unmoved with anger? Such are day by day 1035. The dreadful mischiefs by the gods contrived. Against each other, for the sake of man. Thou art thyself the cause. Thou hast produced. A foolish daughter petulant, addict. To evil only and injurious deeds, 1040. There is not in Olympus, save herself. Who feels not thy control? But she her will. Gratifies ever, and reproof from thee. Finds none, because, pernicious as she is. She is thy daughter. She hath now the mind 1045. Of haughty Diomede with madness filled. Against the immortal gods, first Venus bled. Her hand he pierced impetuous, then assailed. As if himself immortal, even me. But me my feet stole thence, or overwhelm, d1050. Beneath yon heaps of carcasses impure. What had I not sustained? And if at last. I lived had halted crippled by the sword. To whom with dark displeasure Jove replied. Base and side-shifting traitor. Vex not me 1055. Here sitting querulous. Of all who dwell. On the Olympian heights, the most I hate. Contentious, whose delight is war alone. Thou hast thy mother's moods, the very spleen. Of Juno, 
uncontrollable as she. 1060. Whom even I, reprove her as I may. Scarce ruled by mere commands, I therefore judge. Thy sufferings a contrivance all her own. But soft. Thou art my son whom I begot. And Juno bear thee. I cannot endure 1065. That thou shouldst suffer long. Hadst thou been born. Of other parents thus detestable. What deity sower had brought thee forth? Thou shouldst have found long since a humbler sphere. He ceased, and to the care his son consigned, d. 1070. Of Pian. He with drugs of lenient powers. Soon healed whom immortality secured. From dissolution. As the juice from figs. Expressed what fluid was in milk before. Coagulates, stirred rapidly around, 1075. So soon was Mars by Pian skill restored. Him he be bathed, and with divine attire. Graceful adorned, when at the side of Jove. Again his glorious seat sublime he took. Meantime to the abode of Jove supreme 1080. Ascended Juno throughout Argos known. And mighty Pallas. Mars the plague of man. By their successful force from slaughter driven. Book 6. Argument of the Sixth Book. The battle is continued. The Trojans being closely pursued, Hector by the advice of Helenus enters Troy, and recommends it to Hecuba to go in solemn procession to the temple of Minerva, she with the matrons goes accordingly. Hector takes the opportunity to find out Paris, and exhorts him to return to the field of battle. An interview succeeds between Hector and Andromache, and Paris, having armed himself in the meantime, comes up with Hector at the close of it, when they sally from the gate together. Book 6 Thus was the field forsaken by the gods. And now success proved various, here the Greeks. With their extended spears, the Trojans there. Prevailed alternate, on the champion spread. The Xanthus and the Samoys between. 5. First Telamonian Ajax, bulwark firm. Of the Achaeans, broke the Trojan ranks. And kindled for the Greeks a gleam of hope. Slaying the bravest of the Thracian band. Huge Akamas, Eusorus' son. Him first ten. Full on the shaggy crest he smote, and urged. The spear into his forehead, through his skull. The bright point passed, and darkness veiled his eyes. But Diomede, heroic chief, the son. Of Tuthras slew, Axilus. Rich was he, fifteen. And in Arisba, where he dwelt beside. The public road, and at his open door. Made welcome all, respected and beloved. But of his numerous guests none interposed. To avert his waffle doom. Nor him alone twenty. He slew, but with him also to the shades. Calesius sent, his friend and charioteer. Apheltius fell and Dresus, by the hand. Slain of Euryalus, who, next, his arms. On Pedasus and on Esipus turned twenty-five. Brethren and twins. Them Abarbaria bore. A naiad, to Bucolion, son renowned. Of King Laomedon, his eldest born. But by his mother, at his birth, concealed. Bucolion pasturing his flocks, embraced thirty. The lovely nymph. She twins produced, both whom. Brave as they were and beautiful, thy son. Mesistius. Slew, and from their shoulders tore. Their armor. Dauntless Polypides slew. Astylus. Ulysses with his spear thirty-five. Transfixed Pydites, a Percosian chief. Antusser Aretan, Nestor's pride. Antilochus, with his bright lance, of life. Bereft Ablerus, and the royal arm. Of Agamemnon, Elatus. He dwelt forty. Among the hills of lofty Pedasus. On Satnio's banks, smooth sliding river pure. Philicus fled, whom Leotus as swift. Soon smote. Melanthius at the feet expired. Of the renowned Euripilus, and, flush, d. 45. With martial ardor, Menelaus seized. And took alive Adrastus. 
as it chanced. A thicket his affrighted steeds detained. Their feet entangling. They with restive force. At its extremity snapped short the pole, fifty. And to the city, whither others fled. Fled also. From his chariot headlong hurled. Adrastus pressed the plain fast by his wheel. Flew Menelaus, and his quivering spear. Shook over him, he, life imploring, clasped D-55. Importunate his knees, and thus exclaimed. O, oh, son of Atreus, let me live. Accept. Illustrious ransom. In my father's house. Is wealth abundant, gold, and brass, and steel. Of truest temper, which he will impart sixty. Till he have gratified thine utmost wish. Informed that I am captive in your fleet. He said, and Menelaus by his words. Vanquished, him soon had to the fleet dismissed. Given to his train in charge, but swift and stern sixty-five. Approaching, Agamemnon interposed. Now, brother, whence this milkiness of mind? These scruples about blood? Thy Trojan friends. Have doubtless much obliged thee. Die the race. May none escape us. Neither he who flies, seventy. Nor even the infant in his mother's womb. Unconscious. Perish universal Troy. Unpitied, till her place be found no more. So saying, his brother's mind the hero turned. Advising him aright, he with his hands seventy-five. Thrust back Adrastus, and himself, the king. His bowels pierced. Supine Adrastus fell. And Agamemnon, with his foot the course. Impressing firm, plucked forth his ashen spear. Then Nestor, raising high his voice, exclaimed point eighty. Friends, heroes, Grecians, ministers of Mars. Let none, desirous of the spoil, his time. Devote to plunder now, now slay your foes. And strip them when the field shall be your own. He said, and all took courage at his word. 85. Then had the Trojans entered Troy again. By the heroic Grecians foul repulsed. So was their spirit daunted, but the son. Of Priam, Helenus, an augur far. Excelling all, at Hector's side his speech ninety. To him and to Aeneas thus addressed. Hector, and thou, Aeneas, since on you. The Lycians chiefly and ourselves depend. For that in difficult emprise ye show. Most courage, give best counsel. Stand yourselves, ninety-five. And, visiting all quarters, cause to stand. Before the city gates are scattered troops. Ere yet the fugitives within the arms. Be slaughtered of their wives, the scorn of Greece. When thus ye shall have rallied every band one hundred. And roused their courage, weary though we be. Yet since necessity commands, even here. Will we give battle to the host of Greece. But, Hector. To the city thou depart. There charge our mother, that she go direct, 105. With the assembled matrons, to the fane. Of Pallas in the citadel of Troy. Opening her chamber's sacred doors, of all. Her treasured mantles there, let her select. The widest, most magnificently wrought, 110. And which she values most, that let her spread. On Athenian palace lap divine. Twelve heifers of the year yet never touched. With puncture of the goad, let her alike. Devote to her, if she will pity Troy, 115. Our wives and little ones, and will avert. The son of Tydeus from these sacred towers. That dreadful chief. Terror of all our host. Bravest, in my account, of all the Greeks. For never yet Achilles hath himself one twenty. So taught our people fear, although esteemed. Son of a goddess. But this warrior's rage. Is boundless, and his strength past all compare. So Helenus, nor Hector not complied. Down from his chariot instant to the ground one twenty-five. All armed he leaped, and, shaking his sharp spears. Through every phalanx past, rousing again. Their courage, and rekindling horrid war. 
They, turning, faced the Greeks. The Greeks repulsed. Ceased from all carnage, nor supposed they less one thirty. Than that some deity, the starry skies. Forsaken, helped their foes, so firm they stood. But Hector to the Trojans called aloud. Ye dauntless Trojans and confederate powers. Called from afar. Now be ye men, my friends, 135. Now summon all the fury of your might. I go to charge our senators and wives. That they address the gods with prayers and vows. For our success, and hecatombs devote. So saying the hero went, and as he strode 140. The sable hide that lined his bossy shield. Smote on his neck and on his ankle bone. And now into the middle space between. Both hosts, the son of Tydeus and the son. Moved of Hippolochus, intent alike 145. On furious combat, face to face they stood. And thus heroic Diomede began. Most noble champion. Who of humankind. Art thou, whom in the man ennobling fight. I now encounter first. Past all thy peers 150. I must esteem thee valiant, who hast dared. To meet my coming, and my spear defy. Ah! They are sons of miserable sires. Who dare my might? But if a god from heaven. Thou come, behold. I fight not with the gods. Point 155. That war like Hergus son of Dryas waged. And saw not many years. The nurses he. Of brain disturbing Bacchus down the steep. Pursued of sacred Nyssa. They their wands. Vine wreathed cast all away, with an ox, goad 160. Chastised by fell Lycurgus. Bacchus plunged. Meantime dismayed into the deep, where him. Trembling, and at the hero's haughty threats. Confounded, Thetis in her bosom hid. Thus by Lycurgus were the blessed powers 165. Of heaven offended, and Saturnian Jove. Of sight bereaved him, who not long that loss. Survived, for he was cursed by all above. I, therefore, wage no contest with the gods. But if thou be of men, and feed on bread 170. Of earthly growth, draw nigh, that with a stroke. Well aimed, I may at once cut short thy days. To whom the illustrious Lycian chief replied. Why asks brave Diomede of my descent? For, as the leaves, such is the race of man. 175. The wind shakes down the leaves, the budding grove. Soon teems with others, and in spring they grow. So pass mankind. One generation meets. Its destined period, and a new succeeds. But since thou seemst desirous to be taught 180. My pedigree, whereof no few have heard. Know that in Argos, in the very lap. Of Argos, for her steed grazed meadows famed. Stands Ephra, their Sisyphus abode. Shrewdest of humankind. Sisyphus, named 185. Eolides. Himself a son begot. Glaucus, and he Bellerophon, to whom. The gods both manly force and beauty gave. Him Pretus, for in Argos at that time. Pretus was sovereign to whose scepter Jove 190. Had subjected the land, plotting his death. Contrived to banish from his native home. For fair Antiae, wife of Pretus, mad. Through love of young Bellerophon, him oft. In secret to elicit joys enticed, 195. But she prevailed not o'er the virtuous mind. Discreet of whom she wooed. Therefore a lie. Framing, she royal Pretus thus bespake. Die thou, or slay Bellerophon, who sought. Of late to force me to his lewd embrace. Point two hundred. So saying, the anger of the king she roused. Slay him himself he would not, for his heart. Forbade the deed, him therefore he dismissed. To Lycia, charged with tales of dire import. Written in tablets, which he bade him show. 205 that he might perish, to Antia's sire. To Lycia then, conducted by the gods. He went, and on the shores of Xanthus found. 
free entertainment noble at the hands of Lisha's potent king. Nine days complete 210. He feasted him, and slew each day an ox. But when the tenth day's ruddy morn appeared, he asked him then his errand, and to see those written tablets from his son-in-law. The letters seen, he bade him, first, destroy 215. Chimera, deemed invincible, divine. In nature, alien from the race of man. Lion in front, but dragon all behind. And in the midst a she-goat breathing forth. Profuse the violence of flaming fire. 220. Her, confident in signs from heaven, he slew. Next, with the men of Salome he fought. Brave warriors far renowned, with whom he waged. In his account, the fiercest of his wars. And lastly, when in battle he had slain 225. The man resisting Amazons, the king. Another stratagem at his return. Devised against him, placing close concealed. An ambush for him from the bravest chosen. In Lycia, but they saw their homes no more. 230. Bellerophon the valiant slew them all. The monarch hence collecting, at the last. His heavenly origin, him there detained. And gave him his own daughter, with the half. Of all his royal dignity and power. 235. The Lycians also, for his proper use. Large lot assigned him of their richest soil. Commodious for the vine, or for the plough. And now his consort fair three children bore. To bold Bellerophon, Isandrus 1, 240. And one, Hippolochus. His youngest born. Laodamia was for beauty such. That she became a concubine of Jove. She bore Sarpedon of heroic note. But when Bellerophon, at last, himself 245. Had angered all the gods, feeding on grief. He roamed alone the alien field, exiled. By choice, from every cheerful haunt of man. Mars, thirsty still for blood, his son destroyed. Isandrus, warring with the host renowned D-250. Of Salome, and in her wrath divine. Diana from her chariot golden reigned. Laodamia slew. Myself I boast. Sprung from Hippolochus. He sent me forth. To fight for Troy, charging me much and oft two fifty-five. That I should outstrip always all mankind. In worth and valor, nor the house disgrace. Of my forefathers, heroes without peer. In Ephra, and in Lycia's wide domain. Such is my lineage, such the blood I boast. Point two sixty. He ceased. Then valiant Diomede rejoiced. He pitched his spear, and to the Lycian prince. In terms of peace and amity replied. Thou art my own hereditary friend. Whose noble grandsire was the guest of mine. Point two sixty five. For Enus, on a time, full twenty days. Regaled Bellerophon, and pledges fair. Of hospitality they interchanged. Enus a belt radiant with purple gave. To brave Bellerophon, who in return 270. Gave him a golden goblet. Coming forth. I left the kind memorial safe at home. A child was I when Tydeus went to Thebes. Where the Achaeans perished, and of him. Hold no remembrance but henceforth, my friend, 275. Thine host am I in Argos, and thou mine. In Lycia, should I chance to sojourn there. We will not clash. Trojans or aids of Troy. No few the gods shall furnish to my spear. Whom I may slaughter, and no one of Greeks 280. On whom to prove thy prowess, thou shalt find. But it were well that an exchange ensued. Between us. Take mine armor, give me thine. That all who notice us may understand. Our patrimonial amity and love.285. So they, and each alighting, hand in hand. Stood locked, faith promising, firm accord. Then Jove of sober judgment so bereft. Infatuate Glaucus that with tidiest son. He bartered gold for brass, an hundred beeves two ninety. In value, 
for the value small of nine. But Hector at the Skian gate and beach. Meantime arrived, to whose approach the wives. And daughters flocked of Troy, inquiring each. The fate of husband, brother, son, or friend. 295. He bade them all with solemn prayer the gods. Seek fervent, for that what was on the wing. But when he entered Priam's palace, built. With splendid porticos, and which within. Had fifty chambers lined with polished stone, three hundred. Contiguous all, where Priam's sons reposed. And his sons' wives, and where, on the other side. In twelve magnificent chambers also lined. With polished marble and contiguous all. The sons-in-law of Priam lay beside 305. His spotless daughters, there the mother queen. Seeking the chamber of Laodicea. Loveliest of all her children. As she went. Met Hector. On his hand she hung and said. Why leavest thou, O my son? The dangerous field, 310. I fear that the Achaeans, hateful name. Compass the walls so closely, that thou seekst. Urged by distress the citadel, to lift. Thine hands in prayer to Jove. But pause a while. Till I shall bring thee wine, that having poor, d315. Libation rich to Jove and to the powers. Immortal, thou mayst drink and be refreshed. For wine is mighty to renew the strength. Of weary man, and weary thou must be. Thyself, thus long defending us and ours. 320. To whom her son majestic thus replied. My mother, whom I reverence. Cheering wine. Bring none to me, lest I forget my might. I fear, beside, with unwashed hands to pour. Libation forth of sable wine to Jove. 325. And dare on none account, thus blood defiled. Approach the tempest stirring God in prayer. Thou, therefore, gathering all our matrons, seek. The fane of Pallas, huntress of the spoil. Bearing sweet incense. But from the attire 330. Treasured within thy chamber, first select. The amplest robe, most exquisitely wrought. And which thou prizest most, then spread the gift. On Athenian Pallas lap divine. Twelve heifers also of the year. Untouch, D-335. With puncture of the goad, promise to slay. In sacrifice, if she will pity Troy. Our wives and little ones, and will avert. The son of Tydeus from these sacred towers. That dreadful chief. Terror of all our host. 340. Go then, my mother, seek the hallowed fane. Of the spoil huntress deity. I the while. Seek Paris, and if Paris yet can hear. Shall call him forth. But oh that earth would yawn. And swallow him, whom Jove hath made a curse 345. To Troy, to Priam, and to all his house. Methinks, to see him plunged into the shades. Forever, were a cure for all my woes. He ceased. The queen, her palace entering, charged. Her maidens, they, incontinent, throughout 350. All Troy convened the matrons, as she bade. Meantime into her wardrobe incense fumed. Herself descended. There her treasures lay. Works of Sidonian women, whom her son. The godlike Paris, when he crossed the seas 355. With Jove begotten Helen, brought to Troy. The most magnificent, and varied most. With colors radiant, from the rest she chose. For Pallas, vivid as a star it shone. And lowest lay of all. Then forth she went, 360. The Trojan matrons all following her steps. But when the long procession reached the fane. Of Pallas in the heights of Troy, to them. The fair Theano oped the portals wide. Daughter of Sisius, brave Antenor's spouse, 365 and by appointment public, at that time. Priestess of Pallas. All with lifted hands. In presence of Minerva wept aloud. Beauteous Theano on the goddess lap. Then spread the robe, 
and to the daughter Fair 370. Of Jove Omnipotent her suit addressed. Goddess of goddesses, our city's shield. Adored Minerva, hear. Oh! Break the lance. Of Diomede, and give himself to fall. Prone in the dust before the Scian gate. 375. So will we offer to thee at thy shrine. This day twelve heifers of the year, untouched. By yoke or goad, if thou wilt pity show. To Troy, and save our children and our wives. Such prayer the priestess offered, and such prayer 380. All present. Whom Minerva heard a verse. But Hector to the palace sped meantime. Of Alexander, which himself had built. Aided by every architect of name. Illustrious then in Troy. Chamber it had, 385. Wide hall, proud dome, and on the heights of Troy. Near neighboring Hector's house and Priam stood. There entered Hector, Joe beloved, a spear. Its length eleven cubits in his hand. Its glittering head bound with a ring of gold. 390. He found within his chamber whom he sought. Polishing with exactest care his arms. Resplendent, shield and hauberk fingering o'er. With curious touch, and tampering with his bow. Helen of Argos with her female train 395. Sat occupied, the while, to each in turn. Some splendid task assigning. Hector fixed. His eyes on Paris, and him stern rebuked. Thy sullen humors, Paris, are ill-timed. The people perish at our lofty walls. 400. The flames of war have compassed Troy around. And thou hast kindled them, who yet thyself. That slackness showst which in another scene. Thou wouldst resent to death. Haste, seek the field. This moment, lest, the next, all Ilium blaze. 405. To whom thus Paris, graceful as a god. Since, Hector, thou hast charged me with a fault. And not unjustly, I will answer make. And give thou special heed. That here I sit. The cause is sorrow, which I wish to soothe 410. In secret, not displeasure, or revenge. I tell thee also, that even now my wife. Was urgent with me in most soothing terms. That I would forth to battle. And myself. Aware that victory oft changes sides, for fifteen. That course prefer. Wait, therefore, thou a while. Till I shall dress me for the fight, or go. Thou first, and I will overtake thee soon. He ceased, to whom brave Hector answer none. Returned, when Helen him with lenient speech 420. Accosted mild. My brother. Who in me. Hast found a sister worthy of thy hate. Authoress of all calamity to Troy. Oh that the winds, the day when I was born. Had swept me out of sight, whirled me aloft 425. To some inhospitable mountain top. Or plunged me in the deep. There I had sunk. O'erwhelmed thee, and all these ills had never been. But since the gods would bring these ills to pass. I should, at least, some worthier mate have chosen, 430. One not insensible to public shame. But this, oh this, nor hath nor will acquire. Hereafter, ought which like discretion shows. Or reason, and shall find his just reward. But enter, take this seat. For who as thou 435? Labors, or who hath cause like thee to rue? The crime, my brother, for which heaven hath doomed. Both Paris and my most detested self. To be the burthens of an endless song? To whom the warlike Hector huge replied. 440. Me bid not, Helen, to a seat, Howard. Thou wish my stay, for thou must not prevail. The Trojans miss me, and myself no less. I am anxious to return. But urge in haste. This loiterer forth. Yeah, let him urge himself 445. To overtake me ere I quit the town. For I must home in haste, that I may see. My loved Andromache, my infant boy. 
and my domestics, ignorant if e'er. I shall behold the more, or if my fate four fifty. Ordain me now to fall by Grecian hands. So spake the dauntless hero, and withdrew. But reaching soon his own well built abode, he found not fair Andromache, she stood. Lamenting Hector, with the nurse who bore four fifty five. Her infant, on a turret's top sublime. He then, not finding his chaste spouse within. Thus from the portal, of her train inquired. Tell me, ye maidens, whither went from home? Andromache the fair? Went she to see four sixty? Her female kindred of my father's house. Or to Minerva's temple, where convened. The bright haired matrons of the city seek. To soothe the awful goddess? Tell me true. To whom is household's governess discreet? 465. Since, Hector, truth is thy demand, receive. True answer. Neither went she forth to see. Her female kindred of thy father's house. Nor to Minerva's temple, where convened. The bright haired matrons of the city seek 470. To suit the awful goddess. But she went. Hence to the tower of Troy, for she had heard. That the Achaeans had prevailed, and driven. The Trojans to the walls, she, therefore, wild. With grief, flew thither, and the nurse her steps 475. Attended, with thy infant in her arms. So spake the prudent governess. Whose words? When Hector heard, issuing from his door. He backward trod with hasty steps the streets. Of lofty Troy, and having traversed all four eighty. The spacious city, when he now approached. The Scian gate, whence he must seek the field. There. Hasting home again his noble wife. Met him, Andromache the rich endowed. Fair daughter of Eshan famed in arms. 485. Eshan, who in hypoplation Thebes. Umbrageous dwelt, Cilicia's mighty lord. His daughter valiant Hector had espoused. There she encountered him, and with herself. The nurse came also, bearing in her arms 490. Hectorides, his infant darling boy. Beautiful as a star. Him Hector called. Scamandrios, but Astyanax all else. In Ilium named him, for that Hector's arm. Alone was the defense and strength of Troy.495. The father, silent, eyed his babe, and smiled. Andromache, meantime, before him stood. With streaming cheeks, hung on his hand, and said. Thy own great courage will cut short thy days. My noble Hector. Neither pitiest thou five hundred. Thy helpless infant, or my hapless self. Whose widowhood is near. For thou wilt fall. Ere long, assailed by the whole host of Greece. Then let me to the tomb, my best retreat. When thou art slain. For comfort none or joy 505. Can I expect, thy day of life extinct? But thenceforth, sorrow. Father I have none. No mother. When Cilicia's city, Thebes. The populace, was by Achilles sacked. He slew my father. Yet his gorgeous arms 510. Stripped not through reverence of him, but consumed. Armed as it was, his body on the pile. And heaped his tomb, which the Oreads. Jove's daughters, had with elms enclosed around. My seven brothers, glory of our house, 515. All in one day descended to the shades. For brave Achilles, while they fed their herds. And snowy flocks together, slew them all. My mother, queen of the well-wooded realm. Of Hypoplation Thebes, her hither brought five twenty. Among his other spoils, he loosed again. At an inestimable ransom price. But by Diana pierced, she died at home. Yet Hector, O my husband, I in thee. Find parents, brothers, all that I have lost. Point five twenty five. Come. Have compassion on us. Go not hence. But guard this turret, lest of me thou make. A widow, and an orphan of thy boy. 
the city walls are easiest of ascent. At yonder fig tree. Station there thy powers, 530. For whether by a prophet warned, or taught. By search and observation, in that part. Each Ajax with Idomeneus of Crete. The sons of Atreus, and the valiant son. Of Tydeus, have now thrice assailed the town. 535. To whom the leader of the host of Troy. These cares, Andromache, which thee engage. All touch me also, but I dread to incur. The scorn of male and female tongues in Troy. If, dastard-like, should decline the fight.540. Nor feel I such a wish. No. I have learned. To be courageous ever, in the van. Among the flower of Ilium to assert. My glorious father's honor, and my own. For that the day shall come when sacred Troy 545. When Priam, and the people of the old. Spear-practiced king shall perish, well I know. But for no Trojan sorrows yet to come. So much I mourn, not e'en for Hecuba. Nor yet for Priam, nor for all the brave 550. Of my own brothers who shall kiss the dust. As for thyself, when some Achaean chief. Shall have conveyed thee weeping hence. Thy son. Of peace and liberty forever set. Then shalt thou toil in Argos at the loom 555. For a taskmistress, and constraint shalt draw. From Hyperia's fount, or from the fount. Messes, water at her proud command. Some Grecian then, seeing thy tears, shall say. This was the wife of Hector, who excel, d560. All Troy in fight when Ilium was besieged. Such he shall speak thee, and thy heart, the while. Shall bleed afresh through want of such a friend. To stand between captivity and thee. But may I rest beneath my hill of earth 565. Or ere that day arrive. I would not live. To hear thy cries, and see thee torn away. So saying, illustrious Hector stretched his arms. Forth to his son, but with a scream, the child. Fell back into the bosom of his nurse, 570. His father's aspect dreading. Whose bright arms. He had attentive marked and shaggy crest. Playing tremendous o'er his helmet's height. His father and his gentle mother laughed. And noble Hector lifting from his head 575. His dazzling helmet, placed it on the ground. Then kissed his boy and dandled him, and thus. In earnest prayer the heavenly powers implored. Hear all ye gods. As ye have given to me. So also on my son excelling might 580. Bestow, with chief authority in Troy. And be his record this, in time to come. When he returns from battle. Lo! How far! The son excels the sire. May every foe. Fall under him, and he come laden home 585. With spoils bloodstained to his dear mother's joy. He said, and gave his infant to the arms. Of his Andromache, who him received. Into her fragrant bosom, bitter tears. With sweet smiles mingling. He with pity moved 590. That sight observed, soft touched her cheek, and said. Mourn not, my loved Andromache, for me. Too much. No man shall send me to the shades. Of Tartarus, ere mine allotted hour. Nor lives he who can overpass the date 595. By heaven assigned him, be he base or brave. Go then, and occupy content at home. The woman's province. Ply the distaff, spin. And weave, and task thy maidens. War belongs. To man, to all men, and of all who first six hundred. Drew vital breath in Ilium, most to me. He ceased and from the ground his helmet raised. Hair crested. His Andromache, at once. Obedient to her home repaired, but oft. Turned as she went, and, turning, wept afresh. 605. No sooner at the palace she arrived. Of havoc spreading Hector, than among. 
her numerous maidens found within, she raised. A general lamentation, with one voice. In his own house, his whole domestic train 610. Mourned Hector, yet alive. For none the hope. Conceived of his escape from Grecian hands. Or to behold their living master more. Nor Paris in his stately mansion long. Delayed, but, armed resplendent, traversed swift 615. The city, all alacrity and joy. As some stalled horse high fed, his stable cord. Snapped short, beats underfoot the sounding plain. Accustomed in smooth sliding streams to lave. Exulting. High he bears his head, his mane 620. Undulates o'er his shoulders, pleased he eyes. His glossy sides, and borne on pliant knees. Shoots to the meadow where his fellows graze. So Paris, son of Priam, from the heights. Of Pergamus into the streets of Troy, 625. All dazzling as the sun, descended, flushed. With martial pride, and bounding in his course. At once he came where noble Hector stood. Now turning, after conference with his spouse. When godlike Alexander thus began point 630. My hero brother, thou hast surely found. My long delay most irksome. More dispatch. Had pleased thee more, for such was thy command. To whom the warlike Hector thus replied. No man, judicious, and in feet of arms 635. Intelligent, would pour contempt on thee. For thou art valiant, wert thou not remiss. And willful negligent, and when I hear. The very men who labor in thy cause. Reviling thee, I make thy shame my own. 640. But let us on. All such complaints shall cease. Hereafter, and thy faults be touched no more. Let Jove but once afford us riddance clear. Of these Achaeans, and to quaff the cup. Of liberty, before the living gods. 645. It may be observed, that Hector begins to resume his hope of success, and his warlike spirit is roused again, as he approaches the field of action. The depressing effect of his sad interview is wearing away from his mind, and he is already prepared for the battle with Ajax, which awaits him. The student who has once read this book, will read it again and again. It contains much that is addressed to the deepest feelings of our common nature, and, despite of the long interval of time which lies between our age and the Homeric, despite the manifold changes of customs, habits, pursuits, and the advances that have been made in civilization and art, despite of all these, the universal spirit of humanity will recognize in these scenes much of that true poetry which delights alike all ages, all nations, all men. Felton. Book 7. Argument of the Seventh Book. Ajax and Hector engage in single combat. The Grecians fortify their camp. Book 7. So saying, illustrious Hector through the gates. To battle rushed, with Paris at his side. And both were bent on deeds of high renown. As when the gods vouchsafe propitious gales. To longing mariners, who with smooth oars five. Threshing the waves have all their strength consumed. So them the longing Trojans glad received. At once each slew a Grecian. Paris slew. Menestheus who in Arna dwelt, the son. Of Arithus, club-bearing chief, ten. And of Philomedusa radiant-eyed. But Hector wounded with his glittering spear. Ionius. He pierced his neck beneath. His brazen morions verge, and dead he fell. Then Glaucus, leader of the Lycian host, fifteen. Son of Hippolochus, in furious fight. Iphinus son of Dexius assailed. Mounting his rapid mares, and with his lance. His shoulder pierced, unhorsed he fell and died. Such slaughter of the Grecians in fierce fight twenty. Minerva noting, from the Olympian hills. Flew down to sacred Ilium whose approach. Marking from Pergamus, Apollo flew. To meet her, ardent on the part of Troy. Beneath the beach they joined, when first the king, twenty-five. The son of Jove, Apollo thus began. Daughter of Jove supreme. Why hast thou left? 
Olympus, and with such impetuous speed? Comest thou to give the deny success? Decisive? For I know that pity none thirty. Thou feelst for Trojans, perish as they may. But if advice of mine can influence thee, to that which shall be best, let us compose. This day the furious fight which shall again hereafter rage, till Ilium be destroyed. 35. Since such is Juno's pleasure and thy own. Him answered then Pallas Carolianide. Celestial archer. Be it so. I came. Myself so purposing into the field. From the Olympian heights. But by what means forty? Wilt thou induce the warriors to a pause? To whom the king, the son of Jove, replied. The courage of equestrian Hector bold. Let us excite, that he may challenge forth. To single conflict terrible some chief forty-five. Achaean. The Achaeans brazen mailed. Indignant, will supply a champion soon. To combat with the noble chief of Troy. So spake Apollo, and his counsel pleased. Minerva. Which when Helenus the seer, fifty. Priam's own son, in his prophetic soul. Perceived, approaching Hector, thus he spake. Jove's peer in wisdom, Hector, Priam's son. I am thy brother. Wilt thou list to me? Bid cease the battle. Bid both armies sit. 55. Call first, thyself, the mightiest of the Greeks. To single conflict. I have heard the voice. Of the eternal gods, and well assured. Foretell thee that thy death not now impends. He spake, whom Hector heard with joy elate. 60. Before his van striding into the space. Both hosts between, he with his spear transverse. Pressed back the Trojans, and they sat. Down sat. The well-grieved Grecians also at command. Of Agamemnon. And in shape assumed sixty-five. Of vultures, Pallas and Apollo perched. High on the lofty beach sacred to Jove. The father Aegis armed, delighted thence. They viewed the peopled plain horned around. With shields and helms and glittering spears erect. 70. As when fresh blowing Zephyrus the flood. Sweeps first, the ocean blackens at the blast. Such seemed the plain whereon the Achaeans sat. And Trojans, whom between thus Hector spake. Ye Trojans and Achaeans brazen grieved. 75. Attend while I shall speak. Jove high enthroned. Hath not fulfilled the truce, but evil plans. Against both hosts, till either ye shall take. Troy's lofty towers, or shall yourselves in flight. Fall vanquished at your billow-cleaving barks. 80. With you is all the flower of Greece. Let him. Whose heart shall move him to encounter soul. Illustrious Hector, from among you all. Stand forth, and Jove be witness to us both. If he, with his long-pointed lance, of life eighty-five, shall me bereave, my armor is his prize, which he shall hence into your fleet convey, not so my body, that he shall resign, for burial to the men and wives of Troy. But if Apollo make the glory mine, ninety, and he fall vanquished, him will I despoil, and hence conveying into sacred Troy. His arms will in the temple hang them high, of the bowbender god, but I will send his body to the fleet. That him the Greeks ninety-five may grace with rites funereal. On the banks of widespread Hellespont ye shall upraise his tomb, and as they cleave with ori barks, the sable deep, posterity shall say. It is a warrior's tomb, in ancient days one hundred. The hero died, him warlike Hector slew. So men shall speak hereafter, and my fame. Who slew him, and my praise, shall never die. He ceased, and all sat mute. His challenge bold. None dared accept, which yet they blushed to shun, 105. Till Menelaus, at the last, arose. Groaning profound, and thus reproached the Greeks. Ah boasters! 
henceforth women, men no more. Eternal shame, shame infinite is ours. If none of all the Grecians dares contend one ten. With Hector. Dastards, deaf to glory's call. Rot where ye sit. I will myself take arms. Against him, for the gods alone dispose. At their own pleasure, the events of war. He ended, and put on his radiant arms. 115. Then, Menelaus, manifest appeared. Thy death approaching by the dreadful hands. Of Hector, mightier far in arms than thou. But that the chiefs of the Achaeans all. Upstarting stayed thee, and himself the king, 120. The son of Atreus. On thy better hand. Seizing affectionate, thee thus addressed. Thou ravest, my royal brother. And art seized. With needless frenzy. But, however chafed. Restrain thy wrath, nor covet to contend 125. With Priam and Hector, whom in fight. All dread, a warrior thy superior far. Not even Achilles, in the glorious field. Though stronger far than thou, this hero meets. Undaunted. Go then, and thy seat resume 130. In thy own band, the Achaeans shall for him. Doubtless, some fitter champion furnish forth. Brave though he be, and with the toils of war. Insatiable, he shall be willing yet. Seated on his bent knees, to breathe a while, 135. Should he escape the arduous brunt severe. So saying, the hero by his counsel wise. His brother's purpose altered, he complied. And his glad servants eased him of his arms. Then Nestor thus the Argive host bespake. 140. Great wa, ye gods! Hath on Achaia fallen. Now may the warlike Pelos, hoary chief, who both with eloquence and wisdom rules, the Myrmidons, our foul disgrace deplore. With him discoursing, erst, of ancient times, 145. When all your pedigrees I traced, I made. His heart bound in him at the proud report. But now, when he shall learn how here we sat. Cowering at the foot of Hector, he shall oft. His hands uplift to the immortal gods, 150. Praying a swift release into the shades. Jove. Pallas. Phoebus. Oh that I were young. As when the Pylians in fierce fight engaged. The Arcadian spear expert, beside the stream. Of rapid Celadon. Beneath the walls 155. We fought of Phia, where the Jardan rolls. There Erothalian, chief of godlike form. Stood forth before his van, and with loud voice. Defied the Pylians. Armed he was in steel. By royal Arithus whilom worn, 160. Brave Arithus, Coronets named. By every tongue. For that in bow and spear. Not trusted he, but with an iron mace. The close embattled phalanx shattered wide. Him by address, not by superior force, 165. Lycurgus vanquished, in a narrow pass. Where him his iron whirlbat not availed. Lycurgus stealing on him, with his lance. Transpierced and fixed him to the soil supine. Him of his arms, bright gift of brazen Mars, 170. He stripped, which after, in the embattled field. Lycurgus wore himself, but, growing old. Surrendered them to Eruthalian's use. His armor-bearer, high in his esteem. And Eruthalian wore them on the day 175. When he defied our best. All hung their heads. And trembled, none dared meet him, till at last. With inborn courage warmed, and not dismayed. Though youngest of them all, I undertook. That contest, and, by palace aid, prevailed. 180. I slew the man in height and bulk all men. Surpassing, and much soil he covered slain. Oh, for the vigor of those better days. Then should not Hector want a champion long. Whose call to combat, ye, although the prime 185. And pride of all our land, seems slow to hear. He spake reproachful, 
when it once arose. Nine heroes. Agamemnon, king of men. Foremost arose. Then Tydeus' mighty son. With either Ajax in fierce prowess clad, 190. The Cretan next, Idomeneus, with whom. Uprose Marians his friend approved. Terrible as the man-destroyer Mars. Evaemon's noble offspring next appeared. Eurypylus. Andremon's son the next 195. Thoas, and last, Ulysses, glorious chief. All these stood ready to engage in arms. With warlike Hector, when the ancient king. Gerenian Nestor, thus his speech resumed. Now cast the lot for all. Who wins the chance 200? Shall yield Achaia's service, and himself. Serve also, if successful he escape. This brunt of hostile hardiment severe. So Nestor. They, inscribing each his lot. Into the helmet cast it of the sun 205. Of Atreus, Agamemnon. Then the host. Prayed all, their hands uplifting, and with eyes. To the wide heavens directed, many said. Eternal sire. Choose Ajax, or the sun. Of Tydeus, or the king himself who sways 210. The scepter in Mycenae wealth renowned. Such prayer the people made, then Nestor shook. The helmet, and forth leaped, whose most they wished. The lot of Ajax. Throughout all the host. To every chief and potentate of Greece 215. From right to left the herald bore the lot. By all disowned. But when at length he reached. The inscriber of the lot, who cast it in. Illustrious Ajax, in his open palm. The herald placed it, standing at his side. 220. He, conscious, with heroic joy the lot. Cast at his foot, and thus exclaimed aloud. My friends. The lot is mine, and my own heart. Rejoices also, for I nothing doubt. That noble Hector shall be foiled by me. 225. But while I put mine armor on, pray all. In silence to the king Saturnian Jove. Lest, while ye pray, the Trojans overhear. Or pray aloud, for whom have we to dread? No man shall my firm standing by his strength 230. Unsettle, or for ignorance of mine. Me vanquish, who, I hope, brought forth and trained. In Salamis, have, now, not much to learn. He ended. They with heaven directed eyes. The king in prayer addressed, Saturnian Jove.235. Jove! Glorious Father! Who from Ida's height? Controllest all below, let Ajax prove. Victorious, make the honor all his own. Or, if not less than Ajax, Hector share. Thy love and thy regard, divide the prize two forty. Of glory, and let each achieve renown. Then Ajax put his radiant armor on. And, armed complete, rushed forward. As huge Mars. To battle moves the sons of men between. Whom Jove with heart-devouring thirst inspires two forty-five. Of war, so moved huge Ajax to the fight. Tower of the Greeks, dilating with a smile. His martial features terrible. On feet. Firm planted, to the combat he advanced. Stride after stride, and shook his quivering spear. 250. Him viewing, Argo's universal host. Exulted, while a panic loosed the knees. Of every Trojan. Even Hector's heart. Beat double, but escape for him remained. None now, or to retreat into his ranks 255. Again, from whom himself had challenged forth. Ajax advancing like a tower his shield. Sevenfold, approached. It was the labored work. Of Tychius, armorer of matchless skill. Who dwelt in Hyla, coated with the hides 260. Of seven high-pampered bulls that shield he framed. For Ajax, and the disc plated with brass. Advancing it before his breast, the sun. Of Telamon approached the Trojan chief. And face to face, him threatening, thus began. 
265. Now, Hector, prove, by me alone opposed. What chiefs the deny can furnish forth. In absence of the lion-hearted prince. Achilles, breaker of the ranks of war. He, in his billow-cleaving barks incensed 270. Against our leader Agamemnon, lies. But warriors of my measure, who may serve. To cope with thee, we want not, numerous such. Are found amongst us. But begin the fight. To whom majestic Hector fierce in arms.275. Ajax. Heroic leader of the Greeks. Offspring of Telamon. Essay not me. With words to terrify, as I were boy. Or girl unskilled in war, I am a man. Well exercised in battle, who have shed 280. The blood of many a warrior, and have learned. From hand to hand shifting my shield, to fight. Unwearied. I can make a sport of war. In standing fight adjusting all my steps. To martial measures sweet, or vaulting light 285. Into my chariot, thence can urge the foe. Yet in contention with a chief like thee. I will employ no stratagem, or seek. To smite thee privily, but with a stroke. If I may reach thee, visible to all. 290. So saying, he shook, then hurled his massy spear. At Ajax, and his broad shield sevenfold. On its eighth surface of resplendent brass. Smote full, six hides the unblunted weapon pierced. But in the seventh stood rooted. Ajax, next, 295. Heroic chief, hurled his long shadowed spear. And struck the oval shield of Priam's son. Through his bright disc the weapon tempest driven. Glided, and in his hauberk rings infixed. At his soft flank, ripped wide his vest within. 300. Inclined oblique he escaped the dreadful doom. Then each from others shield his massy spear. Recovering quick, like lions hunger pinched. Or wild boars irresistible in force. They fell to close encounter. Priam's son 305. The shield of Ajax at its center smote. But failed to pierce it, for he bent his point. Sprang Ajax then, and meeting full the targe. Of Hector, shocked him. Through it and beyond. He urged the weapon with its sliding edge 310. Athwart his neck, and blood was seen to start. But still, for no such cause, from battle ceased. Crest tossing Hector, but retiring, seized. A huge stone angled sharp and black with age. That on the champion lay. The bull hide guard 315. Sevenfold of Ajax with that stone he smote. Full on its center, sang the circling brass. Then Ajax far a heavier stone upheaved. He whirled it, and with might immeasurable. Dismissed the mass, which with a millstone weight 320. Sank through the shield of Hector, and his knees. Disabled, with his shield supine he fell. But by Apollo raised, stood soon again. And now, with swords they had each other hewn. Had not the messengers of gods and men 325. The heralds wise, Ideas on the part. Of Ilium, and Talphibius for the Greeks. Advancing interposed. His scepter each. Between them held, and thus Ideas spake. My children, cease. Prolong not still the fight.330. Ye both are dear to cloud assembler Jove. Both valiant, and all know it. But the knight. Hath fallen, and knight's command must be obeyed. To him the son of Telamon replied. Ideas. Bid thy master speak as thou.335. He is the challenger. If such his choice. Mine differs not, I wait but to comply. Him answered then heroic Hector huge. Since, Ajax, the immortal powers on thee. Have bulk preeminent and strength bestowed 340. With such address in battle, that the host. Of Greece hath not thine equal at the spear. Now let the combat cease. We shall not want. More fair occasion. On some future day. 
we will not part till all disposing heaven 345. Shall give thee victory, or shall make her mine. But night hath fallen, and night must be obeyed. That them mayst gratify with thy return. The Achaeans, and especially thy friends. And thy own countrymen. I go, no less 350. To exhilarate in Priam's royal town. Men and robed matrons, who shall seek the gods. For me, with pious ceremonial due. But come. We will exchange, or ere we part. Some princely gift, that Greece and Troy may say 355. Hereafter, with soul-wasting rage they fought. But parted with the gentleness of friends. So saying, he with his sheath and belt a sword. Presented bright embossed, and a bright belt. Purpureal took from Ajax in return point 360. Thus separated, one the Grecians sought. And one the Trojans. They win him they saw. From the unconquered hands returned alive. Of Ajax, with delight their chief received. And to the city led him, double joy 365. Conceiving all at his unhoped escape. On the other side, the Grecians brazen mailed. To noble Agamemnon introduced. Exulting Ajax, and the king of men. In honor of the conqueror slew an ox 370. Of the fifth year to Jove omnipotent. Him flaying first, they carved him next and spread. The hole abroad, then, scoring deep the flesh. They pierced it with the spits, and from the spits. Once roasted well, withdrew it all again. 375. Their labor thus accomplished, and the board. Furnished with plenteous cheer, they feasted all. Till all were satisfied. Nor Ajax missed. The conqueror's need, to whom the hero king. Wide ruling Agamemnon, gave the chine 380. Perpetual, his distinguished portion due. The calls of hunger and of thirst at length. Both well sufficed, thus, foremost of them all. The ancient Nestor, whose advice had oft. Proved salutary, prudent thus began point 385. Chiefs of Achaia, and thou, chief of all. Great Agamemnon. Many of our host. Lie slain, whose blood sprinkles, in battle shed. The banks of smooth Scamander, and their souls. Have journeyed down into the realms of death. 390. Tomorrow, therefore, let the battle pause. As need requires, and at the peep of day. With mules and oxen, will ye from all parts. The dead, that we may burn them near the fleet. So, home to Greece returning, will we give 395. The fathers' ashes to the children's care. Accumulating next, the pile around. One common tomb for all, with brisk dispatch. We will upbuild for more secure defense. Of us and of our fleet, strong towers and tall four hundred. Adjoining to the tomb, and every tower. Shall have its ponderous gate. Commodious pass. Affording to the mounted charioteer. And last, without those towers and at their foot. Dig we a trench, which compassing around four o five. Our camp, both steeds and warriors shall exclude and all fierce inroad of the haughty foe. So counseled he, whom every chief approved. In Troy meantime, at Priam's gate beside. The lofty citadel, debate began 410. The assembled senators between, confused. Clamorous, and with furious heat pursued. When the mantenor, prudent, thus bespake. Ye Trojans, Dardans, and allies of Troy. My counsel here. Delay not. Instant yield 415. To the Atridae, hence to be conveyed. Helen of Greece with all that is her own. For charged with violated oaths we fight. And hope I none conceive that aught by us. Design shall prosper, unless so be done. Point 420. He spake and sat. When from his seat arose. Paris, fair Helen's noble paramour. Who thus with speech impassioned quick replied. Antenor. Me thy counsel hath not pleased. Thou couldst have framed far better. But if this 425. 
Be thy deliberate judgment, then the gods. Make thy deliberate judgment nothing worth. But I will speak myself. Ye chiefs of Troy. I tell you plain. I will not yield my spouse. But all her treasures to our house convey D430. From Argos, those will I resign, and add. Still other compensation from my own. Thus Paris said and sat. When like the gods. Themselves in wisdom, from his seat uprose. Dardanian Priam, who them thus addressed point 435. Trojans, Dardanians, and allies of Troy. I shall declare my sentence, hear ye me. Now let the legions, as at other times. Take due refreshment, let the watch be set. And keep ye vigilant guard. At early dawn 440. We will dispatch Ideas to the fleet. Who shall inform the atridy of this last? Resolve of Paris, author of the war. Discreet Ideas also shall propose. A respite, if the atridy so incline, 445. From war's dread clamor, while we burn the dead. Then will we clash again, till heaven at length. Shall part us, and the doubtful strife decide. He ceased, whose voice the assembly pleased, obeyed. Then, troop by troop, the army took repast, 450. And at the dawn Ideas sought the fleet. He found the Danai, servants of Mars. Beside the stern of Agamemnon's ship. Consulting. And amid the assembled chiefs. Arrived, with utterance clear them thus addressed. Point 455. Ye sons of Atreus, and ye chiefs, the flower. Of all Achaia. Priam and the chiefs. Of Ilium, bade me to your ear impart. If chance such embassy might please your ear. The mind of Paris, author of the war. Point 460. The treasures which on board his ships he brought. From Argo's home, oh, had he perished first. He yields them with addition from his own. Not so the consort of the glorious prince. Brave Menelaus, her, although in Troy 465. All counsel otherwise, he still detains. Thus too I have in charge. Are ye inclined? That the dread sounding clamors of the field. Be cause to cease till we shall burn the dead? Then will we clash again, till heaven at length 470. Shall part us, and the doubtful strife decide. So spake Ideas, and all silence sat. Till at the last brave Diomede replied. No. We will none of Paris treasures now. Nor even Helen's self. A child may see 475. Destruction winging swifter course to Troy he said. The admiring Greeks with loud applause. All praised the speech of warlike Diomede. An answer thus the king of men returned. Ideas. Thou hast witnessed the resolve 480. Of the Achaean chiefs, whose choice is mine. But for the slain, I shall not envy them. A funeral pile, the spirit fled, delay. Suits not. Last rites cannot too soon be paid. Burn them. And let high thundering Jove attest 485. Himself mine oath, that war shall cease the while. So saying, he to all the gods appraised. His scepter, and Ideas homeward sped. To sacred Ilium. The Dardanians there. And Trojans, all assembled, his return 490. Expected anxious. He amid them told. Distinct his errand, when, at once dissolved. The whole assembly rose, these to collect. The scattered bodies, those to gather wood. While on the other side, the Greeks arose 495. As sudden, and all issuing from the fleet. Sought fuel, some, and some, the scattered dead. Now from the gently swelling flood profound. The sun arising, with his earliest rays. In his ascent to heaven smote on the fields. Point five hundred. When Greeks and Trojans met. Scarce could the slain. Be clear distinguished, but they cleansed from each. His clotted gore with water, and warm tears. Distilling copious, heaved them to the wains. But wailing none was heard, for such command 505. 
had Priam issued. Therefore heaping high. The bodies, silent and with sorrowing hearts. They burned them, and to sacred Troy returned. The Grecians also, on the funeral pile. The bodies heaping sad, burned them with fire 510. Together, and returned into the fleet. Then, ere the peep of dawn, and while the veil. Of night, though thinner, still o'erhung the earth. Achaeans, chosen from the rest, the pile. Encompassed. With a tomb, one tomb for all, 515. They crowned the spot of dust, and to the tomb. For safety of their fleet and of themselves. Strong fortress added of high wall and tower. With solid gates affording egress thence. Commodious to the mounted charioteer. 520. Deep foss and broad they also dug without. And planted it with piles. So toiled the Greeks. The gods, that mighty labor, from beside. The thunderer's throne with admiration viewed. When Neptune, shaker of the shores, began point 525. Eternal Father. Is there on the face. Of all the boundless earth one mortal man. Who will, in times to come, consult with heaven. Seest thou yon height of wall, and yon deep trench. With which the Grecians have their fleet enclosed, 530. And, careless of our blessing, hecatome. Or invocation have presented none. Far as the dayspring shoots herself abroad. So far the glory of this work shall spread. While Phoebus and myself, who, toiling hard, 535. Built walls for King Laomedon, shall see. Forgotten all the labor of our hands. To whom, indignant, thus high thundering Jove. O thou, who shakest the solid earth at will. What hast thou spoken? An inferior power, 540. A god of less sufficiency than thou. Might be allowed some fear from such a cause. Fear not. Where'er the morning shoots her beams. Thy glory shall be known. And when the Greeks. Shall seek their country through the waves again, 545. Then break this bulwark down, submerge it whole. And spreading deep with sand the spacious shore. As at the first, leave not a trace behind. Such conference held the gods. And now the sun. Went down, and, that great work performed, the Greeks 550. From tent to tent slaughtered the fatted ox. And ate their evening cheer. Meantime arrived. Large fleet with Lemnian wine. Unius, son. Of Jason and Hypsipyle, that fleet. From Lemnos freighted, and had stowed on board 555. A thousand measures from the rest apart. For the Atridae but the host at large. By traffic were supplied, some bartered brass. Others bright steel. Some purchased wine with hides. These with their cattle, with their captives those, 560. And the whole host prepared a glad regale. All night the Grecians feasted, and the host. Of Ilium, and all night deep planning Jove. Portended dire calamities to both. Thundering tremendous, pale was every cheek. 565. Each poured his goblet on the ground, nor dared. The hardiest drink, till he had first performed. Libation meet to the Saturnian king. Omnipotent, then, all retiring, sought. Their couches, and partook the gift of sleep. Point 570. Book 8. Argument of the Eighth Book. Jove calls a council, in which he forbids all interference of the gods between the Greeks and Trojans. He repairs to Ida, where, having consulted the scales of destiny, he directs his lightning against the Grecians. Nestor is endangered by the death of one of his horses. Diomede delivers him. In the chariot of Diomede they both hasten to engage Hector, whose charioteer is slain by Diomede. Jupiter again interposes by his thunders, and the whole Grecian host, discomfited, is obliged to seek refuge within the rampart. Diomede, with others, at sight of a favorable omen sent from Jove in answer to Agamemnon's prayer, sallies. Tusser performs great exploits, but is disabled by Hector. 
Juno and Pallas set forth from Olympus in aid of the Grecians, but are stopped by Jupiter, who reascends from Ida, and in heaven foretells the distresses which await the Grecians. Hector takes measures for the security of Troy during the night, and prepares his host for an assault to be made on the Grecian camp in the morning. Book 8. The saffron mantled morning now was spread. O'er all the nations, when the thunderer Jove. On the deep forked Olympian topmost height. Convened the gods in council, amid whom. He spake himself, they all attentive heard point five. Gods. Goddesses. Inhabitants of heaven. Attend, I make my secret purpose known. Let neither god nor goddess interpose. My counsel to rescind, but with one heart. Approve it, that it reach, at once, its end. 10. Whom I shall mark soever from the rest. Withdrawn, that he may Greeks or Trojans aid. Disgrace shall find him. Shamefully chastised. He shall return to the Olympian heights. Or I will hurl him deep into the gulfs fifteen. Of gloomy Tartarus, where hell shuts fast her iron gates, and spreads her brazen floor. As far below the shades, as earth from heaven. There shall he learn how far I pass in might. All others, which if ye incline to doubt, twenty. Now prove me. Let ye down the golden chain. From heaven, and at its nether links pull all. Both goddesses and gods. But me your king. Supreme in wisdom, ye shall never draw. To earth from heaven, toil adverse as ye may. 25. Yet I, when once I shall be pleased to pull. The earth itself, itself the sea, and you. Will lift with ease together, and will wind. The chain around the spiry summit sharp. Of the Olympian. That all things upheaved thirty. Shall hang in the mid-heaven. So far do I. Compared with all who live, transcend them all. He ended, and the gods long time amazed. Sat silent, for with awful tone he spake. But at the last palace blue-eyed began point thirty-five. Father. Saturnian Jove. Of King Supreme. We know thy force resistless, but our hearts. Feel not the less, when we behold the Greeks. Exhausting all the sorrows of their lot. If thou command, we, doubtless will abstain forty. From battle, yet such counsel to the Greeks. Suggesting still, as may in part effect. Their safety, lest thy wrath consume them all. To whom with smiles answered cloud-gatherer Jove. Fear not, my child. Stern as mine accent was, forty-five. I forced a frown, no more. For in mine heart. Not feel I but benevolence to thee he said, and to his chariot joined his steeds. Swift, brazen-hoofed, and mailed with wavy gold. He put on golden raiment, his bright scourge fifty. Of gold receiving rose into his seat. And lashed his steeds, they not unwilling flew. Midway the earth between and starry heaven. To spring-fed Ida, mother of wild beasts. He came, where stands in Gargarus his shrine fifty-five. Breathing fresh incense. There the sire of all. Arriving, loosed his coursers, and around. Involving them in gathered clouds opaque. Sat on the mountain's head, in his own might. Exulting, with the towers of Ilium all sixty. Beneath his eye, and the whole fleet of Greece. In all their tents, meantime, Achaia's sons. Took short refreshment, and for fight prepared. On the other side, though fewer, yet constrained. By strong necessity, throughout all Troy, sixty-five. In the defense of children and wives. Ardent, the Trojans panted for the field. Wide flew the city gates, forth rushed to war. Horsemen and foot, and tumult wild arose. They met, they clashed. Loud was the din of spears seventy. And bucklers on their bosoms brazen mailed. Encountering, shields in opposition from. Met bossy shields, and tumult wild arose. There many a shout and many a dying groan. Were heard, the slayer and the maimed aloud seventy-five. 
clamoring, and the earth was drenched with blood. Till sacred morn had brightened into noon. The volleyed weapons on both sides their task. Performed effectual, and the people fell. But when the sun had climbed the middle skies, eighty. The sire of all then took his golden scales. Doom against doom he wait, the eternal fates. In counterpoise, of Trojans and of Greeks. He riced the beam, low sank the heavier lot. Of the Achaeans, the Achaean doom eighty-five. Subsided, and the Trojans struck the skies. Then roared the thunders from the summit hurled. Of Ida, and his vivid lightnings flew. Into Achaia's host. They at the sight. Astonished stood, fear whitened every cheek. 90. Idomeneus dared not himself abide. That shock, nor Agamemnon stood, nor stood. The heroes Ajax, ministers of Mars. Gerenian Nestor, guardian of the Greeks. Alone fled not, nor he by choice remained, ninety-five. But by his steed retarded, which the mate. Of beauteous Helen, Paris, with a shaft. Had stricken where the forelock grows, apart. Of almost mortal. Tortured by the wound. Erect he rose, the arrow in his brain, one hundred. And writhing furious, scared his fellow steeds. Meantime, while, strenuous, with his falchion's edge. The hoary warrior stood slashing the reins. Through multitudes of fierce pursuers born. On rapid wheels, the dauntless charioteer 105. Approached him, Hector. Then, past hope, had died. The ancient king, but Diomede discerned. His peril imminent, and with a voice. Like thunder, called Ulysses to his aid. Laertes' noble son, four wiles renowned. 110. Art thou too fugitive, and turn'st thy back? Like the base multitude? Ah! Fear a lance. Implanted ignominious in thy spine. Stop, Nestor dies. Fell Hector is at hand. So shouted Diomede, whose summons loud, 115. Ulysses yet heard not, but, passing, flew with headlong haste to the Achaean fleet. Then, Diomede, unaided as he was, rushed Arden to the vanward, and before the steeds of the Nelian sovereign old 120. Standing, in accents winged, him thus addressed. Old chief. These youthful warriors are too brisk. For thee, pressed also by encroaching age. Thy servant too is feeble, and thy steeds are tardy. Mount my chariot. Thou shalt see one twenty-five. With what rapidity the steeds of Troy, pursuing or retreating, scour the field. I took them from that terror of his foes. Aeneas. Thine to our attendants leave. While these against the warlike powers of Troy one thirty. We push direct. That Hector's self may know. If my spear rage not furious as his own. He said, nor the Gerenian chief refused. Thenceforth their servants, Sthenelus and good. Euermedon, took charge of Nestor's steeds, 135. And they the chariot of Tydides both. Ascended, Nestor seized the reins, plied well. The scourge, and soon they met. Tydides hurled. At Hector first, while rapid he advanced. But missing Hector, wounded in the breast 140. Aeneopius his charioteer, the son. Of brave Thebius, managing the steeds. He fell. His fiery coursers at the sound. Startled, recoiled, and where he fell he died. Deep sorrow for his charioteer O. Erwelm, D. 145. The mind of Hector, yet, although he mourned. He left him, and another sought as brave nor wanted long his steeds a charioteer. For finding soon the son of Iphidus. Bold Archeptolemus, he bade him mount one fifty. His chariot, and the reins gave to his hand. Then deeds of bloodiest note should have ensued. Penned had the Trojans been, as lambs, in Troy. But for quick succor of the sire of all. 
Thundering, he downward hurled his candent bolt 155. To the horse feet of Diomede. Dyer fumed. The flaming sulfur, and both horses drove. Under the axle, belly to the ground. Forth flew the splendid reins from Nestor's hand. And thus to Diomede, appalled, he spake point 160. Back to the fleet, Tidides. Canst not see. That Jove ordains not, now, the victory thine? The son of Saturn glorifies today. This Trojan, and, if such his will, can make. The morrow ours, but vain it is to thwart 165. The mind of Jove, for he is lord of all. To him the valiant Diomede replied. Thou hast well said, old warrior. But the pang. That rings my soul, is this. The public ear. In Ilium shall from Hector's lips be told, 170. I drove Tidides, fearing me he fled. So shall he vaunt, and may the earth her jaws. That moment opening swallow me alive. Him answered the Gerenian warrior old. What set the son of Tydeus, glorious chief? 175. Should Hector so traduce thee as to call. Thee base and timid, neither Trojan him. Nor Darden would believe, nor yet the wives. Of numerous shielded warriors brave of Troy. Widowed by thy unconquerable arm. 180. So saying, he threw the fugitives his steeds. Turned swift to flight. Then Hector and his host. With clamor infinite their darts were winged. Showered after them, and Hector, mighty chief. Majestic, from afar, thus called aloud. Point 185. Tidides. Be the deny swift horsed. Were wont to grace with a superior seat. The mess of honor, and the brimming cup. But now will mock thee. Thou art woman now. Go, timorous girl. Thou never shalt behold 190. Me flying, climb our battlements, or lead. Our women captive. I will slay thee first. He ceased. Then Diomede in dread suspense. Thrice purposed, turning, to withstand the foe. And thrice in thunder from the mountain, top 195. Jove gave the signal of success to Troy. When Hector thus the Trojans hailed aloud. Trojans and Lycians, and close-warring sons. Of Dardanus, O oh, summon all your might. Now, now be men. I know that from his heart two hundred. Saturnian Jove glory and bright success. For me prepares, but havoc for the Greeks. Fools. They shall find this wall which they have raised. Too weak to check my course, a feeble guard. Contemptible, such also is the trench, 205. My steeds shall slide it with an easy leap. But when ye see me in their fleet arrived. Remember fire. Then bring me flaming brands. That I may burn their galleys and themselves. Slaughter beside them, struggling in the smoke. Point 210. He spake, and thus encouraged next his steeds. Xanthus. Podargus. And ye generous pair. Ethan and glossy Lampus. Now requite. Mine, and the bounty of Andromache. Far famed Aetian's daughter, she your bowl 215. With corn fresh flavored and with wine full oft. Half mingled, your refreshment seeking first. Air mine, who have a youthful husband's claim. Now follow. Now be swift, that we may seize. The shield of Nestor, brooded to the skies 220. As golden all, trappings and disc alike. Now from the shoulders of the equestrian chief. Tidides tear we off his splendid mail. The work of Vulcan. May we take but these. I have good hope that, ere this night be spent, 225. The Greeks shall climb their galleys and away. So vaunted he, but Juno with disdain. His proud boast heard, and shuddering in her throne. Rocked the Olympian. Turning then toward. The ocean's mighty sovereign, thus she spake. Point 230. Alas! Earth shaking sovereign of the waves! Feel'st thou no pity of the perishing Greeks? 
Yet Greece, in Hellas, with gifts nor few, nor sordid, and in Egi, honors thee. Whom therefore thou shouldst prosper. Would we all too thirty-five? Who favor Greece associate to repulse? The Trojans, and to check loud thundering Jove. On Ida seated he might lower alone. To whom the sovereign, shaker of the shores. Indignant. Juno. Rash in speech. What word two forty? Hath scaped thy lips? Never, with my consent. Shall we, the power subordinate, in arms? With Jove contend. He far excels us all. So they. Meantime, the trench and wall between. The narrow interval with steeds was fill, D245. Close thronged and shielded warriors. They're immured. By Priamy and Hector, fierce as Mars. They stood, for Hector had the help of Jove. And now with blazing fire their gallant barks. He had consumed, but Juno moved the mine 250. Of Agamemnon, vigilant himself. To exhortation of Achaia's host. Through camp and fleet the monarch took his way. And, his wide robe imperial in his hand. High on Ulysses' huge black galley stood 255. The central ship conspicuous. Thence his voice. Might reach the most remote of all the line. At each extreme, where Ajax had his tent. Pitched, and Achilles, fearless of surprise. Thence, with loud voice, the Grecians thus he hailed. O oh, shame to Greece! Warriors in show alone. Where is your boasted prowess? Ye professed. Vainglorious erst in Lemnos, while ye fed. Plenteously on the flesh of beeves full grown. And crowned your beakers high, that ye would face two sixty five. Each man a hundred Trojans in the field. Aye. Twice a hundred, yet are all too few. To face one Hector now. Nor doubt I ought. But he shall soon fire the whole fleet of Greece. Jove. Father. What great sovereign ever felt two seventy? Thy frowns as I? Whom hast thou shamed as me? Yet I neglected not, through all the course. Of our disastrous voyage, in the hope. That we should vanquish Troy, thy sacred rites. But where I found thine altar, piled it high two seventy-five. With fat and flesh of bulls, on every shore. But oh, vouchsafe to us, that we at least. Ourselves, delivered, may escape the sword. Nor let their foes thus tread the Grecians down. He said. The Eternal Father pitying saw 280. His tears, and for the monarch's sake preserved. The people. Instant, surest of all signs. He sent his eagle, in his pounces strong. A fawn he bore, fruit of the nimble hind. Which fast beside the beauteous altar raised 285. To Penomphe and Jove sudden he dropped. They, conscious, soon, that sent from Jove he came. More ardent sprang to fight. Then none of all. Those numerous chiefs could boast that he outstripped. Tidides, urging forth beyond the Foss 290. His rapid steeds, and rushing to the war. He, foremost far, a Trojan slew, the son. Of Fradman, Agilos, as he turned. His steeds to flight, him turning with his spear. Through back and bosom Diomed transpierced point two ninety five, And with loud clangor of his arms he fell. Then, royal Agamemnon passed the trench. And Menelaus, either Ajax, then. Clad with fresh prowess both, them followed, next. Idomeneus, with his heroic friend three hundred. In battle dread as homicidal Mars. Marians. Evaemon's son renowned. Succeeded, bold Euripilus, and ninth. Tusser, wide straining his impatient bow. He under covert fought of the broad shield 305. Of Telamonian Ajax, Ajax high. Upraised his shield. The hero from beneath. Took aim, and whom his arrow struck, he fell. 
then close as to his mother's side a child. For safety creeps, Tusser to Ajax side 310. Retired, and Ajax shielded him again. Whom then slew Tusser first, illustrious chief? Orsilicus, and Ophelestes, first. And Orminus he slew, then Dieter died. Chromius and Lycophons brave in fight 315. With a Mopaeon Polyemon's son. And Melanippus. These, together heaped. All fell by Tusser on the plain of Troy. The Trojan ranks thinned by his mighty bow. The king of armies Agamemnon saw 320. Well pleased, and him approaching, thus began. Brave Telamonian Tusser, oh, my friend. Thus shoot, that light may visit once again. The deny, and Telamon rejoice. The Telamon within his own abode 325. Reared although spurious, mount him, in return. Although remote, on glory's heights again. I tell thee, and the effect shall follow sure. Let but the thunderer and Minerva grant. The pillage of fair Ilium to the Greeks, 330. And I will give to thy victorious hand. After my own, the noblest recompense. A tripod or a chariot with its steeds. Or some fair captive to partake thy bed. To whom the generous Tusser thus replied, point 335. Atrides. Glorious monarch. Wherefore me? Exhortest thou to battle? Who myself? Glow with sufficient ardor, and such strength. As heaven affords me spare not to employ. Since first we drove them back, with watchful eye 340. Their warriors I have marked, eight shafts my bow. Hath sent long barbed, and every shaft, well aimed. The body of some Trojan youth robust. Hath pierced, but still you ravening wolf escapes. He said, and from the nerve another shaft 345. Impatient send at Hector, but it flew. Devious, and brave Gorgithian struck instead. Him beautiful Castianira, brought. By Priam from Isima, nymph of form. Celestial, to the king of Ilium bore. 350. As in the garden, with the weight surcharged. Of its own fruit, and drenched by vernal rains. The poppy falls oblique, so he is head. Hung languid, by his helmet's weight depressed. Then Tusser yet an arrow from the nerve 355. Dispatched at Hector, with impatience fired. To pierce him, but again his weapon aired. Turned by Apollo, and the bosom struck. Of Archeptolemus, his rapid steeds. To battle urging, Hector's charioteer. 360. He fell, his fiery coursers at the sound. Recoiled, and lifeless where he fell he lay. Deep sorrow for his charioteer the mind. Overwhelmed he of Hector, yet he left the slain. And seeing his own brother nigh at hand 365. Cebriones, him summoned to the reins. Who with alacrity that charge received. Then Hector, leaping with a dreadful shout. From his resplendent chariot, grasped a stone. And rushed on Tusser, vengeance in his heart. 370. Tusser had newly fitted to the nerve. An arrow keen selected from the rest. And warlike Hector, while he stood the cord. Retracting, smote him with that rugged rock. Just where the key bone interposed divides 375. The neck and bosom. A most mortal part. It snapped the bowstring, and with numbing force. Struck dead his hand, low on his knees he dropped. And from his opening grasp let fall the bow. Then not unmindful of a brother fallen 380. Was Ajax, but, advancing rapid, stalked. Around him, and his broad shield interposed. Till brave Alistair and Mesistius, son. Of Echius, friends of Tusser. From the earth. Upraised and bore him groaning to the fleet. 385. And now again fresh force Olympian Jove. Gave to the Trojans, right toward the foss. They drove the Greeks, while Hector in the van. Advanced, death menacing in every look. As some fleet hound close threatening flank or haunch 390. 
of boar or lion, oft as he his head. Turns flying, marks him with a steadfast eye. So Hector chased the Grecians, slaying still. The hindmost of the scattered multitude. But when, at length, both piles and hollow foss 395. They had surmounted, and no few had fallen. By Trojan hands, within their fleet they stood. Imprisoned, calling each to each, and prayer. With lifted hands, loud offering to the gods. With gorgon looks, meantime, and eyes of Mars, four hundred. Hector impetuous his main-tossing steeds. From side to side before the rampart drove. When white-armed Juno pitying the Greeks. In accents winged her speech to Pallas turned. Alas, Jove's daughter. Shall not we at least four o five? In this extremity of their distress. Care for the Grecians by the fatal force. Of this one chief destroyed? I can endure. The rage of Priamy and Hector now. No longer. Such dire mischiefs he hath wrought. Point four ten. Whom answered thus Pallas, Carolean eyed? And Hector had himself long since his life. Resigned and raged together, by the Greeks. Slain under Ilium's walls, but Jove, my sire. Mad counsels executing and perverse, for fifteen. Me counterworks in all that I attempt. Norot remembers how I saved off times. His son enjoined full many a task severe. By King Eurystheus. To the gods he wept. And me Jove sent in haste to his relief. 420. But had I then foreseen what now I know. When through the adamantine gates he passed. To bind the dog of hell, by the deep floods. Hemmed in of sticks, he had returned no more. But Thetis wins him now, her will prevails, for twenty-five. And mine he hates, for she hath kissed his knees. And grasped his beard, and him in prayer implored. That he would honor her heroic son. Achilles, city waster prince renowned. Tis well, the day shall come when Jove again four thirty. Shall call me darling, and his blue-eyed maid. As heretofore, but thou thy steeds prepare. While I, my father's mansion entering, arm. For battle. I would learn by trial sure. If Hector, Priam's offspring famed in fight 435. Ourselves appearing in the walks of war. Will greet us gladly. Doubtless at the fleet. Some Trojan also, shall to dogs resign. His flesh for food, and to the fowls of heaven. So counseled Pallas, nor the daughter dread 440. Of mighty Saturn, Juno, disapproved. But busily and with dispatch prepared. The trappings of her coursers golden reigned. Meantime, Minerva progeny of Jove. On the adamantine floor of his abode 445. Let fall profuse her variegated robe. Labor of her own hands. She first put on. The corslet of the cloud assembler god. Then armed her for the field of Wa, complete. Mounting the fiery chariot, next she seized 450. Her ponderous spear, huge, irresistible. With which Jove's awful daughter levels ranks. Of heroes against whom her anger burns. Juno with lifted lash urged on the steeds. At their approach, spontaneous roared the wide 455. Unfolding gates of heaven. The heavenly gates. Kept by the watchful hours, to whom the charge. Of the Olympian summit appertains. And of the boundless ether, back to roll. And to replace the cloudy barrier dense. 460. Spurred through the portal flew the rapid steeds. Which when the eternal father from the heights. Of Ida saw, kindling with instant ire. To golden pinioned Iris thus he spake. Haste, Iris, turn them thither whence they came. 465. Me let them not encounter, honor small. To them, to me, should from that strife accrue. Tell them, and the effect shall sure ensue. That I will smite their steeds, and they shall halt. Disabled. Break their chariot, dash themselves four seventy. Headlong, and ten whole years shall not efface. The wounds by my avenging bolts impressed. 
so shall my blue-eyed daughter learn to dread. A father's anger, but for the offense. Of Juno, I resent it less. For she 475. Clashes with all my counsels from of old. He ended, Iris with a tempest speed. From the Idean summit soared at once. To the Olympian. At the open gates. Exterior of the mountain many, veiled 480. She stayed them, and her coming thus declared. Whither, and for what cause? What rage is this? Ye may not aid the Grecians, Jove forbids. The son of Saturn threatens, if ye force. His wrath by perseverance into act 485. That he will smite your steeds, and they shall halt. Disabled. Break your chariot, dash yourselves. Headlong, and ten whole years shall not efface. The wounds by his avenging bolts impressed. So shall his blue-eyed daughter learn to dread 490. A father's anger, but for the offense. Of Juno, he resents it less. For she. Clashes with all his counsels from of old. But thou, Minerva, if thou dare indeed. Lift thy vast spear against the breast of Jove for ninety-five. Incorrigible art and dead to shame. So saying, the rapid Iris disappeared. And thus her speech to Pallas Juno turned. Ah Pallas, progeny of Jove. Henceforth. No longer, in the cause of mortal men, five hundred. Contend we against Jove. Perish or live. Grecians or Trojans as he wills. Let him. Dispose the order of his own concerns. And judge between them, as of right he may. So saying, she turned the coursers, them the hours 505. Released, and to ambrosial mangers bound. Then thrust their chariot to the luminous wall. They, mingling with the gods, on golden thrones. Dejected sat, and Joe from Ida born. Reached the Olympian heights, seat of the gods. Point five ten. His steeds the glorious king of ocean loosed. And thrust the chariot, with its veil o'erspread. Into its station at the altar's side. Then sat the thunderer on his throne of gold. Himself, and the huge mountain shook. Meantime 515. Juno and Pallas, seated both apart. Spake not or questioned him. Their mute reserve. He noticed, conscious of the cause, and said. Juno and Pallas, wherefore sit ye sad? Not through fatigue by glorious fight incur, D520. And slaughter of the Trojans whom ye hate. Mark now the difference. Not the gods combined. Should have constrained me back, till all my force. Superior as it is, had failed, and all. My fortitude. But ye, ere ye beheld 525. The wonders of the field, trembling retired. And ye did well, hear what had else befallen. My bolts had found you both, and ye had reached. In your own chariot born, the Olympian height. Seat of the blessed immortals, never more. Point five thirty. He ended. Juno and Minerva heard. Low murmuring deep disgust, and side by side. Devising sat calamity to Troy. Minerva, through displeasure against Jove. Not uttered, for her bosom boiled with rage, 535. But Juno checked not hers, who thus replied. What word hath passed thy lips, Jove most severe? We know thy force resistless, yet our hearts. Feel not the less when we behold the Greeks. Exhausting all the sorrows of their lot. 540. If thou command, we doubtless will abstain. From battle, yet such counsel to the Greeks. Suggesting still, as may in part effect. Their safety, lest thy wrath consume them all. Then answer, thus, cloud gatherer Jove returned. 545. Look forth, imperial Juno, if thou wilt. Tomorrow at the blush of earliest dawn. And thou shalt see Saturn's almighty sun. The Argive host destroying far and wide. For Hector's fury shall admit no pause 550. Till he have roused Achilles, in that day. 
when at the ships, in perilous straits, the hosts shall wage fierce battle for Patroclus slain. Such is the voice of fate. But, as for thee, withdraw thou to the confines of the abyss 555, where Saturn and Iapetus retired. Exclusion sad endure from balmy airs. And from the light of morn, hell girt around. I will not call thee thence. No. Should thy rage transport thee thither, there thou mayst abide. 560. There sullen nurse thy disregarded spleen. Obstinate as thou art, and void of shame. He ended, to whom Juno not replied. And now the radiant sun in ocean sank. Drawing night after him o'er all the earth. 565. Night, undesired by Troy, but to the Greeks. Thrice welcome for its interposing gloom. Then Hector on the river's brink fast by. The Grecian fleet, where space he found unstrood. With carcasses convened the chiefs of Troy.570. They, there dismounting, listened to the words. Of Hector Jove beloved. He grasped a spear. In length eleven cubits, bright its head. Of brass, and colored with a ring of gold. He leaned on it, and ardent thus began.575. Trojans, Dardanians, and allies of Troy. I hoped, this evening, every ship consumed. And all the Grecians slain, to have returned. To windswept Ilium. But the shades of night. Have intervened, and to the night they owe, 580. In chief, their whole fleet's safety and their own. Now, therefore, as the night enjoins, all take. Needful refreshment. Your high-mettled steeds. Release, lay food before them, and in haste. Drive hither from the city fatted sheep 585. And oxen. Bring ye from your houses bread. Make speedy purchase of heart-cheering wine. And gather fuel plenteous, that all night. E'en till Aurora, daughter of the morn. Shall look abroad, we may with many fires 590. Illume the skies. Lest even in the night. Launching, they mount the billows and escape. Beware that they depart not unannoyed. But, as he leaps on board, give each a wound. With shaft or spear, which he shall nurse at home. 595. So shall the nations fear us, and shall vex. With ruthless war Troy's gallant sons no more. Next, let the heralds, ministers of Jove. Loud notice issue that the boys well grown. An ancient silver-haired on the high towers six hundred. Built by the gods, keep watch. On every hearth. In Troy, let those of the inferior sex. Make sprightly blaze, and place ye there a guard. Sufficient, lest in absence of the troops. An ambush enter, and surprise the town.605. Act thus, ye dauntless Trojans. The advice is wholesome, and shall serve the present need. And so much for the night, ye shall be told. The business of the morn when morn appears. It is my prayer to Jove and to all heaven 610. Not without hope, that I may hence expel. These dogs, whom Ilium's unpropitious fates have wafted hither in their sable barks. But we will also watch this night, ourselves. And, arming with the dawn, will at their ship 615. Give them brisk onset. Then shall it appear. If Diomede the brave shall me compel. Back to our walls, or I, his arms blood-stained. Torn from his breathless body, bear away. Tomorrow, if he dare but to abide 620. My lance, he shall not want occasion meet. For show of valor. But much more I judge. That the next rising sun shall see him slain. With no few friends around him. Would to heaven. I were as sure to escape the blight of age 625. And share their honors with the gods above. As comes the morrow fraught with what to Greece. So Hector, whom his host with loud acclaim. All praised. Then each his sweating steeds released. And reined them safely at his chariot side. 630. 
and now from Troy provision large they brought. Oxen, and sheep, with store of wine and bread. And fuel much was gathered. Next the gods. With sacrifice they sought, and from the plain. Up wafted by the winds the smoke aspired 635. Savory, but unacceptable to those. Above. Such hatred in their hearts they bore. To Priam, to the people of the brave. Spear practiced Priam, and to sacred Troy. Big with great purposes and proud, they sat, 640. Not disarrayed, but in fair form disposed. Of even ranks, and watched their numerous fires. As when around the clear bright moon, the stars. Shine in full splendor, and the winds are hushed. The groves, the mountaintops, the headland, heights 645. Stand all apparent, not a vapor streaks. The boundless blue, but ether opened wide. All glitters, and the shepherd's heart is cheered. So numerous seemed those fires the bank between. Of Xanthus, blazing, and the fleet of Greece 650. In prospect all of Troy, a thousand fires. Each watched by fifty warriors seated near. The steeds beside the chariots stood, their corn. Chewing, and waiting till the golden throned. Aurora should restore the light of day. Point 655. Book 9. Argument of the Ninth Book. By advice of Nestor, Agamemnon sends Ulysses, Phoenix, and Ajax to the tent of Achilles with proposals of reconciliation. They execute their commission, but without effect. Phoenix remains with Achilles, Ulysses and Ajax return. Book 9. So watched the Trojan host, but thoughts of flight. Companions of chill fear, from heaven infused. Possessed the Grecians, every leader's heart. Bled, pierced with anguish insupportable. As when two adverse winds blowing from Thrace, five. Boreas and Zephyrus, the fishy deep. Vex sudden, all around, the sable flood. High curled, flings forth the salt weed on the shore. Such tempest rent the mind of every Greek. Forth stalked a trides with heart riving with ten. Transfixed, he bade his heralds call by name. Each chief to counsel, but without the sound. Of proclamation, and that task himself. Among the foremost sedulous performed. The sad assembly sat. When weeping fast fifteen. As some deep fountain pours its rapid stream. Down from the summit of a lofty rock. King Agamemnon in the midst arose. And, groaning, the Achaeans thus addressed. Friends, counselors and leaders of the Greeks. 20. In dire perplexity Saturnian Jove. Involves me, cruel, he assured me erst. And solemnly, that I should not return. Till I had wasted wall and circle Troy. But now, ah fraudulent and foul reverse. 25. Commands me back inglorious to the shores. Of distant Argos, with diminished troops. So stands the purpose of Almighty Jove. Who many a citadel hath laid in dust. And shall hereafter, matchless in his power. Point thirty. Haste therefore. My advice is, that we all. Fly with our fleet into our native land. For wide-built Ilium shall not yet be ours. He ceased, and all sat silent, long the sons. Of Greece, o'erwhelmed with sorrow, silent sat, thirty-five. When thus, at last, bold Diomede began. Atrides. Foremost of the chiefs I rise. To controvert thy purpose ill-conceived. And with such freedom as the laws, O king. Of consultation and debate allow point forty. Hear patient. Thou hast been thyself the first. Who e'er reproached me in the public ear. As one effeminate and slow to fight. How truly, let both young and old decide. The son of wily Saturn hath to thee forty-five. Given, and refused. He placed thee high in power. Gave thee to sway the scepter o'er us all. But courage gave thee not, his noblest gift. Art thou in truth persuaded that the Greeks are pusillanimous, as thou hast said? 50. 
if thy own fears impel thee to depart. Go thou, the way is open, numerous ships. Thy followers from Mycenae, line the shore. But we, the rest, depart not, till the spoil. Of Troy reward us. Or if all incline fifty-five. To seek again their native home, fly all. Myself and Sthenelus will persevere. Till Ilium fall, for with the gods we came. He ended. All the admiring sons of Greece. With shouts the warlike Diomed extolled, sixty. When thus equestrian Nestor next began. Tidides, thou art eminently brave. In fight, and all the princes of thy years. Excelst in counsel. None of all the Greeks. Shall find occasion just to blame thy speech sixty-five. Or to gainsay, yet thou hast fallen short. What wonder? Thou art young, and were myself. Thy father, thou shouldst be my latest born. Yet when thy speech is to the kings of Greece. It is well framed and prudent. Now attend. 70. Myself will speak, who have more years to boast. Than thou hast seen, and will so closely scan. The matter, that atrides, are supreme. Himself shall have no cause to censure me. He is a wretch, insensible and dead seventy-five. To all the charities of social life. Whose pleasure is in civil broils alone. But night is urgent, and with night's demands. Let all comply. Prepare we now repast. And let the guard be stationed at the trench eighty. Without the wall, the youngest shall supply. That service, next, atrides, thou begin. For thou art here supreme, thy proper task. Banquet the elders. It shall not disgrace. Thy sovereignty, but shall become thee well. Point eighty five. Thy tents are filled with wine which day by day. Ships bring from Thrace, accommodation large. Hast thou, and numerous is thy menial train. Thy many guests assembled, thou shalt hear. Our counsel, and shalt choose the best, great need ninety. Have all Achaia's sons, now, of advice. Most prudent, for the foe, fast by the fleet. Hath kindled numerous fires, which who can see? Unmoved. This night shall save us or destroy. He spake, whom all with full consent approved. Point ninety five. Forth rushed the guard well armed, first went the son of Nestor, Thrasymedes, valiant chief. Then, sons of Mars, Ascalaphus advanced. And brave Iamanus. Whom followed next? Deiparus, Apharius, Marians, one hundred. And Lycomedes, Creon's son renowned. Seven were the leaders of the guard, and each. A hundred spearmen headed, young and bold. Between the wall and trench their seat they chose. Their kindled fires, and each his food prepared. Point one o five. Atrides, then, to his pavilion led. The thronging chiefs of Greece, and at his board. Regaled them. They with readiness and keen. Dispatch of hunger shared the savory feast. And when nor thirst remained nor hunger more one ten. Unsated, Nestor then, arising first. Whose counsels had been ever wisest deemed. Warm for the public interest, thus began. Atrides. Glorious sovereign. King of men. Thou art my first and last, proem and close, one fifteen. For thou art mighty, and to thee are given. From Jove the scepter and the laws in charge. For the advancement of the general good. Hence, in peculiar, both to speak and hear. Become thy duty, and the best advice, 120. By whomsoever offered, to adopt. And to perform, for thou art judge alone. I will promulge the counsel which to me. Seems wisest. Such, that other Grecian none. Shall give thee better, neither is it new, 125. But I have ever held it since the day. When, most illustrious. Thou wast pleased to take. By force the maid Briseis from the tent. Of the enraged Achilles. Not, in truth. By my advice, who did dissuade thee much, 
130. But thou, complying with thy princely wrath, hast shamed a hero whom themselves the gods delight to honor, and his prize detainst. Yet even now contrive we, although late, by lenient gifts liberal, and by speech 135. Conciliatory, to assuage his ire. Then answered Agamemnon, king of men. Old chief. There is no falsehood in thy charge. I have offended, and confessed the wrong. The warrior is alone a host, whom Jove 140. Loves as he loves Achilles, for whose sake. He hath Achaia's thousands thus subdued. But if the impulse of a wayward mind. Obeying, I have erred, behold me, now. Prepared to soothe him with atonement large 145. Of gifts inestimable, which by name. I will propound in presence of you all. Seven tripods, never sullied yet with fire. Of gold ten talents, twenty cauldrons bright. Twelve coursers, strong, victorious in the race, one fifty. No man possessing prizes such as mine. Which they have won for me, shall feel the want. Of acquisitions splendid or of gold. Seven virtuous female captives will I give. Expert in arts domestic, lesbians all, one fifty five. Whom, when himself took Lesbos, I received. My chosen portion, passing womankind. In perfect loveliness of face and form. These will I give, and will with these resign. Her whom I took, Briseis, with an oath 160. Most solemn, that unconscious as she was. Of my embraces, such I yield her his. All these I give him now. And if at length. The gods vouchsafe to us to overturn. Priam's great city, let him heap his ships 165. With gold and brass, entering and choosing first. When we shall share the spoil. Let him beside. Choose twenty from among the maids of Troy. Helen except, loveliest of all their sex. And if once more, the rich milk flowing land 170. We reach of Argos, he shall there become. My son-in-law, and shall enjoy like state. With him whom I in all abundance rear. My only son Orestes. At my home. I have three daughters. Let him thence conduct 175. To Thia, her whom he shall most approve. Chrysothemis shall be his bride, or else. Laodice, or if she please him more. Iphianassa, and from him I ask. No dower. Myself will such a dower bestow 180. As never father on his child before. Seven fair well-peopled cities I will give. Cardamile and Anope, and rich. In herbage, Hera, fairy stately built. And for her depth of pasturage renown, D-185. Anthea. Proud Epea's lofty towers. And Pedasus empurpled dark with vines. All these are maritime, and on the shore. They stand of Pylos, by a race possessed. Most rich in flocks and herds, who tributes large, 190. And gifts presenting to his sceptered hand. Shall hold him high in honor as a god. These will I give him if from wrath he cease. Let him be overcome. Pluto alone. Is found implacable and deaf to prayer, 195. Whom therefore of all gods men hate the most. My power is greater, and my years than his. More numerous, therefore let him yield to me. To him Gerenian Nestor thus replied. Atrides. Glorious sovereign. King of men. Two hundred. No sordid gifts, or to be viewed with scorn. Givest thou the prince Achilles. But away. Send chosen messengers, who shall the son. Of Peleus, instant, in his tent address. Myself will choose them be it theirs to obey. 205. Let Phoenix lead, Jove loves him. Be the next. Huge Ajax, and the wise Ulysses third. Of heralds, Odius and Eurybides. Shall them attend. Bring water for our hands. Give charge that every tongue abstain from speech 210. Portentous, 
and propitiate Jove by prayer. He spake, and all were pleased. The heralds poured pure water on their hands. Attendant youths. The beakers crowned, and wine from right to left. Distributed to all. Libation made, 2.15. All drank, and in such measure as they chose. Then hasted forth from Agamemnon's tent. Gerini and Nestor at their side them oft. Instructed, each admonishing by looks. Significant, and motion of his eyes, 2.20 but most Ulysses, to omit no means. By which Achilles likeliest might be won. Along the margin of the sounding deep. They passed, to Neptune, compasser of earth. Preferring vows ardent with numerous prayers, 225. That they might sway with ease the mighty mind. Of fierce Eacides. And now they reached. The station where his Myrmidons abode. Him solacing they found his heart with notes. Struck from his silver-framed harmonious lyre, 230. Among the spoils he found it when he sacked. Aetian city. With that lyre his cares. He soothed, and glorious heroes were his theme. Patroclus silence sat, and he alone. Before him, on Eacides' intent, 235. Expecting still when he should cease to sing. The messengers advanced, Ulysses first. Into his presence, at the sight, his harp. Still in his hand, Achilles from his seat. Started astonished, nor with less amaze 240. Patroclus also, seeing them, arose. Achilles seized their hands, and thus he spake. Hail friends! Ye all are welcome. Urgent cause. Hath doubtless brought you whom I dearest hold. Though angry still, of all Achaia's host. 245. So saying, he introduced them, and on seats. Placed them with purple heiress overspread. Then thus bespake Patroclus standing nigh. Son of Menoetius. Bring a beaker more. Capacious, and replenish it with wine 250. Diluted less. Then give to each his cup. For dearer friends than these who now arrive. My roof beneath, or worthier, have I none. He ended, and Patroclus quick obeyed. Whom much he loved. Achilles, then, himself 255. Advancing near the fire an ample tray. Spread goat's flesh on it, with the flesh of sheep. And of a fatted brawn, of each a chine. Automaton attending held them fast while with sharp steel Achilles from the bone 260. Slice thin the meat, then pierced it with the spits. Meantime the godlike Menoetiates kindled fierce fire, and when the flame declined, raked wide the embers, laid the meat to roast, and taking sacred salt from the hearth, side 265, where it was treasured, showered it o'er the feast. When all was finished, and the board set forth, Patroclus furnished it around with bread. In baskets, and Achilles served the guests. Beside the tent wall, opposite, he sat 270. To the divine Ulysses, first he bade. Patroclus make oblation. He consigned. The consecrated morsel to the fire. And each, at once, his savory mess assailed. When neither edge of hunger now they felt 275 nor thirsted longer, Ajax with a nod. Made sign to Phoenix, which Ulysses marked. And charging high his cup, drank to his host. Health to Achilles. Hospitable cheer. And well prepared, we want not at the board 280. Of royal Agamemnon, or at thine. For both are nobly spread, but dainties now. Or plenteous boards, are little our concern. O oh godlike chief! Tremendous ills we sit. Contemplating with fear, doubtful if life 285. Or death, with the destruction of our fleet. Attend us, unless thou put on thy might. For lo! The haughty Trojans, with their friends. Called from afar, at the fleet side in camp. Fast by the wall, where they have kindled fires 290. Numerous, and threaten that no force of ours. 
shall check their purposed inroad on the ships. Jove grants them favorable signs from heaven. Bright lightnings. Hector glares revenge, with rage. Infuriate, and by Jove assisted, heeds 295. Nor God nor man, but praise the morn to rise. That he may hew away our vessel heads. Burn all our fleet with fire. And at their sides. Slay the Achaeans struggling in the smoke. Horrible are my fears lest these his threats three hundred. The gods accomplish, and it be our doom. To perish here, from Argos far remote. Up, therefore. If thou canst, and now at last. The weary sons of all Achaia save. From Trojan violence. Regret, but vain, 305. Shall else be thine hereafter, when no cure. Of such great ill, once suffered, can be found. Thou therefore, seasonably kind, devise. Means to preserve from such disastrous fate. The Grecians. Ah, my friend. When Peleus the 310. From Thya sent to Agamemnon's aid. On that same day he gave thee thus in charge. Juno, my son, and Pallas, if they please. Can make thee valiant, but thy own big heart. Thyself restrain. Sweet manners win respect. 315. Cease from pernicious strife, and young and old. Throughout the host shall honor thee the more. Such was thy father's charge, which thou, it seems, rememberst not. Yet even now thy wrath. Renounce, be reconciled. For princely gifts 320. Atrides gives thee if thy wrath subside. Here, if thou wilt, and I will tell thee all. How vast the gifts which Agamemnon made. By promise thine, this night within his tent. Seven tripods and never sullied yet with fire. 325. Of gold ten talents, twenty cauldrons bright. Twelve steeds strong-limbed, victorious in the race. No man possessing prizes such as those. Which they have won for him, shall feel the want. Of acquisition splendid, or of gold. 330. Seven virtuous female captives he will give. Expert in arts domestic, lesbians all. Whom when thou conquer dst lesbos, he received. His chosen portion, passing womankind. In perfect loveliness of face and form. 335. These will he give, and will with these resign. Her whom he took, Briseis, with an oath. Most solemn, that unconscious as she was. Of his embraces, such he yields her back. All these he gives thee now. And if at length 340. The gods vouchsafe to us to overturn. Priam's great city, thou shalt heap thy ships. With gold and brass, entering and choosing first. When we shall share the spoil. And shalt beside. Choose twenty from among the maids of Troy 345. Helen except, loveliest of all their sex. And if once more the rich milk flowing land. We reach of Argos, thou shalt there become. His son-in-law, and shalt enjoy like state. With him, whom he in all abundance rears, 350. His only son Orestes. In his house. He hath three daughters. Thou mayst home conduct. To Thia, her whom thou shalt most approve. Chrysothemis shall be thy bride, or else. Laodice, or if she please thee more 355. Iphianassa, and from thee he asks. No dower. Himself will such a dower bestow. As never father on his child before. Seven fair well-peopled cities will he give. Cardamile and Anope, and rich 360. In herbage, Hera, fairy stately built. And for her depth of pasturage renowned. Anthea. Proud Epea's lofty towers. And Pedasus empurpled dark with vines. All these are maritime, and on the shore 365. They stand of Pylos, by a race possessed. Most rich in flocks and herds, who tribute large. And gifts presenting to thy sceptered hand. 
shall hold thee high in honor as a god. These will he give thee, if thy wrath subside.370. But shouldst thou rather in thine heart the more. Both Agamemnon and his gifts detest. Yet O compassionate the afflicted host. Prepared to adore thee. Thou shalt win renown. Among the Grecians that shall never die.375. Now strike at Hector. He is here, himself. Provokes thee forth, madness is in his heart. And in his rage he glories that our ships. Have hither brought no Grecian brave as he. Then thus Achilles matchless in the race.380. Laertes noble son, for wiles renowned. I must with plainness speak my fixed resolve. Unalterable, lest I hear from each. The same long murmured melancholy tale. For I abhor the man, not more the gates 385. Of hell itself, whose words belie his heart. So shall not mine. My judgment undisguised. Is this, that neither Agamemnon me. Nor all the Greeks shall move, for ceaseless toil. Wins here no thanks. One recompense awaits 390. The sedentary and the most alert. The brave and base in equal honor stand. And drones and heroes fall unwept alike. I after all my labors, who exposed. My life continual in the field, have earned D395. No very sumptuous prize. As the poor bird. Gives to her unfledged brood a morsel gained. After long search, though wanting it herself. So I have worn out many sleepless nights. And waited deep through many a bloody day four hundred. In battle for their wives. I have destroyed. Twelve cities with my fleet, and twelve, save one. On foot contending in the fields of Troy. From all these cities, precious spoils I took. Abundant, and to Agamemnon's hand 405. Gave all the treasure. He within his ships. Abode the while, and having all received. Little distributed, and much retained. He gave, however, to the kings and chiefs. A portion, and they keep it. Me alone 410. Of all the Grecian host he hath despoiled. My bride, my soul's delight is in his hands. And let him, couched with her, enjoy his fill. Of dalliance. What sufficient cause, what need? Have the Achaeans to contend with Troy, 415? Why hath the tribes gathered such a host? And led them hither? Was not for the sake. Of beauteous Helen? And of all mankind. Can none be found who love their proper wives? But the Atridae? There is no good man 420. Who loves not, guards not, and with care provides. For his own wife, and, though in battle won. I loved the fair Briseis at my heart. But having dispossessed me of my prize. So foully, let him not assay me now, for twenty-five. For I am warned, and he shall not prevail. With thee and with thy peers let him advise. Ulysses. How the fleet may likeliest, scape. Yon hostile fires. Full many an arduous task. He hath accomplished without aid of mine, four thirty. So hath he now this rampart and the trench. Which he hath digged around it, and with stakes. Planted contiguous, puny barriers all. To hero slaughtering Hector's force opposed. While I the battle waged, present myself 435. Among the Achaeans, Hector never fought. Far from his walls, but to the Scian gate. Advancing and the beech tree, there remained. Once, on that spot he met me, and my arm. Escaped with difficulty even there. 440. But, since I feel myself not now inclined. To fight with noble Hector, yielding first. To Jove do worship, and to all the gods. Tomorrow will I launch, and give my ships. Their lading. Look thou forth at early dawn, 445. And, if such spectacle delight thee aught, thou shalt behold me cleaving with my prows. The waves of Hellespont, and all my crews. Of lusty rowers active in their task. 
so shall I reach, if ocean's mighty God 450. Prosper my passage, Thaya the deep-soiled. On the third day. I have possessions there. Which hither roaming in an evil hour. I left abundant. I shall also hence. Convey much treasure, gold and burnished brass 455. And glittering steel, and women passing fair. My portion of the spoils. But he, your king. The prize he gave, himself resumed. And taunted at me. Tell him I reply. And tell it him aloud, that other Greeks 460. May indignation feel like me, if armed. Always in impudence, he seek to wrong. Them also. Let him not henceforth presume. Canine and hard in aspect though he be. To look me in the face. I will not share 465. His counsels, neither will I aid his works. Let it suffice him, that he wronged me once. Deceived me once, henceforth his glozing arts. Are lost on me. But let him rot in peace. Crazed as he is, and by the stroke of Jove 470. Infatuate. I detest his gifts, and him. So honor as the thing which most I scorn. And would he give me twenty times the worth? Of this his offer, all the treasured heaps. Which he possesses, or shall yet possess, for seventy-five. All that Orchomenos within her walls. And all that opulent Egyptian Thebes. Receives. The city with a hundred gates. Whence twenty thousand chariots rush to war. And would he give me riches as the sands for eighty. And as the dust of earth, no gifts from him. Should soothe me. Till my soul were first avenged. For all the offensive license of his tongue. I will not wed the daughter of your chief. Of Agamemnon. Could she vie in charms 485. With golden Venus, had she all the skill. Of blue-eyed Pallas, even so endowed. She were no bride for me. No. He may choose. From the Achaeans some superior prince. One more her equal. Peleus, if the gods 490. Preserve me, and I safe arrive at home. Himself, ere long, shall mate me with a bride. In Hellas and in Thia may be found. Fair damsels many, daughters of the chiefs. Who guard our cities, I may choose of them for ninety-five. And make the loveliest of them all my own. There, in my country, it hath ever been. My dearest purpose, wedded to a wife. Of rank convenient, to enjoy in peace. Such wealth as ancient Peleus hath acquired. Five hundred. For life, in my account, surpasses far. In value all the treasures which report. Ascribed to populous Ilium, ere the Greeks. Arrived, and while the city yet had peace. Those also which Apollo's marble shrine 505. In rocky Pytho boasts. Fat flocks and beeves. May be by force obtained, tripods and steeds. Are bought or won, but if the breath of man. Once overpass its bounds, no force arrests. Or may constrain the unbodied spirit back. 510. Me, as my silver-footed mother speaks. Thetis, a twofold consummation waits. If still with battle I encompass Troy. I win immortal glory, but all hope. Renounce of my return. If I return 515. To my beloved country, I renounce. The illustrious meed of glory, but obtain. Secure and long immunity from death. And truly I would recommend to all. To voyage homeward, for the fall as yet 520. Ye shall not see of Ilium's lofty towers. For that the thunderer with uplifted arm. Protects her, and her courage hath revived. Bear ye mine answer back, as is the part. Of good ambassadors, that they may frame 525. Some likelier plan, by which both fleet and host. May be preserved, for, my resentment still. Burning, this project is but premature. Let Phoenix stay with us, and sleep this night. Within my tent, that, 
if he so incline, 5.30. He may tomorrow in my fleet embark. And hence attend me, but I leave him free. He ended. They astonished at his tone. For vehement he spake, sat silent all. Till Phoenix, aged warrior, at the last 5.35. Gushed into tears, for dread his heart o'erwhelmed. Lest the whole fleet should perish, and replied. If thou indeed have purpose to return. Noble Achilles. And such wrath retainst. That thou art altogether fixed to leave 540. The fleet a prey to desolating fires. How then, my son? Shall I at Troy abide? Forlorn of thee? When Peleus, hoary chief. Sent thee to Agamemnon, yet a child. Unpractised in destructive fight, nor less 545. Of counsels ignorant, the schools in which. Great minds are formed, he bade me to the war. Attend thee forth. That I might teach thee all. Both elocution and address in arms. Me therefore shalt thou not with my consent 550. Leave here, my son. No, not with Jove himself. Promise me, reaping smooth this silver beard. To make me downy-cheeked as in my youth. Such as when erst from Hellas beauty famed. I fled, escaping from my father's wrath 555. A minter, son of Orminus, who loved. A beauteous concubine, and for her sake. Despised his wife and persecuted me. My mother suppliant at my knees, with prayer. Perpetual importune me to embrace 560. The damsel first, that she might loathe my sire. I did so. And my father soon possessed. With hot suspicion of the fact, let loose. A storm of imprecation, in his rage. Invoking all the furies to forbid 565. That ever son of mine should press his knees. Tartarian Jove and dread Persephone. Fulfilled his curses. With my pointed spear. I would have pierced his heart, but that my wrath. Some deity assuaged, suggesting oft 570. What shame and obloquy I should incur. Known as a parricide through all the land. At length, so treated, I resolved to dwell. No longer in his house. My friends, indeed. And all my kindred compassed me around 575. With much entreaty, wooing me to stay. Oxen and sheep they slaughtered, many a plump. Well-fatted brawn extended in the flames. And drank the old man's vessels to the lees. Nine nights continual at my side they slept 580. While others watched by turns, nor were the fires. Extinguished ever, one, beneath the porch. Of the barred hall, and one that from within. The vestibule illumined my chamber door. But when the tenth dark night at length arrived, 585. Sudden the chamber doors bursting I flew. That moment forth, and unperceived alike. By guards and menial woman, leaped the wall. Through spacious Hellas flying thence afar. I came at length to Thia the deep-soiled, 590. Mother of flocks, and to the royal house. Of Peleus. Peleus with a willing heart. Receiving, loved me as a father loves. His only son, the son of his old age. Inheritor of all his large domains. 595. He made me rich. Placed under my control. A populous realm, and on the skirts I dwelt. Of Thia, ruling the Dilopian race. Thee from my soul, thou semblance of the gods. I loved, and all illustrious as thou art, six hundred. Achilles. Such I made thee. For with me. Me only, wouldst thou forth to feast abroad. Nor wouldst thou taste thy food at home, till first. I placed thee on my knees, with my own hand. Thy viands carved and fed thee, and the wine six o five. Held to thy lips. And many a time, in fits. Of infant frowardness, the purple juice. Rejecting thou hast deluged all my vest. And filled my bosom. Oh, I have endured. Much, and have also much performed for thee, 610. 
thus purposing, that since the gods vouchsafed. No son to me, thyself shouldst be my son. Godlike Achilles. Who shouldst screen perchance? From a foul fate my else unsheltered age. Achilles. Bid thy mighty spirit down. Point 615. Thou shouldst not be thus merciless. The gods. Although more honorable, and in power. And virtue thy superiors, are themselves. Yet placable. And if a mortal man. Offend them by transgression of their laws. 620. Libation, incense, sacrifice, and prayer. In meekness offered turn their wrath away. Prayers are Jove's daughters, wrinkled, lame, slant-eyed. Which though far distant, yet with constant pace. Follow offense. Offense, robust of limb, 625. And treading firm the ground, outstrips them all. And over all the earth before them runs. Hurtful to man. They, following, heal the hurt. Received respectfully when they approach. They help us, and our prayers here in return. 630. But if we slight, and with obdurate heart. Resist them, to Saturnian Jove they cry. Against us, supplicating that offense. May cleave to us for vengeance of the wrong. Thou, therefore, O Achilles. Honor yields 635. To Jove's own daughters, vanquished, as the brave. Have oft times been, by honor paid to thee. For came not Agamemnon as he comes. With gifts in hand, and promises of more. Hereafter. Burned his anger still the same, 640. I would not move thee to renounce thy own. And to assist us, howsoe'er distressed. But now, not only are his present gifts. Most liberal, and his promises of more. Such also, but these princes he hath sent 645. Charged with entreaties, thine especial friends. And chosen for that cause, from all the host. Slight not their embassy, nor put to shame. Their intercession. We confess that once. Thy wrath was unreprovable and just. 650. Thus we have heard the heroes of old times. Applauded oft, whose anger, though intense. Yet left them open to the gentle sway. Of reason and conciliatory gifts. I recollect an ancient history, 655. Which, since all here are friends, I will relate. The brave Aetolians and Curides met. Beneath the walls of Caledon, and fought. With mutual slaughter. The Aetolian powers. In the defense of Caledon the fair, 660. And the Curides bent to lay it waste. That strife Diana of the golden throne. Kindled between them. With resentment fired. That Enus had not in some fertile spot. The first fruits of his harvest set apart 665. To her. With hecatombs he entertained. All the divinities of heaven beside. And her alone, daughter of Jove supreme. Or through forgetfulness, or some neglect. Serve not, omission careless and profane. 670. She, progeny of Jove, goddess shaft-armed. A savage boar bright tusked in anger sent. Which haunting Enus fields much havoc made. Trees numerous on the earth in heaps he cast. Uprooting them, with all their blossoms on. 675. But Meliager, Enus' son, at length. Slew him, the hunters gathering and the hounds. Of numerous cities, for a boar so vast. Might not be vanquished by the power of few. And many to their funeral piles he sent. 680. Then raised Diana clamorous dispute. And contest hot between them, all alike. Curides and Aetolians fierce in arms. The boar's head claiming, and his bristly hide. So long as warlike Meliager fought, 685. Aetolia prospered, nor with all their powers. Could the Curides stand before the walls? But when resentment once had fired the heart of Meliager, which hath tumult oft, excited in the breasts of wisest men, 690, 
for his own mother had his wrath provoked. Althea, thenceforth with his wedded wife. He dwelt, fair Cleopatra. Close retired. She was Marpessa's daughter, whom she bore. To Idas, bravest warrior in his day 695. Of all on earth. He feared not, gainst the king. Himself Apollo, for the lovely nymph. Marpessa's sake, his spouse, to bend his bow. Her, therefore, Idas and Marpessa named. Thenceforth Alcyone, because the fate seven hundred. Of sad Alcyone Marpessa shared. And wept like her, by Phoebus forced away. Thus Meleager, tortured with the pangs. Of wrath indulged, with Cleopatra dwelt. Vexed that his mother cursed him, for, with grief 705. Frantic, his mother importuned the gods. To avenge her slaughtered brothers on his head. Oft would she smite the earth, while on her knees. Seated, she filled her bosom with her tears. And called on Pluto and dread Proserpine 710. To slay her son. Nor vain was that request. But by implacable Irene's herd. Roaming the shades of Erebus. Ere long. The tumult and the deafening din of war. Roared at the gates, and all the battered towers 715. Resounded. Then the elders of the town. Dispatched the high priests of the gods to plead. With Meleager for his instant aid. With strong assurances of rich reward. Where Caledon afforded fattest soil 720. They bade him choose to his own use a farm. Of fifty measured acres, vineyard half and half of land commodious for the plow. Him Enus also, warrior grey with age. Ascending to his chamber, and his doors 725. Smiting importunate, with earnest prayers. Essayed to soften, kneeling to his son. Nor less his sisters wooed him to relent. Nor less his mother, but in vain. He grew. Still more obdurate. His companions last 730 the most esteemed and dearest of his friends. The same suit urged, yet he persisted still. Relentless, nor could even they prevail. But when the battle shook his chamber doors, and the curities climbing the high towers 735, had fired the spacious city, then with tears, the beauteous Cleopatra, and with prayers, assailed him. In his view she set the woes. Numberless of a city stormed, the men. Slaughtered, the city burnt to dust, the chaste 740. Matrons with all their children dragged away. That dread recital roused him, and at length. Issuing, he put his radiant armor on. Thus Meleager, gratifying first. His own resentment from a fatal day 745. Save the Aetolians, who the promised gift. Refused him, and his toils found no reward. But thou, my son, be wiser, follow thou. No demon who would tempt thee to a course. Like his, occasion more propitious far 750. Smiles on thee now, than if the fleet were fired. Come, while by gifts invited, and receive. From all the host, the honors of a god. For shouldst thou, by no gifts induced, at last. Enter the bloody field, although thou chase 755. The Trojans hence, yet less shall be thy praise. Then thus Achilles, matchless in the race. Phoenix, my guide, wise, noble and revered. I covet no such glory. The renown. Ordained by Jove for me, is to resist 760. All importunity to quit my ships. While I have power to move, or breath to draw. Hear now, and mark me well. Cease thou from tears. Confound me not, pleading with sighs and sobs. In Agamemnon's cause, O oh love not him, 765. Lest I renounce thee, who am now thy friend. Assist me rather, as thy duty bids. Him to afflict, who hath afflicted me. So shalt thou share my glory and my power. These shall report as they have heard, but here 770. Rest thou this night, and with the rising morn. We will decide, to stay, or to depart. 
He ceased, and silent, by a nod enjoined. Patroclus to prepare an easy couch. For Phoenix, anxious to dismiss the rest 775. Incontinent, when Ajax, godlike son. Of Telamon, arising, thus began. Laertes' noble son, for wiles renowned. Depart we now. For I perceive that end. Or fruit of all our reasoning shall be none.780. It is expedient also that we bear. Our answer back, unwelcome as it is. With all dispatch, for the assembled Greeks. Expect us. Brave Achilles shuts a fire. Within his breast, the kindness of his friends 785. And the respect peculiar by ourselves. Shown to him, on his heart work no effect. Inexorable man. Others accept. Even for a brother slain, or for a son. Due compensation, the delinquent dwells 790. Secure at home, and the receiver, soothed. And pacified, represses his revenge. But thou, resentful of the loss of one. One virgin, such obduracy of heart. The gods have given thee, canst not be appeased 795. Yet we assign thee seven in her stead. The most distinguished of their sex, and add. Large gifts beside. Ah then, at last relent. Respect thy roof, we are thy guests, we come. Chosen from the multitude of all the Greeks eight hundred. Beyond them all ambitious of thy love. To whom Achilles, swiftest of the swift. My noble friend, offspring of Telamon. Thou seem'st sincere, and I believe thee such. But at the very mention of the name 805. Of Atreus' son, who shamed me in the sight. Of all Achaia's host, bearing me down. As I had been some vagrant at his door. My bosom boils. Return ye and report. Your answer. I know thought will entertain 810. Of crimson war, till the illustrious son. Of warlike Priam, Hector, blood and brood. Shall in their tents the Myrmidons assail. Themselves, and fire my fleet. At my own ship. And at my own pavilion it may chance 815. That even Hector's violence shall pause. He ended, they from massy goblets each. Libation poured, and to the fleet their course. Resumed direct, Ulysses at their head. Patroclus then his fellow warriors bade 820. And the attendant women spread a couch. For Phoenix, they the couch, obedient, spread. With fleeces, with rich heiress, and with flax. Of subtlest woof. Their hoary Phoenix lay. In expectation of the sacred dawn.825. Meantime Achilles in the interior tent. With beauteous Diomeda by himself. From Lesbos brought, daughter of Forbus, lay. Patroclus opposite reposed, with whom? Slept charming Iphis. Her, when he had one eight thirty. The lofty towers of Cyros, the divine. Achilles took, and on his friend bestowed. But when those chiefs at Agamemnon's tent. Arrived, the Greeks on every side arose. With golden cups welcoming their return. 835. All questioned them, but Agamemnon first. O oh, worthy of Achaia's highest praise! And her chief ornament, Ulysses, speak! Will he defend the fleet? Or his big heart? Indulging wrathful, doth he still refuse? 840. To whom renowned Ulysses thus replied. Atrides, Agamemnon, king of men. He his resentment quenches not, nor will. But burns with wrath the more, thee and thy gifts. Rejecting both. He bids thee with the Greeks 845. Consult by what expedient thou mayst save. The fleet and people, threatening that himself. Will at the peep of day launch all his barks. And counseling, beside, the general host. To voyage homeward. For that end as yet 850. Of Ilium walled to heaven, ye shall not find. Since Jove the thunderer with uplifted arm. Protects her, and her courage hath revived. Thus speaks the chief, and Ajax is prepared. 
with the attendant heralds to report 855. As I have said. But Phoenix in the tent. Sleeps of Achilles, who his stay desired. That on the morrow, if he so incline. The hoary warrior may attend him hence. Home to his country, but he leaves him 3.860. He ended. They astonished at his tone. For vehement he spake, sat silent all. Long silent sat the afflicted sons of Greece. When thus the mighty Diomede began. Atrides, Agamemnon, king of men. 865. Thy supplications to the valiant son. Of Peleus, and the offer of thy gifts. Innumerous, had been better far withheld. He is at all times haughty, and thy suit. Hath, but increased his haughtiness of heart 870. Past bounds, but let him stay or let him go. As he shall choose. He will resume the fight. When his own mind shall prompt him, and the gods. Shall urge him forth. Now follow my advice. Ye have refreshed your hearts with food and wine 875. Which are the strength of man, take now repose. And when the rosy-fingered morning fair. Shall shine again, set forth without delay. The battle, horse and foot, before the fleet. And where the foremost fight, fight also thou.880. He ended. All the kings applauded warm. His counsel, and the dauntless tone admired. Of Diomede. Then, due libation made. Each sought his tent, and took the gift of sleep. There is much in this book which is worthy of close attention. The consummate genius, the varied and versatile power, the eloquence, truth, and nature displayed in it, will always be admired. Perhaps there is no portion of the poem more remarkable for these attributes. Felton. Book X. Argument of the Tenth Book. Diomede and Ulysses enter the Trojan host by night, and slay Rhesus. Book X. All night the leaders of the host of Greece. Lay sunk in soft repose, all, save the chief. The son of Atreus. Him from thought to thought. Roving solicitous, no sleep relieved. As when the spouse of beauteous Juno, darts five. His frequent fires, designing heavy rain. Immense, or hailstorm, or field widening snow. Or else wide throated war calamitous. So frequent were the groans by Atreus' son. Heaved from his inmost heart, trembling with dread. 10. For cast he but his eye toward the plain. Of Ilium, there, astonished he beheld. The city fronted with bright fires, and heard. Pipes, and recorders, and the hum of war. But when again the Grecian fleet he viewed, fifteen. And thought on his own people, then his hair. Uprooted elevating to the gods. He from his generous bosom groaned again. At length he thus resolved. Of all the Greeks. To seek Nelian Nestor first, with whom twenty. He might, perchance, some plan for the defense. Of the afflicted deny devise. Rising, he wrapped his tunic to his breast. And to his royal feet unsullied bound. His sandals. O'er his shoulders, next, he threw twenty-five. Of amplest size a lion's tawny skin. That swept his footsteps, dappled o'er with blood. Then took his spear. Meantime, not less appalled. Was Menelaus, on whose eyelids sleep. Sat not, lest the Achaeans for his sake thirty. O'er many waters born, and now intent. On glorious deeds, should perish all at Troy. With a pard spotted hide his shoulders broad. He mantled over. To his head he raised. His brazen helmet, and with vigorous hand thirty-five. Grasping his spear, forth issued to arouse. His brother, mighty sovereign of the host. And by the Grecians like a god revered. He found him at his galley's stern, his arms. Assuming radiant, welcome he arrived forty. To Agamemnon, whom he thus addressed. Why arm'st thou, brother? Wouldst thou urge abroad? Some trusty spy into the Trojan camp? I fear lest none so hardy shall be found. As to adventure, 
in the dead still night, 45. So far, alone, valiant indeed were he. To whom great Agamemnon thus replied. Heaven favored Menelaus. We have need. Thou and myself, of some device well framed. Which both the Grecians and the fleet of Greece fifty. May rescue, for the mind of Jove hath changed. And Hector's prayers alone now reach his ear. I never saw, nor by report have learned. From any man, that ever single chief. Such awful wonders in one day perform, d. 55. As he with ease against the Greeks, although. Nor from a god is sprung nor from a god. Deeds he hath done, which, as I think, the Greeks. Shall deep and long lament, such numerous ills. Achaia's host hath at his hand sustained point sixty. But haste, begone, and at their several ships. Call Ajax and Idomeneus. I go. To exhort the noble Nestor to arise. That he may visit, if he so incline. The chosen band who watch, and his advice sixty-five. Give them. For him most prompt they will obey. Whose son, together with Marion's. Friend of Idomeneus, controls them all. Entrusted by ourselves with that command. Him answered Menelaus bold in arms.70. Explain thy purpose. Wouldst thou that I wait? Thy coming, there, or thy commands to both. Given, that I incontinent return? To whom the sovereign of the host replied. There stay. Less striking into different paths 75. For many passes intersect the camp. We miss each other, summon them aloud. Where thou shalt come, enjoin them to arise. Call each by his hereditary name. Honoring all. Beware of manners proud, eighty. For we ourselves must labor, at our birth. By Jove ordained to suffering and to toil. So saying, he his brother thence dismissed. Instructed duly, and himself, his steps. Turned to the tent of Nestor. Him he found eighty-five. Amid his sable galleys in his tent. Reposing soft, his armor at his side. Shield, spears, bright helmet, and the broidered belt. Which, when the senior armed led forth his host. To fight, he wore. For he complied not yet ninety. With the encroachments of enfeebling age. He raised his head, and on his elbow propped. Questioning Agamemnon, thus began. But who art thou, who thus alone, the camp? Romest, amid the darkness of the night, ninety-five. While other mortals sleep? Comest thou abroad? Seeking some friend or soldier of the guard? Speak, come not nearer mute. What is thy wish? To whom the son of Atreus, king of men? O Nestor, glory of the Grecian name, one hundred. Offspring of Neleus. Thou and me shalt know. The son of Atreus, Agamemnon, doomed. By Jove to toil, while life shall yet inform. These limbs, or I shall draw the vital air. I wander thus, because that on my lids 105. Sweet sleep sits not, but war and the concerns. Of the Achaeans occupy my soul. Terrible are the fears which I endure. For these my people, such as supersede. All thought. My bosom can no longer hold one ten. My throbbing heart and tremors shake my limbs. But if thy mind, more capable, project. Aught that may profit us, for thee it seems. Sleep also shuns, arise, and let us both. Visit the watch, lest, haply, overtoil, d. 115. They yield to sleep forgetful of their charge. The foe is posted near, and may intend. None knows his purpose, an assault by night. To him Gerenian Nestor thus replied. Illustrious Agamemnon, king of men. 120. Deep planning Jove the imaginations proud. Of Hector will not ratify, nor all. His sanguine hopes effectuate, in his turn. He also, Fierce Achilles once appeased. Shall trouble feel, and haply, more than we. 125. 
but with all readiness I will arise. And follow thee, that we may also rouse. Yet others, Diomede the spear renowned. Ulysses, the swift Ajax, and the son. Of Phileus, valiant Meges. It were well one thirty. Were others also visited and called. The godlike Ajax, and Idomeneus. Whose ships are at the camp's extremest bounds. But though I love thy brother and revere. And though I grieve e'en thee, yet speak I must. 135. And plainly censure him, that thus he sleeps. And leaves to thee the labor, who himself. Should range the host, soliciting the chiefs. Of every band. As utmost need requires. Him answered Agamemnon, king of men. 140. Old warrior, times there are, when I could wish. Myself thy censure of him, for in act. He is not seldom tardy and remiss. Yet is not sluggish indolence the cause. No, nor stupidity, but he observes 145. Me much, expecting till I lead the way. But he was foremost now, far more alert. This night than I, and I have sent him forth. Already, those to call whom thou hast named. But let us hence, for at the guard I trust one fifty. To find them, since I gave them so in charge. To whom the brave Gerenian chief replied. Him none will censure, or his will dispute. Whom he shall waken and exhort to rise. So saying, he bound his corslet to his breast, 155. His sandals fair to his unsullied feet. And fastening by its clasps his purple cloak. Around him, double and of shaggy pile. Seized, next, his sturdy spear headed with brass. And issued first into the Grecian fleet. 160. There, Nestor, brave Gerenian, with a voice. Sonorus roused the godlike counselor. From sleep, Ulysses, the alarm came o'er. His startled ear, forth from his tent he sprang. Sudden, and of their coming, quick, inquired. 165. Why roam ye thus the camp and fleet alone? In darkness? By what urgent need constrained? To whom the hoary pillion thus replied. Laertes' noble son, for wiles renowned. Resent it not, for dread is our distress. 170. Come, therefore, and assist us to convene. Yet others, qualified to judge if war. Be most expedient, or immediate flight. He ended, and regaining, quick, his tent. Ulysses slung his shield, then coming forth 175. Joined them. The son of Tydeus first they sought. Him sleeping armed before his tent they found. Encompassed by his friends also asleep. His head each rested on his shield, and each. Had planted on its nether point erect 180. His spear beside him. Bright their polished heads. As Jove's own lightning glittered from afar. Himself, the hero, slept. A wild bull's hide was spread beneath him, and on Eris tinged. With splendid purple lay his head reclined. 185. Nestor, beside him standing, with his heel. Shook him, and, urgent, thus the chief reproved. Awake, Tydides. Wherefore givest the night? Entire to balmy slumber? Hast not heard? How on the rising ground beside the fleet 190? The Trojans sit, small interval between. He ceased, then up sprang Diomede alarmed. Instant, and in winged accents thus replied. Old wakeful chief. Thy toils are never done. Are there not younger of the sons of Greece, 195? Who ranging in all parts the camp, might call. The kings to counsel. But no curb controls. Or can abate activity like thine. To whom Gerenian Nestor in return. My friend. Thou hast well spoken. I have sons, two hundred. And they are well deserving. I have here. A numerous people also, one of whom. Might have sufficed to call the kings of Greece. But such occasion presses now the host. 
as hath not oft occurred. The Overthrow 205. Complete, or full deliverance of us all. In balance hangs, poised on a razor's edge. But haste, and if thy pity of my toils. Be such, since thou art younger, call, thyself. Ajax the swift, and Medges to the guard. 210. Then Diomed a lion's tawny skin. Around him wrapped, dependent to his heels. And, spear in hand, set forth. The hero called. Those two, and led them whither Nestor bade. They, at the guard arrived, not sleeping found two fifteen. The captains of the guard, but sitting all. In vigilant posture with their arms prepared. As dogs that, careful, watch the fold by night. Hearing some wild beast in the woods, which hounds. And hunters with tumultuous clamor drive two twenty. Down from the mountain top, all sleep forego. So, sat not on their eyelids gentle sleep. That dreadful night, but constant to the plain. At every sound of Trojan feet they turned. The old chief joyful at the sight, in terms 225. Of kind encouragement them thus addressed. So watch, my children. And beware that sleep. Invade none here, lest all become a prey. So saying, he traversed with quick pace the trench. By every chief whom they had thither call, D230. Attended, with whom Nestor's noble son. Went, and Marians, invited both. To join their consultation. From the foss. Emerging, in a vacant space they sat. Unstrood with bodies of the slain, the spot, 235. Whence furious Hector, after slaughter made. Of numerous Greeks, night falling, had returned. There seated, mutual converse close they held. And Nestor, brave Gerenian, thus began. O friends! Hath no Achaean here such trust two forty? In his own prowess, as to venture forth. Among yon haughty Trojans? He, perchance. Might on the borders of their host surprise. Some wandering adversary, or might learn. Their consultations, whether they propose two forty five. Here to abide in prospect of the fleet. Or, satiate with success against the Greeks. So signal. Meditate retreat to Troy. These tidings gained, should he at last return. Secure, his recompense will be renowned 250. Extensive as the heavens, and fair reward. From every leader of the fleet, his gift. Shall be a sable you, and sucking lamb. Rare acquisition. And at every board. And sumptuous banquet, he shall be a guest.255. He ceased, and all sat silent, when at length. The mighty son of Tydeus thus replied. Me, Nestor, my courageous heart incites. To penetrate into the neighbor host. Of enemies. But went some other chief 260. With me, far greater would my comfort prove. And I should dare the more. Two going forth. One quicker sees than other, and suggests. Prudent advice. But he who's single goes. Mark whatsoe'er he may, the occasion less 265. Improves, and his expedience soon exhausts. He ended, and no few willing arose. To go with Diomede. Servants of Mars. Each Ajax willing stood, willing as they. Marians. Most willing Nestor's son, 270. Willing the brother of the chief of all nor willing less Ulysses to explore. The host of Troy, for he possessed a heart. Delighted ever with some bold exploit. Then Agamemnon, king of men, began. 275. Now Diomede, in whom my soul delights. Choose whom thou wilt for thy companion, choose. The fittest here, for numerous wish to go. Leave not through deference to another's rank. The more deserving, nor prefer a worse, 280. Respecting either pedigree or power. Such speech he interposed, fearing his choice. Of Menelaus. Then, renowned in arms. The son of Tydeus, rising, spake again. 
Since, then, ye bid me my own partner choose 285. Free from constraint, how can I overlook? Divine Ulysses, whose courageous heart with such peculiar cheerfulness endures. Whatever toils, and whom Minerva loves. Let him attend me, and through fire itself 290. We shall return, for none is wise as he. To him Ulysses, hardy chief, replied. Tidides. Neither praise me much, nor blame. For these are Grecians in whose ears thou speak'st. And know me well. But let us hence. The night 295. Draws to a close, day comes apace, the stars. Are far advanced, two portions have elapsed. Of darkness, but the third is yet entire. So they, then each his dreadful arms put on. To Diomede, who at the fleet had left three hundred. His own, the dauntless Thrasymedes gave. His shield and sword two-edged, and on his head. Placed, crestless, unadorned, his bullskin cask. It was a stripling's helmet, such as youths. Scarce yet confirmed in lusty manhood, where point three o five. Marion's with quiver, bow and sword. Furnished Ulysses, and his brows enclosed. In his own cask of hide with many a thong. Well braced within. Guarded it was without. With boar's teeth ivory white inherent firm three ten. On all sides, and with woolen headpiece lined. That helmet erst Autolycus had brought. From Elian, city of a minter son. Of Horminus, where he the solid walls. Bored through, clandestine, of a minter's house. Point three fifteen. He on Amphidamus the prize bestowed. In Scandia. From Amphidamus it passed. To Molus as a hospitable pledge. He gave it to Marians his son. And now it guarded shrewd Ulysses' brows. 320. Both clad in arms terrific, forth they sped. Leaving their fellow chiefs, and as they went. A heron, by command of Pallas, flew. Close on the right beside them, darkling they. Discerned him not, but heard his clanging plumes. 325. Ulysses in the favorable sign. Exulted, and Minerva thus invoked. O oh, hear me, daughter of Jove Aegis armed. My present helper in all straits, whose eye. Marks all my ways, O oh, with peculiar care 330. Now guard me, Pallas. Grant that after toil. Successful, glorious, such as long shall fill. With grief the Trojans, we may safe return. And with immortal honors to the fleet. Valiant Tidides, next, his prayer preferred. 335. Hear also me, Jove's offspring by the toils. Of war invincible. Me follow now. As my heroic father erst to Thebes. Thou followedst, Tidius. By the Greeks dispatched. Ambassador, he left the mail-clad host 340. Beside Asopus, and with terms of peace. Entrusted, entered Thebes, but by thine aid. Benevolent, and in thy strength, performed. Returning, deeds of terrible renown. Thus, now, protect me also. In return 345. I vow an offering at thy shrine, a young. Broad-fronted heifer, to the yoke as yet. Untamed, whose horns I will encase with gold. Such prayer they made, and Pallas heard well pleased. Their orisons ended to the daughter dread 350. Of mighty Jove, lion-like they advanced. Through shades of night, through carnage, arms and blood. Nor Hector to his gallant host indulged. Sleep, but convened the leaders. Leader none. Or senator of all his host he left 355. Unsummoned, and his purpose thus promulged. Where is the warrior who for rich reward? Such as shall well suffice him, will the task. Adventurous, which I propose, perform. A chariot with two steeds of proudest height, 360. Surpassing all in the whole fleet of Greece. Shall be his portion, with immortal praise. Who shall the well-appointed ships approach? Courageous, 
there to learn if yet a guard. As heretofore. Keep them, or if subdued 365. Beneath us, the Achaeans flight intend. And worn with labor have no will to watch. So Hector spake, but answer none returned. There was a certain Trojan, Dolan named. Son of Eumedes Herald of the Gods, 370. Rich both in gold and brass, but in his form. Unsightly, yet the man was swift of foot. Sole brother of five sisters. He his speech. To Hector and the Trojans thus addressed. My spirit, Hector, prompts me, and my mind 375. Endued with manly vigor, to approach. Yon gallant ships, that I may tidings here. But come. For my assurance, lifting high. Thy scepter, swear to me, for my reward. The horses and the brazen chariot bright 380. Which bear renowned Achilles o'er the field. I will not prove a useless spy, nor fall. Below thy best opinion. Pass I will. Their army through, till I shall reach the ship. Of Agamemnon, where the chiefs, perchance, 385. Now sit consulting, or to fight, or fly. Then raising high his scepter, Hector swear. No, Jove himself, Juno's high thundering spouse. That Trojan none shall in that chariot ride. By those steeds drawn, save Dolan, on my oath 390. I make them thine, enjoy them evermore. He said, and falsely swear yet him assured. Then Dolan, instant, o'er his shoulder slung. His bow elastic, wrapped himself around. With a gray wolfskin, to his head a cask 395. Adjusted, coated o'er with ferrets felt. And seizing his sharp javelin. From the host. Turned right toward the fleet, but was ordained. To disappoint his sender, and to bring. No tidings thence. The throng of Trojan steeds four hundred. And warriors left, with brisker pace he moved. When brave Ulysses his approach perceived. And thus to Diomede his speech addressed. Tidides. Yonder man is from the host. Either a spy he comes, or with intent 405. To spoil the dead. First, freely let him pass. Few paces, then pursuing him with speed. Seize on him suddenly. But should he prove. The nimbler of the three, with threatening spear. Enforce him from his camp toward the fleet, 410. Lest he elude us, and escape to Troy. So they, then, turning from the road oblique. Among the carcasses each laid him down. Dolan, suspecting not, ran swiftly by. But when such space was interposed as mules 415. Plow in a day, for mules the ox surpass. Through fallows deep drawing the ponderous plow. Both ran toward him. Dolan at the sound. Stood. For he hoped some Trojan friends at hand. From Hector sent to bid him back again. Point four twenty. But when within spears cast, or less they came. Knowing them enemies he turned to flight. Incontinent, whom they as swift pursued. As two fleet hounds sharp fonged, trained to the chase. Hang on the rear of flying hind or hare, for twenty five. And drive her, never swerving from the track. Through copses close, she screaming scuds before. So Diomede and dread Ulysses him. Chased constant, intercepting his return. And now, fast fleeting to the ships, he soon four thirty. Had reached the guard, but Pallas with new force. Inspired Tidides, lest a meaner Greek. Should boast that he had smitten Dolan first. And Diomede win only second praise. He poised his lifted spear, and thus exclaimed. Point 435. Stand. Or my spear shall stop thee. Death impends. At every step, thou canst not, skate me long. He said, and threw his spear, but by design. Aired from the man. The polished weapon swift. O'er glancing his right shoulder, in the soil 440. Stood fixed, beyond him. Terrified he stood. Stammering, and sounding through his lips the clash. 
of chattering teeth, with visage deadly wan. They panting rushed on him, and both his hands. Seized fast, he wept, and suppliant them bespake. Point four forty five. Take me alive, and I will pay the price of my redemption. I have gold at home, brass also, and bright steel, and when report of my captivity within your fleet shall reach my father, treasures he will give four fifty. Not to be told, for ransom of his son. To whom Ulysses politic replied. Take courage. Entertain no thought of death. But haste. This tell me, and disclose the truth. Why thus toward the ships comest thou alone 455? From yonder host, by night, while others sleep? To spoil some carcass? Or from Hector sent? A spy of all that passes in the fleet? Or by thy curiosity impelled? Then Dolan, his limbs trembling, thus replied. 460. To my great detriment, and far beyond. My own design, Hector trepanned me forth. Who promised me the steeds of Peleus' son. Illustrious, and his brazen chariot bright. He bade me, under night's fast-flitting shades 465. Approach our enemies, a spy, to learn. If still as heretofore, ye station guards. For safety of your fleet, or if subdued. Completely, ye intend immediate flight. And worn with labor. Have no will to watch. 470. To whom Ulysses, smiling, thus replied. Thou hadst, in truth, an appetite to gifts. Of no mean value, coveting the steeds. Of brave Iacides. But steeds are they. Of fiery sort, difficult to be ruled 475. By force of mortal man, Achilles' self. Except, whom an immortal mother bore. But tell me yet again, use no disguise. Where left'st thou, at thy coming forth, your chief? The valiant Hector? Where hath he disposed 480? His armor battle-worn, and where his steeds? What other core four heirs of your host are watched? Where lodged the guard, and what intend ye next? Still to abide in prospect of the fleet? Or well content that ye have thus reduced 485? Achaia's host, will ye retire to Troy? To whom this answer Dolan straight returned. Son of Eumedes. With unfeigning truth. Simply and plainly will I utter all. Hector, with all the senatorial chiefs, 490. Beside the tomb of sacred Ilius sits. Consulting, from the noisy camp remote. But for the guards, hero. Concerning whom. Thou hast inquired, there is no certain watch. And regular appointed o'er the camp, for ninety-five. The native Trojans, for they can no less. Sit sleepless all, and each his next exhorts. To vigilance. But all are foreign aids. Who neither wives nor children hazard here. Trusting the Trojans for that service, sleep point five hundred. To whom Ulysses, ever wise, replied. How sleep the strangers and allies, apart? Or with the Trojans mingled, I would learn. So spake Ulysses, to whom Dolan thus. Son of Eumedes. I will all unfold 505. And all most truly. By the sea are lodged. The Carians, the Peonians armed with bows. The Lelegies, with the Pelasgian band and the Caucans. On the skirts in camp. Of Thimbra, the Meonians crested high, 510. The Phrygian horsemen, with the Lycian host. And the bold troop of Mishia's haughty sons. But wherefore these inquiries thus minu for e? For if ye wish to penetrate the host. These who possess the borders of the camp 515. Farthest removed of all, are Thracian powers. Newly arrived, among them Rhesus sleeps. Son of Ionius, their chief and king. His steeds I saw, the fairest by these eyes. Ever beheld, and loftiest, snow itself 520. They pass in whiteness, and in speed the winds. With gold and silver all his chariot burns. And he arrived in golden armor clad. 
stupendous. Little suited to the state. Of mortal man, fit for a god to wear, 525. Now, either lead me to your gallant fleet. Or where ye find me leave me straightly bound. Till ye return, and after trial made. Shall know if I have spoken false or true. But him brave Diomede with aspect stern 530. Answered. Since, Dolan. Thou art caught, although. Thy tidings have been good, hope not to live. For should we now release thee and dismiss. Thou wilt revisit yet again the fleet. A spy or open foe. But smitten once 535. By this death-dealing arm, thou shall return. To render mischief to the Greeks no more. He ceased, and Dolan would have stretched his hand. Toward his beard, and pleaded hard for life. But with his falchion, rising to the blow, 540. On the midneck he smote him, cutting sheer. Both tendons with a stroke so swift. That air. His tongue had ceased, his head was in the dust. They took his helmet clothed with ferret's felt. Stripped off his wolf skin, seized his bow and spear, 545. And brave Ulysses lifting in his hand. The trophy to Minerva, prayed and said. Hail goddess, these are thine. For thee of all. Who in Olympus dwell, we will invoke. First to our aid. Now also guide our steps, 550. Propitious, to the Thracian tents and steeds. He ceased, and at arm's length the lifted spoils. Hung on a tamarisk. But marked the spot. Plucking away with handful grasped the reeds. And spreading boughs, lest they should seek the prize 555. Themselves in vain, returning ere the night. Swift traveler, should have fled before the dawn. Thence, o'er the bloody champion strewed with arms. Proceeding, to the Thracian lines they came. They, wearied, slept profound, beside them lay, 560. In triple order regular arranged. Their radiant armor, and their steeds in pairs. Amid them Rhesus slept, and at his side. His coursers, to the outer chariot ring. Fastened secure. Ulysses saw him first, 565. And, seeing, marked him out to Diomede. Behold the man, Tydides. Lo! The steeds. By Dolan specified whom we have slain. Be quick. Exert thy force. Armed as thou art. Sleep not. Loose thou the steeds, or slaughter thou 570. The Thracians, and the steeds shall be my care. He ceased, then blue-eyed Pallas with fresh force. Invigor Diomede. From side to side. He slew. Dread groans arose of dying men. Hewn with the sword, and the earth swam with blood. 575. As if he find a flock unguarded, sheep. Or goats, the lion rushes on his prey. With such unsparing force Tydide smote. The men of Thrace, till he had slaughtered twelve. And whom Tydides with his falchion struck 580. Laertes' son dragged by his feet abroad. Forecasting that the steeds might pass with ease. Nor start, as yet uncustomed to the dead. But when the son of Tydeus found the king. Him also panting forth his last, last, breath, 585. He added to the twelve, four at his head. An evil dream that night had stood, the form. Of Diomede, by Pallas art devised. Meantime, the bold Ulysses loosed the steeds. Which, to each other reigned, he drove abroad, 590. Smiting them with his bow, four of the scourge. He thought not in the chariot seat secured. And as he went, hissed, warning Diomede. But he, projecting still some hardier deed. Stood doubtful, whether by the pole to draw 595. The chariot thence, laden with gorgeous arms or whether heaving it on high, to bear. The burthen off, or whether yet to take. More Thracian lives. When him with various thoughts. Perplexed, Minerva, drawing near, bespake point six hundred. Son of bold Tydeus. 
think on thy return. To yonder fleet, lest thou depart constrained. Some other god may rouse the powers of Troy. She ended, and he knew the voice divine. At once he mounted. With his bow the steed 605. Ulysses plied, and to the ships they flew. Nor looked the bender of the silver bow. Apollo, forth in vain, but at the sight. Of Pallas following Diomede incensed. Descended to the field where numerous most 610. He saw the Trojans, and the Thracian chief. And counselor, Hippocoon aroused. Kinsman of Rhesus, and renowned in arms. He, starting from his sleep, soon as he saw. The spot deserted where so lately lay 615. Those fiery coursers, and his warrior friends. Gasping around him, sounded loud the name. Of his loved Rhesus. Instant, at the voice. Wild stir arose and clamorous uproar. Of fast assembling Trojans. Deeds they saw, 620. Terrible deeds, and marvelous performed. But not their authors, they had sought the ships. Meantime arrived where they had slain the spy. Of Hector, their Ulysses, dear to Jove. The courser stayed, and, leaping to the ground, 625. The son of Tydeus in Ulysses' hands. The arms of Dolan placed foul with his blood. Then vaulted light into his seat again. He lashed the steeds, they, not unwilling, flew. To the deep-bellied barks, as to their home point 630. First Nestor heard the sound, and thus he said. Friends. Counselors. And leaders of the Greeks. False shall I speak, or true, but speak I must. The echoing sound of hoofs alarms my ear. Oh, that Ulysses, and brave Diomede 635. This moment might arrive drawn into camp. By Trojan steeds. But, ah, the dread I feel. Lest some disaster have forever quelled. In yon rude host those noblest of the Greeks. He hath not ended, when themselves arrived, 640. Both quick dismounted, joy at their return. Filled every bosom. Each with kind salute. Cordial, and right hand welcome greeted them. And first Gerenian Nestor thus inquired. O chief by all extolled, glory of Greece, 645. Ulysses. How have ye these steeds acquired? In yonder host? Or met ye as ye went? Some god who gave them to you? For they show. A luster dazzling as the beams of day. Old as I am, I mingle yet in fight 650. With Ilium's sons, lurk never in the fleet. Yet saw I at no time, or have remarked. Steeds such as these, which therefore I believe. Perforce, that ye have gained by gift divine. For cloud assembler Jove, and Azure, I'd 655. Minerva, Jove's own daughter, love you both. To whom Ulysses, thus, discreet, replied. Nelian Nestor, glory of the Greeks. A god, so willing, could have given us steeds. Superior, for their bounty knows no bounds. 660. But, venerable chief, these which thou sayest are Thracians new arrived. Their master lies slain by the valiant Diomede, with twelve, the noblest of his warriors at his side, a thirteenth also, at small distance hence. 665. We slew, by Hector and the chiefs of Troy, sent to inspect the posture of our host. He said. Then, high in exultation, drove. The coursers o'er the trench, and with him passed. The glad Achaeans. At the spacious tent 670. Of Diomede arrived, with even thongs. They tied them at the cribs where stood the steeds. Of Tydeus' son, with winnowed wheat supplied. Ulysses in his bark the gory spoils. Of Dolan placed, designing them a gift 675. To Pallas. Then, descending to the sea. Neck, thighs, and legs from sweat profuse they cleansed. And, so refreshed and purified, their last. Ablution in bright tepid baths performed. 
each thus completely laved, and with smooth oil 680. Anointed, at the well-spread board they sat. And quaffed, in honor of Minerva, wine. Delicious, from the brimming beaker drawn. The vividness of the scenes presented to us in this book constitute its chief beauty. The reader sees the most natural night scene in the world. He is led step by step with the adventurers, and made the companion of all their expectations and uncertainties. We see the very color of the sky, know the time to a minute, are impatient while the heroes are arming. Our imagination follows them, knows all their doubts, and even the secret wishes of their hearts sent up to Minerva. We are alarmed at the approach of Dolan, hear his very footsteps, assist the two chiefs in pursuing him, and stop just with the spear that arrests him. We are perfectly acquainted with the situation of all the forces, with the figure in which they lie, with the disposition of Rhesus and the Thracians, with the posture of his chariot and horses. The marshy spot of ground where Dolan is killed, the tamarisk, or aquatic plant upon which they hung his spoils, and the reeds that are heaped together to mark the place, are circumstances the most picturesque imaginable. Book 11. Argument of the Eleventh Book. Agamemnon distinguishes himself. He is wounded, and retires. Diomede is wounded by Paris, Ulysses by Socus. Ajax with Menelaus flies to the relief of Ulysses, and Eurypolis, soon after, to the relief of Ajax. While he is employed in assisting Ajax, he is shot in the thigh by Paris, who also wounds Machaon. Nestor conveys Machaon from the field. Achilles dispatches Patroclus to the tent of Nestor, and Nestor takes that occasion to exhort Patroclus to engage in battle, clothed in the armor of Achilles. Book 11. Aurora from Tithonus' side arose. With light for heaven and earth, when Jove dispatched. Discord, the fiery signal in her hand. Of battle bearing, to the Grecian fleet. High on Ulysses' huge black ship she stood five. The center of the fleet, whence all might hear. The tent of Telamon's huge son between. And of Achilles. For confiding they. In their heroic fortitude, their barks. Well poised had stationed utmost of the line point ten. Their standing, shrill she sent a cry abroad. Among the Achaeans, such as thirst infused. Of battle ceaseless into every breast. All deemed, at once, were sweeter, than to seek. Their native country through the waves again point fifteen. Then with loud voice Atrides bade the Greeks. Gird on their armor, and himself his arms. Took radiant. First around his legs he clasped. His shining greaves with silver studs secured. Then bound his corslet to his bosom, gift twenty. Of Sinira's long since. For rumor loud. Had Cyprus reached of an Achaean host. Assembling, destined to the shores of Troy. Wherefore, to gratify the king of men. He made the splendid ornament his own. 25. Ten rods of steel coerulean all around. Embraced it, twelve of gold, twenty of tin. Six spiry serpents their uplifted heads. Coerulean darted at the wearer's throat. Splendor diffusing as the various bow thirty. Fixed by Saturnian Jove in showery clouds. Assigned to mortal men. He slung his sword. Athwart his shoulders. Dazzling bright it shone. With gold embossed, and silver was the sheath. Suspended graceful in a belt of gold.35. His massy shield o'ershadowing him whole. High wrought and beautiful, he next assumed. Ten circles bright of brass around its field. Extensive, circle within circle, ran. The central boss was black, but hemmed about forty. With twice ten bosses of resplendent tin. There, dreadful ornament. The visage dark. Of Gorgon scowled, bordered by flight and fear. The loop was silver, and a serpent form. Coerulean over all its surface twined, forty-five. Three heads erecting on one neck, the heads. Together wreathed into a stately crown. His helmet cotter crested, and with studs. Fast riveted around he to his brows. Adjusted, whence tremendous waved his crest fifty. 
of mounted hair on high. Two spears he seized. Ponderous, brass pointed, and that flashed to heaven. Sounds like clear thunder, by the spouse of Jove. And by Minerva raised to extol the king. Of opulent Mycenae, rolled around point fifty five. At once each bade his charioteer his steeds. Hold fast beside the margin of the trench. In orderly array. The foot all armed. Rushed forward, and the clamor of the host. Rose infinite into the dawning skies. Point sixty. First, at the trench, the embattled infantry. Stood ranged, the chariots followed close behind. Dire was the tumult by Saturnian Jove. Excited, and from ether down he shed. Blood tincture dews among them, for he meant sixty-five. That day to send full many a warrior bold. To Pluto's dreary realm, slain premature. Opposite, on the rising ground, appeared. The Trojans, the majestic Hector led. Noble Polydamus, Aeneas raised seventy. To godlike honors in all Trojan hearts. And Polybus, with whom Antenor's sons. Aegenor, and young Akamas advanced. Hector the splendid orb of his broad shield. Bore in the van, and as a comet now seventy-five. Glares through the clouds portentous, and again. Obscured by gloomy vapors, disappears. So Hector, marshalling his host, in front. Now shone. Now vanished in the distant rear. All cased he flamed in brass, and on the sight eighty. Flashed as the lightnings of Jove aegis armed. As reapers, toiling opposite, lay bare. Some rich man's furrows, while the severed grain. Barley or wheat, sinks as the sickle moves. So Greeks and Trojans springing into fight eighty-five. Slew mutual. Foul retreat alike they scorned. Alike in fierce hostility their heads. Both bore aloft, and rushed like wolves to war. Discord, spectatress terrible, that sight. Beheld exulting, she, of all the gods, ninety. Alone was present. Not a power beside. There interfered, but each his bright abode. Quiescent occupied wherever built. Among the windings of the Olympian heights. Yet blamed they all the storm assembler King 95. Saturnian, for his purposed aid to Troy. The Eternal Father wrecked not, he, apart. Seated in solitary pomp, enjoyed. His glory, and from on high the tower surveyed. Of Ilium and the fleet of Greece, the flash one hundred. Of gleaming arms, the slayer and the slain. While morning lasted, and the light of day. Increased, so long the weapons on both sides. Flew in thick volleys, and the people fell. But, what time has repassed the woodman spreads one o five. In some umbrageous vale, his sinewy arms. Wearied with hewing many a lofty tree. And his wants satisfied, he feels at length. The pinch of appetite to pleasant food. Then was it. That encouraging allowed one ten. Each other, in their native virtue strong. The Grecians through the phalanx burst of Troy. Forth sprang the monarch first, he slew the chief. Bienner, nor himself alone, but slew. Oileus also driver of his steeds. Point one fifteen. Oileus, with a leap alighting, rushed. On Agamemnon, he his fierce assault. Encountering, with a spear met full his front. Nor could his helmet's ponderous brass sustain. That force, but both his helmet and his skull one twenty. It shattered, and his martial rage repressed. The king of men, stripping their corslets, bared their shining breasts, and left them. Isis, next. And Antiphus he flew to slay, the sons. Of Priam both, and in one chariot born, 125. This spurious, genuine that. The bastard drove. And Antiphus, a warrior high renowned. Fought from the chariot. Them Achilles erst. Feeding their flocks on Ida had surprised. And bound with osiers, but for ransom loosed. Point one thirty. Of these, imperial Agamemnon first. Above the pap pierced Isis. Next he smote. 
Antiphus with his sword beside the ear, and from his chariot cast him to the ground. Conscious of both, their glittering arms he stripped, 135. For he had seen them when from Ida's heights. Achilles led them to the Grecian fleet. As with resistless fangs the lion breaks. The young in pieces of the nimble hind. Entering her lair, and takes their feeble lives. 140. She, though at hand, can yield them no defense. But through the thick wood, winged with terror, starts. Herself away, trembling at such a foe. So them the Trojans had no power to save. Themselves all driven before the host of Greece. 145. Next, on Pisandrus, and of dauntless heart. Hippolochus he rushed, they were the sons. Of brave Antimachus, who with rich gifts. By Paris bought, inflexible withheld. From Menelaus still his lovely bride. 150. His sons, the monarch, in one chariot born. Encountered, they, for they had lost the reins. With trepidation and united force. Essayed to check the steeds, astonishment. Seized both. Atrides with a lion's rage 155. Came on, and from the chariot thus they sued. O oh, spare us! Son of Atreus, and accept. Ransom immense. Antimachus our sire. Is rich in various treasure, gold and brass. And tempered steel, and, hearing the report 160. That in Achaia's fleet his sons survive. He will requite thee with a glorious price. So they, with tears and gentle terms the king. Accosted, but no gentle answer heard. Are ye indeed the offspring of the chief 165? Antimachus, who when my brother once. With godlike lerdy aids your town. Entered ambassador, his death advised. In council, and to let him forth no more? Now rue ye both the baseness of your sire. 170. He said, and from his chariot to the plain. Thrust down Pisandrus, piercing with keen lance. His bosom, and supine he smote the field. Down leaped Hippolochus, whom on the ground. He slew, cut sheer his hands, and lopped his head, 175. And rolled it like a mortar through the ranks. He left the slain, and where he saw the field. With thickest battle covered, thither flew. By all the Grecians followed bright in arms. The scattered infantry constrained to fly, 180. Fell by the infantry. The charioteers. While with loud hoofs their steeds the dusty soil. Excited, o'er the charioteers their wheels. Drove brazen fellied, and the king of men. Incessant slaughtering, called his argives on. 185. As when fierce flame some ancient forest sees. From side to side in flakes the various wind. Rolls them, and to the roots devoured, the trunks. Fall prostrate under fury of the fire. So under Agamemnon fell the heads 190. Of flying Trojans. Many a courser proud. The empty chariots through the paths of war. World rattling, of their charioteers deprived. They breathless pressed the plain, now fitter far. To feed the vultures than to cheer their wives. 195. Concealed, meantime, by Jove, Hector escaped. The dust, darts, deaths, and tumult of the field. And Agamemnon to the swift pursuit. Called loud the Grecians. Through the middle plain. Beside the sepulchre of Elos, son 200. Of Dardanus, and where the fig tree stood. The Trojans flew panting to gain the town. While Agamemnon pressing closed the rear. Shout after shout terrific sent abroad. And his victorious hands reeked, red with gore. 205. But at the beech tree and the Skian gate. Arrived, the Trojans halted, waiting there. The rearmost fugitives, they o'er the field. Came like a herd, which in the dead of night. A lion drives, all fly but one is doom, D210. To death inevitable. Her with jaws. True to their hold he seizes, and her neck. 
breaking, embowels her, and laps the blood. So, Atreus' royal son, the hindmost still. Slaying, and still pursuing, urged them on. 215. Many supine, and many prone, the field. Pressed, by the son of Atreus in their flight. Dismounted, for no weapon raged as his. But now, at last, when he should soon have reached. The lofty walls of Ilium, came the sire 220. Of gods and men descending from the skies. And on the heights of Ida fountain fed. Sat armed with thunders. Calling to his foot. Swift Iris golden pinioned, thus he spake. Iris. Away. Thus speak in Hector's ears. 225. While well, yet he shall the son of Atreus see. Fierce warring in the van, and mowing down. The Trojan ranks, so long let him abstain. From battle, leaving to his host the task. Of bloody contest furious with the Greeks. 230. But soon as Atreus' son by spear or shaft. Wounded shall climb his chariot, with such force. I will undo Hector, that he shall slay. Till he have reached the ships, and till, the sun. Descending, sacred darkness cover all. 235. He spake, nor rapid Iris disobeyed. Storm-winged ambassadress, but from the heights. Of Ida stooped to Ilium. There she found. The son of royal Priam by the throng. Of chariots and of steeds compassed about two forty. She, standing at his side, him thus bespake. O, oh, son of Priam! As the gods discreet. I bring thee counsel from the sire of all. While well, yet thou shalt the son of Atreus see. Fierce warring in the van, and mowing down two forty five. The warrior ranks, so long he bids thee pause. From battle, leaving to thy host the task. Of bloody contest furious with the Greeks. But soon as Atreus' son, by spear or shaft. Wounded, shall climb his chariot, Jove will then two fifty. Indue thee with such force, that thou shalt slay. Till thou have reached the ships, and till, the sun. Descending, sacred darkness cover all. So saying, swift-pinioned Iris disappeared. Then Hector from his chariot at a leap 255. Came down all armed, and, shaking his bright spears. Ranged every quarter, animating loud. The legions, and rekindling horrid war. Back rolled the Trojan ranks, and faced the Greeks. The Greeks their host to closer phalanx drew, 260. The battle was restored, van fronting van. They stood, and Agamemnon into fight. Sprang foremost, panting for superior fame. Say now, ye nine, who on Olympus dwell. What Trojan first, or what ally of Troy 265? Oppose the force of Agamemnon's arm? Iphidamas, Antenor's valiant son. Of loftiest stature, who in fertile Thrace. Mother of flocks was nourished, Sisius him. His grandsire, father of Theano praised 270. For loveliest features, in his own abode. Reared yet a child. And when at length he reached. The measure of his glorious manhood firm. Dismissed him not, but, to engage him more. Gave him his daughter. Wedded, he his bride 275. As soon deserted, and with galleys 12. Following the rumored voyage of the Greeks. The same course steered, but at Percope moored. And marching thence, arrived on foot at Troy. He first opposed the trides. They approached point 280. The spear of Agamemnon wandered wide. But him Iphidamas on his broad belt. Beneath the corslet struck, and, bearing still. On his spear beam, enforced it. But ere yet. He pierced the broidered zone, his point, impress D-285. Against the silver, turned, obtuse as lead. Then royal Agamemnon in his hand. The weapon grasping, with a lion's rage. Home drew it to himself, and from his gripe. Resting it, with his falchion keen his neck 290. Smote full, 
and stretched him lifeless at his foot. So slept Iphidamas among the slain. Unhappy. From his virgin bride remote. Associate with the men of Troy in arms. He fell, and left her beauties unenjoyed. 295. He gave her much, gave her a hundred beeves. And sheep and goats a thousand from his flocks. Promised, for numberless his meadows ranged. But Agamemnon, son of Atreus, him. Slew and despoiled, and threw the Grecian host three hundred. Proceeded, laden with his gorgeous arms. Coon that sight beheld, illustrious chief. Antenor's eldest born, but with dim eyes. Through anguish for his brother's fall. Unseen. Of noble Agamemnon, at his side 305. He cautious stood, and with a spear his arm. Where thickest fleshed, below his elbow, pierced. Till opposite the glittering point appeared. A thrilling horror seized the king of men. So wounded. Yet though wounded so, from fight 310. He ceased not, but on Kuhn rushed, his spear. Grasping, wealth-riven growth of many a wind. He by the foot drew off Iphidamas. His brother, son of his own sire, allowed. Calling the Trojan leaders to his aid. 315. When him so occupied with his keen point. Atrides pierced his bossy shield beneath. Expiring on Iphidamas he fell. Prostrate, and Agamemnon lopped his head. Thus, under royal Agamemnon's hand, 320. Antenor's sons their destiny fulfilled. And to the house of Aids journeyed both. Through other ranks of warriors then he passed. Now with his spear, now with his falchion armed. And now with missile force of massy stones, 325. While yet his warm blood sallied from the wound. But when the wound grew dry, and the blood ceased. Anguish intolerable undermined. Then all the might of Atreus' royal son. As when a laboring woman's arrowy throws 330. Sees her intense, by Juno's daughter's dread. The birth presiding a lithy deep. In fixed, dispensers of those pangs severe. So, anguish insupportable subdued. Then all the might of Atreus' royal son. 335. Upspringing to his seat, instant he bade. His charioteer drive to the hollow barks. Heartsick himself with pain, yet, ere he went. With voice loud echoing hailed the deny. Friends. Counselors and leaders of the Greeks. 340. Now drive, yourselves, the battle from your ships. For me the gods permit not to employ. In fight with Ilium's host the day entire. He ended, and the charioteer his steeds. Lashed to the ships. They not unwilling flew, 345. Bearing from battle the afflicted king. With foaming chests and bellies gray with dust. Soon Hector, noting his retreat, allowed. Called on the Trojans and allies of Troy. Trojans and Lycians, and close-fighting sons 350. Of Dardanus. O oh, summon all your might. Now, now be men. Their bravest is withdrawn. Glory and honor from Saturnian Jove. On me attend. Now full against the Greeks. Drive all your steeds, and win a deathless name. Point three fifty five. He spake, and all drew courage from his word. As when his hounds bright toothed some hunter cheers. Against the lion or the forest boar. So Priamian Hector cheered his host. Magnanimous against the sons of Greece, 360. Terrible as gore tainted Mars. Among the foremost warriors, with success elate. He strode, and flung himself into the fight. Black as a storm which sudden from on high. Descending, furrows deep the gloomy flood. 365. Then whom slew Priamian Hector first? Whom last, by Jove, that day, with glory crowned? Aseus, Dollops, Orus, Agilos. Autonus, Hipponus, Isimnus. Apheltius and Opites first he slew, 370. All leaders of the Greeks, and, after these. 
the people. As when whirlwinds of the west. A storm encounter from the gloomy south. The waves roll multitudinous, and the foam. Upswept by wandering gusts fills all the air, 375. So Hector swept the Grecians. Then defeat. Past remedy and havoc had ensued. Then had the routed Grecians, flying, sought. Their ships again, but that Ulysses thus. Summoned the brave Tydides to his aid. 380. Whence comes it, Diomede, that we forget? Our wanted courage. Hither, O oh my friend. And, fighting at my side, ward off the shame. That must be ours, should Hector seize the fleet. To whom the valiant Diomede replied. 385. I will be firm, trust me thou shalt not find. Me shrinking. Yet small fruit of our attempts. Shall follow, for the thunderer, not to us. But to the Trojan, gives the glorious day. The hero spake, and from his chariot cast 390. Thimbrius to the ground pierced through the pap. While by Ulysses' hand his charioteer. Godlike Molion, fell. The warfare thus. Of both forever closed, them there they left. And plunging deep into the warrior, throng 395. Troubled the multitude. As when two boars. Turned desperate on the close pursuing hounds. So they, returning on the host of Troy. Slew on all sides, and overtoiled with flight. From Hector's arm, the Greeks meantime respired. 400. Two warriors, next, their chariot and themselves. They took, plebeians brave, sons of the seer. Percosian Merops in prophetic skill. Surpassing all. He both his sons forbade. The mortal field, but disobedient they 405. Still sought it, for their destiny prevailed. Spear practice Diomede of life deprived. Both these, and stripped them of their glorious arms. While by Ulysses' hand Hippotamus. Died and Hyperacus. And now the sun 410. Of Saturn, looking down from Ida, poised. The doubtful war, and mutual deaths they dealt. Tydides plunged his spear into the groin. Of the illustrious son of Paean, bold. Agastrophus. No steeds at his command 415. Had he, infatuate. But his charioteer. His steeds detained remote, while through the van. Himself on foot rushed madly till he fell. But Hector through the ranks darting his eye. Perceived, and with ear-piercing cries advanced 420. Against them, followed by the host of Troy. The son of Tydeus, shuddering, his approach. Discerned, an instant to Ulysses spake. Now comes the storm. This way the mischief rolls. Stand and repulse the Trojan. Now be firm. 425. He said, and hurling his long shadowed beam, smote Hector. At his helmet's crown he aimed. Nor erred, but brass encountering brass, the point. Glanced wide, for he had cased his youthful brows. In triple brass, Apollo's glorious gift. 430. Yet with rapidity at such a shock. Hector recoiled into the multitude. Afar, where sinking to his knees, he leaned. On his broad palm, and darkness veiled his eyes. But while Tydides followed through the van 435. His stormy spear, which in the distant soil. Implanted stood, Hector his scattered sense. Recovering, to his chariot sprang again and, diving deep into his host, escaped. The noble son of Tydeus, spear in hand, 440. Rushed after him, and as he went, exclaimed. Dog! Thou hast now escaped, but, sure the stroke. Approached thee nigh, well aimed. Once more thy prayers. Whichever to Apollo thou preferst. Entering the clash of battle, have prevailed, 445. And he hath rescued thee. But well beware. Our next encounter, for if also me. Some god befriend, thou deest. Now will I seek. Another mark, and smite whom next I may. 
He spake, and of his armor stripped the sun 450. Spear feigned of Pian. Meantime Paris, mate. Of beauteous Helen, drew his bow against. Tidides. By a pillar of the tomb. Of Elos, ancient senator revered. Concealed he stood, and while the hero loosed 455. His corslet from the breast of Pian's son. Renowned, and of his helmet and his targe. Despoiled him. Paris, arching quick his bow. No devious shaft dismissed, but his right foot. Pierced through the soul, and fixed it to the ground. 460. Transported from his ambush forth he leaped. With a loud laugh, and, vaunting, thus exclaimed. O oh, shaft well shot! It galls thee. Would to heaven. That it had pierced thy heart, and thou hadst died. So had the Trojans respite from their toils 465. Enjoyed, who, now, shudder at sight of thee. Like she-goats when the lion is at hand. To whom, undaunted, Diomede replied. Archer shrew-tongued. Spy maiden. Man of curls. Shouldst thou in arms attempt me face to face, for seventy. Thy bow and arrows should avail thee not. Vain boaster. Thou hast scratched my foot, no more. And I regard it as I might the stroke. Of a weak woman or a simple child. The weapons of a dastard and a slave 475. Are ever such. More terrible are mine. And whom they pierce, though slightly pierced, he dies. His wife her cheeks rends inconsolable. His babes are fatherless, his blood the glebe. In Carnadines, and where he bleeds and rots 480. More birds of prey than women haunt the place. He ended, and Ulysses, drawing nigh. Sheltered Tidides. He behind the chief. Of Ithaca sat drawing forth the shaft. But pierced with agonizing pangs the while point 485. Then, climbing to his chariot seat, he bade. Stenelus hastened to the hollow ships. Heartsick with pain. And now alone was seen. Spear famed Ulysses, not an argive more. Remained, so universal was the rout, for ninety. And groaning, to his own great heart he said. Alas! What now awaits me? If, appalled. By multitudes, I fly, much detriment. And if alone they intercept me here. Still more, for Jove hath scattered all the host for ninety-five. Yet why these doubts? For know I not of old. That only dastards fly, and that the voice. Of honor bids the famed in battle stand. Bleed they themselves, or cause their foes to bleed. While busied in such thought he stood, the ranks five hundred. Of Trojans fronted with broad shields, enclosed. The hero with a ring, hemming around. Their own destruction. As when dogs, and swains. In prime of manhood, from all quarters rush. Around a boar, he from his thicket bolts, 505. The bright tusk wetting in his crooked jaws. They press him on all sides, and from beneath. Loud gnashings here, yet firm. His threats defy. Like them the Trojans on all sides assailed. Ulysses dear to Jove. First with his spear 510. He sprang impetuous on a valiant chief. Whose shoulder with a downright point he pierced. Diapites. Thun next he slew. An enemus, and from his courser's backs. Alighting quick, Chersodamas, beneath 515. His bossy shield the gliding weapon passed. Right through his navel, on the plain he fell. Expiring, and with both hands clenched the dust. Them slain he left, and Charops wounded next. Brother of Socus, generous chief, and son 520. Of Hippasus, brave Socus to the aid. Of Charops flew, and, godlike, thus began. Illustrious chief, Ulysses. Strong to toil. And rich in artifice. Or boast today. Two sons of Hippasus, brave warriors both, 525. 
of armor and of life bereft by thee, or to my vengeful spear resign thy own. So saying, Ulysses' oval disc he smote. Through his bright disc the stormy weapon flew. Transpierced his twisted mail, and from his side five-thirty. Drove all the skin, but to his nobler parts. Found entrance none, by palace turned aslant. Ulysses, conscious of his life untouched. Retired a step from Socus, and replied. Ah, hapless youth, thy fate is on the wing, 535. Me thou hast forced indeed to cease a while. From battle with the Trojans, but I speak. Thy death at hand. For vanquished by my spear. This selfsame day thou shalt to me resign. Thy fame, thy soul to Pluto steed renowned. Point five forty. He ceased. Then Socus turned his back to fly. But, as he turned, his shoulder blades between. He pierced him, and the spear urged through his breast. On his resounding arms he fell, and thus. Godlike Ulysses gloried in his fall. 545. Ah, Socus, son of Hippasus, a chief. Of fame equestrian. Swifter far than thou. Death followed thee, and thou hast not escaped. Ill-fated youth. Thy parents' hands thine eyes. Shall never close, but birds of ravenous maw 550. Shall tear thee, flapping thee with frequent wing. While me the noble Grecians shall entomb. So saying, the valiant Socus spear he drew. From his own flesh, and through his bossy shield. The weapon drawn, forth sprang the blood, and left 555. His spirit faint. Then Ilium's dauntless sons. Seeing Ulysses' blood, exhorted glad. Each other, and, with force united, all. Pressed on him. He, retiring, summoned loud. His followers. Thrice, loud as mortal may, 560. He called, and valiant Menelaus thrice. Hearing the voice, to Ajax thus remarked. Illustrious son of Telamon. The voice. Of Lerdiades comes o'er my ear. With such a sound, as if the hardy chief, 565. Abandoned of his friends, were overpowered. By numbers intercepting his retreat. Haste. Force we quick a passage through the ranks. His worth demands our succor, for I fear. Lest soul conflicting with the host of Troy 570. Brave as he is, he perish, to the loss. Unspeakable and long regret of Greece. So saying, he went, and Ajax, godlike chief. Followed him. At the voice arrived, they found. Ulysses Jove beloved compassed about 575. By Trojans, as the lynxes in the hills. A dust for blood, compass an antlered stag. Pierced by an archer, while his blood is warm. And his limbs pliable, from him he escapes. But when the feathered barb hath quelled his force, 580. In some dark hollow of the mountain side. The hungry troop devour him, chance, the while. Conducts a lion thither, before whom. All vanish, and the lion feeds alone. So swarm the Trojan powers, numerous and bold, 585. Around Ulysses, who with wary skill. Heroic combated his evil day. But Ajax came, covered with his broad shield. That seemed a tower, and at Ulysses' side. Stood fast. Then fled the Trojans wide dispersed, 590 and Menelaus led him by the hand. Till his own chariot to his aid approached. But Ajax, springing on the Trojans, slew. Doriclus, from the loins of Priam sprung. But Spurius. Pandocus he wounded next, 595. Then wounded Pyrasus, and after him. Pilates and Lysander. As a flood. Runs headlong from the mountains to the plain. After long showers from Jove. Many a dry oak. And many a pine the torrent sweeps along, six hundred. And, turbid, shoots much soil into the sea. So, glorious Ajax troubled wide the field. Horse and man slaughtering, whereof Hector yet. 
heard not. For on the left of all the war, he fought besides commander, where around 605. Huge Nestor, and I Dominius the Brave. Most deaths were dealt, and loudest roared the fight. There Hector toiled, feats wonderful of spear. And horsemanship achieving, and the lines. Of many a phalanx desolating wide. 610. Nor even then had the bold Greeks retired. But that an arrow triple barbed, dispatched. By Paris, Helen's mate, against the chief. Machaean warring with distinguished force. Pierced his right shoulder. For his sake alarmed, 615. The valor breathing Grecians feared, lest he. In that disastrous field should also fall. At once, Idomeneus of Crete approached. The noble Nestor, and him thus bespake. Arise, Nelian Nestor. Pride of Greece. 620. Ascend thy chariot, and Machaean placed. Beside thee, bear him, instant to the fleet. For one, so skilled in medicine, and to free. The inherent barb, is worth a multitude. He said, nor the Gerenian hero old 625. Aught hesitated, but into his seat. Ascended, and Machaean, son renowned. Of Aesculapius, mounted at his side. He lashed the steeds, they not unwilling sought. The hollow ships, long their familiar home. 630. Cebriones, meantime, the charioteer. Of Hector, from his seat the Trojan ranks. Observing sore discomfited, began. Here are we busied, Hector. On the skirts. Of roaring battle, and meantime I see 635. Our host confused, their horses and themselves. All mingled. Telamonian Ajax there. Routs them, I know the hero by his shield. Haste, drive we thither, for the carnage most. Of horse and foot conflicting furious, their 640. Rages, and infinite the shouts arise. He said, and with shrill sounding scourge the steeds. Smote ample maned. They, at the sudden stroke. Through both hosts whirled the chariot, shields and men. Trampling, with blood the axle underneath 645. All reddened, and the chariot rings with drops. From the horse hoofs, and from the fellied wheels. Full on the multitude he drove, on fire. To burst the phalanx, and confusion sent. Among the Greeks, for not he shunned the spear. 650. All quarters else with falchion or with lance. Or with huge stones he ranged, but cautious shunned. The encounter of the Telamonian chief. But the eternal father throned on high. With fear filled Ajax. Panic fixed he stood, 655. His sevenfold shield behind his shoulder cast. And hemmed by numbers, with an eye askant. Watchful retreated. As a beast of prey. Retiring, turns and looks, so he his face. Turned oft, retiring slow, and step by step. 660. As when the watchdogs and assembled swains. Have driven a tawny lion from the stalls. Then, interdicting him his wished repast. Watch all the night, he, famished, yet again. Comes furious on, but speeds not. Kept aloof 665. By frequent spears from daring hands, but more. By flash of torches, which, though fierce, he dreads. Till, at the dawn, sullen he stalks away. So from before the Trojans Ajax stalked. Sullen, and with reluctance slow retired.670. His brave heart trembling for the fleet of Greece. As when, the boys o'erpowered, a sluggish ass. On whose tough sides they have spent many a staff. Enters the harvest, and the spiry ears. Crops persevering. With their rods the boys 675. Still ply him hard but all their puny might. Scarce drives him forth when he hath browsed his fill. So, there, the Trojans and their foreign aids. With glittering lances keen huge Ajax urged. His broad shield center smiting. He, by turns, 680. 
With desperate force the Trojan phalanx dents. Facing, repulsed them, and by turns he fled. But still forbade all inroad on the fleet. Trojans and Greeks between, alone, he stood. A bulwark. Spears from daring hands dismiss D-685. Some, piercing his broad shield, there planted stood. While others, in the midway falling, spent. Their disappointed rage deep in the ground. Eurypolis, Evaemon's noble son. Him seeing, thus, with weapons overwhelmed 690. Flew to his side, his glittering lance dismissed. And Apiseon, son of Phausias, struck. Under the midriff. Through his liver passed. The ruthless point, and, falling, he expired. Forth sprang Eurypolis to seize the spoil. 695. Whom soon as godlike Alexander saw. Despoiling Apiseon of his arms. Drawing incontinent his bow, he sent. A shaft to his right thigh, the brittle reed. Snapped, and the rankling barb stuck fast within. 700. Terrified at the stroke, the wounded chief. To his own band retired, but, as he went. With echoing voice called on the deny. Friends. Counselors, and leaders of the Greeks. Turn ye and stand, and from his dreadful lot 705. Save Ajax whelmed with weapons, scape, I judge. He cannot from the roaring fight, yet oh. Stand fast around him, if save ye may. Your champion huge, the Telamonian chief. So spake the wounded warrior. They at once 710. With sloping bucklers, and with spears erect. To his relief approached. Ajax with joy. The friendly phalanx joined, then turned and stood. Thus burned the embattled field as with the flames. Of a devouring fire. Meantime afar 715. From all that tumult the Nelian Mares. Bore Nestor, foaming as they ran, with whom? Machaean also rode, leader revered. Achilles marked him passing. For he stood. Exalted on his huge ship's lofty stern, 720. Spectator of the toil severe, and flight. Deplorable of the defeated Greeks. He called his friend Patroclus. He below. Within his tent the sudden summons heard. And sprang like Mars abroad, all unaware 725. That in that sound he heard the voice of fate. Him first Menoetius' gallant son addressed. What would Achilles? Wherefore hath he called? To whom Achilles swiftest of the swift? Brave Menoetiades. My soul's delight, 730. Soon will the Grecians now my knees surround. Suppliant, by dread extremity constrained. But fly Patroclus, haste, O oh dear to Jove. Inquire of Nestor, whom he hath conveyed. From battle, wounded. Viewing him behind, 735. I most believed him Esculapius' son. Machaean, but the steed so swiftly passed. My galley, that his face escaped my note. He said, and prompt to gratify his friend. Forth ran Patroclus through the camp of Greece.740. Now when the Leon Nestor to his tent had brought Machaean, they alighted both. And the old hero's friend Eurymedon released the coursers on the beach a while. Their tunic sweat imbued in the cool air 745. They ventilated, facing full the breeze. Then on soft couches in the tent reposed. Meantime, their beverage Hecamede mixed. The old king's bright-haired captive, whom he brought. From Tenedos, what time Achilles sack D-750. The city, daughter of the noble chief. Arsenus, and selected from the rest. For Nestor. As the honorable Mede. Of counsels always eminently wise. She, first, before them placed a table bright, 755. With feet coerulean, thirst-provoking sauce. She brought them also in a brazen tray. Garlic and honey new and sacred meal. Beside them, next, she placed a noble cup. Of labor exquisite, 
which from his home 760. The ancient king had brought with golden studs. Embellished, it presented to the grasp. Four ears. Two golden turtles, perched on each. Seemed feeding, and two turtles formed the base. That cup once filled, all others must have toil, D765. To move it from the board, but it was light. In Nestor's hand, he lifted it with ease. The graceful virgin in that cup a draught. Mixed for them, Pramnian wine and savory cheese. Of goat's milk, grated with a brazen rasp, 770. Then sprinkled all with meal. The draught prepared. She gave it to their hand. They, drinking, slaked. Their fiery thirst, and with each other sat. Conversing friendly, when the godlike youth. By brave Achilles sent, stood at the door. 775. Him seeing, Nestor from his splendid couch. Arose, and by the hand leading him in. Entreated him to sit, but that request. Patroclus, on his part refusing, said. O venerable king! No seat is here 780. For me, nor may thy courtesy prevail. He is irascible, and to be feared. Who bade me ask what chieftain thou hast brought? From battle, wounded, but untold I learn. I see Machaean, and shall now report 785. As I have seen, O ancient king revered. Thou knowst Achilles fiery, and propense. Blame to impute even where blame is none. To whom the brave Gerenian thus replied. Why feels Achilles for the wounded Greek 790? Such deep concern? He little knows the height. To which our sorrows swell. Our noblest lie. By spear or arrow wounded in the fleet. Diomede, warlike son of Tydeus, bleeds. Galled by a shaft, Ulysses, glorious chief, 795. And Agamemnon suffer by the spear. Eurypolis is shot into the thigh. And here lies still another newly brought. By me from fight, pierced also by a shaft. What then? How strong sower to give them aid 800. Achilles feels no pity of the Greeks. Waits he till every vessel on the shore. Fired, in despite of the whole Argive host. Be sunk in its own ashes, and ourselves. All perish, heaps on heaps. For in my limbs 805. No longer lives the agility of my youth. Oh, for the vigor of those days again. When Ellis, for her cattle which we took. Strove with us and Idomoneus I slew. Brave offspring of Hypericus. He dwelt 810. In Ellis, and while I the pledges drove. Stood for his herd, but fell among the first. By a spear hurled from my victorious arm. Then fled the rustic multitude, and we. Drove off abundant booty from the plain 815. Herds fifty of fat beeves, large flocks of goats. As many, with as many sheep and swine. And full thrice fifty maras of brightest hue. All breeders. Many with their foals beneath. All these, by night returning safe, we drove 820. Into Nelian Pilus, and the heart. Rejoiced of Neleus, in a son so young. A warrior, yet enriched with such a prize. At early dawn the herald summoned loud. The citizens, to prove their just demands 825. On fruitful Ellis, and the assembled chiefs. Division made, for numerous were the debts. Which the Apeans, in the weak estate. Of the unpeopled Pilus. Had incurred. For Hercules, few years before, had sacked D830. Our city, and our mightiest slain. Ourselves. The gallant sons of Neleus, were in all. Twelve youths, of whom myself alone survived. The rest all perished. Whence, presumptuous groan. The brazen mailed Apeans wronged us oft. Point 835. A herd of beeves my father for himself. Selected, and a numerous flock beside. Three hundred sheep, with shepherds for them all. For he a claimant was of large arrears. From sacred Ellis. 
for unrivaled steeds 840. With his own chariot to the games he sent. That should contend for the appointed prize. A tripod. But Augeas, king of men, detained the steeds and sent the charioteer. Defrauded home. My father, therefore, fired 845. At such foul outrage both of deeds and words. Took much, and to the pillions gave the rest. For satisfaction of the claims of all. While thus we busied were in these concerns. And in performance of religious rites 850. Throughout the city, came the Apeans armed. Their whole vast multitude both horse and foot. On the third day. Came also clad in brass. The two Molians, inexpert as yet. In feats of arms, and of a boyish age. 855. There is a city on a mountain's head. Fast by the banks of Alpheus, far remote. The utmost town which Sandy Pilus owns. Named Thryoessa, and, with ardor fired. To lay it waste, that city they besieged. 860. Now when their host had traversed all the plain. Minerva from Olympus flew by night. And bade us arm, nor were the pillions slow. To assemble, but impatient for the fight. Me, then, my father suffered not to arm 865. But hid my steeds, for he supposed me raw. As yet, and ignorant how war is waged. Yet, even thus, unvantaged and on foot. Superior honors I that day acquired. To theirs who rode, for Pallas led me on 870. Herself to victory. There is a stream. Which at arena falls into the sea. Named Minuius. On that river's bank. The Pilian horsemen waited day's approach. And thither all our foot came pouring down. Point 875. The flood divine of Alpheus thence we reached. At noon, all armed complete. There, hallowed rites. We held to Jove omnipotent, and slew. A bull to sacred Alpheus, with a bull. To Neptune, and a heifer of the herd 880. To Pallas. Then, all marshaled as they were. From van to rear our legions took repast. And at the river's side slept on their arms. Already the Epian host had round. Begirt the city, bent to lay it waste 885. A task which cost them, first, both blood and toil. For when the radiant sun on the green earth had risen, with prayer to Pallas and to Jove, we gave them battle. When the Pilian host and the Apeans thus were close engaged 890, I first a warrior slew, Milius the brave, and seized his coursers. He the eldest born of King Augea's daughters had espoused the golden Agamede, not an herb. The spacious earth yields but she knew its powers 895. Him, rushing on me, with my brazen lance. I smote, and in the dust he fell, I leaped. Into his seat, and drove into the van. A panic seized the Apeans when they saw. The leader of their horse o'erthrown, a chief nine hundred. Surpassing all in fight. Black as a cloud. With whirlwind fraught, I drove impetuous on. Took fifty chariots, and at sight of each. Lay two slain warriors, with their teeth the soil. Grinding, all vanquished by my single arm. 905. I had slain also the Molians, sons. Of actor, but the sovereign of the deep. Their own authentic sire, in darkness dense. Involving both, conveyed them safe away. Then Jove a victory of prime renown 910. Gave to the Pillians. For we chased and slew. And gathered spoil o'er all the champions spread. With scattered shields, till we our steeds had driven. To the Buprasian fields laden with corn. To the Olenian rock, and to a town 915. In fair Colonna situate. And named. Elysia. There it was that palace turned. Our people homeward, there I left the last. Of all the slain, and he was slain by me. Then drove the Achaeans from Buprasium home 920. 
their courser's fleet, and Jove, of gods above. Receive most praise, Nestor of men below. Such once was I. But brave Achilles shuts. His virtues close, an unimparted store. Yet even he shall weep, when all the host, 925. His fellow warriors once, shall be destroyed. But recollect, young friend. The sage advice. Which when thou earnest from Thia to the aid. Of Agamemnon, on that selfsame day. Menoetius gave thee. We were present there, 930. Ulysses and myself, both in the house. And heard it all, for to the house we came. Of Peleus in our journey through the land. Of fertile Greece, gathering her states to war. We found thy noble sire Menoetius there, 935. Thee and Achilles, ancient Peleus stood. To Jove the thunderer offering in his court. Thighs of an ox, and on the blazing rites. Libation pouring from a cup of gold. While he on preparation of the feast 940. Attended both, Ulysses and myself. Stood in the vestibule, Achilles flew. Toward us, introduced us by the hand. And, seating us, such liberal portion gave. To each, as hospitality requires. 945. Our thirst, at length, and hunger both sufficed. I, foremost speaking, asked you to the wars. And ye were eager both, but from your sires. Much admonition, ere ye went, received. Old Peleus charged Achilles to aspire 950. To highest praise, and always to excel. But thee, thy sire Menoetius thus advised. My son. Achilles boasts the nobler birth. But thou art elder, he in strength excels. Thee far. Thou, therefore, with discretion rule 955. His inexperience, thy advice impart. With gentleness, instruction wise suggest. Wisely, and thou shalt find him apt to learn. So thee thy father taught, but, as it seems, in vain. Yet even now essay to move 960. Warlike Achilles, if the gods so please. Who knows but that thy reasons may prevail. To rouse his valiant heart? Men rarely scorn. The earnest intercession of a friend. But if some prophecy alarm his fears, 965. And from his goddess mother he have aught. Received, who may have learnt the same from Jove. Thee let him send at least, and order forth. With thee the Myrmidons. A dawn of hope. Shall thence, it may be, on our host arise.970. And let him send thee to the battle clad. In his own radiant armor. Troy, deceived. By such resemblance, shall abstain perchance. From conflict, and the weary Greeks enjoy. Short respite, it is all that war allows. 975. Fresh as ye are, ye, by your shouts alone. May easily repulse an army spent. With labor from the camp and from the fleet. Thus Nestor, and his mind bent to his words. Back to Eacides through all the camp 980. He ran. And when, still running, he arrived. Among Ulysses' barks, where they had fixed. The forum, where they ministered the laws. And had erected altars to the gods. There him Eurypolis, Evaemon's son, 985. Illustrious met, deep wounded in his thigh. And halting back from battle. From his head. The sweat, and from his shoulders ran profuse. And from his perilous wound the sable blood. Continual streamed, yet was his mind composed.990. Him seeing, Menoetiates the brave. Compassion felt, and mournful, thus began. Ah, hapless senators and chiefs of Greece! Left ye your native country that the dogs might fatten on your flesh at distant Troy, 995. But tell me, hero! Say, Eurypolis! Have the Achaeans' power still to withstand the enormous force of Hector, or is this? The moment when his spear must pierce us all? To whom Eurypolis, discreet, replied. Point one thousand. 
Patroclus, dear to Jove. There is no help. No remedy. We perish at our ships. The warriors, once most strenuous of the Greeks, lie wounded in the fleet by foes whose might increases ever. But thyself afford one thousand and five. To me some succor, lead me to my ship. Cut forth the arrow from my thigh. The gore. With warm ablution cleanse, and on the wound. Smooth unguent spread, the same as by report. Achilles taught thee, taught, himself, there use ten ten. By Chiron, centaur, justest of his kind. For Podalirius and Machaean both. Are occupied. Machaean, as I judge. Lies wounded in his tent, needing like aid. Himself, and Podalirius in the field 1015. Maintains sharp conflict with the sons of Troy. To whom Menoetius' gallant son replied. Hero. Euripilus. How shall we act? In this perplexity? What course pursue? I seek the brave Achilles, to whose ear 1020. I bear a message from the ancient chief. Gerenian Nestor, guardian of the Greeks. Yet will I not, even for such a cause. My friend. Abandon thee in thy distress. He ended, and his arms folding around 1025. The warrior bore him thence into his tent. His servant, on his entrance, spread the floor. With hides, on which Patroclus at his length. Extended him, and with his knife cut forth. The rankling point. With tepid lotion, next 1030. He cleansed the gore, and with a bitter root. Bruised small between his palms, sprinkled the wound. At once, the anodyne his pain assuaged. The wound was dried within, and the blood ceased. It will be well here to observe the position of the Greeks. All human aid is cut off by the wounds of their heroes, and all assistance from the gods forbidden by Jupiter. On the contrary, the Trojans see their general at their head, and Jupiter himself fights on their side. Upon this hinge turns the whole poem. The distress of the Greeks occasions first the assistance of Patroclus, and then the death of that hero brings back Achilles. The poet shows great skill in conducting these incidents. He gives Achilles the pleasure of seeing that the Greeks could not carry on the war without his assistance, and upon this depends the great catastrophe of the poem. Book 12. Argument of the Twelfth Book. The Trojans assail the ramparts, and Hector forces the gates. Book 12. So was Menoetius' gallant son employed. Healing Euripilus. The Greeks, meantime. And Trojans with tumultuous fury fought. Nor was the foss ordained long time to exclude. The host of Troy, nor yet the rampart built five. Beside it for protection of the fleet. For Hecatome the Greeks had offered none. Nor prayer to heaven, that it might keep secure. Their ships with all their spoils. The mighty work. As in defiance of the immortal powers ten. Had risen, and could not therefore long endure. While Hector lived, and while Achilles held. His wrathful purpose, while the city yet. Of royal Priam was unsacked, so long. The massy structure stood. But when the best fifteen. And bravest of the Trojan host were slain. And of the Grecian heroes, some had fallen. And some survived, when Priam's towers had blazed. In the tenth year, and to their native shores. The Grecians with their ships, at length. Returned, twenty. Then Neptune, with Apollo leagued, devised. Its ruin. Every river that descends. From the Idean heights into the sea. They brought against it, gathering all their force. Rhesus, Caresus, Rhodius, the wide, branch, D25. Heptaparus, Esipus, Granicus. Scamander's sacred current, and thy stream. Simois, whose banks with helmets and with shields. Were strewed, and chiefs of origin divine. All these with refluent course Apollo drove thirty. Nine days against the rampart, and Jove reigned. Incessant, that the Grecian wall wave-whelmed. Through all its length might sudden disappear. 
Neptune with his tridental mace, himself. Led them, and beam and buttress to the flood thirty-five. Consigning, laid by the laborious Greeks. Swept the foundation, and the level bank. Of the swift rolling Hellespont restored. The structure thus effaced, the spacious beach. He spread with sand as at the first. Then bade forty. Subside the streams, and in their channels wind. With limpid course, and pleasant as before. Apollo thus and Neptune, from the first. Designed its fall. But now the battle raved. And clamors of the warriors all around forty-five. The strong-built turrets, whose assaulted planks. Rang, while the Grecians, by the scourge of Jove. Subdued, stood close within their fleet immured. At Hector's phalanx scattering force appalled. He, as before, with whirlwind fury fought point fifty. As when the boar or lion fiery eyed. Turns short, the hunters and the hounds among. The close embattled troop him firm oppose. And ply him fast with spears. He no dismay. Conceives or terror in his noble heart, fifty five. But by his courage falls, frequent he turns. Attempting bold the ranks, and where he points. Direct his onset, there the ranks retire. So, through the concourse on his rolling wheels. Born rapid, Hector animated loud sixty. His fellow warriors to surpass the trench. But not his own swift-footed steeds would dare. That hazard. Standing on the dangerous brink. They neighed aloud, for by its breadth the fosse. Deterred them, neither was the effort slight sixty-five. To leap that gulf, nor easy the attempt. To pass it through. Steep were the banks profound. On both sides, and with massy piles acute. Thick planted, interdicting all assault. No courser to the rapid chariot braced seventy. Had entered there with ease. Yet strong desires. Possessed the infantry of that emprise. And thus Polydamus the ear addressed. Of dauntless Hector, standing at his side. Hector, and ye the leaders of our host, seventy-five. Both Trojans and allies. Rash the attempt. I deem, and vain, to push our horses through. So dangerous is the pass, rough is the trench. With pointed stakes, and the Achaean wall. Meets us beyond. No chariot may descend eighty. Or charioteer fight there. Straight are the bounds. And incommodious, and his death were sure. If Jove, high thundering ruler of the skies, will succor Ilium, and not less intend, then utter devastation of the Greeks, eighty five. I am content. Now perish all their host. Inglorious, from their country far remote. But should they turn, and should ourselves be driven, Back from the fleet impeded and perplexed. In this deep fosse, I judged that not a man, ninety. Scaping the rallied Grecians, should survive. To bear the tidings of our fate to Troy. Now, therefore, act we all as I advise. Let every charioteer his coursers hold. Fast reign beside the fosse, while we on foot, ninety-five. With order undisturbed and arms in hand. Shall follow Hector. If destruction born. On wings of destiny this day approach. The Grecians, they will fly our first assault. So spake Polydamus, whose safe advice one hundred. Pleased Hector. From his chariot to the ground. All armed he leaped, nor would a Trojan there. When once they saw the hero on his feet. Ride into battle, but unanimous. Descending with a leap, all trod the plain. 105. Each gave command that at the trench his steeds should stand detained in orderly array. Then, suddenly, the parted host became five bands, each following its appointed chief, the bravest and most numerous, and whose hearts won ten, wished most to burst the barrier and to wage the battle at the ships with Hector marched, and with Polydamus, whom followed, third, Cebrions. For Hector had his steeds. 
consigned and chariot to inferior care. 115. Paris, Alcathois, and Eginor led. The second band, and, sons of Priam both. Deiphobus and Helenus, the third. With them was seen partner of their command. The hero Asius. From Arisba came 120. Asius herdicides, to battle drawn. From the Celiae's banks by martial steeds. Haired fiery red and of the noblest size. The fourth, Anchises' mighty son controlled. Aeneas. Under him Antenor's sons, 125. Archilochus and Acamas, advanced. Adept in all the practice of the field. Last came the glorious powers in league with Troy. Led by Sarpedon. He with Glaucus shared. His high control, and with the warlike chief 130. Astropaeus, four of all his host. Them bravest he esteemed, himself except. Superior in heroic might to all. And now, their shields adjusted each to each. With dauntless courage fired, right on they moved 135. Against the Grecians, nor expected less. Than that beside their sable ships, the host. Should self-abandon fall an easy prey. The Trojans, thus with their confederate powers. The counsel of the accomplished prince pursued, 140. Polydamus, one chief alone except. Asia's herdicides. He scorned to leave. His charioteer and coursers at the trench. And drove toward the fleet. Ah, madly brave. His evil hour was come, he was ordained D-145. With horse and chariot and triumphant shout. To enter windswept Ilium and evermore. Deucalion's offspring, first, into the shades. Dismissed him, by Idomeneus he died. Leftward he drove furious, along the road 150. By which the steeds and chariots of the Greeks. Returned from battle. In that track he flew. Nor found the portals by the massy bar. Secured, but open for reception safe. Of fugitives, and to a guard consigned. 155. Thither he drove direct, and in his rear. His band shrill shouting followed, for they judged. The Greeks no longer able to withstand. Their foes, but sure to perish in the camp. Vain hope. For in the gate two chiefs they found 160. Lapathy born, courageous offspring each. Of dauntless father, Polypides, this. Sprung from Pyrithoas, that, the warrior bold. Leontius, terrible as gore tainted Mars. These two, defenders of the lofty gates, 165. Stood firm before them. As when two tall oaks. On the high mountains day by day endure. Rough wind and rain, by deep descending roots. Of hugest growth fast founded in the soil. So they, sustained by conscious valor, saw, 170. Unmoved, high towering Asius on his way. Nor feared him aught, nor shrank from his approach. Right on toward the barrier. Lifting high. Their seasoned bucklers and with clamor loud. The band advanced, King Asius at their head, 175. With whom I am anus, expert in arms. Orestes, Thun, Akamas the son. Of Asius, and Enamaus, led them on. Till now, the warlike pair, exhorting loud. The Grecians to defend the fleet, had stood 180. Within the gates. But soon as they perceived. The Trojans swift advancing to the wall. And heard a cry from all the flying Greeks. Both sallying, before the gates they fought. Like forest boars. Which hearing in the hills 185. The crash of hounds and huntsmen nigh at hand. With start oblique lay many a sapling flat. Short broken by the root, nor cease to grind. Their sounding tusks, till by the spear they die. So sounded on the breasts of those brave two 190. The smitten brass, for resolute they fought. Emboldened by their might who kept the wall. And trusting in their own. They, in defense. Of camp and fleet and life, thick battery hurled. 
of stones precipitated from the towers. 195. Frequent as snows they fell, which stormy winds. Driving the gloomy clouds, shake to the ground. Till all the fertile earth lies covered deep. Such volley poured the Greeks, and such returned. The Trojans. Casks of hide, arid and tough, two hundred. And bossy shields rattled, by such a storm. Assailed of millstone masses from above. Then Asius, son of Herticus, a groan. Indignant uttered. On both thighs he smote. With disappointment furious, and exclaimed, 205. Jupiter. Even thou art false become. And altogether such. Full sure I deemed. That not a Grecian hero should abide. One moment force invincible as ours. And lo! As wasps ring streaked, or bees that build two ten. Their dwellings in the highway's craggy side. Leave not their hollow home, but fearless wait. The hunters coming, in their brood's defense. So these, although two only, from the gates. Move not. Nor will, till either seized or slain. 215. So Asia spake, but speaking so, changed not. The mind of Jove on Hector's glory bent. Others, as obstinate, at other gates. Such deeds performed, that to enumerate all. Were difficult, unless to power divine. 220. For fierce the hail of stones from end to end. Smote on the barrier, anguish filled the Greeks. Yet, by necessity constrained, their ships. They guarded still, nor less the gods themselves. Patrons of Greece, all sorrowed at the sight. 225. At once the valiant Lapathy began. Terrible conflict, and Pyrithoa's son. Brave Polypides through his helmet pierced. Damasus, his resplendent point the brass. Sufficed not to withstand. Entering, it crush D230. The bone within, and mingling all his brain. With his own blood, his onset fierce repressed. Pylon and Orminus he next subdued. Meantime Leontius, branch of Mars, his spear. Hurled at Hippomachus, whom threw his belt 235. He pierced, then drawing forth his falchion keen. Through all the multitude he flew to smite. Antiphides, and with a downright stroke. Felled him. Iaminus and Menon next. He slew, with brave Orestes, whom he heaped, 240. All three together, on the fertile glebe. While them the lapathy of their bright arms. Despoiled, Polydamus and Hector stood. With all the bravest youths and most resolved. To burst the barrier and to fire the fleet, 245. Beside the fosse, pondering the event. For, while they pressed to pass, they spied a bird. Sublime in air, an eagle. Right between. Both hosts he soared, the Trojan on his left. A serpent bearing in his pounces clutch, D250. Enormous, dripping blood, but lively still. And mindful of revenge. For from beneath. The eagle's breast, updarting fierce his head. Fast by the throat he struck him, anguish sick. The eagle cast him down into the space 255. Between the hosts, and, clanging loud his plumes. As the wind bore him, floated far away. Shuddered the Trojans viewing at their feet. The spotted serpent ominous, and thus. Polydamus to dauntless Hector spake point 260. Oft times in council, Hector, thou art wont. To censure me, although advising well. Nor out the private citizen, I confess. Either in council or in war to indulge. Loquacity, but ever to employ 265. All his exertions in support of thine. Yet hear my best opinion once again. Proceed we not in our attempt against. The Grecian fleet. For if in truth the sign. Respect the host of Troy ardent to pass, 270. Then, as the eagle soared both hosts between. With Iliams on his left, and clutched a snake. Enormous, dripping blood, but still alive. 
which yet he dropped suddenly. Ere he reached his airy, or could give it to his young, 275. So we, although with mighty force we burst. Both gates and barrier, and although the Greeks should all retire, shall never yet the way tread honorably back by which we came. No. Many a Trojan shall we leave behind 280. Slain by the Grecians in their fleet's defense. An augur skilled in omens would expound. This omen thus, and faith would win from all. To whom, dark lowering, Hector thus replied. Polydamus. I like not thy advice, 285. Thou couldst have framed far better. But if this be thy deliberate judgment, then the gods make thy deliberate judgment nothing worth. Who bids me disregard the thunderer's firm assurance to myself announced, and make 290 the wild inhabitants of air my guides, which I alike despise, speed they their course with right hand flight toward the ruddy east or leftward down into the shades of eve. Consider we the will of Jove alone, 295. Sovereign of heaven and earth. Omens abound. But the best omen is our country's cause. Wherefore should fiery war thy soul alarm? For were we slaughtered, one and all, around. The fleet of Greece, thou needst not fear to die, 300. Whose courage never will thy flight retard. But if thou shrink thyself, or by smooth speech. Seduce one other from a soldier's part. Pierced by this spear incontinent thou deest. So saying he led them, who with deafening roar 305. Followed him. Then, from the Idean hills. Jove hurled a storm which wafted right the dust. Into the fleet, the spirits too he quelled. Of the Achaeans, and the glory gave. To Hector and his host. They, trusting firm 310. In signs from Jove, and in their proper force. Assayed the barrier. From the towers they tore. The galleries, cast the battlements to ground. And the projecting buttresses adjoined. To strengthen the vast work, with bars upheaved. 315. All these, with expectation fierce to break. The rampart, down they drew. Nor yet the Greeks. Gave back, but fencing close with shields the wall. Smote from behind them many a foe beneath. Meantime from tower to tower the adjaces moved 320. Exhorting all. With mildness some, and some. With harsh rebuke, whom they observed through fear. Declining base the labors of the fight. Friends. Argives. Warriors of whatever rank. Ye who excel, and ye of humbler note, 325 and ye the last and least. For such there are. All have not magnanimity alike. Now have we work for all, as all perceive. Turn not, retreat not to your ships, appalled. By sounding menaces, but press the foe. 330. Exhort each other, and e'en now perchance. Olympian Jove, by whom the lightnings burn. Shall grant us to repulse them, and to chase the routed Trojans to their gates again. So they vociferating to the Greeks, 335. Stirred them to battle. As the feathery snows. Fall frequent, on some wintry day, when Jove. Hath risen to shed them on the race of man. And show his arrowy stores. He lulls the winds. Then shakes them down continual, covering thick 340. Mountain tops, promontories, flowery meads, and cultured valleys rich. The ports and shores receive it also of the hoary deep. But there the waves bound it, while all beside lies whelmed beneath Jove's fast-descending shower, 345. So thick, from side to side, by Trojans hurled against the Greeks, and by the Greeks returned. The stony volleys flew, resounding loud. Through all its length the battered rampart roared. Nor yet had Hector and his host prevail, D350. To burst the gates, and break the massy bar. Had not all-seeing Jove Sarpedon moved. 
his son, against the Greeks, furious as falls. The lion on some horned herd of beeves. At once his polished buckler he advanced 355. With leafy brass o'erlaid, for with smooth brass. The forger of that shield its oval disc. Had plated, and with thickest hides throughout. Had lined it, stitched with circling wires of gold. That shield he bore before him, firmly grasped, d360. He shook two spears, and with determined strides. Marched forward. As the lion mountain bred. After long fast, by impulse of his heart. Undaunted urged, seeks resolute the flock. Even in the shelter of their guarded home. 365. He finds, perchance, the shepherds armed with spears. And all their dogs awake, yet cannot leave. Untried the fence, but either leaps at light. And entering tears the prey, or in the attempt. Pierced by some dexterous peasant, bleeds himself. 370. So high his courage to the assault impelled. Godlike Sarpedon, and him fired with hope. To break the barrier, when to Glaucus thus. Son of Hippolochus, his speech he turned. Why, Glaucus, is the seat of honor ours, 375. Why drink we brimming cups, and feast in state? Why gaze they all on us as we were gods? In Lycia, and why share we pleasant fields? And spacious vineyards, where the Xanthus winds? Distinguished thus in Lycia, we are called D380. To firmness here, and to encounter bold. The burning battle, that our fair report. Among the Lycians may be blazoned thus. No dastards are the potentates who rule. The bright-armed Lycians. On the fatted flock 385. They banquet, and they drink the richest wines. But they are also valiant, and the fight. Wage dauntless in the vanward of us all. O Glaucus, if escaping safe the death. That threats us here, we also could escape 390. Old age, and to ourselves secure a life. Immortal, I would neither in the van. Myself expose. Nor would encourage thee. To tempt the perils of the glorious field. But since a thousand messengers of fate 395. Pursue us close, and man is born to die. E'en let us on, the prize of glory yield. If yield we must, or wrest it from the foe. He said, nor cold refusal in return. Received from Glaucus, but toward the wall four hundred. Their numerous Lycian host both led direct. Menestheus, son of Petios, saw appalled. Their dread approach, for to his tower they bent. Their threatening march. An eager look he cast. On the embodied Greeks, seeking some chief 405. Whose aid might turn the battle from his van. He saw, were never sated with exploits. Of war, each Ajax fought, near whom his eye. Ken Tusser also, newly from his tent. But vain his efforts were with loudest call 410. To reach their ears, such was the deafening din. Up sent to heaven, of shields and crested helms. And of the battered gates. For at each gate. They thundering stood, and urged alike at each. Their fierce attempt by force to burst the bars.415. To Ajax therefore he at once dispatched. A herald, and Thuts thus enjoined. My noble friend, Thuts. With all speed. Call either Ajax, bid them hither both. Far better so, for havoc is at hand.420. The Lycian leaders, ever in assault. Tempestuous, bend their force against this tower. My station. But if also there they find. Laborious conflict pressing them severe. At least let Telamonian Ajax come, 425. And Tusser with his death dispensing bow. He spake, nor was Thuts slow to hear. Beside the rampart of the mail clad Greeks. Rapid he flew, and, at their side arrived. To either Ajax, eager, thus began.430. Ye leaders of the well appointed Greeks. The son of noble Pedios calls. He begs. With instant suit, that ye would share his toils. 
however short your stay. The aid of both will serve him best, for havoc threatens their 435. The Lycian leaders, ever in assault. Tempestuous, bend their force toward the tower. His station. But if also here ye find. Laborious conflict pressing you severe. At least let Telamonian Ajax come, 440. And Tusser with his death-dispensing bow. He spake, nor his request the towering son. Of Telamon denied, but quick his speech. To Ajax Oileades addressed. Ajax. Abiding here, exhort ye both 445. Heroic like Amedes and thyself. The Greeks to battle. Thither I depart. To aid our friends, which service once performed. Duly, I will incontinent return. So saying, the Telamonian chief withdrew 450. With whom went Tusser, son of the same sire. Pandion also, bearing Tusser's bow. Arriving at the turret given in charge. To the bold chief Minestheus, and the wall. Entering, they found their friends all sharply tried. 455. Black as a storm the senators renowned. And leaders of the Lycian host assailed. Buttress and tower, while opposite the Greeks. Withstood them, and the battle shout began. First, Ajax, son of Telamon, a friend 460. And fellow warrior of Sarpedon slew. Epic less. With a marble fragment huge. That crowned the battlement's interior side. He smote him. No man of our puny race. Although in prime of youth, had with both hands 465. That weight sustained, but he the cumbrous mass. Uplifted high, and hurled it on his head. It burst his helmet, and his battered skull. Dashed from all form. He from the lofty tower. Dropped downright, with a diver's plunge, and died. 470. But Tusser wounded Glaucus with a shaft. Son of Hippolochus. He, climbing, bared. His arm, which Tusser, marking, from the wall. Transfixed it, and his onset fierce repressed. For with a backward leap Glaucus withdrew 475. Sudden and silent, cautious lest the Greeks. Seeing him wounded should insult his pain. Grief seized, at sight of his retiring friend. Sarpedon, who forgat not yet the fight. But piercing with his lance Alcman, son 480. Of the Uster, suddenly reversed the beam. Which following, Alcman to the earth. Fell prone. With clangor of his brazen arms. Sarpedon, then, strenuous with both hands. Tugged, and down fell the battlement entire, 485. The wall, dismantled at the summit, stood. A ruin, and wide chasm was opened through. Then Ajax him and Tusser at one time. Struck both. An arrow struck from Tusser's bow. The belt that crossed his bosom, by which hung 490. His ample shield, yet lest his son should fall. Among the ships, Jove turned the death aside. But Ajax, springing to his thrust, a spear. Drove through his shield. Sarpedon at the shock. With backward step short interval recoiled, for ninety-five. But not retired, for in his bosom lived. The hope of glory still, and, looking back. On all his godlike Lycians, he exclaimed. O oh, Lycians! Where is your heroic might? Brave as I boast myself, I feel the task five hundred. Arduous, through the breach made by myself. To win a passage to the ships, alone. Follow me all, most laborers, most dispatch. So he. At whose sharp reprimand abashed. The embattled host to closer conflict moved, 505. Obedient to their counselor and king. On the other side the Greeks within the wall. Made firm the phalanx, seeing urgent need. Nor could the valiant Lycians through the breach. Admittance to the Grecian fleet obtain, 510. Nor since they first approached it, had the Greeks. With all their efforts, thrust the Lycians back. But as two claimants of one common field. Each with his rod of measurement in hand. 
dispute the boundaries, litigating warm 515. They're right in some small portion of the soil. So they, divided by the barrier. Struck. With hostile rage the bull hide bucklers round. And the light targets on each other's breast. Then many a wound the ruthless weapons made point five twenty. Pierced through the unarmed back, if any turned. He died, and numerous even through the shield. The battlements from end to end with blood. Of Grecians and of Trojans on both sides. Were sprinkled. Yet no violence could move 525. The stubborn Greeks, or turn their powers to flight. So hung the war in balance, as the scales. Held by some woman scrupulously just. A spinner. Wool and weight she poises nice. hard earning slender pittance for her babes, 530. Such was the poise in which the battle hung. Till Jove himself superior fame, at length. To Priamy and Hector gave, who sprang. First through the wall. In lofty sounds that reached. Their utmost ranks, he called on all his host. Point five thirty five. Now press them, now ye Trojans steed-renowned. Rush on. Break through the Grecian rampart, hurl. At once devouring flames into the fleet. Such was his exhortation. They his voice. All hearing, with close-ordered ranks direct 540. Bore on the barrier, and upswarming showed. On the high battlement their glittering spears. But Hector seized a stone. Of ample base. But tapering to a point, before the gate. It stood. No two men, mightiest of a land 545. Such men as now are mighty, could with ease. Have heaved it from the earth up to a wane. He swung it easily alone. So light. The son of Saturn made it in his hand. As in one hand with ease the shepherd bears five fifty. A ram's fleece home, nor toils beneath the weight. So Hector, right toward the planks of those. Majestic folding gates, close jointed, firm. And solid, bore the stone. Two bars within. Their corresponding force combined transvere 555. To guard them, and one bolt secured the bars. He stood fast by them, parting wide his feet. For vantage sake, and smote them in the midst. He burst both hinges. Inward fell the rock. Ponderous, and the portals roared, the bars 560. Endured not, and the planks, riven by the force. Of that huge mass, flew scattered on all sides. In leaped the godlike hero at the breach. Gloomy as night in aspect, but in arms. All dazzling, and he grasped two quivering spears. Point five sixty five. Him entering with a leap the gates, no force. Whatever of opposition had repressed. Save of the gods alone. Fire filled his eyes. Turning, he bade the multitude without. Ascend the rampart, they his voice obeyed, 570. Part climbed the wall, part poured into the gate. The Grecians to their hollow galleys flew. Scattered, and tumult infinite arose. Book 13. Argument of the Thirteenth Book. Neptune engages on the part of the Grecians. The battle proceeds. Deiphobus advances to combat, but is repulsed by Marians, who losing his spear, repairs to his tent for another. Tusser slays Imbrius, and Hector Amphimachus. Neptune, under the similitude of Thoas, exhorts Idomeneus. Idomeneus having armed himself in his tent, and going forth to battle, meets Marians. After discourse held with each other, Idomeneus accommodates Marians with a spear, and they proceed to battle. Idomeneus slays Othryoneus, and Asius. Deiphobus assails Idomeneus, but, his spear glancing over him, kills Hypsenor. Idomeneus slays Alcathous, son-in-law of Anchises. Deiphobus and Idomeneus respectively summon their friends to their assistance, and a contest ensues for the body of Alcathous. Book 13. When Jove to Hector and his host had given. Such entrance to the fleet, to all the woes. And toils of unremitting battle there. He them abandoned, and his glorious eyes. 
averting, on the land looked down remote five. Of the horse-breeding Thracians. Of the bold. Close-fighting mission race, and where abide. On milk sustained, and blessed with length of days. The Hippomalgy, justest of mankind. No longer now on Troy his eyes he turned ten. For expectation none within his breast. Survived, that god or goddess would the Greeks. Approach with succor, or the Trojans more. Nor Neptune, sovereign of the boundless deep. Looked forth in vain. He on the summit sat fifteen. Of Samothracia forest crowned, the stir. Admiring thence and tempest of the field. For thence appeared all Ida, thence the towers. Of lofty Ilium, and the fleet of Greece. There sitting from the deeps a prison, he mourned d twenty. The vanquished Grecians, and resentment fierce. Conceived and wrath against all ruling Jove. Arising sudden, down the rugged steep. With rapid strides he came. The mountains huge. And forests under the immortal feet twenty-five. Trembled of ocean's sovereign as he strode. Three strides he made, the fourth conveyed him home. To Egi. At the bottom of the abyss. There stands magnificent his golden fane. A dazzling, incorruptible abode. Point thirty. Arrived, he to his chariot joined his steeds. Swift, brazen hoofed, and maned with wavy gold. Himself attiring next in gold, he seized. His golden scourge, and to his seat sublime. Ascending, o'er the billows drove, the whales thirty five. Leaving their caverns, gambled on all sides. Around him, not unconscious of their king. He swept the surge that tinged not as he passed. His axle, and the sea parted for joy. His bounding coursers to the Grecian fleet forty. Conveyed him swift. There is a spacious cave. Deep in the bottom of the flood, the rocks. Of Imbrus rude and Tenedos between. There Neptune, shaker of the shores, his steeds. Stationed secure. He loosed them from the yoke, forty-five. Gave them ambrosial food, and bound their feet. With golden tethers not to be untied. Or broken, that unwandering they might wait. Their lord's return, then sought the Grecian host. The Trojans, tempest-like or like a flame, fifty. Now, following Priamian Hector, all. Came furious on and shouting to the skies. Their hope was to possess the fleet, and leave. Not an Achaean of the host unslain. But earth encircler Neptune from the gulf fifty-five. Emerging, in the form and with the voice. Loud toned of Calchas, roused the Argive ranks. To battle, and his exhortation first. To either Ajax turned, themselves prepared. Ye heroes Ajax. Your accustomed force sixty. Exert, O. Oh. Think not of disastrous flight. And ye shall save the people. Not I fear. Fatal elsewhere, although Troy's haughty sons. Have passed the barrier with so fierce a throng. Tumultuous. For the Grecians brazen, grieved sixty-five. We'll check them there. Here only I expect. And with much dread some dire event forebode. Where Hector, terrible as fire, and loud. Vaunting his glorious origin from Jove. Leads on the Trojans. Oh that from on high seventy. Some god would form the purpose in your hearts. To stand yourselves firmly, and to exhort. The rest to stand. So should ye chase him hence. All ardent as he is, and even although. Olympian Jove himself his rage inspire. Seventy-five. So Neptune spake compasser of the earth. And, with his scepter smiting both, their hearts. Filled with fresh fortitude, their limbs the touch. Made agile, winged their feet and nerved their arms. Then, swift as stoops a falcon from the point eighty. Of some rude rock sublime, when he would chase. A fowl of other wing along the meads. So started Neptune thence, and disappeared. Him, as he went, swift oily aids. First recognized, and, instant, thus his speech eighty-five. 
to Ajax, son of Telamon, addressed. Since, Ajax, some inhabitant of heaven, exhorts us, in the prophet's form, to fight. For prophet none or augur we have seen. This was not Calchas, as he went I mark d90. His steps and knew him, gods are known with ease. I feel my spirit in my bosom fired. Afresh for battle, lightness in my limbs. In hands and feet a glow unfelt before. To whom the son of Telamon replied.95. I also with invigorated hands. More firmly grasp my spear, my courage mounts. A buoyant animation in my feet. Bears me along, and I am all on fire. To cope with Priam's furious son, alone. 100. Thus they, with martial transport to their souls. Imparted by the god, conferred elate. Meantime the king of ocean roused the Greeks. Who in the rear, beside their gallant barks. Some respite sought. They, spent with arduous toil, 105. Felt not alone their weary limbs unapt. To battle, but their hearts with grief oppressed. Seeing the numerous multitude of Troy. Within the mighty barrier. Sad they viewed. That sight, and bathed their cheeks with many a tear, 110. Despairing of escape. But ocean's lord. Entering among them, soon the spirit stirred. Of every valiant phalanx to the fight. Tusser and Leotus, and famed in arms. Penelius, Thoas and Deiparus, 115. Marians, and his compeer renowned. Antilochus, all these in accents winged. With fierce alacrity the god addressed. O oh shame, ye Grecians! Vigorous as ye are! And in life's prime, to your exertions most 120. I trusted for the safety of our ships. If ye renounce the labors of the field, then hath the day arisen of our defeat. And final ruin by the powers of Troy. Oh! I behold a prodigy, a sight 125. Tremendous, deemed impossible by me. The Trojans at our ships. The dastard race. Fled once like fleetest hinds the destined prey. Of lynxes, leopards, wolves. Feeble and slight. And of a nature indisposed to war 130. They rove uncertain, so the Trojans erst. Stood not, nor to Achaean prowess dared. The hindrance of a moment's strife oppose. But now, Troy left afar, even at our ships. They give us battle, through our leaders' fault 135. And through the people's negligence, who filled. With fierce displeasure against him, prefer. Death at their ships, to war in their defense. But if the son of Atreus, our supreme. If Agamemnon, have indeed transgressed d140. Past all excuse, dishonoring the swift. Achilles, ye at least the fight decline. Blameworthy, and with no sufficient plea. But heal we speedily the breach. Brave minds. Easily coalesce. It is not well 145. That thus your fury slumbers, for the host. Hath none illustrious as yourselves in arms. I can excuse the timid if he shrink. But am incensed at you. My friends, beware. Your tardiness will prove ere long the cause 150. Of some worse evil. Let the dread of shame. Affect your hearts, O tremble at the thought. Of infamy. Fierce conflict hath arisen. Loud shouting Hector combats at the ships. Nobly, hath forced the gates and burst the bar. 155. With such encouragement those Grecian chiefs. The king of ocean roused. Then, circled soon. By many a phalanx either Ajax stood. Whose order Mars himself arriving there. Had praised, or Pallas, patroness of arms. 160. For there the flower of all expected firm. Bold Hector and his host. Spear crowded spear. Shield, helmet, man, pressed helmet, man and shield. The hairy crests of their resplendent casks. Kissed close at every nod, so wedged they stood. 165. 
No spear was seen but in the manly grasp. It quivered, and their every wish was war. The powers of Ilium gave the first assault. Embattled close, them Hector led himself. Right on, impetuous as a rolling rock 170. Destructive. Torn by torrent waters off. From its old lodgment on the mountain's brow. It bounds, it shoots away, the crashing wood. Falls under it. Impediment or check. None stays its fury, till the level found, 175. There, settling by degrees, it rolls no more. So after many a threat that he would pass. Easily through the Grecian camp and fleet. And slay to the sea brink, when Hector once. Had fallen on those firm ranks, standing, he bore 180. Vehement on them. But by many a spear. Urged and bright falchion, soon, reeling, retired. And called vociferous on the host of Troy. Trojans, and Lycians, and close-fighting sons. Of Dardanus, O oh stand. Not long the Greeks 185. Will me confront, although embodied close. In solid phalanx, doubt it not, my spear. Shall chase and scatter them, if Jove, in truth. High thundering maid of Juno, bid me on. So saying he roused the courage of them all 190. Foremost of whom advanced, of Priam's race. Deiphobus, ambitious of renown. Tripping he came with shortened steps, his feet. Sheltering behind his buckler. But at him. Aiming, Marion's his splendid lance 195. Dismissed, nor erred, his bullhide targe he struck. But ineffectual, where the hollow wood. Receives the inserted brass, the quivering beam. Snapped. Then, Deiphobus his shield afar. Advanced before him, trembling at a spear two hundred. Hurled by Marians. He, moved alike. With indignation for the victory lost. And for his broken spear, into his band. At first retired, but soon set forth again. In prowess through the Achaean camp, to fetch two o five. Its fellow spear within his tent reserved. The rest all fought, and dread the shouts arose. On all sides. Telamonian Tusser, first. Slew valiant Imbrius, son of Mentor, rich. In herds of sprightly steeds. He ere the Greeks two ten. Arrived at Ilium, in Pideus dwelt. And Priam's spurious daughter had espoused. Medesicasta. But the bark's well oared. Of Greece arriving, he returned to Troy. Where he excelled the noblest, and abode two fifteen. With Priam, loved and honored as his own. Him Tusser pierced beneath his ear, and plucked. His weapon home. He fell as falls an ash. Which on some mountain visible afar. Hewn from its bottom by the woodman's axe, two twenty. With all its tender foliage meets the ground. So Imbrius fell. Loud rang his armor bright. With ornamental brass, and Tusser flew. To seize his arms, whom hasting to the spoil. Hector with his resplendent spear assailed. 225. He, marking opposite its rapid flight. Declined it narrowly and it pierced the breast. As he advanced to battle, of the son. Of Theatus of the Actorian race. Amphimachus. He, sounding, smote the plain. 230 and all his battered armor rang aloud. Then Hector swift approaching, would have torn the well-forged helmet from the brows away of brave Amphimachus. But Ajax hurled right forth at Hector hasting to the spoil 235. His radiant spear, no wound the spear impressed. For he was armed complete in burnished brass. Terrific. But the solid boss it pierced of Hector's shield, and with enormous force. So shocked him, that retiring he resigned d240. Both bodies, which the Grecians dragged away. Stichius and Minestheus, leaders both. Of the Athenians, to the host of Greece. Bore off Amphimachus, and, fierce in arms. The Ajaces, Imbrius. 
as two lions bear 245. Through thick entanglement of boughs and brakes. A goat snatched newly from the peasants' cogs. Upholding high their prey above the ground. So either Ajax terrible in fight. Upholding Imbrius high. His brazen arms 250. Tore off, and oily aids his head. From his smooth neck dissevering in revenge. For slain Amphimachus, through all the host. Sent it with swift rotation like a globe. Till in the dust at Hector's feet it fell. 255. Then anger filled the heart of Ocean's king. His grandson slain in battle, forth he passed. Through the Achaean camp and fleet, the Greeks. Rousing, and meditating what to Troy. It chanced that brave Idomeneus returned D260. That moment from a Cretan at the knee. Wounded, and newly born into his tent. His friends had borne him off, and when the chief. Had given him into skillful hands, he sought. The field again, still coveting renown. 265. Him therefore, meeting him on his return. Neptune bespake, but with the borrowed voice. Of Thoas, offspring of Andremon, king. In Pluro and in lofty Caledon. And honored by the Aetolians as a god. 270. O counselor of Crete! Our threats denounced. Against the towers of Troy, where are they now? To whom the leader of the Cretans, thus? Idomeneus. For aught that I perceive. Thoas. No Grecian is this day in fault. 275. For we are all intelligent in arms. None yields by fear oppressed, none lulled by sloth. From battle shrinks, but such the pleasure seems. Of Jove himself, that we should perish here. Inglorious, from our country far remote 280. But, Thoas. For thine heart was ever firm. In battle, and thyself art wont to rouse. Whom thou observest remiss, now also fight. As erst, and urge each leader of the host. Him answered, then, the sovereign of the deep. 285. Return that Grecian never from the shores. Of Troy, Idomeneus. But may the dogs. Feast on him, who shall this day intermit. Through willful negligence his force in fight. But haste, take arms and come. We must exert 290. All diligence, that, being only two. We yet may yield some service. Union much. Emboldens even the weakest, and our might. Hath oft been proved on warriors of renown. So Neptune spake, and, turning, sought again 295. The toilsome field. Ere long, Idomeneus. Arriving in his spacious tent, put on. His radiant armor, and, two spears in hand. Set forth like lightning which Saturnian Jove. From bright Olympus shakes into the air, three hundred. A sign to mortal men, dazzling all eyes. So beamed the hero's armor as he ran. But him not yet far distant from his tent. Marians, his fellow warrior met. For he had left the fight, seeking a spear, 305. When thus the brave Idomeneus began. Swift son of Molus. Chosen companion dear. Wherefore, Marians, hast thou the field? Abandoned? Art thou wounded? Bring'st thou home. Some pointed mischief in thy flesh infixed, 310. Or comest thou sent to me, who of myself? The still tent covet not, but feats of arms? To whom Marian's discreet replied. Chief leader of the Cretans, brazen mailed. Idomeneus. If yet there be a spear 315. Left in thy tent, I seek one. For I broke. The spear, even now, with which erewhile I fought. Smiting the shield of fierce Deiphobus. Then answer thus the Cretan chief returned. Valiant Idomeneus. If spears thou need, 320. Within my tent, leaning against the wall. Stand twenty spears and one, forged all in Troy. Which from the slain I took, for distant fight. Me suits not. 
therefore in my tent have I both spears and bossy shields, with brazen casks 325. And corslets bright that smile against the sun. Him answered, then, Marion's discreet. I also, at my tent and in my ship, have many Trojan spoils, but they are hence. Far distant. I not less myself than thou 330. Am ever mindful of a warrior's part. And when the din of glorious arms is heard, fight in the van. If other Greeks my deeds. No not, at least I judge them known to thee. To whom the leader of the host of Crete 335. Idomeneus. I know thy valor well. Why speakest thus to me? Choose we this day. An ambush forth of all the bravest Greeks. For in the ambush is distinguished best. The courage, there the timorous and the bold 340. Plainly appear. The dastard changes hue. And shifts from place to place, nor can he calm. The fears that shake his trembling limbs, but sits. Low crouching on his hams, while in his breast. Quick palpitates his death foreboding heart, 345. And his teeth chatter. But the valiant man. His posture shifts not, no excessive fears. Feels he, but seated once in ambush, deems. Time tedious till the bloody fight begin winky face. Even there, thy courage should no blame incur. 350. For shouldst thou, toiling in the fight, by spear. Or falchion bleed, not on thy neck behind. Would fall the weapon, or thy back annoy. But it would meet thy bowels, or thy chest. While thou didst rush into the clamorous van. 355. But haste, we may not longer loiter here. As children prating, lest some sharp rebuke. Reward us. Enter quick, and from within. My tent provide thee with a noble spear. Then, swift as Mars, Marion's produced 360. A brazen spear of those within the tent. Reserved, and kindling with heroic fire. Followed Idomeneus. As gory Mars. By terror followed, his own dauntless son. Who quells the boldest heart, to battle moves. 365. From Thrace against the Ephori they arm. Or hardy Phlegians, and by both invoked. Here and grant victory to which they please. Such, bright in arms Marians, and such. Idomeneus advanced, when foremost thus 370. Marians his fellow chief bespake. Son of Deucalion. Where inclinest thou most? To enter into battle? On the right? Of all the host? Or through the central ranks? Or on the left? For nowhere I account 375. The Greeks so destitute of force as there. Then answer thus Idomeneus returned. Chief of the Cretans. Others stand to guard. The middle fleet. There either Ajax wars. And Tusser, noblest archer of the Greeks, 380. Nor less in stationary fight approved. Bent as he is on battle, they will task. And urge to prove sufficiently the force. Of Priamian Hector. Burn his rage. How fierce soever, he shall find it hard, 385. With all his thirst of victory, to quell their firm resistance, and to fire the fleet. Let not Saturnian Jove cast down from heaven himself a flaming brand into the ships. High-towering Telamonian Ajax yields 390 to no mere mortal by the common gift. Sustained of Ceres, and whose flesh the spear can penetrate, or rocky fragment bruise. In standing fight Ajax would not retire even before that breaker of the ranks 395. Achilles, although far less swift than he. But turn we to the left, that we may learn. At once, if glorious death, or life be ours. Then, rapid as the god of war, his course. Marion's toward the left began, 400. As he enjoined. Soon as the Trojans saw. Idomeneus advancing like a flame and his compere Marians in arms. All radiant clad, 
encouraging aloud. From rank to rank each other, on they came 405. To the assault combined. Then soon arose. Sharp contest on the left of all the fleet. As when shrill winds blow vehement, what time? Dust deepest spreads the ways, by warring blasts. Upborne a sable cloud stands in the air, 410. Such was the sudden conflict. Equal rage. To stain with gore the lance ruled every breast. Horrent with quivering spears the fatal field. Frowned on all sides. The brazen flashes dread. Of numerous helmets, corslets furbished bright, 415. And shields refulgent meeting, dulled the eye. And turned it dark away. Stranger indeed. Were he to fear, who could that strife have viewed? With heart elate, or spirit unperturbed. Two mighty sons of Saturn adverse parts 420. Took in that contest, purposing alike. To many a valiant chief sorrow and pain. Jove, for the honor of Achilles, gave. Success to Hector and the host of Troy. Not for complete destruction of the Greeks 425. At Ilium, but that glory might redound. To Thetis thence, and to her dauntless son. On the other side, the king of ocean risen. Secretly from the hoary deep, the host. Of Greece encouraged, whom he grieved to see 430. Vanquished by Trojans, and with anger fierce. Against the thunderer burned on their behalf. Alike from one great origin divine. Sprang they, but Jove was elder, and surpassed. In various knowledge, therefore when he roused 435. Their courage, Neptune traversed still the ranks. Clandestine, and in human form disguised. Thus, these immortal too, straining the cord. Indissoluble of all wasting war. Alternate measured with it either host, for forty. And loosed the joints of many a warrior bold. Then, loud exhorting, though himself with age. Half gray, the Achaeans, into battle sprang. Idomeneus, and scattered, first, the foe. Slaying Othryoneus, who, by the lure 445. Of martial glory drawn, had left of late. Cabesus. He Priam's fair daughter wooed. Cassandra, but no nuptial gift vouchsafed. To offer, save a sounding promise proud. To chase, himself, however resolute 450. The Grecian host, and to deliver Troy. To him assenting, Priam, ancient king. Assured to him his wish, and in the faith. Of that assurance confident, he fought. But brave Idomeneus his splendid lance 455. Well aimed dismissing, struck the haughty chief. Pacing elate the field. His brazen mail. Endured not, through his bowels pierced, with clang. Of all his arms he fell, and thus with joy. Immense exulting, spake Idomeneus.460. I give thee praise, Othryoneus. Beyond. All mortal men, if truly thou perform. Thy whole big promise to the Dardan king. Who promised thee his daughter. Now, behold. We also promise, doubt not the effect. 465. We give into thy arms the most admired. Of Agamemnon's daughters, whom ourselves. Will hither bring from Argos, if thy force. With ours uniting, thou wilt raise the walls. Of populous Troy. Come, follow me. That here 470. Among the ships we may adjust the terms. Of marriage, for we take not scanty dower. So saying, the hero dragged him by his heel. Through all the furious fight. His death to avenge. Asius on foot before his steeds advanced, for seventy-five. For them, where'er he moved, his charioteer. Kept breathing ever on his neck behind. With fierce desire the heart of Asius burned. To smite Idomeneus, who with his lance. Him reaching first, pierced him beneath the chin 480. Into his throat, and urged the weapon through. He fell, as some green poplar falls, or oak. Or lofty pine, by naval artists hewn. With new-edged axes on the mountain's side. 
So, his teeth grinding, and the bloody dust 485. Clenching, before his chariot and his steeds. Extended, Asia slay. His charioteer. All recollection lost, sat panic stunned. Nor dared for safety turn his steeds to flight. Him bold Antilochus right through the waist 490. Transpierced, his mail sufficed not, but the spear. Implanted in his midmost bowels stood. Down from his seat magnificent he fell. Panting, and young Antilochus the steeds. Drove captive thence into the host of Greece. 495. Then came Deiphobus by sorrow urged. For Asius, and, small interval between. Hurled at Idomeneus his glittering lance. But he, foreseeing its approach, the point. Eluded, covered whole by his round shield five hundred. Of hides and brass by double belt sustained. And it flew over him, but on his targe. Glancing, elicited a tinkling sound. Yet left it not in vain his vigorous grasp. But pierced the liver of Hypsinor, son 505. Of Hippasus, he fell incontinent. And measureless exulting in his fall. Deiphobus with mighty voice exclaimed. Not unavenged lies Asius. Though he seek. Hell's iron portals, yet shall he rejoice, 510. For I have given him a conductor home. So he, whose vaunt the Greeks indignant heard. But of them all to anger most he roused. Antilochus, who yet his breathless friend. Left not, but hasting, fenced him with his shield, 515. And brave Alaster with Mesistius' son. Of Echius, bore him to the hollow ships. Deep groaning both. Four of their band was he. Nor yet Idomeneus his warlike rage. Remitted aught, but persevering strove 520. Either to plunge some Trojan in the shades. Or fall himself, guarding the fleet of Greece. Then slew he brave Alcathous the son. Of Isida, and the son-in-law. Of old Anchises, who to him had given 525. The eldest born of all his daughters fair. Hippodamia. Dearly loved was she. By both her parents in her virgin state. For that in beauty she surpassed, in works. In genius, and in faculties of mind 530. All her coevals, wherefore she was deemed. Well worthy of the noblest prince of Troy. Him in that moment, Neptune by the arm. Quelled of Idomeneus, his radiant eyes. Dimming, and fettering his proportioned limbs. 535. All power of flight or to elude the stroke. Forsook him, and while motionless he stood. As stands a pillar tall or towering oak. The hero of the Cretans with a spear. Transfixed his middle chest. He split the male 540. Erewhile his bosom's faithful guard, shrill rang. The shivered brass, sounding he fell, the beam. Implanted in his palpitating heart. Shook to its topmost point, but, its force spent. At last, quiescent, stood. Then loud exclaim, D545. Idomeneus, exulting in his fall. What thinks Deiphobus? Seems it to thee. Vain boaster, that, three warriors slain for one. We yield thee just amends? Else, stand thyself. Against me. Learn the valor of a chief 550. The progeny of Jove, Jove first begot. Crete's guardian, Minus, from which Minus sprang. Deucalion, and from famed Deucalion, I. I, sovereign of the numerous race of Cretes. Extensive isle, and whom my galleys brought 555. To these your shores at last, that I might prove. Thy curse, thy fathers, and a curse to Troy. He spake. Deiphobus uncertain stood. Whether, retreating, to engage the help. Of some heroic Trojan, or himself 560. To make the dread experiment alone. At length, as his discreeter course, he chose. To seek Aeneas. Him he found afar. Stationed, remotest of the host of Troy. For he resented evermore his worth 565. 
by Priam recompensed with cold neglect. Approaching him, in accents winged he said, Aeneas, Trojan chief, if e'er thou love DST, thy sister's husband, duty calls thee now. To prove it. Haste, defend with me the dead 570. Alcathous, guardian of thy tender years. Slain by Idomeneus the spear renowned. So saying, he roused his spirit, and on fire. To combat with the Cretan, forth he sprang. But fear seized not Idomeneus as fear 575. May seize a nursling boy. Resolved he stood. As in the mountains, conscious of his force. The wild boar waits a coming multitude. Of boisterous hunters to his lone retreat. Arching his bristly spine he stands, his eyes 580. Beam fire, and wetting his bright tusks, he burns. To drive, not dogs alone, but men to flight. So stood the royal Cretan, and fled not. Expecting brave Aeneas. Yet his friends. He summoned, on a scalifus his eyes 585. Fastening, on a Farius, Deiparus. Marians, and Antilochus, all bold. In battle, and in accents winged exclaimed. Haste ye, my friends. To aid me, for I stand. Alone, nor undismayed the coming weight 590. Of swift Aeneas, nor less brave than swift. And who possesses fresh his flower of youth? Man's prime advantage. Were we matched in years? As in our spirits, either he should earn. At once the meat of deathless fame, or I point 595. He said, they all unanimous approached. Sloping their shields, and stood. On the other side. His aides Aeneas called, with eyes toward. Paris, Deiphobus, Agenor, turned. His fellow warriors bold, them followed all six hundred. Their people as the pastured flock the ram. To water, by the shepherd seen with joy. Such joy Aeneas felt, seeing, so soon. That numerous host attendant at his call. Then, for Alcathous, into contest close 605. Armed with long spears they rushed, on every breast. Dread rang the brazen corslet, each his foe. Assailing opposite. But two, the rest. Surpassing far, terrible both as Mars. Aeneas and Idomeneus, alike 610. Panted to pierce each other with the spear. Aeneas, first, cast at Idomeneus. But, warned, he shunned the weapon, and it passed. Quivering in the soil Aeneas lance. Stood, hurled in vain, though by a forceful arm.615. Not so the Cretan, at his waist he pierced. Enamous, his hollow corslet clave. And in his midmost bowels drenched the spear. Down fell the chief, and dying, clenched the dust. Instant, his massy spear the king of Crete 620. Plucked from the dead, but of his radiant arms. Despoiled him not, by numerous weapons urged. For now, time-worn, he could no longer make. Brisk sally, spring to follow his own spear. Or shun another, or by swift retreat 625. Vanish from battle, but the evil day. Warded in stationary fight alone. At him retiring, therefore, step by step. Deiphobus, who had with bitterest hate. Long time pursued him, hurled his splendid lance, 630. But yet again erroneous, for he pierced. Ascalaphus instead, offspring of Mars. Right through his shoulder flew the spear, he fell. Incontinent and dying, clenched the dust. But tidings none the brazen-throated Mars, 635. Tempestuous yet received, that his own son. In bloody fight had fallen, for on the heights. Olympian overarched with clouds of gold. He sat, where sat the other powers divine. Prisoners together of the will of Jove. 640. Meantime, for slain Ascalaphus arose. Conflict severe. Deiphobus his cask. Resplendent seized, but swift as fiery Mars. Assailing him, Marion's his arm. Pierced with a spear, 
and from his idle hand 645. Fallen, the cask Sonorus struck the ground. Again, as darts the vulture on his prey. Marion's assailing him, the lance. Plucked from his arm, and to his band retired. Then, casting his fraternal arms around 650. Deiphobus, him young polites led. From the horse battle to his rapid steeds. And his bright chariot in the distant rear. Which bore him back to Troy, languid and loud. Groaning. And bleeding from his recent wound. 655. Still raged the war, and infinite arose. The clamor. Apharius, Calidor's son. Turning to face Aeneas, in his throat. Instant the hero's pointed lance received. With head reclined, and bearing to the ground 660. Buckler and helmet with him, in dark shades. Of soul divorcing death involved, he fell. Antilochus, observing Thun turned. To flight, that moment pierced him. From his back. He ripped the vein which threw the trunk its course 665. Winds upward to the neck, that vein he ripped. All forth, supine he fell, and with both hands. Extended to his fellow warriors, died. Forth sprang Antilochus to strip his arms. But watched, meantime, the Trojans, who in crowd 670. Encircling him, his splendid buckler broad. Smote oft, but none with ruthless point prevailed. Even to inscribe the skin of Nestor's son. Whom Neptune, shaker of the shores, amid. Innumerable darts kept still secure. 675. Yet never from his foes he shrank, but faced. From side to side, nor idle slept his spear. But with rotation ceaseless turned and turned. To every part, now leveled at a foe. Far distant, at a foe, now, near at hand. 680. Nor he, thus occupied, unseen escaped. By Asia's offspring Adamus, who close. Advancing, struck the center of his shield. But Neptune azure haired so dear a life. Denied to Adamus, and rendered vain 685. The weapon. Part within his disc remained. Like a seared stake, and part fell at his feet. Then Adamus, for his own life alarmed. Retired, but as he went, Marion's. Him reaching with his lance, the shame between 690. And navel pierced him, where the stroke of Mars. Proves painful most to miserable man. There entered deep the weapon. Down he fell. And in the dust lay panting as an ox. Among the mountains pants by peasants held 695. In twisted bands, and dragged perforce along. So panted dying Adamus, but soon. Ceased, for Marians, approaching, plucked. The weapon forth, and darkness veiled his eyes. Helenus, with his heavy Thracian blade 700. Smiting the temples of Deiparus. Dashed off his helmet. From his brows remote. It fell, and wandering rolled, till at his feet. Some warrior found it, and secured, meantime. The sightless shades of death him wrapped around point seven o five. Grief at that spectacle the bosom filled. A valiant Menelaus. High he shook. His radiant spear, and threatening him, advanced. On royal Helenus, who ready stood. With his bow bent. They met, impatient, one, seven, ten. To give his pointed lance its rapid course. And one, to start his arrow from the nerve. The arrow of the son of Priam struck. A tried's hollow corslet, but the reed. Glanced wide. As vetches or as swarthy beans seven fifteen. Leap from the van and fly athwart the floor. By sharp winds driven, and by the winnower's force. So from the corslet of the glorious Greek. Wide wandering flew the bitter shaft away. But Menelaus the left hand transpierced 720. Of Helenus, and with the lance's point. Fastened it to his bow, shunning a stroke. More fatal, Helenus into his band. Retired, his arm dependent at his side. And trailing, as he went, the ashen beam. 
725. There, bold Eginor from his hand the lance. Drew forth, then folded it with softest wool. Around, sling wool, and borrowed from the sling. Which his attendant into battle bore. Then sprang Pisander on the glorious chief 730. The son of Atreus, but his evil fate. Beckoned him to his death in conflict fierce. O Menelaus, mighty chief! With thee! And now they met, small interval between. Atrides hurled his weapon, and it aired point seven thirty five. Pisander with his spear struck full the shield. Of glorious Menelaus, but his force. Resisted by the stubborn buckler broad. Failed to transpierce it, and the weapon fell. Snapped at the neck. Yet, when he struck, the heart seven forty. Rebounded of Pisander, full of hope. But Menelaus, drawing his bright blade, sprang on him, while Pisander from behind. His buckler drew a brazen battle axe. By its long haft of polished olive wood, 745. And both chiefs struck together. He the crest. That crowned the shaggy cask of Atreus' son. Hewed from its base, but Menelaus him. In his swift onset smote full on the front. Above his nose, sounded the shattered bone, 750. And his eyes both fell bloody at his feet. Convolved with pain he lay, then, on his breast. A tried setting fast his heel, tore off. His armor, and exulting thus began. So shall ye leave at length the Grecian fleet, 755. Traitors, and never satisfied with war. Nor want ye other guilt, dogs, and profane. But me have injured also, and defied. The hot displeasure of high thundering Jove. The hospitable, who shall waste in time, 760. And level with the dust your lofty Troy. I wronged not you, yet bore ye far away. My youthful bride who welcomed you, and stole. My treasures also, and ye now are bent. To burn Achaia's gallant fleet with fire 765. And slay her heroes. But your furious thirst. Of battle shall hereafter meet a check. O, oh, Father Jove! Thee wisest we account. In heaven or earth, yet from thyself proceed. All these calamities, who favor show, st 770. To this flagitious race the Trojans, strong. In wickedness alone, and whose delight. In war and bloodshed never can be cloyed. All pleasures breed satiety, sweet sleep. Soft dalliance, music, and the graceful dance, 775. Though sought with keener appetite by most. Then bloody war, but Troy still covets blood. So spake the royal chief, and to his friends. Pisander's gory spoils consigning, flew. To mingle in the foremost fight again. 780. Him, next, Harpalion, offspring of the king. Pylamenes assailed. To Troy he came. Following his sire, but never thence returned. He, from small distance, smote the central boss. Of Menelaus' buckler with his lance, 785. But wanting power to pierce it, with an eye. Of cautious circumspection, lest perchance. Some spear should reach him, to his band retired. But him retiring with a brazen shaft. Marion's pursued, swift flew the dart 790. To his right buttock, slipped beneath the bone. His bladder grazed, and started through before. There ended his retreat. Sudden he sank. And like a worm lay on the ground, his life. Exhaling in his fellow warrior's arms, 795. And with his sable blood soaking the plain. Around him flocked his Paphlagonians bold. And in his chariot place drove him to Troy. With whom his father went, mourning with tears. A son, whose death he never saw avenged. 800. Him slain with indignation Paris viewed. For he, with numerous Paphlagonians more. His guest had been, he, therefore, in the thirst. Of vengeance, sent a brazen arrow forth. There was a certain Greek, Eucaner, son 805. Of Polyides the soothsayer, rich. And brave in fight, 
and who in Corinth dwelt. He, knowing well his fate, yet sailed to Troy. For Polyides oft, his reverend sire, had prophesied that he should either die 810 by some dire malady at home, or, slain by Trojan hands, amid the fleet of Greece. He, therefore, shunning the reproach alike of the Achaeans, and that dire disease, had joined the Grecian host, him Paris pierced 815. The ear and jaw beneath, life at the stroke, left him, and darkness overspread his eyes. So raged the battle like devouring fire. But Hector dear to Jove not yet had learned. Nor out surmised the havoc of his host 820. Made on the left, where victory crowned well nigh. The Grecians animated to the fight. By Neptune seconding himself their arms. He, where he first had started through the gate. After dispersion of the shielded Greeks 825. Compact, still persevered. The galleys there. Of Ajax and Protesilaus stood. Updrawn above the hoary deep. The wall. Was there of humblest structure, and the steeds. And warriors there conflicted furious most. 830. The Epeans there and Ionians robed. Prolix, the Thians, Locrians, and the bold. Boeotians checked the terrible assault. Of Hector, noble chief, ardent as flame. Yet not repulsed him. Chosen Athenians form, D835. The van, by Pedio's son, Minestheus, led. Whose high command undaunted bias shared. Phidos and Stichius. The Epian host. Under Amphion, Dracius, Meges, fought. Podarsus brave in arms the Thians ruled 840. And Medon, Medon was by spurious birth. Brother of Ajax Oileades. And for his uncle's death, whom he had slain. The brother of Oileus' wife, abode. In Phylas, but from Iphiclus sprang 845. Podarsus' winky face. These, all stationed in the front. Of Thia's hardy sons, together strove. With the Boeotians for the fleet's defense. Ajax the swift swerved never from the side. Of Ajax son of Telamon a step 850. But as in some deep fallow two black steers. Labor combined, dragging the ponderous plow. The briny sweat around their rooted horns. Booze is profuse. They, parted as they toil. Along the furrow, by the yoke alone, 855. Cleave to its bottom sheer the stubborn glebe. So, side by side, they, persevering fought. The son of Telamon a people led. Numerous and bold, who, when his bulky limbs. Failed over labored, eased him of his shield. 860. Not so attended by his Locrians fought. Oileus' valiant son. Pitched battle them. Suited not, unprovided with bright casks. Of hairy crest, with ashen spears, and shields. Of ample orb. For, trusting in the bow 865. And twisted sling alone, they came to Troy. And broke with shafts and volleyed stones the ranks. Thus occupying, clad in burnished arms. The van, these two with Hector and his host. Conflicted, while the Locrians from behind 870. Vexed them with shafts, secure, nor could the men. Of Ilium stand, by such a shower confused. Then, driven with dreadful havoc thence, the foe. To windswept Ilium had again retired. Had not Polydamus, at Hector's side 875. Standing, the dauntless hero thus addressed. Hector. Thou ne'er canst listen to advice. But think'st thou, that if heaven in feats of arms. Give thee preeminence, thou must excel. Therefore in counsel also all mankind, 880. No. All sufficiency is not for thee. To one, superior force in arms is given. Skill to another in the graceful dance. Sweet song and powers of music to a third. And to a fourth loud thundering Jove imparts 885. Wisdom, which profits many, and which saves. Whole cities oft. 
though reverenced but by few. Yet here, I speak as wisest seems to me. War, like a fiery circle, all around. Environs thee. The Trojans, since they pass, D890. The bulwark either hold themselves aloof. Or, wide dispersed among the galleys, cope. With numbers far superior to their own. Retiring, therefore, summon all our chiefs. To consultation on the sum of all 895. Whether, should heaven so prosper us, to rush. Impetuous on the gallant barks of Greece. Or to retreat secure. For much I dread. Lest the Achaeans punctually refund. All yesterday's arrear, since yonder chief nine hundred. Insatiable with battle still abides. Within the fleet, nor longer, as I judge. Will rest a mere spectator of the field. So spake Polydamus, whose safe advice. Pleased Hector, from his chariot down he leaped D905. All armed, and in winged accents thus replied. Polydamus. Here gather all the chiefs. I haste into the fight, and my commands. Once issued there, incontinent return. He ended, and conspicuous as the height 910. Of some snow-crested mountain, shouting ranged. The Trojans and Confederates of Troy. They swift around Polydamus, brave son. Of Pan thus, at the voice of Hector, ran. Himself with hasty strides the front, meantime, 915. Of battle roamed, seeking from rank to rank. Asia's herdicides, with Asia's son. Adamus, and Deiphobus, and the might. Of Helenus, his royal brother bold. Them neither altogether free from hurt 920. He found, nor living all. Beneath the sterns. Of the Achaean ship some slaughtered lay. By Grecian hands, some stricken by the spear. Within the rampart sat, some by the sword. But leftward of the waffle field he found, 925. Ere long, bright Helen's paramour his band. Exhorting to the fight. Hector approached. And him, in fierce displeasure, thus bespake. Cursed Paris, specious, fraudulent and lewd. Where is Deiphobus, and where the might 930? Of royal Helenus? Where Adamus? Offspring of Asius, and where Asius, son. Of Herdicus, and where Othrionius. Now lofty Ilium from her topmost height. Falls headlong, now is thy own ruin sure. 935. To whom the godlike Paris thus replied. Since Hector. Thou art pleased with no just cause. To censure me, I may decline, perchance. Much more the battle on some future day. For I profess some courage, even I. 940. Witness our constant conflict with the Greeks. Here, on this spot, since first led on by thee. The host of Troy waged battle at the ships. But those are friends of whom thou hast inquired. Are slain, Deiphobus alone except 945. And royal Helenus, who in the hand. Bear each a wound inflicted by the spear and have retired, but Jove their life preserved. Come now, conduct us whither most thine heart. Prompts thee, and thou shalt find us ardent all nine fifty. To face like danger, what we can, we will. The best and most determined can no more. So saying, the hero soothed his brother's mind. Then moved they both toward the hottest war. Together, where Polydamus the brave, nine fifty-five. Falses, Cebrions, or Theus fought. Pomis and Polyphotes, godlike chief. And Mores and Ascanius, gallant sons. Both of Hippotion. They at Troy arrived. From fair Ascania the preceding morn 960. In recompense for aid by Priam lent. Erewhile to Phrygia, and, by Jove impelled. Now waged the furious battle side by side. The march of these at once, was as the sound. Of mighty winds from deep hung thunder, clouds 965. Descending, clamorous the blast and wild. With ocean mingles. Many a billow, then. 
Upridged rides turbulent the sounding flood. Foam crested billow after billow driven. So moved the host of Troy, rank after rank 970. Behind their chiefs, all dazzling bright in arms. Before them Priamian Hector strode. Fierce as gore tainted Mars, and his broad shield. Advancing came, heavy with hides, and thick. Plated with brass. His helmet on his brows 975. Refulgent shook, and in its turn he tried. The force of every phalanx, if perchance. Behind his broad shield pacing he might shake. Their steadfast order, but he bore not down. The spirit of the firm Achaean host. 980. Then Ajax striding forth, him, first, defied. Approach. Why temptest thou the Greeks to fear? No babes are we in aught that appertains. To arms, though humbled by the scourge of Jove. Thou cherishest the foolish hope to burn 985. Our fleet with fire, but even we have hearts. Prepared to guard it, and your populous Troy. By us dismantled and to pillage given. Shall perish sooner far. Know this thyself. Also. The hour is nigh when thou shalt ask 990. In prayer to Jove and all the gods of heaven. That speed more rapid than the falcon's flight. May wing thy coursers, while, exciting dense. The dusty plain, they whirl thee back to Troy. While thus he spake, sublime on the right, hand 995. An eagle soared, confident in the sign. The whole Achaean host with loud acclaim. Hailed it. Then glorious Hector thus replied. Brainless and big, what means this boast of thine? Earthcumberer Ajax? Would I were the sun one thousand? As sure, for ever, of almighty Jove. And Juno, and such honor might receive. Henceforth as Pallas and Apollo share. As comes this day with universal wa. Fraught for the Grecians. Among whom thyself one thousand and five. Shalt also perish if thou dare abide. My massy spear, which shall thy pampered flesh. Disfigure, and amid the barks of Greece. Falling, thou shalt the vultures with thy bulk. Enormous satiate, and the dogs of Troy. 1010. He spake, and led his host, with clamor loud. They followed him, and all the distant rear. Came shouting on. On the other side the Greeks. Re-echoed shout for shout, all undismayed. And waiting firm the bravest of their foes. 1015. Up went the double roar into the heights. Ethereal, and among the beams of Jove. Book 14. Argument of the Fourteenth Book. Agamemnon and the other wounded chiefs taking Nestor with them, visit the battle. Juno having borrowed the cestus of Venus, first engages the assistance of sleep, then hastens to Ida to inveigle Jove. She prevails. Jove sleeps, and Neptune takes that opportunity to succor the Grecians. Book 14. Nor was that cry by Nestor unperceived. Though drinking, who in words winged with surprise. The son of Aesculapius thus addressed. Divine Machaean. Think what this may bode. The cry of our young warriors at the ship's five. Grows louder. Sitting here, the sable wine. Quaff thou, while bright-haired Hecamede warms. A bath, to cleanse thy crimson stains away. I from yon eminence will learn the cause. So saying, he took a shield radiant with brass ten. There lying in the tent, the shield well forged. A valiant Thrasymedes. His own son. For he had borne to fight his father's shield. And arming next his hand with a keen lance stood forth before the tent. Then soon he saw fifteen. Foul deeds and strange, the Grecian host confused. Their broken ranks flying before the host. Of Ilium, and the rampart overthrown. As when the wide sea, darkened over all. Its silent flood, forebodes shrill winds to blow, twenty. The doubtful waves roll yet to neither side. Till swept at length by a decisive gale. So stood the senior, with distressful doubts. 
conflicting anxious, whether first to seek. The Grecian host, or Agamemnon's self-25. The sovereign, and at length that course preferred. Meantime with mutual carnage they the field. Spread far and wide, and by spears double-edged. Smitten, and by the sword their corslets rang. The royal chiefs ascending from the fleet, thirty. Ulysses, Diomede, and Atreus' son. Imperial Agamemnon, who had each. Bled in the battle, met him on his way. For from the war remote they had updrawn. Their galleys on the shore of the grey deep, thirty-five. The foremost to the plain, and at the sterns. Of that exterior line had built the wall. For, spacious though it were, the shore alone. That fleet sufficed not, incommoding much. The people, wherefore they had ranged the ships forty. Line above line gradual, and the bay. Between both promontories, all was filled. They, therefore, curious to survey the fight. Came forth together, leaning on the spear. When Nestor met them, heavy were their hearts, forty-five. And at the sight of him still more alarmed. Whom royal Agamemnon thus bespake. Nelian Nestor, glory of the Greeks. What moved thee to forsake yon bloody field? And urged thee hither? Cause I see of fear, fifty. Lest furious Hector even now his threat. Among the Trojans published, verify. That he would never enter Ilium more till he had burned our fleet, and slain ourselves. So threatened Hector, and shall now perform point fifty-five. Alas! Alas! The Achaeans brazen grieved. All, like Achilles, have deserted me. Resentful, and declined their fleet's defense. To whom Gerenian Nestor thus replied. Those threats are verified, nor Jove himself sixty. The thunderer can disappoint them now. For our chief strength in which we trusted most. That it should guard impregnably secure. Our navy and ourselves, the wall hath fallen. Hence all this conflict by our host sustained D-65. Among the ships. Nor could thy keenest sight. Inform thee where in the Achaean camp. Confusion most prevails, such deaths are dealt. Promiscuous, and the cry ascends to heaven. But come, consult we on the sum of all, seventy. If counsel yet may profit. As for you. Ye shall have exhortation none from me. To seek the fight, the wounded have excuse. Whom Agamemnon answered, King of men. Ah Nestor. If beneath our very stern seventy-five. The battle rage, if neither trench nor wall. Constructed with such labor, and supposed of strength to guard impregnably secure. Our navy and ourselves, avail us aught. It is because Almighty Jove hath will, d. 80. That the Achaean host should perish here. Inglorious, from their country far remote. When he vouchsafed assistance to the Greeks. I knew it well, and now, not less I know. That high as the immortal gods he lifts eighty-five. Our foes to glory, and depresses us. Haste therefore all, and act as I advise. Our ships, all those that nearest skirt the deep. Launch we into the sacred flood, and more. With anchors safely, till o'er shadowing night ninety. If night itself may save us, shall arrive. Then may we launch the rest. For I know shame. Account it, even by advantage of the night. To fly destruction. Wiser him I deem. Who scapes his foe, than whom his foe enthralls? Point ninety five. But him Ulysses, frowning stern, reproved. What word, Atrides, now hath passed thy lips? Counselor of despair. Thou shouldst command. And would to heaven thou didst, a different host. Some dastard race, not ours, whom Jove ordains one hundred. From youth to hoary age to weave the web. Of toilsome warfare, till we perish all. Wilt thou the spacious city thus renounce? For which such numerous woes we have endured? Hush! Lest some other hear. It is a word 105. Which no man qualified by years mature. To speak discreetly, no man bearing rule. 
O er such a people as confess thy sway, should suffer to contaminate his lips. I from my soul condemn thee, and condemn one ten. Thy counsel, who persuadest us in the heat of battle terrible as this, to launch our fleet into the waves, that we may give our two successful foes their full desire, and that our own prepondering scale 115 may plunge us past all hope. For while they draw their galleys down, the Grecians shall but ill sustain the fight, seaward will cast their eyes and shun the battle, bent on flight alone. Then, shall they rue thy counsel, king of men. 120. To whom the imperial leader of the Greeks. Thy sharp reproof, Ulysses, hath my soul. Pierced deeply. Yet I gave no such command. That the Achaeans should their galleys launch. Would they, or would they not? No. I desire 125. That young or old, some other may advise. More prudent give, and he shall please me well. Then thus the gallant Diomede replied. That man is near, and may ye but be found. Tractable, our inquiry shall be short. 130. Be patient each, nor chide me nor reproach. Because I am of greener years than ye. For I am sprung from an illustrious sire. From Tydeus, who beneath his hill of earth lies now entombed at Thebes. Three noble sons 135 were born to Portheus, who in Pluro dwelt. And on the heights of Caledon, the first Agrius, the second Melas, and the third brave Enus, father of my father, famed for virtuous qualities above the rest. 140. Enus still dwelt at home but wandering thence. My father dwelt in Argos, so the will of Jove appointed, and of all the gods. There he espoused the daughter of the king. Adrastus, occupied a mansion rich 145. In all abundance. Many a field possessed. Of wheat, well-planted gardens, numerous flocks. And was expert in spearmanship esteemed. Past all the Grecians. I esteemed it right. That ye should hear these things, for they are true. 150. Ye will not, therefore, as I were obscure. And of ignoble origin, reject. What I shall well advise. Expedience bids. That, wounded as we are, we join the host. We will preserve due distance from the range 155. Of spears and arrows, lest already galled. We suffer worse, but we will others urge. To combat, who have stood too long aloof. Attentive only to their own repose. He spake, whom all approved, and forth they went, 160. Imperial Agamemnon at their head. Nor watched the glorious shaker of the shores. In vain, but like a man time-worn approached. And, seizing Agamemnon's better hand. In accents winged the monarch thus addressed point 165. Atrides. Now exults the vengeful heart. Of fierce Achilles, viewing at his ease. The flight and slaughter of Achaia's host. For he is mad, and let him perish such. And may his portion from the gods be shame. 170. But as for thee, not yet the powers of heaven. Thee hate implacable, the chiefs of Troy shall cover yet with cloudy dust the breadth of all the plain, and backward from the camp. To Ilium's gates thyself shalt see them driven. 175. He ceased, and shouting traversed swift the field. Loud as nine thousand or ten thousand shout. In furious battle mingled, Neptune sent. His voice abroad, force irresistible. Infusing into every Grecian heart, 180 and thirst of battle not to be assuaged. But Juno of the golden throne stood forth. On the Olympian summit, viewing thence. The field, where clear distinguishing the god. Of ocean, her own brother, soul engaged 185. Amid the glorious battle, glad was she. Seeing Jove also on the topmost point. 
Of spring-fed Ida seated, she conceived. Hatred against him, and thenceforth began. Deliberate how best she might deceive 190. The thunderer, and thus at last resolved. Attired with skill celestial to descend. On Ida, with a hope to allure him first. Won by her beauty to a fond embrace. Then closing fast in balmy sleep profound 195. His eyes, to elude his vigilance, secure. She sought her chamber. Vulcan her own son. That chamber built. He framed the solid doors. And to the posts fast closed them with a key. Mysterious, which, herself except, in heaven two hundred. None understood. Entering she secured. The splendid portal. First, she laved all o'er. Her beauteous body with ambrosial lymph. Then polished it with richest oil divine. Of boundless fragrance. Oil that in the courts 205. Eternal only shaken, through the skies. Breathed odors, and through all the distant earth. Her whole fair body with those sweets bedewed. She passed the comb through her ambrosial hair. And braided her bright locks streaming profuse 210. From her immortal brows. With golden studs. She made her gorgeous mantle fast before. Ethereal texture, labor of the hands. Of palace beautified with various art. And braced it with a zone fringed all around 215. A hundredfold. Her pendants triple gemmed. Luminous, graceful, in her ears she hung. And covering all her glories with a veil. Sunbright, new woven, bound to her fair feet. Her sandals elegant. Thus full attired, 220. In all her ornaments, she issued forth. And beckoning Venus from the other powers. Of heaven apart, the goddess thus bespake. Daughter beloved. Shall I obtain my suit? Or wilt thou thwart me, angry that I aid 225? The Grecians, while thine aid is given to Troy? To whom Jove's daughter Venus thus replied. What would majestic Juno, daughter dread? Of Saturn, sire of Jove? I feel a mind. Disposed to gratify thee, if thou ask 230. Things possible, and possible to me. Then thus with wiles veiling her deep design. Imperial Juno. Give me those desires. That love enkindling power by which thou swayst. Immortal hearts and mortal, all alike. 235. For to the green earth's utmost bounds I go. To visit there the parent of the gods. Oceanus, and Tethys his espoused. Mother of all. They kindly from the hands. Of Rhea took, and with parental care 240. Sustained and cherished me, what time from heaven. The thunder hurled down Saturn, and beneath. The earth fast bound him and the barren deep. Them go I now to visit, and their feuds. Innumerable to compose. For long 245. They have from conjugal embrace abstained. Through mutual wrath, whom by persuasive speech. Might I restore into each other's arms. They would forever love me and revere. Her, foam-born Venus then, goddess of smiles, 250. Thus answered. Thy request, who in the arms. Of Jove reposest the omnipotent. Nor just it were nor seemly to refuse. So saying, the cincture from her breast she loosed. Embroidered, various, her all-charming zone. 255. It was an ambush of sweet snares, replete. With love, desire, soft intercourse of hearts. And music of resistless whispered sounds. That from the wisest steal their best resolves. She placed it in her hands and thus she said. 260. Take this, this girdle fraught with every charm. Hide this within thy bosom, and return. Whatever thy purpose, mistress of it all. She spake, imperial Juno smiled, and still. Smiling complacent, bosom safe the zone. 265. Then Venus to her father's court returned. And Juno, starting from the Olympian height. 
Earth Lapyria and the lovely plains. Of broad Amathia. Soaring thence she swept. The snow-clad summits of the Thracian hills 270. Steed famed, nor printed, as she passed, the soil. From Athos o'er the foaming billows born. She came to Lemnos, city and abode. Of noble Thoas, and their meeting sleep. Brother of death, she pressed his hand, and said, 275. Sleep, over all, both gods and men, supreme. If ever thou hast heard, hear also now. My suit, I will be grateful evermore. Seal for me fast the radiant eyes of Jove. In the instant of his gratified desire. 280. Thy recompense shall be a throne of gold. Bright, incorruptible. My limping son. Vulcan, shall fashion it himself with art. Laborious, and, beneath, shall place a stool. For thy fair feet, at the convivial board. 285. Then answer thus the tranquil sleep returned. Great Saturn's daughter, awe inspiring queen. All other of the everlasting gods. I could with ease make slumber, even the streams. Of ocean, sire of all. Not so the king 290. The son of Saturn, him, unless himself. Give me command, I dare not lull to rest. Or even approach him, taught as I have been. Already in the school of thy commands. That wisdom. I forget not yet the day 295. When, Troy laid waste, that valiant son of his. Sailed homeward, then my influence I diffused. Soft o'er the sovereign intellect of Jove. While thou, against the hero plotting harm. Didst rouse the billows with tempestuous blasts, three hundred. And separating him from all his friend. Broughtst him to populous Kos. Then Jove awoke. And, hurling in his wrath the gods about. Sought chiefly me, whom far below all ken. He had from heaven cast down into the deep, 305. But night, resistless vanquisher of all. Both gods and men, preserved me. For to her. I fled for refuge. So the thunder cooled. Though sore displeased, and spared me through a fear. To violate the peaceful sway of night. 310. And thou wouldst now embroil me yet again. To whom majestic Juno thus replied. Ah, wherefore, sleep. Shouldst thou indulge a fear. So groundless? Chase it from thy mind afar. Think'st thou the thunderer as intent to serve 315. The Trojans, and as jealous in their cause. As erst for Hercules, his genuine son. Come then, and I will bless thee with a bride. One of the younger graces shall be thine. Pasithea, day by day still thy desire. 320. She spake, sleep heard delighted, and replied. By the inviolable Stygian flood. Swear to me. Lay thy right hand on the glebe. All teeming, lay thy other on the face. Of the flat sea, that all the immortal powers 325. Who compass Saturn in the nether realms. May witness, that thou givest me for a bride. The younger grace whom thou hast named. Divine. Pasithea, day by day still my desire. He said, nor beauteous Juno not complied 330. But swear, by name invoking all the powers. Titanian called who in the lowest gulf. Dwell under Tartarus, omitting none. Her oath with solemn ceremonial sworn. Together forth they went. Lemnos they left 335. And Imbrus, city of Thrace, and in dark clouds. Mantled, with gliding ease swam through the air. To Ida's mount with rilling waters veined. Parent of savage beasts. At Lecto's first. They quitted ocean, overpassing high 340. The dry land, while beneath their feet the woods. Their spiry summits waved. There, unperceived. By Jove, sleep mounted Ida's loftiest pine. Of growth that pierced the sky, and hidden sat. Secure by its expanded boughs, the bird 345. Shrill-voiced resembling in the mountain scene. 
Calcis in heaven, on earth Semindus named. But Juno swift to Gargarus the top. Of Ida, sword, and there Jove saw his spouse. Saw her, and in his breast the same love felt three fifty. Rekindled vehement, which had of old. Joined them, when, by their parents unperceived. They stole aside, and snatched their first embrace. Soon he accosted her, and thus inquired. Juno. What region seeking hast thou left 355? The Olympian summit, and hast here arrived. With neither steed nor chariot in thy train? To whom majestic Juno thus replied. Dissembling. To the green earth's end I go. To visit there the parent of the gods 360. Oceanus, and Tethys his espoused. Mother of all. They kindly from the hands. Of Rhea took, and with parental care. Sustained and cherished me. To them I haste. Their feuds innumerable to compose, 365. Who disunited by intestine strife. Long time, from conjugal embrace abstain. My steeds, that lightly over dank and dry. Shall bear me, at the rooted base I left. Of Ida river veined. But for thy sake 370. From the Olympian summit I arrive. Less journeying remote to the abode. Of ocean, and with no consent of thine. Entreated first, I should, perchance, offend. To whom the cloud assembler god replied. 375. Juno. Thy journey thither may be made. Hereafter. Let us turn to dalliance now. For never goddess poured, nor woman yet. So full a tide of love into my breast. I never loved Ixion's consort thus 380. Who bore Pyrithoas, wise as we in heaven. Nor sweet Acrisian Danae, from whom. Sprang Perseus, noblest of the race of man. Nor Phoenix, daughter fair, of whom were born. Minus unmatched but by the powers above, 385. And Radamanthus. Nor yet Semele. Nor yet Alcmena, who in Thebes produced. The valiant Hercules, and though my son. By Semele were Bacchus, joy of man. Nor Ceres golden-haired, nor high, enthroned 390. Latona in the skies, no, nor thyself. As now I love thee, and my soul perceive. O'erwhelm thee with sweetness of intense desire. Then thus majestic Juno her reply. Framed artful. O unreasonable haste. 395. What speaks the thunderer? If on Ida's heights. Where all is open and to view exposed. Thou wilt that we embrace, what must betide. Should any of the everlasting gods. Observe us, and declare it to the rest? 400. Never could I, arising, seek again. Thy mansion, so unseemly were the deed. But if thy inclinations that way tend. Thou hast a chamber, it is Vulcan's work. Our sons, he framed and fitted to its posts 405. The solid portal. Thither let us his. And there repose, since such thy pleasure seems. To whom the cloud assembler deity. Fear thou not, Juno, lest the eye of man. Or of a god discern us. At my word 410. A golden cloud shall fold us so around. That not the sun himself shall through that veil. Discover aught, though keenest eyed of all. So spake the son of Saturn, and his spouse. Fast locked within his arms. Beneath them earth 415. With sudden herbage teemed, at once upsprang. The crocus soft, the lotus bathed in dew. And the crisp hyacinth with clustering bells. Thick was their growth, and high above the ground. Up bore them. On that flowery couch they lay, for twenty. Invested with a golden cloud that shed. Bright dewdrops all around. His heart at ease. There lay the sire of all, by sleep and love. Vanquished on lofty Gargarus, his spouse. Constraining still with amorous embrace. 425. Then, gentle sleep to the Achaean camp. 
sped swift away, with tidings for the ear. Of earth encircler Neptune charged, him soon. He found, and in winged accents thus began. Now Neptune, yield the Greeks effectual aid, 430. And, while the moment lasts of Jove's repose. Make victory theirs, for him in slumber soft. I have involved, while Juno by deceit. Prevailing, lured him with the bait of love. He said, and swift departed to his task 435. Among the nations, but his tidings urged. Neptune with still more ardor to assist. The deny, he leaped into the van. Afar, and thus exhorted them aloud. O oh, Argives! Yield we yet again the day 440. To Priamian Hector? Shall he seize our ships, and make the glory all his own? Such is his expectation, so he vaunts. For that Achilles leaves not yet his camp. Resentful. But of him small need, I judge, for forty-five. Should here be felt, could once the rest be roused. To mutual aid. Act, then, as I advise. The best and broadest bucklers of the host. And brightest helmets put we on, and armed. With longest spears, advance. Myself will lead, for fifty. And trust me, furious though he be, the son. Of Priam flies. Ye then who feel your hearts. Undaunted, but are armed with smaller shields. Them give to those who fear, and in exchange. Their stronger shields and broader take yourselves. Point four fifty five. So he, whom, unreluctant, all obeyed. Then, wounded as they were, themselves the kings. Tidides, Agamemnon, and Ulysses. Marshaled the warriors, and from rank to rank. Made just exchange of arms, giving the best 460. To the best warriors, to the worse, the worst. And now in brazen armor all arrayed. Refulgent on they moved, by Neptune led. With firm hand grasping his long-bladed sword. Keen as Jove's bolt, with him may none contend 465. In dreadful fight, but fear chains every arm. Opposite, Priamian Hector ranged. His Trojans, then they stretched the bloody cord. Of conflict tight, Neptune Coerulean haired. And Hector, pride of Ilium, won, the Greeks 470. Supporting firm, and won, the powers of Troy. A sea flood dashed the galleys, and the hosts. Joined clamorous. Not so the billows roar. The shores among, when Boreas roughest blast. Sweeps landward from the main the towering surge. 475. Not so, devouring fire among the trees. That clothed the mountain, when the sheeted flames. Ascending wrap the forest in a blaze. Nor howl the winds through leafy boughs of oaks. Upgrown aloft, though loudest there they rave, 480. With sounds so awful as were heard of Greeks. And Trojans shouting when the clash began. At Ajax, first, for face to face they stood. Illustrious Hector threw a spear well aimed. But smote him where the belts that bore his shield 485. And Falchion crossed each other on his breast. The double guard preserved him unannoyed. Indignant that his spear had bootless flown. Yet fearing death at hand, the Trojan chief. Toward the phalanx of his friends retired. 490. But, as he went, huge Ajax with a stone. Of those which propped the ships, for numerous such. Lay rolling at the feet of those who fought. Assailed him. Twirling like a top it passed. The shield of Hector, near the neck his breast 495. Struck full, then plowed circuitous the dust. As when Jove's arm omnipotent an oak. Prostrates uprooted on the plain, a fume. Rises sulfurious from the riven trunk. And if, perchance, some traveler nigh at hand 500. See it, he trembles at the bolt of Jove. So fell the might of Hector. To the earth. Smitten at once. Down dropped his idle spear. And with his helmet and his shield himself. Also, loud thundered all his gorgeous arms. 505. 
swift flew the Grecians shouting to the skies. And showering darts, to drag his body thence. But neither spear of theirs nor shaft could harm. The fallen leader, with such instant aid. His princely friends encircled him around 510. Sarpedon. Lycian chief, Glaucus the brave. Polydemus, Aeneas, and renowned. Agenor. Neither tardy were the rest. But with round shields all sheltered Hector fallen. Him soon uplifted from the plain his friends 515. Bore thence, till where his fiery coursers stood. And splendid chariot in the rear, they came. Then Troy Ward drove him groaning as he went. Ere long arriving at the pleasant stream. Of Edid Xanthus, progeny of Jove, 520. They laid him on the bank, and on his face. Poured water. He, reviving, upward gazed. And seated on his ham's black blood disgorged. Coagulate, but soon relapsing, fell. Supine, his eyes with pitchy darkness veiled, 525. And all his powers still torpid by the blow. Then, seeing Hector borne away, the Greeks. Rushed fiercer on, all mindful of the fight. And far before the rest, Ajax the swift. The Oilian chief, with pointed spear 530. On Satnius springing, pierced him. Him a nymph. A naiad, bore to an ops, while his herd. Feeding, on Satnio's grassy verge he strayed. But oily aids the spear renowned. Approaching, pierced his flank, supine he fell, 535. And fiery contest for the dead arose. In vengeance of his fall, spear shaking chief. The son of Pan thus into fight advanced. Polydemus, who Prothoner pierced. Offspring of Areolochus, and urged 540. Through his right shoulder sheer the stormy lance. He, prostrate, clenched the dust, and with loud voice. Polydemus exulted at his fall. Yon spear, methinks, hurled from the warlike hand. Of Panthus' noble son, flew not in vain, 545. But some Greek hath it, purposing, I judge. To lean on it in his descent to hell. So he, whose vaunt the Greeks indignant heard. But most indignant, Ajax, offspring bold. Of Telamon, to whom he nearest fell point 550. He, quick, at the retiring conqueror cast. His radiant spear, Polydemus the stroke. Shunned, starting sideward. But Antenor's son. Archilochus the mortal dint received. Death destined by the gods where neck and spine 555. Unite, both tendons he dissevered wide. And, ere his knees, his nostrils met the ground. Then Ajax in his turn vaunting aloud. Against renowned Polydemus, exclaimed. Speak now the truth, Polydemus, and weigh 560. My question well. His life whom I have slain. Makes it not compensation for the loss. Of Prothoner's life. To me he seems. Nor base himself, nor yet of base descent. But brother of a teener steed renowned, 565. Or else perchance his son, for in my eyes. Antenor's lineage he resembles most. So he, well knowing him, and sorrow seized. Each Trojan heart. Then a comma's around. His brother stalking, wounded with his spear 570. Boeotian Promachus, who by the feet dragged off the slain. A comma's in his fall. Aloud exulted with a boundless joy. Vainglorious Argives, archers inexpert. War's toil and trouble are not ours alone, 575. But ye shall perish also, mark the man. How sound he sleeps tamed by my conquering arm. Your fellow warrior Promachus. The debt. A vengeance on my brother's dear behalf. Demanded quick discharge. Well may the wish 580. Of every dying warrior be to leave. A brother living to avenge his fall. He ended, whom the Greeks indignant heard. But chiefly brave Penelius, swift he rushed. On a commas. But from before the force 585. 
of King Penelius Akamas retired. And, in his stead, Ilionius he pierced. Offspring of Forbus, rich in flocks. And blessed. By Mercury with such abundant wealth. As other Trojan none, nor child to him 590. His spouse had borne, Ilionius except. Him close beneath the brow to his eye roots. Piercing, he pushed the pupil from its seat. And through his eye and through his pole the spear. Urged furious. He down sitting on the earth 595. Both hands extended. But, his glittering blade. Forth drawn, Penelius through his middle neck. Enforced it, head and helmet to the ground. He lopped together, with the lance infixed. Still in his eye. Then like a poppy's head six hundred. The crimson trophy lifting, in the ears. He vaunted loud of Ilium's host, and cried. Go, Trojans. Be my messengers. Inform. The parents of Ilionius the brave. That they may mourn their son through all their house, 605. For so the wife of a legioner's son. Boeotian Promachus must him bewail. Nor shall she welcome his return with smiles. Of joy affectionate. When from the shores. Of Troy the fleet shall bear us Grecians home. 610. He said, fear whitened every Trojan cheek. And every Trojan eye with earnest look. Inquired a refuge from impending fate. Say now, ye muses, blessed inhabitants. Of the Olympian realms. What Grecian first 615. Filled his victorious hand with armor stripped. From slaughtered Trojans, after Ocean's god. Had, interposing, changed the battle's course? First, Telamonian Ajax Hertius slew. Undaunted leader of the Mision band. 620. Falses and murmurous their arms resigned. To young Antilochus, Hippotion fell. And Maurice by Marians. The shafts. Right aimed of Tusser to the shades dismissed. Protas and Periphides, and the prince 625. Of Sparta, Menelaus, in his flank. Pierced Hipparinor. On his entrails prayed. The hungry steel, and, through the gaping wound. Expelled, his spirit flew, night veiled his eyes. But Ajax oiliades the swift 630. Slew most, him none could equal in pursuit. Of tremblers scattered by the frown of Jove. Book 15. Argument of the 15th Book. Jove, awaking and seeing the Trojans routed, threatens Juno. He sends Iris to admonish Neptune to relinquish the battle, and Apollo to restore health to Hector. Apollo, armed with the Aegis, puts to flight the Grecians, they are pursued home to their fleet, and Telamonian Ajax slays twelve Trojans bringing fire to burn it. Book 15. But when the flying Trojans had oerpissed. Both stakes and trench, and numerous slaughtered lay. By Grecian hands, the remnant halted all. Beside their chariots, pale, discomfited. 